champion series. I love the sound of that. And EXO against the wall, and Team Pabs will full cap. <laughs> Where did Pabs come from? Straight on top of their heads. Quartz won't let them stand much longer, kneecapping three in that fight. The new kings of EU have been crowned. Toronto defiant in an absolute shutout. Some kings were born to rule. What's up, everyone? Zoe here. Welcome to day three of the OWC uh, stage two groups. Uh, joining me for the MEA portion are once again the best Overwatch ship right after Mercy and Genji, Jaws and Custom. So true. So true with so that. True. It's just me and Jaws. Spitting facts. <laughs> It, um, we were long distance doing? for too long, and and now I, I, I know, thought he was going to find someone else back in the UK, but fortunately, you know, he's yeah. come back, and now we're living in LA again, and everything's happy. We're so bad. maybe he did find someone else, but maybe he needed that to realize what he had. That's when true. He was with nice. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't so uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, that's sure. Cool. <laughs> well, some of you watching uh, might be here for the caster fanfic, others uh, just to enjoy some good, honest Overwatch. A uh, fun fact: uh, you'll get the best of both worlds if you follow our social media account now put our social media manager under pressure to deliver some fun <laughs> fix sorry about that <laughs> yeah, follow us oh, for no. all the goodness uh if you got some banger memes and opinions to share with us as well of course uh, please tag ow underscore esports and you could be featured in the show or retweeted for fame and fortune well, probably just fame is just fame, not, not fortune. actual fortune. We're not going to. No pay one's getting paid for tweets. I'm sorry. Absolutely, no one is getting paid. Uh, but uh, our players are, if they manage to come out on top, uh, they're duking it out in OWCS for prize money, but also, of course, more importantly, circuit points. That's the good stuff, guys. Ooh, and the first is getting an automatic qualification to Dallas for this stage. Uh, that's exciting. On top of the thirty thousand dollars, so everyone's vying for that number one spot, and it's pretty competitive. We just saw yesterday a lot of the teams starting to make their way out of the groups. We have a couple more games today to see if anyone else can as well. Yeah, that's crazy. Exactly. Space Station getting that qualification to Dallas is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Dallas, uh, this is where it will all go uh, down. Our first LAN event, and we, of course, would love to see you there as well. You get to meet us and potentially some of your favorite players. Uh, let's take a look at who's in the running in the EMEA region to make it all the way. But first, let's take a look at some tickets. Love tickets. Here's standings, love standings as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just in love with everything, honestly. Big graphics very fan. <laughs> Big graphics fan. Absolute aficionado. Um, yeah, I mean, today we're going to say goodbye to some teams, uh, which is going to be very exciting. We also have one more minutes match uh, to be played in Group D, uh, which is uh, what we're going to kick things off with. So actually, let's just dive straight into said winner's match between Peace and Love and Antaraxia. If we're looking at the team rosters here, uh, especially for peace and love i feel like there is some enigmas at least to me uh, in this team i guess the most well-known faces will be a peak psycho for sure uh, probably ice as well for those uh, following along uh, they did take down the polish squad meta boys 3-0 in their opening match on day one but what else do we know about them well, interesting enough, these two teams actually faced off. So Peace and Love and Ataraxia actually faced off in the Swiss stage and it went to, wait, let me just guarantee this. I believe it went to, uh, <laughs> to Ataraxia. To save with one. confidence. It was close. It was a map three banger. So there, we're going to have a good match going up against us. There's some more familiar names as we move over to Ataraxia. So Shax is obviously a story player. Actually, he's been around so long. I played with him way back in 2019. So he's a what? veteran of Overwatch Esports, but no some lesser known names as well on this team yeah it was peace and love by the way scott so you did get it wrong uh, i love how you yeah. said i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure i'm gonna check i'm gonna make sure didn't read uh we both get one in a broadcast peace and, yeah peace and love uh, came away with a win it was a two and one uh so yeah it's a little bit of a rematch here and this it's gonna be fairly close i mean i love again it's very much a well a lot of new players a lot of new faces and then you have a lot of old heads as well including some people like Shaxx like old you were saying. heads yeah I love watching the old heads I love watching people that I've uh, cast before like back in like 2018 2019 kind of thing and MCD2 by the way uh, using one of their inf import slots I'm always surprised to see what team MCD lands on but uh, yeah I guess uh, just an <laughs> EU team so. so one team will always end up with an MCD in it so yeah, it's a matter exactly. of who it is going to be this time around and Araxia, of course uh, they were already present 
risen in stage one uh, made quite a lot of changes uh, heading into stage two uh, they picked up four players from quick esports so uh, fee dana jackson dollar dollar yeah, dollar. Uh, yeah, so weirdly enough, like I'm actually surprised that it wasn't Antaraxia winning this one in the Swiss stage because just by name value, you would consider them the favorite heading into this. Yeah, but you, you never know with these teams, right? Like it, there's always never so much know. like hidden talent. There's, you know, Diamonds in the Rough and MCD, who's a hired sword. So there's always these players. That was the most boss uprising thing you ever uh, said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to keep on their spirit as we move on to a new chapter that. of Overwatch Esports. But yeah, like I, I think, especially in the Swiss stage, we've talked about it in the past. Everyone's always trying, but it's best of threes. Anything can happen with that limited map set. Now we go on to a best of five. These two teams, this is really where everything matters, especially considering whoever wins this match will make it out of group d and punch a ticket to the top eight yeah my favorite thing actually about this match too is that uh abik put out the classic yeah we don't scrim by the way we're just a yeah. fun team still finished top four by the way four so fun. uh yeah four fun exactly four fun top four in swiss yeah it feels pretty good i love the uh we're doing it for fun we do it we're, uh, as a random like mixed team and they end up placing really high and they're like oh okay actually but they, did they get rid of all the good names in their team that's what happened that's crazy. I mean, maybe, yeah. That's actually hey, crazy. Dude, that's crazy. That? No way. <laughs> I really like Abik. Also, when Abik's last played, it, they were Hot Babe and Cool Boys. So I'm hoping they bring, uh, they run it back with those names. I love the open twist names. Man. It reminds <laughs> me of uh, FRD back in the day, the Fried Wiener. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't yeah. keep that name, but you know. But when me, there'll be a Fried right. Wiener too. You never know. You'll never know. Th and these open formats are opportunities to make that happen. Uh, you know, also uh, spitting some facts here in the lower third. Yeah, double you know uh, it, third. AI got it wrong yesterday, although it did try to gaslight me into thinking Custer was in fact the first player. I asked AI yeah, I like five it. different ways, and AI kept on coming back with that custom narrative. Dude, was, paying off know, AI. Did you pay them? Yeah, I've been paying off AI just to sort of boost my stonks. I'm also I also won MVP in 2018. Try to test it out on open air, see, see what happens. So I'm like tempted to just ask to see what happens. What kind of like <laughs> data set was the model working off? Where it's like, yeah, actually Scott won everything. He won every stage of the Overwatch League yeah, but ever. As soon every as champion. You dug into it, like at first we'd go like, oh yeah, that was custom. And then I go like, are you sure? And they're like, oh, actually, excuse me. She's on to me. I'm I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. Scott actually paying people off. It's, it's interesting as apologize. well because it's not even like I, it, I wasn't the first. I don't think I've ever played tank in a, in a competitive match either. I played DPS you play because DPS there, in there was the flex support like Sombra meta where the health packs would oh. give you EMP charge uh, back in the day. But I've never done it. I've never played tanks, so I don't even know where they're pulling from. Uh, so, you know. But the AI is gassing you up. Yeah, I like, like you it. Should, you shouldn't stop it. You should stop AI it yourself, uh, AI chat yourself, and then see what they, they have a lot of good things to say about Costa. I'm sure they have a lot of good things to say about the teams which are going to bats here. First things first in our winners match. Guys, walk us through the map set. Oh, yeah. Peace and love versus Ataraxia Scott. We're going to Oasis first. So, again, we just want to bring this up. A little bit of a rematch here. Peace and love ended up taking uh, Ataraxia here in the Swiss stage all the way to three maps did go all the way but it was a two one scoreline at the very end of it and in fact peace and love only uh, lost two of their games in the Swiss stage and that was against teams you'd expect them to lose against that was EXO and uh, Twisted Minds so you're like wow this team's actually pretty strong going almost lossless and then losing to the best teams or some of the best teams so you know I've got big I've got big hopes and uh, dreams for peace and love coming into this series yeah, but you can't underrate Ataraxia as well, right? Like, because they're, they're the same, you know, they went eight and three. The only one that they lost, which maybe you can argue, oh, you know, this was one that was unexpected, was against Peace uh, peace and Love. So Ataraxia is definitely the fan favorites as well. You saw just from the fan vote, 85% of people believe Ataraxia is going to fix what happened last time and get this win. So let's get into it as we see both teams rolling out on the Winston, which is interesting already. Little dive, I like this. City Center, you know, kind of classic. Although a lot of teams, it's like it reminds me of Samoa, like uh, the point with Samoa. I forget the exact name of the map, but the one, the stage that looks exactly like City Center in the corner, like in the middle, and you can just play Arissa and then just dance around the whole thing. So I'm a little bit shocked to see downtown. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm a little shocked to see double Winston. I was expecting to see a little bit of Arissa at least. Points been unlocked, but classic City Center fashion. No one's going to cap until I don't know, a couple of minutes into the round. 
Yeah, because I mean, the ability to just sort of kite the point and dance around on the point uh, out of line of sight is pretty good. We're going to see eyes going on getting very low. They are going to live, but it might at least force them off of the point. So first cap should go over to Adaraxia, and I think actually falls as well. Yeah, all right. Five picking up. A sweet little kill on... Ooh, nice couple of headshots from Fire there. On the Cass. Cass versus Soj. Okay, Scott. Okay, definitive. Like, I'm going to take your word as gospel. What's better, Cass or Soj in these matchups? Uh, okay, so here's the thing. I really like the Soj for the pick potential. Onto the Tracer as well. We saw a lot of that yesterday where your ability to just sort of delete the Tracer is a threat they have to deal with. But on the other side as well, the Hinder Grenade is such a big tool for both the Tracer and the Winston. So if you are Islam and you're playing against his Cassidy, if you get hit by the Hinder Grenade, you need to play around your bubbles. You need to be playing smart. So there's multiple threats. I don't think there is, you know, a right answer. I think it's whatever the player's thinking. Double rush coming in, Fire's already dead. There's the six from Shax. Winston traded for the Casty. That sound barrier from Ataraxia should see them through at least a portion of this fight. I said, okay, with the Primal Rage and still controlling that point too. Easy escape too. Little double leap back to the rest of their team. Ataraxia still in control. Lauren now only just spawning in with that railgun, that overclock coming in for a piece of love, but time's a ticking. Yeah, and it, that, that's the important thing. They're more than happy to trade back these ultimates time and time again because they have the the uh, the point control. Unfortunately, here's the issue with the casting. You have a high noon going into an overclock. They're going to go aggressive with it. Great boot, though. Nice four-man B. Lorena already taken down a dollar. There's the Primal Rage. Fine trouble. Also just escorted away from his supports. Thanks to the Winston Primal. And now, yeah, I mean, surely this is a cap. For peace and love now there we go psycho picking up the next lauren as well getting two kills in that fight peace and love finally securing that point but 82 percent are on the wire now yeah it's like one fight territory but a lot of ultimates used but surprisingly lauren never had to use the overclock so now they can hold this as almost like a threat fading out of raxia in action they're gonna go incredibly aggressive go towards the spawn doors where there's less cover hasn't been able to find anything and ice loses his life for it you gotta get that kill back at least Garland dodging out of the way of that last railgun shot. Managing to swift step away. Small trade, like you said, Scott, about that Araxia. They can juggle point here quite easily. But Peace and Love are going to make sure it's a little bit hard for them. Force a couple of ultimates, potentially. No ultimates available for Peace and Love either. And Ataraxia do have that rush if they want to guarantee their point cap. I say that, Abik's got a rush too. My bad. So both rush is laid down. Lauren's already fallen. Shaxx with so a rare low. miss on the pulse bomb, but yeah, peace and love just get wiped off of the map. And Ataraxia going to control that point. They got sound barrier too. If they want to go early, they can. This might be their round. Yeah, they know that Peace and Love is going to have to rush out of this spawn door to get to the point, so Adarax is actually stepping up. You can see putting out so much damage, making it difficult for them to close that distance. Lauren over to the Sombra, maybe trying to get to the point, but is anyone going to make it? All right, there's the Shranta Kill. Ooh, just. All right, it was the Tracer that ended up touching in the end, but that means the backline quite vulnerable. Fire pretty low now. Virus lands. There's the High Noon. Uh oh, Lauren can't go anywhere. Nice little boop there into the corner. So the Shranta Kill hit the wall. 99% for Ataraxia now. And they still got a Primal Rage if they need to use it. Peace and Love coming back on the Doom Fist. Oh, Psycho gets shut down. A swift headshot from Fi. Should end it all. There we go. Ataraxia with the first round. Yeah, and that, that all goes back to what we talked about with like that 80%, that long fight that was taken after the cap was made. Adarax was just able to build up so much percentage. So as soon as Peace and Love made one mistake, which was that aggressive overclock push, they got punished for it. It gets flipped back and Adaraxia just firmly in control. So that's kind of what we expect from Adaraxia. Peace and Love not coming out of the gates too strong. Let's see as we see different things moving over to University, much more of an Orissa map, and it looks like both teams are going to go that direction. Yeah, makes the most sense. Guy is definitely not going to stick on the Weaver, but all good. I mean, okay, yeah. No, no, no. No stick on Weaver, surely. There you go. Kiri. Yeah, just both playing the Arisa. You can't, you, I mean, you can play Monkey here, I suppose, but is just so good at holding down this point. It, the problem with the Winston is it can be difficult to take space and not get punished, while Arisa can also just stand almost forever on this point. So it's just an easier uh, composition to play. 
You can see Peace and Love, they want the high ground with Love and on the Sojin, while Ataraxia, they're going to concede it and take this, like, mini health pack room that is pretty safe to play out of. But they're going to have to be careful about getting stuffed in here. As you can see, Ice already stepping up. But there's actually a huge flank coming from Ataraxia onto the high ground. They want to fight for it. Yeah, Lauren's in trouble, but perfectly landing those healing grenades. Abik healing their DPS up. And Psycho take care, uh, taking care of Harry Keck as well. Peace and love. In a good spot right now. They can find a couple more staggers. Maybe they're good for another one. Shax is trying to stay out of LOS for as long as possible here. Wait for the team to regroup. Peace and love in a good set so far. You can see why teams don't try and attack people on the high ground. Fight just instantly got booped off in that last round, and that's going to leave Lauren just sitting on his high ground once again, going to take the mini pack. Shax winning the Tracer duel over Psycho. All right, okay. Shax with one. He's under a lot of pressure, forced to use that lamp, and you can see now Fight just applying themselves on the point. That's a free Actually, cap, too. That's just one Tracer pick, and that was a flip for Ataraxia. I, I, I agree with this decision by Peace and Love. You're better off, instead of fighting for the point in a 4v5, just hold the high ground with your four players. Ataraxia don't want to go high ground. Just wait for Psycho to come back, and then you're back in a good position. You refuse to giving Railgun charge there to Laura. However, oh, Shax is still kind of peppering the, ba uh, the back line right now, the front line even. Ice is taking a whole lot of damage. Shax now playing in that Kiriko rush. Those... Oh, okay. Abik's actually just going to snipe him out before the sandbar even hits. Terra Surge comes through. Abik in a lot of trouble still getting booped out of that immortality field. Psycho, sights firmly set on Gala. Forces the swift step. Recall straight into the line of sight. Averike takes down the Orisa. The front line down. And Ataraxia lose that point. 33% now to 40 in building for peace and love. You can see Adorax is really struggling to take this fight because they don't have the map control. They don't have the high ground. Oh, aggressive. Oh, the Terra Surge in the back. No, nope, Suzu moment. Don't worry. We're good. Oh, and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's no way you are killing the Orisa, even with a dead eye. Like, in that range with a four fight, ain't no way. Nice little kill, and uh, they can just keep pushing on the pressure here. Final on the pressure. I mean, luckily, Adoraxia spawns pretty close, and Fight can get back just in time, but Ooh. the amount of damage they're taking that will be a swift retreat. Yeah, now, Adoraxia, with only 20% remaining, they still don't have any ultimates. Trying to get Gala up, aggressive window coming out. Are they going to get any punishes on this? Psycho's Pulse one gets eaten by the Spear Spin, but no picks. Oh, the boop. Rest in peace, Loren, who was uh, acting as a double agent there, was playing on the side of uh, Peace and Love. They were in their back line, and no one was paying attention to him. There's the flip. All right, okay. And uh, Railgun, that overclock, not used to his full effectiveness there by Loren. Didn't even have the chance to pull it before they got booped. Big tried to use the window, but... Ataraxa are already rotating around the other side, so they're just almost full committed into a disadvantageous situation. Or oh, early uh, rush here as well. They want to punish the people in spawn as they're split. Early lamp, you are punished. It's a great aggressive play here from Ataraxia. Yeah, they're still with a sound barrier too. They could just sound barrier the uh, overclock if they really want to, although there's a lot of places to kind of escape from the LOS. There's a sound barrier for Ataraxia as well on Dollar, so. Lauren gets onto the high ground, but are they going to have any targets to pop this overclock? Yeah, I mean, everything can just hide in this small room, right? They actually just can use that uh, sound barrier to make sure Lauren has to be a little bit more careful. Later, beat here coming through for a piece of love. There's double terror surge. Someone's going to have to take off soon. It's actually a beat that ends up going down to the terror surge, but Eula's there to help clean up. Just help Ice secure the kill on the Orisa. 90% for Ataraxia now. They're still in control as far as the high noon. Eula does manage to get out of the line of sight. Oh, wow. It's like you're not quite so lucky. Just a very messy fight right now as Lauren's just on the point, just trying to get that flip, a peace and love. They're going to have to come back rather quickly onto this point. A nice little punch out of the LOS of the healers too. As both Doomfist now just trying to duel it out. Healers just getting absolutely rolled in the front line of fire, just holding down this point. Ataraxia are going to have to take this map. It's got 99% to 91. Map number one to Ataraxia. And a lot of that final fight for me goes to... I don't know how a beak was caught by the Terra Surge. There's Terra Surge, they were spinning yeah. for a long time, just waiting for the other one to blink first. And somehow a beak gets caught from that. As much as they trade back picks, that main healing being lost from a beak on the Baptiste, or they just can't take that long sustained fight and they eventually fall out. So it looked like Peace and Love were in the driver's seat in that round, but eventually Ataraxia taking it back and taking the first map in a pretty convincing fashion. 
potentially a little boop. Not entirely sure, because, yeah, they That's were just kind of chilling. They were standing there, and that was it. Like, oh, okay. We just look at each other, I suppose, lo lovingly, longingly, just waiting for one of us to eventually uh, slam down the spear. It's so fun. Watching Orisa meta, I think it's quite funny, because um, most of the time, if the Orisa's just... It reminds me of Malga in a way, but a little bit more fun. At least the Orisa's have like, all <laughs> abilities, right? But, like, with Orisa, it's just like, okay, we both fortify, look at each other. Okay, it's time to Terra Surge. Okay, it's time to Terra Surge. Like, shaking hands emoji, like, okay, we're ready to go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's so ridiculous sometimes. But yeah. Fly had a, a bit of a stand-up performance on the Casty here compared to the Surgeon, which were, is what we were speaking about earlier. Yeah, Fly, Fly is a player that like has been around for uh, what feels like a while. You know, I've always seen him as a pretty good hit scan that's always been you know, poking and prodding around. And you can see how the Cassidy is just able to get more consistent damage output and just sort of play around that. Also, High Noon, as much as it might not be as strong as an ultimate uh, as Overclock when, you know, you have the pick potential of Overclock, High Noon is a great zoning tool that can be used as a team. And you saw that multiple times uh, throughout this map. But there was a lot of great ultimate usage just across the board in a lot of these situations. You can see they understand the matchup very well, especially in the Orisa versus Orisa. Understanding you want to be playing aggressive, you want to be moving as a unit. But, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things. I'm hoping we get to see this highlight of what happened in the Terra Surges and see a big fall over. It doesn't look like we will, but there is a lot of... The thing that I'm excited about as well is we don't have one team that's just like, hey, we want to play Orisa. We want to play Orisa all over the place. We saw a bit of dive. We saw a bit of Orisa. That matters a lot for the map pool as we go further into the series. Yeah, exactly that. Obviously, the map pool has been decided before the series because the team's at a, a pick and ban phase. Um, so we'll see where we end up going next. I mean, Oasis is a bit of a weird one. Oasis always feels like a little bit of a coin flip depending on like how your team functions because you're just kind of hoping... If you're a team that only plays like only plays the Arisa, only plays Dive, or like only plays Ram or whatever, like you're hoping for the maps that are very dependent um, on those comps and like are very good for those comps. But both teams willing to kind of flex to different, uh, different stars is also a really good thing, and especially in a meta that's kind of up in the air right now. And uh, yeah, I think we're in a good spot um, in terms of the meta, and I think it's helping these teams out very well. And apparently peace and love too no scrims you know no scrims that's fine just a mixed team just a fun team getting a well, place you have to hope they scrimmed this week no like yeah you know they're like they're like hey we made it out of swiss with no practice Clueless. let's just continue to not practice honestly that seems to be working out for us so far <laughs> that's the overwashed mentality at least you know I mean, yeah we're look, full hey. fun team Exactly, four fun teams, zero scrims. You don't want to jinx it by then scrimming and just taking it too seriously, you know what I mean? It's like it's like gamer it mentality where you're like, well, if we don't practice, then when we lose, we have the best excuse we can have. It was like, hey, didn't try. You know, that that's sort of the Twisted Minds mentality going into the Swiss stage. So it, I, I, it gives you a little bit of false confidence when you play with that mentality of like, hey, you know, we're just for fun, you know, don't take it too seriously. It gives you that ability to sort of not stress about the these big match day games but you know, potentially it could come back to haunt them because there's a lot of nuance that comes with these metas uh especially with the orisa they look very solid right now obviously very skilled players but as we move over to pata iso you'd have to assume both teams are going to go back to the winston maybe we'll see something a little different with the diva but there's so much higher ground you probably aren't going to be playing the orisa yeah, there's a fair amount of D.Va uh, recently. Obviously, Hawk loves to play the D.Va when he can. So, yeah, maybe we'll see a little bit of that. But probably the Winston, I'd imagine. Esperanza, of course, is the third map in this series. And Suravasa, and then Rialto, by the looks of it, um, in the yeah. top right. So, yeah, as we jump into map number two, the team with no scrims versus Ataraxia. <laughs> I do. I do love it. Peace and love versus Ataraxia. Ataraxia taking the first map, though. And I will remind you, of course, when they did face up against in Swiss stage, it was Peace and Love taking the series two and one. So there's been a lot of revenge matches over the last couple of days, in fact. Like, a lot of teams meeting each other in Swiss stage at some point. And we'll see if uh, Ataraxia can beat them out this time around. That, that was one of the cool things about the Swiss stage and stage two compared to the Swiss stage and stage one. In stage one, because, you know, it was new, face it, everything was just very new. There was a lot of just like wonky seeding, but you saw it in stage two. You saw more of the best teams facing each other and good matchups to really determine, hey, who really should be the number one seed? Who should get to the top level? I think we yes. talked about it yesterday. SSG beat 11 of the top 16 teams to get that number one seed. So it's you're really seeing a better seeding overall as we move into these group stages so it's been cool to be able to see as you said these salty runbacks by teams that are very solid and evenly matched all right shacks so it's what you got quick grapple on 
See if they can land a quick headshot. Against the Brig and whatnot, there's almost no way. Ooh, that was close. That was very close, though. All right, there it comes. Okay, with the Brig as well. Not too surprising on this map, on this point at least. It's just so easy to get your backline into a defensible. Ooh, way too aggressive by Eric Ek. Ooh. Uh, do trade back. Shaq's getting a sick one clip onto the uh, Diana. MCD trade getting Lauren as well. So if they just slow things down a little bit, wait for Eric Ek to get back. Deal with the sta uh, sta uh, stragglers is the word I was going they for. They don't even Words need to do that. Hard. Yeah, that's a, that should be a pretty easy first cap. I mean, is there going to be a touch? They're in position to do so. I can see Psycho. They're okay. outline. Uh, yeah, okay. Psycho is in. They do get the touch. 66% 66 in building. Ice is also going to jump in the front line. Just popping down that bubble so his supports can get into a line of sight of him. But the problem is now, where's the CDs? And where's your brig? Well, nowhere to be found. Shax with a nice assassination kill. And that should be the point. Oh, they're going to go for a retouch. I'm assuming just burn extra time here. Although, killing fire is always a good thing. But the problem is, MCD, Gala, they're alive and they're on high ground. And uh, good luck. I mean, maybe a duplication would be uh, the difference maker here. But with Psycho going down, that will be the points. You can just see the amount of damage that's going on to both of these Winston players. It's so, you know, I feel bad for tank players in the, in this matchup because your job as a, as a Winston is like, everyone's like, I need you to take all the space, but also not die and deal with an Anna Brig who can sleep you and whip you and push you around. It's just, it's honestly a very precarious situation. That's what makes the best of the best. Oh, huge stick on Abik. But no Suzu's on the field as well. Shax has been a menace in this round so far. He has still got it. I hate to break it to everybody. Every Shax doubter, he's still got it. Who's a Shax doubter? Let me at him. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Some people on Twitter probably. Oh, fire ends up going down again. It's right in precarious position. With, oh, uh, the preemptive sleep from MCDs. He sees the dupe coming in. And an A-kill onto Psychotes as well. Where you have to deal with a second trace. How about that? It should be all good, though. There's a rally. Uh, that overhead is not armor anymore, but the overhealth is uh, good enough. Fire gets some revenge as Lauren went a little bit too deep there after the duplication. Peace and love. Uh, kind of crumbling. Four minutes to go for Adaraxia, and they're going to round this final corner 2.2. They need to be careful about losing any staggers here. You can see Adaraxia is going to try and go aggressive. Huge nade on a girl. Can good they boot. keep him alive? Yes, they can. Nah, no way. Rest in peace. Mega health pack taken, but MCD was not in LOS. Nice sleep. Ice taking a quick nap. That's a lot of damage. Oh my fi. Damage boost on the Echo. Insta killing a full HP Winston. I have never seen a health bar disappear so quickly. Yeah, you, you can tell they probably wanted to pop the primal in that situation, but I don't even think they got the opportunity. Oh, nice play by Psycho trading back onto Eric Ek. That should slow this push down, and yeah, Adaraxia are going to have to fall back. So Psycho keeping them in the fight, especially with Gala falling a little bit earlier. And those were a couple of big ults used by Adaraxia. The second point, you really need the defensive ultimates to be able to just sort of engage into your dive, and they don't have any of them left. Oh, fire getting Lauren. It's an Echo diff right there. All right, the Primal Rage is going to escort one of the supports back to support. MCD under a lot of trouble. Uh, Peace and Love really making it hurt now for the back line to step up through these streets. Fighters end up getting, uh, yeah, three kills in the final uh, couple of moments there. Shaq's coming up with a big kill too. Somehow, fight is still going. Double Tracer, free pulse. Oh, chasing. I mean, that's a free kill. Fight just gets, what, four, almost five there? Pulse bomb thrown out. Why not? You're going to uh, return to your original form in just a second. Is there anybody to touch? There isn't. Wow, Fi single-handedly carrying that fight. Lost their backline like incredibly early, so it just felt like the fight was going to be lost. But somehow Fi finds a way. Is actually going to switch off of the Echo over to the Cassidy. I like this switch. You're indoors. High ground isn't as much of a thing, uh, at least being able to be used. So just play on the cart. Be a threat that's going to make it harder for Ice to play the game. Duplication and the post bomb for peace and love. Oh, the sleep and the tank anti. Experience. Yep, tank moment. You get slept, anti'd, and then pulse bombed as you sleep. Rest in peace. Somehow, Adaraxia keep trading back. Yes, they even if they're losing one player, they're trading back, they're getting punishes. And it feels like Peace and Love are just never able to sort of take advantage oh. of their advantages. And now Shax gets Euler as well. And now it's 5v4. God, Shax. God damn. There's the Nano Boost, but the Winston's already half HP and no Primal Rage as well if he wants to try and prolong this fight. 
Lauren is pretty low, and you can see that Ice has to get out of there very fast. Receives a nade from the Ana too, just to keep them up. Even with the DPS passive, that's gonna help heal the Winston up to full. But he wasn't even able to earn Primal Rage, like very little damage was done. Early rally pot from Gala too. Very early rally. Eric Hank does end up getting stepped in the back line, and here's the duplication. Lauren finding one, but one's good enough. Finding two, in fact. DPS Primal Rage mechanics are going to be in full effect in a couple of percentage points, but not sure you're going to Everyone see too much of that one. Everybody close your eyes, don't look. There's a uh, Eric Hank not really getting much value from the Primal themselves. I think using it to just stay alive, that would have been ill-advised, but they do manage to trade back onto Psycho, so they're pushing the car, but this is the I most mean, precarious position to take because look at how defensive their backline can play. The spawn doors are so close for peace and love. So Ataraxia is going to get dope, but they're actually going to counter that big stick by Psycho, though. Massive stick, yeah. Filled with confidence. Were peace and love. They had a lot of ults, but they burned all of them at once, pretty much. They used that primal and the rally and the pulse. They have nothing left. Zero. I mean, they're gonna get nano halfway through the fight. You'd imagine, unless Shax has got a, a pulse bomb with the beak's name on it. But leave the pulse supports alone for just a second, Shax. <laughs> I feel like every time Shax has a pulse bomb, he's just been sticking so consistently, and he's gonna have a pretty free flank here. Well, actually, just gonna go for the C9. Look, Try and just make sure the car continues to move. Make it uh, continue it to be a threat that they have to keep dealing with. But MCD is going to lose his life. And now Ice is going very aggressive. MCD just spawning in. Carla, Sagarin. It feels like uh, Tracian needed to retreat there quicker, a lot quicker. Yeah. You're Sagarin yourself. And now you're putting yourself in a final fight where maybe you could have had a, a couple of fights at least. One minute, 15 seconds to go, and yep, there's a Beaks Nano. So they got something for this fight. Same with Lauren, too, in fact, uh, with the duplication. Yeah, the, the issue you have to deal with is that Ice is going to be able to get such a free dive. You pair that with the Nano Boost as well. It's just going to cleave so much damage. So Ataraxia can't really stack up, and that's why you see them playing a little bit slower. They don't want to move too far forward. They want to bait Ice into the fight before they all start grouping up, and in goes the Nano. Oh, yeah, Still just slowly marching towards the back line. Looks like I'm watching a slow-mo Winston. Normally, they're just jumping around, but it's just a WM1. I see does end up getting slept. Duplication came out for Lauren as well. 30 seconds to go. Anoraxia against the ropes with a nano boost with a primal. Rally. They have the, ul uh, the ults, and they have the tools right now. Gala needs to get up to this rally. Good nade. Really huge good nade, nade for MCD. You know, just way too far up. That's a big oh, pulse bomb. I mean, a, a big lot of sticky bombs. MCD gets an assassinated, but still managed to get the nano out, so Gala survives to tell the tale. That uh, rally, that oh, overhill, so just stack back. it up. But it has moved a fair fight. far back as well, so potentially here, Peace and Love can come back. Psycho's going to at least be able to touch, and has a pulse bomb. Eric X in the back line trying to prime with the supports, but they do a jo good job of keeping each other alive, so there's no no one pick to be able to deal with this. Shax falls, the person who has One more touch, one more touch. Oh, there's no touch. Shax ended up going down to a whip shot there. You can see in the kill feed, and this primal rage just proving a little bit more uh, tough for Adaraxia to deal with than they imagined. I don't know if it felt like Ataraxia were looking for a flanker or something, but it didn't feel like they were playing aggressively enough to be able to punish that backline. If they had all followed in with Erekek into that small room, punished the backline, and then regrouped on the card, it might have been a better situation. But instead, what happens is Erekek goes in alone with the Primal, unable to kill either of the supports because they're able to help each other. And then from there, Ataraxia just didn't really have any tools left to be able to end up closing the map. So great hold by Peace of Love. They had about four minutes on that third point, three minutes on that third point points so are able to stabilize but now it's peace and love's opportunity how are they going to get through this first and second points which can be incredibly precarious yeah they're pretty much running it down on second that being Adaraxia. curious to see if peace and love are going to play the honor brig on attack a lot of teams opt to not play the honor brig on the attack right. because it's as you saw for Adaraxia, it can be very difficult for them to move forward step into step into an effective range without just getting dove on time and time again so if you're on the attacking team with the lucio kiriko everybody can play aggressive you don't need to defend anybody it's just full out aggression be able to sort of punish the opposition before they can get value of the extra healing of the ana and the brig yeah, Ana's just so tough to play right now in the current meta. It's like only sp for specific points. And uh, I feel like you have to have it with a break too. You cannot have it with a Lucio. You need the extra defensive tools for the Ana. Otherwise, she just gets a blown up. 
Anywhere where there's a lot of flanks where a Tracer can get onto the back line, it's just been very difficult. Oh, on this uh, first attack, let's get a quick listen in. I'm going for Kree, I'm on Kree, I'm on Kree. Go with Break, 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 don't touch. Uh, Chris, don't touch. Chris, don't touch. I'm sleeping. Out. My, 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 my. Creep on the mine. Creep on the mine. No re, no re. Shoot, 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 shoot. Target, target, oh, target, 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 target. Shoot, 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 He's just too clutch, man. It felt like they had it, yeah. I mean, they were trying to shoot the tray, and then you could hear halfway through the comms, it was like, targets. Like, we need to call yeah. somebody. Someone needs to die. Everybody's got to shout one name, and then we'll look at them. It's one of those situations where they had a plan, right? They want to stop the doors. They were trying to stop people from touching. But as soon as they touched, they all of a sudden lost targets, and people got a little confused of, like, who we need to punish. And as soon as that distraction comes in, they got punished for it, and Shaxx just rips through the rest of their team. So they do get two ticks on the board, and ultimates are coming up. Let's see if they can get another effective dive. They're on the brig with the Good rally. Luck. Maybe, maybe they're going to be able to fight into this with the rally health going out. Yeah, I'm not sure. Even this primal rage, dislodging the rally somewhat, but dislodging them back to the rest of the team. <laughs> so everybody's getting even more over health. Nice doesn't end up going down on the Winston, and Fi just hides behind the brig shield, hits the high noon. Abby all she wrote. Anoraxia cleaning up on this first point, still with only two ticks. Peace and love now. Have more fights in them. They got one minute and 40 seconds to go, and it's actually a switch up at the back line. Break Ana now. Yeah, once you've used those two ultimates, I think yeah, you recognize you're not going to get those ultimates up again. Just switch. You can potentially get more value from the Break Ana. Oh, you can see Look at some aggressive MC play from MCD. MCD. Where is MCD going? He's straight to the back line. They do it. Okay, he just fades oh a one. peek. Sure. <laughs> what is MCD doing? I mean, they all trade their supports, but duplication now available. I mean, Shaq has to go absolutely uh, bananas here to try and find a, a fight win because they only need 33%. Shaq's is back on the point. Insta-killed. Okay, MCD, we need to talk, buddy. Okay, no, okay, so let me defend my boy MCD for okay. just, uh, just a little bit, okay? So obviously they didn't have many ultimates to, to speak for, so they felt like they needed to do something different. Maybe too much different. Maybe they could have been, you know, they could have met somewhere in the middle of that, but unfortunately it doesn't work out. Peace and love trade back their back lines effectively, and they ended up getting the first point, but that was a lot of time off the cap. Three minutes remaining for Peace and love to get through this second point. Yeah, I mean, you take that, I suppose. That is like such the Rambo Ana moment. I'm just going to run into the back line, nade somebody, and then just win a duel, and then uh, we can play. <laughs> surely, Yo, surely. I got my one in chat, and then uh, hopefully yeah, exactly. the team clutches up. Clueless. <laughs> nice one, the recall there by Shax. Oh, dice with death. Six HP, doesn't it, the recall? Oh, my God. Nerves are still calling him Superman. I don't actually do end up losing their Winston. Yeah, and that's good. That's going to force them to back up, but they should still have this positioning in a good spot. Lots of ultimates coming up. Adoraxia should have five for this fight. It's going to be a big thing about not over ulting in this fight. Shaq's pulse bomb goes wide, not, isn't going to find anything. Any help us? Maybe they engage with the nano next. Well, there you go. All right, Justin. Oh! See ya. CD. Nice name. It's my favorite. Uh... My favorite way to get a kill on Ana is just lobbing the nade in some of that super low around the corner and they don't even see you. Yeah. They just explode in a mist of purple. Oof. Rally coming out from Gala to defend this high ground. Very Trying good. to push everybody back, yeah. Psycho is just kind of rolling the back line right now, but Shax is perma checking Psycho. It feels like Shax is doing like 17 jobs at once in this economy, you kind of have to. And like, with Shax not only kind of checking Psycho and then also kind of rolling the Winston, applying that DPS passive like permanently onto the Winston, so their supports are also really struggling to keep him up. 
Ouch, Ash is doing a very good job and earned himself another pulse bomb too. Oh, that's and just more time off the clock late by getting Lauren, Lauren as well. Dead. And I, I really like your point about Shax. Like, I think that's your job as a tracer here on this defense. Your job is to control the flanks. And if they're not going to control the flanks, all of a sudden you have a free direction into the back line. So just keep everyone under wraps because that's going to enable your back line to just sit in the, uh, sit in the back and just do whatever they have to. Because if your back line's free, you're likely going to win the game. Just saw MCD throw that oh, nade. They whip. Uh, oh, nice whip. Yeah, I think Ice just kind of wanted to get out there. It's all against the Ida without a nade. Nano boost thrown out by MCD. Oh, and it's on fire. He's in a perfect position to use it, but that bubble is going to prove quite tough to actually burn through. And it's actually a beat that takes him down. Nano not finding any purchase there. Psycho lands a post onto MCD. Shaq still got one in his back pocket, throws it out. Doesn't manage to get the Lucio. Actually sticks the shield of all things. This Primal Rage isn't going to last too long with four players looking at you. And there you go. There's the cat for peace and love. 85, we'll call it 86 meters to go now. And Araxia still burn a lot of time off the time bank with only two minutes. Peace and love. It's going to be a tough battle onto this third point. I kind of wish we didn't see Eric Ek and Shaxx use those two ultimates at the very end to try and turn things around because now they have nothing in the tank. Fortunately, Fi does find Lauren, which is going to slow things down. And now they can do this close spawn hold uh, through this door, force them to run through this choke. So the ultimate differential might not be a big issue. Fi's holding so close as well. You see Carlos kind of hanging around. Shaxx ends up going down to Psycho of all people. They're going to be able to back off. They know Carla and Fi are off on this uh, little flank here. That bubble's going to stop a lot of that healing, but somehow Fi gets away. Oh, great Sound barrier to keep them in this fight. Keep Ice up. And Abik ends up using his uh, Suzu to save himself, but ends up uh, paying for it. And the problem is now, I mean, it was a good beat, Scott, to keep them in the fight. But because it was so prolonged and MCD was so far away, there was no pressure on MCD to use an aid on himself. And you, you can play pretty free. And then Carla had the rally for backup. So no big sound barrier available for this fight. Peace Love up to uh, down to one minute now in their time bank. Yeah, and they, that cost them their sound barrier. Huge ultimate. Big nade by MCD onto the back line. Shouldn't result in anything. Looks like a Beacon Eula just sort of going to stay alive, but Psycho getting the better of Shaxx once again. They wait out this rally, wait out this health. They should be in a good spot, but Lauren falls early again, unable to keep him alive. Maybe that's the issue of not playing the Iron Brig. They just don't have as many resources to put into Lauren and keep him alive. Really tough, especially when uh, Eric Hank has been diving in so aggressively too, using that bubble to split off a lot of the heals coming out from her beak. I mean, okay, her beak, they've got Rush. They've got Primal One Piece Love, they've got Psycho's Pulse, like, very winnable here. But the problem is, this nano Nay combo has just been the bread and butter of Adaraxia right now. If they try and it's cross it... it up. Yeah, okay, Nay goes in. Does it end up landing? Oh, I like it. And here comes the TP into the back line. Oh, but beautiful sleep. The Primal Rage is going to be hidden. A big stick on the Ice Spray, it doesn't matter. Ice ends up going down to the Pulse Swarm. They do end up training, but the spawns are just so good for Adaraxia. And they can keep this Primal Rager flowing too. Make sure the Peace of Love can't push this payload right around, around this final corner. Good a bit of stall tactics here as Shaq ends up going down to the overclock. Lauren now taking the game into their own hands as Peace of Love na uh, narrowly winning that fight. That golden box of victory is only a couple of meters away from them. And with Fi and Gala, the only ones to touch, it'll be Peace and Love taking the next map and tying the series up. What a piece. Wow, sick play by Peace and Love. I love the decision, knowing that the Winston is going to want to get nanoed and dive into your backline, and they have Primal just go, we're just not going to have a backline. We're just going to accept and play hyper aggressive. Winston jumps in, you follow through with your Kiriko, the rush goes aggressive, and then once you've traded the backline away from Ataraxia, they don't have the healing, sustainability, stay on the point. And that's a great play by Peace and Love to close out Paradiso. Yeah, I mean, that's the benefit of having the Kiriko as well. Like, okay, we I, well, you could just TP out. I could just TP to uh, our front line. And then they, they did exactly that. They hit the rush. And I thought our Primer Rage is pretty over, right? Because MCD is kind of caught. The Brig was like in between MCD and the Primer Raging Winston, which means you're still getting Inspire healing and packs. But yeah. still end up getting focused down. And with the Brig falling too, I mean, MCD is, is as good as gone. And... It was a slow but sure, like, uh, slow bleed out. And as soon as you lose your Winston, you've got so much less to kind of hold on to the payload with as well. Let's have a listen to the winning comms, though, at the very final few moments of that round from Peace and Love. Creek, 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 creek,
Don't let me die. 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 And it's one of those things that, uh, you know, everyone, that you, you could hear it in the comms, especially in that first one that you heard, where they were like, it's that disappointing moment where you kind of know you've lost the fight when everything starts to evolve. Right. And that's why they're getting very loud at that final moment, because they know and recognize these are the things that need to be cleared up. We need to know what we're doing and getting on the same page. And that's why Overwatch communication is hectic, because Overwatch is a hectic game. So yeah. it's it's cool to be able to see these players and these teams sort of really coordinating in the heat of the moment at a, at a, at a high level. Yeah, it's really nice. Really cool to see. I, love, I do love listening. It's always, uh, it's always interesting to see how, or like, who's speaking and the different style of comms as well. That sleep is so nice for MCD. You're that locked into that animation, um, obviously with the duplication. So yeah, MCD showing the veteran status there on the Ana. Definitely his best hero too, the Ana. So I'm pretty sure he's very happy at uh, running that pick. Feels like yeah. most flex supports, like their best hero is Ana. Like you know what I mean? A lot of old school flex supports, at least. It's just a fun hero to play, you know, like I think yeah, Arna nice. overall just it kind of does it all. But you actually saw the limitations of the Arna Brig on this map at like full display. The Lucio Kiriko works for a great time. This was the MC oh my aggressive God. play. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I, I, I understood what they were trying to do and you kind of outlined it perfectly. It was like, OK, so if we go super fast here, we can kill the Arna and we can force them into a position where we can maybe get them in last fight. And that's just sad. That is <laughs> sound barrier Suzu. Yeah, nothing you can do against that, even if you're high nooning. But um, I mean, yeah, you get traded back there. So it actually, it, I right. like the idea for Iron Beak, but the fact that a beak ended up dying for that play ended up costing them in, in, in a pretty big way. So look at the map stats, pretty similar for the most part. The only real big difference was in the mitigation, which is surprising because both teams are playing Winston. So just more value coming out of the Ataraxia bubbles. Yeah, and I suppose... Well, or maybe yeah. the Brig? I, uh, I, I was thinking the brig, the brig, right? Yeah, that yeah. would make most sense to me, the Brig being a lot of mitigation there. But yeah, regardless, peace and love. End up taking the map number two. Ataraxia, though. They chose uh, Esperanza here. So we're going into our third map. And I'm hearing now we're seeing a roster swap coming through for Ataraxia. So dollar in, MCD out. So this is guaranteed, like, we're playing Lucio here. Yeah, that, ha that has to mean they're playing Lucio. It, what that means for the flex support, that, that raises some question. Maybe this is, you know, they, they want to play the Kiriko um, and Dollar's more comfortable. Well, we'll have to see uh, exactly what they're going to do with this one. I think we, we will see just like faster compositions. Both teams seem to like playing the dive. And I think Esperanza overall is very conducive to being able to play that dive. So excited to see how this is gonna go. But interestingly enough, uh, this match so far is following the Swiss stage match that they had as well. Ataraxi won the first map when they played it. Then um, Peace and Love won the second map, ended up winning the third map and closing out the series. So let's see if we see similarities continue to go or if teams are gonna start evolving and moving on. Maybe this substitution by Ataraxia is them accepting that, hey, maybe something needs to change. Yeah, it would, it would make sense, though, to have MCD in on the second map if you're going to play the Ana. And then yeah. the map's proceeding. I can't imagine we're going to see MCD again just because we're going on to Flashpoint next. So worth keeping in mind. Guaranteed to get a Flashpoint map, of course. Both teams being one and one now. Roll out the gates. No real surprises. Only a small change hit. Fataraxia going with a BAP. No Kiri. And the Cassidy, no Sojin. It's interesting seeing how EU likes to play. They do like playing this sort of brawlier style in Esperanza, very different to what you see, you know, in the Korean region, for example. They like to play these maps very fast. While I feel like almost in, you know, and the West as well in North America, I think people like to play slow, play very linear, and just sort of play around your own cooldowns and try and win that even matchup. Yeah, the bat versus carry is interesting too. I, uh, I do really like playing BAP right now personally, but the carry just offers a lot, especially against these Tracers. We saw we saw Slay yesterday specifically yeah. just kind of dominate Tracers, just denying every Pulse Bomb imaginable. So 
With the Batiste, you do get the Immortality Field, which is good, but the Suzu just seems so much better because you're not taking any damage when you're... Uh, I, would, I would also say the Batiste provides more consistent damage, right? You can shoot the Eraser right. a lot more, you can pump out a lot of things, the window can be useful, but the one weakness that I think you get from the Batiste is Batiste is just a lot more exploitable. If, if the Batiste ends up out of position, that's a quick beat coming out from Dollar, actually. They're going to go in with it as well. Doesn't my Lauren. Peace and love were ready for how quickly that sound barrier is. You was only at 67% old charge, so maybe just a lot of great healing and boost to really boost the numbers. Bit of damage as well, and that's going to give him the first fight. Jeez, that very rare do you see a beat being used first in the in the first fight. <laughs> I was ridiculous. That must have been like three amp amp it up healings back yeah. to back or something. That's absurdly quick. And that's a, that's a that's a style that a lot of players are starting to just realize maybe, hey, this is better instead of playing an aggressive Lucio and playing a Yo, heal bot again. Yeah, you just play the heal bot. You get really fast uh, sound barriers, you know, popularized by Violet in the Korean region. But very low for trying to go through that window. Yeah, that is a rough one for a beak. I know Suzu there was trying to save the team. Psycho just having to back up to the uh, mini now as uh, his main healer is down. I mean, there's not much really piece of... Peace and Love can do at this point. They're going to have to reset. And they use their own rush to... They've got a sound barrier in for this next fight, but Ataraxia are in such a good spot now. With Gala, with Gala and Fi, their ability to go back to the high ground and just have one person touch the point, uh, they might be able to get a free checkpoint here, but they are playing up, though. Yeah, they, they, they want to force cooldowns, make it difficult for them to step up. But what, what, keep an eye on it. Dollar almost has another sound barrier. About to lap Eula in sound barrier. It's just absolutely doing so much damage and healing. I mean, they're going to be able to get it now, especially with these uh, overclocks. Hitting some mean body shots. No insta-kills just yet. Don't stop Adaraxia from getting that checkpoint, though, Scott. Worth keeping in mind. A bit pretty much right on it. It's probably, like, what, less than a meter to go. Dol no goes for the second one before we see Eula. Eula does Eula's like, what? How has he got another beat, bro? He's like, this guy cheating for sure. Shaq's in the back line. Just peppering down ice on the Orisa. He's going to have to come up big here, especially with a fight down. It's all on Shaxx now. The solo DPS for Ataraxia in this engagement. But with Eula dead and a beak also just stranded, just isolated alone. This is not close so far, Scott. Peace and Love are just getting torn to shreds. It feels like Peace and Love are just completely out of the tempo right now. It feels like Ataraxia are being able to do exactly what they want. They're playing fast around their situation. They're playing around the Bapity, uh, the Bap and the Cassidy. The Bapity. The Bapity. The Bapity. The Bapity. The high ground through the window right now is doing a lot of damage. Forces them off and that will give the checkpoint as well. Adorax is just playing this perfectly. They really have a great understanding of how they want to play this composition. And Dollar has a great understanding of hitting the E key, bro. That guy is yeah, crazy. Look at his old charge. charge again. 50% old charge already. Rush on the high ground. Uh, Adoraxia says, uh, I'm good. I'm actually good, Chief. We're going to just back off. Just round that corner. So that rush got almost zero value. 62 meters and counting now. And like you said, flipping at that map. Rough spot for Peace and Love to be in. They got Terra Surge if they want to make some space with it or trying to catch out five. But oh, Psycho, Psycho pops his head around the corner looking for a pulse. Instantly get met with a bullet to the brain. And Shax holds on to that pulse bomb as well. And now oh, nice. Icy wants to try and get in there. The pulse bomb on top of the Orisa and goodbye. Fai and Carla doing it falling over, but Anoraxia is still in good stead. They do have that checkpoint. Just dying on the point is the, the priority now. Shaxx with the Pulse Bomb kill. Pretty nice, but it's going to get cleaned up in the end. Peace and Love still very much on the back foot here, Scott. With Adaraxia, I shit, most of them will get front sp forward spawn here. Yeah, all of them. So they're yeah. very much willing to fight on this high ground again. That's one of the huge advantages of getting this checkpoint early is just you can take more fights and you can just keep playing aggressive. So Peace and Love probably aren't even going to get that much meterage even from winning that team fight. So yeah, they're going to start falling back and Dollar with another sound barrier. But the person I'm keeping my eye on and Lauren was the person who opened it up in the last fight, getting the pick on the gala. I need to see more from these overclocks. The overclocks just haven't been offering enough so far. Oh, yeah, Dollar just doing a little look down, 360 spin there. There's another beat. Eula's like, how? <laughs> One man, Darasurge. Oh, takes a beak pretty low. There's the spear. Easy kill. 
Eric Haig, yeah, we still one man Terra Surge onto the Soja. He's like, I've got you, Chief. Oh, boom, comes in, <laughs> Suzu's, and then dies himself. <laughs> That's uh, very like, unlucky. Away. Your sacrifice <laughs> is appreciated. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but we lost the team fight. Oh, okay. My bad, guys. 64 meters now and counting for Adaraxia. They're going to be able to swing around this corner with a window and a high noon. Peace and Love are going to have a tough time getting through this. Yeah, the Bapity Ultimates are going to be really strong. They're going to be using crazy. The using the high noon. It's just going to be so much damage coming out. It's going to, Aixlom's going to have to be careful. Yula does have the sound barrier, but using a sound barrier against a window or a high noon just feels so terrible because it doesn't feel like it does anything for you. They can just disengage and then you accomplish nothing. Ooh. Oh, Lauren down. The Magne. Good pulse, even better lamp and fight, even gets the kill onto Psycho. And a pulse one coming out from Shax, but it don't matter. It doesn't matter. Atraxia just running away with this one. Peace and Love got zero answers to what Atraxia are bringing right now. I mean, I think it's just Fi. I mean, Dollar as well. Uh, also, 50% towards another sound barrier. And Lauren gets uh, rolled. Uh, nice little speed boost. And their understanding of the comp and the tempo as well is just it's second to none. This is just an absolute steamroll. And this is a composition that is being popularized by SSG. SSG love playing this way, uh, playing around the Baptiste, playing around the Cassidy, because it does give you the opportunity to make these kind of flanks, make these kind of plays with your Baph and your Cassidy just moving around. Right now, Peace and Love have no answer. Engaging with a rush, but another great disengage by Anoraxia. Ice has to be very careful about overextending here. They've got Terra Search. Oh, yes. Sees the window. Gets out of there ASAP. All right, that's one all down, but Dollar is again going to lap on this sound barrier, by the way. He's 10% away. Eula has the beat, hasn't used it in the last couple of fights. He's got, he's got a beat. He's got a beat. He's got another beat. He's going to use it instantly. That's kind of been his uh, prerogative when he gets these ultimates. Just use it, charge up another one. Surely they know Peace and Love have got a sound barrier as well. Or maybe Dollar's in, a, in his own there head. It is. He's waiting for it too. There's the sound barrier. Here after the terror surge ended up landing. So a lot of that damage just being absorbed by that overhealth. Good stick from Shax too. I mean, peace and love just getting absolutely trounced. Yeah, it's not close. They, 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 they really don't know what to do in this situation. They're trying to play fast. Like they're recognizing like, hey, we're just taking too much damage. We're giving them too many opportunities to get value out of their ultimates. But every time they try and engage and they play aggressively, Adorax is just ready for it, disengages. And then peace and love just feel like they're throwing ultimates to the win. And a little bit more time. They have the forward spawn. Shax is pushing, but Anoraxia, they don't want to go aggressive. They understand the advantages that they have. They're going to leave the BAP, the Cassidy, sitting on the high ground and say, peace and love. Good luck trying to fight into us again. I don't say this map is solved, Scott, but like this is all you're going to see in like pro play, right? It's just, if we get around that corner, we're happy just resetting, fight high ground. We don't have to fight on the bot ever, basically. And then they just flip the script. They flip the map completely. They just yeah. disengage and then Dollar the gets a random kill onto Lauren, who was trying to peek over the top with a with the overclock, Scott. I mean, okay. Peace and love. It's like playing tug of war with a fifth grader right now. Uh, Gala does end up going down, however. So they lost the majority of their heals. Pulse bomb in the hands of Psycho. Shouldn't need to use it, though. But still, almost 100 meters for Ataraxia uh, with a minute to go. Peace and love have the highest mountain to climb. Like, you're talking Sisyphus times, like, four, right? It's almost a vertical cliff. Because right now, Ataraxia, their ability to reset and have the forward spawn is permanently it's peace and love having to win what two or three fights maybe four or five to even get to the checkpoint yeah and they're only just now getting rid of the forwarded spawn but ataraxia they have four ultimates they getting have four up to five ultimates coming soon 38 seconds remaining if they're smart they're just going to sit on this high ground try and find a pick and then just drop five ultimates on peace and love and there's not much they're going to be able to do it they're going to go aggressive with the kitsune rush but into a high noon that's dangerous yeah oh you step into my domain with your rush? Absolutely not. So are they going to even be able to use it? No, Adoraxia just disengaged from that all completely and then use the window to stop and punish the over-aggressors from Peace and Love. I mean, Eric Hague also has a Terra Surge of his own, but it's actually Ice that ends up going down. Window damage too much for them to deal with. Seven seconds to go. There's the Terra Surge. A beacons are falling. There's the spear. There's the kill. Lauren oh, down. Is he going to do it? Just had another yeah, one in, bro. Number five. 100 meters. Adaraxia end up taking Esperanza with ease. Match point as well for them. Man, you're feeling so good right now if you're an Adaraxia fan. But peace and love, where you at? That was just not close. That was not reminiscent of the last two maps we just saw.
Yeah, not at all. And they, maybe that's an idea of like, they, Ataraxia has a really good idea of how they want to play with the, the Baptiste Cassidy when they're playing that Arista setup. And the maps just haven't been conducive for how they want to play the game. So now we go over to Esperanza. They're able to put Dollar in, get a billion sound barriers, and then play around that as well. That's difficult, especially considering Suravasa is the next map, right? This is another map where you can play that BAP uh, Arissa and it's going to be difficult. So if you're peace and love, you need to go to the drawing board in like five seconds and solve the problems and understand what's working. And I think one of the fundamental issues they had consistently throughout sort of, uh, sorry, Esperanza was their rushes and their overclocks getting no value. Every time they pull the trigger on those ultimates, there's a disengage. They need to find a way to force the positioning of um, Anoraxia, otherwise they're never going to get an opportunity to win these fights. Yeah, I can't really remember if I saw Lauren in the kill feed once, it, not even with overclock, right? They were just unable to get much stuff done uh, at all. And when I say in the kill feed, I mean not dying. I mean getting kills, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was just really rough. I mean, Ataraxia, yeah, they maybe need to go back to the drawing board, but Dollar's ability to charge these beats is kind of nuts. Like, this is the first beat of the fight uh, that we just saw in that previous clip. Like, that was so fast. They call him the Sound Barrier Specialist. Like, audio engineer looking uh, looking dude. It's crazy as well because Eula, I don't feel, I don't feel it was Eula also getting kind of outplayed with like, oh, sound barriers and stuff. It's just the pace that uh, Peace and Love were playing at was just nothing like Ataraxia at all. It was just way slower. So he didn't even really get a chance to use the beats. And it was all on um, the pace Ataraxia were kind of setting. Uh, it was just an out tempo match, I feel, in this, uh, in this map. And it, it it's a macro style, right? The, the way that right. they're playing around the Lucio healing, right? The, you can do this when you're playing the Baptiste and the Cassidy because everyone's sort of playing in a much more clumped unit. You're not doing as many flanks as you are with the Lucio, Kiriko, Sojin, right? Where you're sort of trying to hold these off angles, you're trying to get flank pressure. They're just playing as a big clump and they're just willing to just take that fight very slowly. And then when they oh, yeah. get those advantages to be able to go in, they go in and yeah. An eight difference in the KD under one KD for uh, Peace and Love. That really highlights yeah, how one side of that map was. I mean, look at the healing done. I think I don't think stats normally paint the entire picture in Overwatch. It they never normally do. But like the healing difference there is kind of nuts. Like yeah. a, a whole 10k more. Like that's ridiculous. And that's a lot of that is like amp healing too. I would I would love to see the actual uh, player stats. I'm sure we could get them at some point or even just like from the player pov. Um, but yeah, anyway, next map, Suravasa. It was, was Peace and Love's choice, but they, obviously there's not many choices with a Flashpoint as of yet. And both of the maps play somewhat similar. Suravasa, yeah. like you mentioned, Scott, probably going to see Ataraxia stick with Dollar in for the Lucio, since Suravasa being a Flashpoint map, you need the speed. Um, we'll see if they end up going for the Baptiste as well, because having the, the Bapity and the Lucio just kind of stacked on top of each other and then just uh, play these points is pretty pretty ridiculous especially on Suravasa where you can just hold these very far back um you can like hold up there's a lot of like high grounds a lot of uh, positions where you can just hold super far back you're not like perma fighting on the point on this map like you do on Junkertown so we'll have to end up uh, see what goes down obviously peace and love want to be able to get back into this one they need to send us to a map number Shucks. five but Ataraxia, it's their game to lose right now and yeah this is a bit of an interesting one Danit in Shax out Shax Perma playing Tracer. Tracer is his best hero, but Darnit comes in. Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of questions about this substitution because Shax was going nuclear on some of these points, just hitting huge pulse bombs, really diffing on that roll. So I wonder if there's something spicy to be added here with Darnit coming in, maybe a, a pocket pick. I, I, I'm curious because that went so well. I don't know if I would make that decision, but sometimes these players have already been predetermined of who's going to play in what maps in the series. This is what you scrim on. This is what you practice. So see what Ataraxia have up their sleeve by putting Darnet in. But on the other side for peace and love, I almost wonder if you go like, hey, we're not going to be able to solve this solution by playing the Arisa matchup. We don't want to mirror. What if they play a little bit faster? I don't understand what their limitations are as a team in terms of like, can they play an effective dive on a map like Suravasi? If not, can they play just something different? Throw a curveball at Ataraxia because if they just keep playing Ataraxia's game, you're going to get the same result. All right, let's load in. Ataraxia on map point now. And uh, it's worth keeping in mind too, they did face each other in Swiss stage. 
And it was Peace and Love that came out on top. A two to one victory there. And this being a first to three. God damn. That is, that is a cool looking crocodile. That was awesome. Do you see hey, the uh, Korean, contenders, that, you know? Korean contenders clip? Uh, not contenders, sorry. Korean uh, OWCS clip of uh, them laughing about the crocodile POV. No. <laughs> it, was, it was really good. I love the uh, Korean broadcast, actually. It's so funny. Yeah, that's funny. All right, let's have a look, though. Looks like peace and love. No real shocks here. Just wow. going with the Kiri. Going with the Lucio. But there's no Tracer. They're actually opting wow. for the Echo instead. And so they're playing a Darnit here instead of Shax, but this is the different flavor that we kind of expected would come out, and it's going to be the Sim. And this kind of is shades of what we got from Twisted Minds yesterday, right? They like playing around the Symmetra. They like being able to move their team as a whole in one direction, but because they're not playing the Malga, I, I, can't, I wonder if this sort of changes the way that they want to play it. Uh, let's see if Dana can find the value. Just like we talked about with Twisted Minds, the difficulty can be that you don't have a Tracer to be able to deal with the opposition tracer. Dolan's gonna fall early. And that should be first cap of peace and love. And now, yeah, Adoraxia needs to get out of this fight. Yeah, they need to die or just reset. And there you go. They choose death, or at least most of them do. Good first uh, good first pick on Dollar of all people too, which is uh, a little bit frustrating. Oh, darn it, goes down super late. Wow, that's not good. Yeah, and if you're not going to use the Symmetra Teleporter as quickly as they did, I, maybe they were trying to prepare for it before Dollar fell, but uh, you're, you're not really going to find value. Maybe they're just trying to poke with the right clicks of Symmetra, but you you can't argue that that would be better than a Tracer in this situation. Actually, interestingly enough, Peace and Love don't, aren't even playing a Tracer there, and they're playing the, uh, the Echo, which is a pretty solid choice as well. Your ability to just pump out damage. If anyone gets low, you can beam them down. Well, they TP past the Choke. I mean, they're... Oh, that's a lot of damage. The Symmetra also does a lot of work to the Orisa, but actually getting up to the Orisa face to face is pretty tough. Both rushes coming through from Abik and Gala. Actually, Ice stands up going down first here. And there we go. Okay, here's the turnaround. And this is where the Sim really shines. Yeah. You can put the Tyrus on the point, and then they have to walk into you, and you're in close range, so you can charge up to the tier three beam. Then you're good to go. But 95% for do. peace and love, and a lot of ults. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it is just one of those things that they're like, hey, we just want to play a spam comp, right? They're just like, we want to make it as difficult for them as possible to get through any choke that they try and walk through. They can stand on point, they can uh, they can just poke and prod. They also have the sim wall up right now, they have high noon. They have all the tools out of Raxia to be able to stop Peace and Love from coming in. Let's see how Peace and Love are going to try and enter into this fight. It's pretty difficult as the Arisa to sort of get in those positions. Wall goes up. It's a split wall, though. Psycho does end up going down to a turret of all things, and here comes the high noon. It's not like a frontwards-facing wall, like we've seen a lot of Twisted Minds, minds walls be. But it doesn't really matter, it seems, because they do end up winning that fight. Psycho going down to a random turret there was, I imagine, quite frustrating for Peace and Love, considering that copy can be such a valuable tool at taking the point. And Adaraxia, they're playing super far up, looking for picks, looking for anybody. They know Psycho is spawned first, so that's probably going to be the person to touch if they do even choose to. They're looking for it, but I think it'd be ill advised to try and get in here. Yeah, there you go. Point capped. All righty. Okay, now a rotation swiftly with the teleporters. Salaraxia, they did end up losing the point first. Managed to get almost a full 99 to 0 flip. Pretty nuts. And you can see how Darned wants to play with the Symmetra turrets. What they're doing is they're stacking all three in some random corner, and that's what ended up killing Psycho in the last fight. Psycho runs around the corner, doesn't realize there's three turrets, and that just does so much damage, and that can be difficult to deal with on the fly. So Peace and Love need to be careful and understand where these turrets are. Oh, Darned's been seen. What? Okay. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> oh, see you later. Little TP away. Psycho getting Ooh. kind of dueled out. Oh, can he get five? The little diff. Okay, there is the high noon, and there is the deletion of the copy. Oh, it's all good, though. It's distraction yeah. technique. Space created. Yeah, three people you distracted there. Enabled your team to win that frontwards duel, and there is the first cap on this point. Goes to peace and love again. Yeah, and that was just great play by Psycho. Psycho getting the duplicate on the cast. Yeah, able to live a surprisingly long amount of time. Just going to slow things down. Now Adaraxia backs against the wall once again. They're going to have to be the team to re-engage. You can see an aggressive stance for here from Peace and Love. Maybe trying to go for an aggressive Kitsune rush. Nice it TD. Rush onto the point as well. Carl is the first to fall, though. Same with Fire in quick succession. 
that TP play looks nice, but when a piece of love, uh, I wouldn't say they were ready for it there. It was a little bit of a shock, but they all managed to group up extremely quickly, back off as a unit, and then use a rush of their own. Pick off onto Gala is perfect. That'll be Adaraxia going for a reset again. Actually switching over to the, the Batiste now. I like this decision. I feel like with the way that they're playing, the Baptiste can make more sense. You, know, you can do a lot of AoE healing. You're essentially planning on clumping anyway. Grouping up. They're going to try and bust out of this small room. TP2 touched. Did they manage to get it? Yeah, they did. Soundbarrier comes in. Terra Search group everybody together. A little flip of the map here as the wall comes in for Adaraxia. Peace and love just getting off of the point almost immediately there, but they didn't lose anybody, so a quick re-engagement is available. A TP onto the high ground now. Psycho takes a lot of damage, almost ends up going down, but there's the flip once more. Gala goes down to the railgun as the sound barrier comes through. No way Adaraxi can fight into this one, but they're going to choose to, to try and hold on to this point. But still, Lawrence just holding on to that final charge, that overclock. Just nails Eric, and then at the end of the day, Adaraxia, they made these swift TP plays and with the wall, but that's so many ultimates to use. And then Lauren just matches him with the railgun. A fantastic re-engage there by Peace and Love. Just, uh, it was a, a flip into a flip into a flip into a flip. Just every rotating as a unit over and over again. It was Peace and Love that came out on top as they now rotate to this third point. Most importantly for me, the thing that is important for Peace and Love is Lauren's hitting shots, right? Like, that was the one thing we called out in Esperanza. Lauren just wasn't able to find value, just getting punished every time they pick their head. It's two fights in a row now that they've gotten the opening pick with a rail. So if Lauren can keep that up, that's going to be something that Ator Ataraxia don't really have tools to be able to deal with. They don't have a trace to be able to put on pressure. So now they just they just have to deal with it and hope that Lauren starts missing shots. High noon TP engage! Oh, that was close. Lauren again. Eyes on the side too. That's a good window. I really like the windows coming out from Adaraxia. And a lot of good ones in the last map. There's their copy, Terra Surge. Psycho has to get out of there. His copy's not finding a crazy amount of value in terms of kills, but creating a lot of space, and that is for certain. Especially if you copy the Orisa. Normally, the, co the copies, the best targets, are things that have a lot of survivability tools. Especially if you're copying tanks, and Orisa is definitely one of them. Abik uses the rush at the end there, and Adaraxia just like, okay, you can have the point to begin with, but just re-engage in the same position. Peace and Love kind of getting caught with their pants down, trying to rotate onto the high ground, but they've given up so much position on the point. Oh, what a terror surge. Ends up getting uh, deleted, though. That was a big one. Ended up uh, hitting that fortify before they went in with the terror surge. Helped uh, get into position with that speed boost, but... Problem is with terror surging five people, they all kind of just look at you and you die. Oh, that was close. All right, very close to dying. Yeah, Peace and Love, I don't think realizing, I think they thought Adaraxia was going to be rotating around the right side, but ended up getting caught. Had to use Ultimus to try and offset that uh, positional weakness. And I'm losing it now. Another wall coming up soon. Window for Gala. Peace and Love onto the point. Lauren with the overclock. I've been seeing their praises on this map. Let's see if we can do it again. Well, how about you deal with one of these, huh? A little spear spin and then a golden Orisa for you. It, what, what can you, like, the, the problem with that overclock is what can you expect? Are you just hoping people are going to peek you and dis disrespect you when you pop yes. that overclock? It doesn't feel like Peace and Love are playing around and putting Lauren in a position to succeed with these overclocks. And now more and more percentage goes up for Adaraxia. 79%, 80%, one last team fight. We know the high ground too. And look at this. Fire using that TP. Oh, he meets Psycho. Doesn't die to the nade though, luckily. There is the TP back on to the opposite high ground. Dude, I love this so much. Fire's using that TP. Oh, and they don't even touch either. Oh, Adaraxia capped the point. Fi is, he's just, t he's like he's playing Portal 3, bro. Like, he's just TPing all over the place. So you can't even track the guy. All right, Adaraxia now on map point, match point. One more, and they will take the series away from peace and love. And that feels so bad if you're peace and love. They use the sound barrier and the duplicate to get into the fight to touch in overtime, but no one was able to get onto the point, so those ultimates just go by the wayside. Oh, fight's getting very aggressive. It's no issue, but they do have to use the lamp, so that might result in slowing down for Adaraxia. Nope, they're just going more aggressive. It's the cap once again. Peace and love. This is the third time in a row they've capped first, or fourth time in a row, I think. They've capped first. And they're actually more than happy to fight on the back foot, it seems. Oh, there's the Orisa in the uh, in the rush. Pretty scary prospect. No way Adaraxia want to fight this, so they end up backing off pretty quickly. Yeah, great play with the rush. Like, uh, their rushes have gotten uh, swing value so far in this series. Uh, sometimes. Oh, okay. Oh. I mean, 
Magnet. Erekek decided to okay. Terra Surge and spawn. That would have been sick. 5k, put it on front page of Reddit. Wow, like, that would well have been. would you get a 5k? What, when would that ever happen? If everybody happen? used mouses and keyboards, disconnect at the same time. I almost thought Erekek was going to do the classic, like, oops, I accidentally used my ultimate in a bad spot. It's okay, I was swapping heroes anyway. Yeah, and then, like, switch to a different hero for no reason. <laughs> Well, it's they did. Of it, just accept uh, the battle ultimate. Hey, really? you know, I can't speak. You know, we've all had our battle ultimates in the past. So true. Yeah, two of them. So true. Okay, well, it didn't have to bring that up. <laughs> As we go on to this next one, overclock beat windows. Oh, okay. They use a lot at the same time, but it stops uh, Lauren from getting a nice angle. 99% for peace and love. This point has been really drawn out of Ataraxia. They do find the flip there, but that's just peace and love just deciding they can go again as five. Same kind of thing has happened in the last couple of uh, couple of points here. Damn it, so close to the wall. Peace and love have got so many ultimates. Surely, surely they didn't lose this one. There's the sound barrier. Peace and love time. just dealing with this teleporter easily. Perfectly designed sound barrier indeed. And Dollar just isolated, just taken down eventually. And yeah, Peace and Love just ult dumping in that fight. Not quite though, I'd say. Actually, I'll take that back. Psycho at least saving that duplication for this next point. And here we go. Final round of uh, this flashpoint. Anoraxia still need that one to not eliminate Peace and Love. This is the uh, winner's match, of course. The winner here will advance on to the main event. Peace and Love want to make sure they go to a map number five. So they got to win this next point. Yeah. No, peace and love. They have good ultimates here as well. They're going to get to the point. Once again, they have the rush. They catch out Araxia off guard with this rush, yeah. They're going to try and get the pick onto Arakek. Wall goes down to give him a little bit of protection. Only a little bit, though. It's kind of split fairly awkwardly. You can see them all, like, grouped up in this corner. Dan, it didn't stand a chance. Ooh. Nice little high noon, but a uh, little bit of a spear there from Psycho. The duplication on the Arissa. Once again, peace and love. Very easy... Uh, first fights on these points they always cap the point first it's whether they can hold it on to them is the question peace and love they're doing up duping there so yeah again not all dumping in that last fight or at least not fully just enable them to capture that point first feels like peace and love is doing a much better job of catching out of oh wow that's a great disengage by gala the fact that they were able to live <laughs> the five players running them down but Peace and Love are doing a much better job of forcing Anoraxia to fight on their terms. They're using the rushes at the right times, the overclocks are a little bit better, and that's why their old cycling just feels a lot easier, and it just doesn't feel like they're just getting completely dismantled with the teleporters and the movement from Anoraxia. So, Terra Surge up for uh, Aerokek, they have a window. They're actually going to flank all the way around to Peace and Love's side, drop the window, maybe try and catch them with some positioning stuff. Oh no. That was uh, Ice for the moment there, playing Doorkeeper. Playing the bouncer on the point, but they paid their fee. They get entrance now. Anoraxia do end up capping. 76% still still in one fight territory-ish, right, for peace and love. But it only cost them a window, so that was a great play by Anoraxia. I feel like peace and love just weren't ready for that that long, long flank. Just a little bit too much damage going through that window. But no issues, peace and love. They only really need to win one more team fight, and they have the ultimates to do it. So far, every time they've used rushes in this map, it feels like they've been finding value. So if they can do that again, they should be able to close this map and take some map five. Very early Terraso. Oh, they needed Suzu, and they got it just in time. I hear the high noon going out, but I'm afraid Fi didn't find any targets. What an absolute roll on this fight. Peace and love are going to be able to cap the point. And now if they find any staggers here, Adaraxia are not going to have a chance to get back in here. And you can see, oh, dollar. It's going to go down. It's surely Peace and Love just taking this map. Scott, and going to a map number five. Yes, it is. Look at this. Duplication in the spawn. There's the point. There's the map. Map number five here for Peace and Love now. Pete, Peace and Love getting their mojo back, finding a little bit more form. We didn't see that on Esperanza. And then you have to question on the side of Ataraxia, were they finding enough value on the Symmetra to justify it? You can see the idea behind it on some of those points, the way that they're doing the TP plays, allowing their team to move around, but it just didn't feel like as soon as Peace and Love just wisened up to what they were doing and then just sort of forced their point, it wasn't really like they could do anything with the Symmetra. Symmetra just isn't very good in the neutral if you're not getting value out of the teleporter and the kit of her. Yeah. Rialto up next. That's got to be Shaxx coming back in, right? I mean, you can play the Sim, to be fair. Thinking about it, especially on, like, point one, you can, like, TP past these, all of these problematic chokes. Point two especially, you can just TP up to high ground, ignore yeah. the bridge completely. Like, there's a lot of places you can play the Sim, but do you think Shaxx is coming back in here for, uh, for the team? 
I would expect Shaxx to come back in. I think Tracer is really strong. There's just so many great flank angles, especially on the first point, right? You can play towards the uh, sort of the rivers and stuff like that. You can just always putting on pressure. But we do have some winning comms coming out from Peace and Love. Let's hear what we have to see. Chase, 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 Spit back. Yeah, just back. Hey, they're saying what we can't. You know, we yeah, appreciate so that. so true. <laughs> I love it as well at the end. I was like, please, please shoot the Doom. Please, I'm begging. Like, Most respectful Overwatch player. You know, I, I don't think I've ever heard a please yeah. in my comms in the past before. It's just please like, please. And, and please is just another level of like, guys, uh, just one time, bro. Just just one time, shoot the shoot Doom. Shoot the damn Doom. Yeah, good stuff there from Peace and Love at the very end. Went all the way to, all the way to a uh, round number five, or a point number five on Flashpoint. So we look at some highlights though as we roll into the next map in just a moment. And map number five, mind you. But yeah, Psycho on the Echo did a fair amount, especially like, you know, sometimes not getting kills, but distracting three people so your team can win. Yeah, W in the Echo book. And your the ability to copy into someone like a Cassidy is great, but sometimes it's Orissa and you can survive a heck of a lot of time on the Orissa too. And dealing with two Orissas, I mean, dealing with one is annoying, right? But dealing with two is just, oh, please end me. <laughs> like, Wait, you're saying you don't want to go back to 6v6, no roll queue? Wait, wait, I've, I've been reading the internet recently, Jack, and that's what I've been <laughs> That's, that's facts. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to have five Orissas and then one Lucia. <laughs> yeah. And that'd be crazy. We'll go back to the good old days of 2016, where, where, when times were different. But yeah, I know, I, I have to give huge credit to Peace and Love. You know, I talked about they needed to go back to the drawing board, and it feels like they did in a big way, and a part of that is the Psycho Echo, really sort of changing things up. Feels like they're just completely free to move around the map, getting high value from these duplicates time and time again just catching you know Atraxia just a little off guard and as we go on a Rialto you know, everything's up in the air what do, what do both teams do do we see Shaxx come back into the lineup do you keep playing the Echo can you play the Echo if there's a Tracer on the field there's a lot of mind games that go in from map to map yeah I do it Every single time I see Danad in, I'm like, man, just reminds me of Dan when he's played Doomfist. No, Doomfist for London, uh, not London Spitfire, British Hurricane back in the day. Yeah, the good old days. There's the uh, KDs on the map. And, uh, quite different. Uh, if you kind of ignore the score on the map, which was three and two, uh, this would be like, oh, okay, it's just a stomp. But actually, it was unbelievably close. 7.2 to 1.3 KDA. Not really, and this is what I mean about Assassin Overwatch. Like, it doesn't really, it's not conducive to like how that map actually went, where Atraxia almost won it out. All right, Rialto next. That was a Banner Junker Town, a Banner Shambali Monastery, and uh, Ataraxia picking Rialto, and substitutions are in, and Shax is uh, replacing Danit. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is just straight up, okay. Playtime's over, we're going back to our Esperanza comp. You can play the Tracer, you can play the Baptiste, you can play the Cassidy very effectively on this map. You just move as a unit, force that damage, and then you're going to force Peace and Love to be the team that's going to have to adjust. So now let's see if Peace and Love are going to try and respond in a big way. But map five, we've got another banger series here, Jack. Some of these groups are getting very close. A banger. Oh yes, Group D. I was excited to cast Group D. Um, because oh yeah, is in that group as well, and I think that team is very, very fun to cast, very fun to uh, watch as well. Both of these teams, both Ataraxia and Peace and Love, in their opening matches, they just went 3-0, just straight 3-0s um, against Oh yeah, and then uh, Meta Boys. Not particularly close games. Um, I mean, Icavado was kind of close between um, Peace and Love and uh, Oh yeah, but the Esperanza that they played was not like Oh yeah got like three meters, and uh, Peace and Love 142. So. Yeah, not the closest there. Definitely the head honcho ponchos for this group. And with Ataraxia on the defense, looks like they're going to be running Fi on the Widow. I, I, I'm kind of curious to see how the Widowmaker is going to work here because all of a sudden you lose some of that damage. They're going to want to play that Winston. Obviously, you have the long sidelines, but peace and love, yeah, Wait, they're going to see this. Hang on. 
There are flags outside of Rialta as spawn. I play on. They're not there on load. Settings. No, I, I think it's what that's a that's a settings difference. Where if you play on lower settings, that there's a bunch of uh, assets and resources that just. I just don't work. see like the, the art in Overwatch is really beautiful and very stylized, right? There's a lot of art I just don't see because I play on low. <laughs> it's crazy. I played on low frames. Yeah, you do it for the fr exactly. I want a consistent 240 frames, bro, or 250 frames. So. It's going to be interesting. So Peace and Love, they're going to continue to play the Orisa, but they have the Psycho over to the Tracer so that they can put a little bit of pressure on the Widowmaker. There's going to be... There's going to need to be big things coming out of Fire. They, they, fire needs to find value, needs to find headshots, because otherwise you can see exactly what's going to happen here. Adaraxi is just consistently being pushed back. The Brawl style of the Orisa and the Kiriko just running at their team. If they don't have that extra damage from the Cassidy, there's just nothing they're going to be able to do. Eric uh -oh. falls, Tyler falls, <laughs> and that's a first point capture straight to Peace and Love. Well, they gave no remorse to Fi. That was rather rough for the Widowmaker there. You normally expect a little bit of a slower style, a little slower push with the Orisa, but they know Fi's on Widow, so they just wrap through the buildings and giving him no room to find a headshot. Really nice stuff so far from Peace and Love. And Fi, yes, yeah, okay. There's the switch. No Widow, straight to the cast. Yeah. And I... Now, oh, actually, Fire's going to go over to Echo, uh, indecisive of what they want to do on this map. It feels like Ataraxia were not ready for what Peace and Love were bringing out. And uh, this is a weird matchup. Playing the Winston versus the Orisa, the Winston can definitely work, but it requires a lot of coordination and a lot of structure. It's a lot easier for Peace and Love to win this matchup because they just need to play as a unit and deal with the threats that are going to be running at them, which is the Winston, which is the Echo. Oh, Fire's getting very long. Jeez, yeah, no, Fire's good. 61 HP. He's gonna, that passive is gonna kick in in just a moment. But Shax is already dead. Wow, Ataraxia. Not, uh, not standing up to peace and love right now. Maybe this Primal Rage is the difference maker, but they've got oh, the beat. Okay. They've got the rush. They've got every tool they pretty much need. Laser Sound Barrier for Dollar. But Eric is still super low. And Lauren is more than happy to just kind of dash on forward, knowing the Winston can't put down a bubble to dissuade them from using that overclock. I mean, Peace and Love are just running away with this. Four minutes on to second. Uh, like, who has died yet? Like, maybe one death on the side of uh, Peace and Love? Ataraxia is just getting steamrolled. I have very rarely seen five minutes and 30 seconds remaining going into the third point of Rialto of all maps. Like, this is just an absolute stomp right now from Peace and Love. And Adarax is going to accept that. They're going to move over to the Arisa themselves. Fire's going to stem the bleeding a little bit, taking down Psycho. That should at least create a little bit of a reset. But I, 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 I like this look from Adarax. I want to see them go back towards what they were doing more on Esperanza. They know they can win this Arisa matchup. They did on Esperanza. Just getting a little too cute with it. Oh, nice Suzu there, saving Fire's life. Hit a couple of headies there, but not guarantee them any kills just yet. This is really rough, Adaraxia. I mean, Peace and Love are just kind of working them like clay on a potter's wheel, bro. Like, they are just running around them, and they are forcing Ataraxia's positioning the whole time. Yeah, and they're, they're getting car progress while this is happening. Ataraxia falls back. Fire does end up getting the high noon, but... The rush comes out in response. A rush. Surely there's one kill. Oh no. And Lauren just takes the skies. Almost got that overclock. Eric Egg I mean, got die. Eric Egg That's got so bad. demolished. I mean, what more could you really say? Terror Surge comes in. Garlo with a nicely timed Suzu. But where's the swift step? Surely it's up in a second or so. Had to have been a couple of frames there where she could have pressed it, but unable to do so after that Terror Surge just smacked them down. Four minutes to go. And an overclock and a sound barrier. They're going to have to condemn with each other now. A later sound barrier coming in from Peace Love. Pulse Bomb for Shax. Looking for somebody. Looking for a, just a single kill. A single kill on the board will do. Lauren finds one and eventually they manage to hold firm with the help of Gala's rush. Peace and Love speed running through Rialto. That has got to be close. If they capped Scott, that's got to be a close to a record. But luckily, Ataraxia managed to hold them there. Three minutes and 30 seconds, though, on point three Rialto, where the payload was like five meters away. Yeesh. One fight to go for Peace and Love now to secure the point. Yeah, if you're Peace and Love, you don't need to stress here. You're, you're more than happy to take multiple fights. You can play a couple of dry fights, build up your ultimates. You can get Abik's uh, rush up before Gala gets another rush up as well. That'll be a window in time where you're just so much stronger than your opponent. See, just a lot of poking and prodding. Oh, uh, Eric, 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 Eric is just in no man's land. They weren't able to, like, escort them. They, they, live. Yeah, I suppose so. 
Post bomb available for just put a lot of work into, and pressure into uh, like trying to hold those angles, but then you eventually get pushed off, and now the rest of the piece of love they're just cleaning up. Aircake's back. Sorry guys, I got the touch. Oh no, I don't. I lied. There's the boot. Two minutes and 41 Damn. seconds for peace and love. Only losing a single fight in that whole attacker phase. Yeah, and that, that cost, it, it was when Adaraxia just had a bunch of ultimates advantage, so it wasn't even like they were playing dramatically better. And I, I want to see Adaraxia go back to what was working. I would like to see Gala come out in the Baptiste, Erekek starting the Orisa, and just sort of get a mental reset, because right now it feels like peace and love, they just have infinite confidence, and Adaraxia just don't have any answers. I want to see if Fire's going to pick up the Widow again. I hope not. I'll be honest, Jack. I, I really hope not. But I think Widowmaker, yes, there are situations where Widowmaker can be very strong on Rialto. You see a player that ranked a lot, right? But in a level of coordination where teams are very good about dealing with uh, flankers, working as a unit, not playing in sightlines, you can just be very difficult to find value. And as I said earlier, if you're not hitting the headshots, you're pretty much a completely useless member of the team. Yeah, Peace and Love didn't give him chance to even do any of that because of the speed they were playing at. All right, peace and love on the defense. It's very, it feels like a very strange series. I don't know if you're feeling this way as well. Where like, some maps are like, okay, this is a steamroll. It's like uh, Esperanza, it was a steamroll. And then it's like, oh, okay, no, take it back. It's actually super close. Oh, it's a steamroll. It feels like some teams just very much preferring certain game modes, game types, game uh, maps as well. Peace and love, zero, zero scrims, fun, mixed team. Full fun team. Full fun team. Nah, All right, we're gonna no see Widowmaker. What I was asking for, yeah, no Widowmaker. Fire on the Cassidy, Gala on the Baptiste. Go back to what was working. So yeah, let's see if they can uh, do what they did on Esperanza here on Rialto. They can just slowly take this high ground, play smart, play methodical. Fire signaling to the rest of their team that maybe they could just take the high ground away from Loren, but Loren does end up just skating away onto the high ground. Fine, not, not happy with that though, it seems. Loren oh, is getting, it's like, you, you guys did this to me, we do it to you. We're gonna hound your DPS down. Nice little wrap around there from Ataraxia. Has that a magnetic grenade actually hit Psycho of all people? Not sure how Fire managed to weave that one through, but he did. There's a little bit of cat and mouse right now. Everyone's just chasing each other. No one's been able to find a pick. We've kind of reset and defaulted back to where we were. Both of us is going in. Good spare. Really Bye. good spare. Suzu on the tracer. They got hit with a hinderer grenade again. Yeah, Fire gets taken out. They're just taking a lot of time off the bank as well, Scott. Worth keeping in mind. All these, like, big rotations. They're not getting a lot of space on the payload. And especially at this point, you need a fight win to really push this payload around the center square. And you can see Adorax is just trying to find anyone to isolate. They were looking for Lauren, they were looking for everyone. Oh, great boot. Forces Erekek onto the low ground. So the team's going to be a little bit disjointed. We're no under the point to give him a little bit of time, but huge beat, huge rush. Fi's dead again. Fi dead again. Man, they really hate Fi. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that rush just uh, sealing the deal for peace and love there. They're going to get a little stag on to Gala too. Not the longest stagger, but still two minutes to go. Half the time bank disappearing. Uh, that did cost Peace and Love both support ultimates, so that's it's going to be difficult for them to really be able to stand up to the sound barrier coming out from Dollar. Just the sheer amount of damage. So if you're Peace and Love, you're looking for a disengagement here. You want to play aggressive. You want to force them to use ultimates and then try and back up and play to the more advantageous choke that you have. <gasps> oh, stick. Oh, fine. Lab, a sound barrier, and then Terra Surge. Okay, they, they hate fight. It's confirmed. My word. There was nothing they let him get away with there. And then the overclock to finish this one off. Oh, what a, a pulse bump shacks. I mean, they killed, they why killed ice. Winning actually, yeah, with, with that one more kill on the lower. Well, it's not even winning. That's sort of why I ask why. It's like, even though you get that pick, it doesn't really result in much. Psycho needs to get out of this fight though. As I said, that costs a try out axial, all of their ultimates. Your peace and love, you take this. You just hold the choke, use your advantageous position. Oh, he's dead again. That's so rough. Just hounding him down. Switched over from the Cassidy, mind you. Good little boop out of the lamp. Tries to scurry back to it, but Psycho, hot on their trail. Escapes at 39 HP. 60 seconds to go now, Scott and Ataraxia in an awkward spot on this mega health pack. And just getting booped away by that spear spin. 
One more fight to go realistically for Ataraxia here. Peace and love are about to take the series away from them. Yeah, they're just a little bit of desperation from Ataraxia. They're just, you can see they're just playing a little panicked, a little too fast. They're not, they're not doing their due diligence and that's what results in Fire getting punished. And now you're fighting into a Kitsune rush from Abik. You got a Pulse Bomb from Psycho who's been so clean with them recently. This is going to be hard for them to win this fight. Psycho's already looking to set one up there, Scott. You can see him dueling with Shaq, trying to force that recall. Orin? Orin is pretty low. TP there from a beak. There is the rush. There's the pulse. Psycho lands it. However, the lamb's there to save them. Ataraxia, do you have the high ground? But Scott, high ground's great, but the payload's right there. Yeah, but seven seconds just to go. Out this rush, almost a little too early from a beak. A beak getting a little panicked, thinking that you know they needed to fight that thing. Good window. Ice is in trouble. Yeah, they dropped straight onto the payload. Ignored that uh, rush completely. Dropped the window. Isolated ice, and that will be it. You'd imagine for this fight. Shax gets taken down by Psycho, but there's no one left from peace and love to touch that point. Well, I suppose Psycho is, but how long can he really survive? He ends up going down to a Magnate. And there we go. Finally, Ataraxia by the skin of their teeth, man. They managed to get that first point. They just regained their composure. Oh, great play, recognizing, hey, that rush was terrible from a beak. We don't need to fight into this. We have 20 seconds remaining. Wait it out. Come back in with the window of their own. Peace and love just getting caught off guard. They still are in the driver's seat. They're in a great situation. Two minutes remaining for Ataraxia. And Peace and Love had two minutes 41 on the board, but anything can happen in these kind of push maps. Fire's gonna use the high dude. Ooh, almost wow. takes down Psycho, but Psycho is there. And a deal with the devil there. Two minutes to go, Scott, like you were saying. There's the terror, so it's dragging everybody in. Sound barrier to match. You know, was in there for quite a while. I was surprised the uh, overhealth managed to tank all of that Arissa damage. Terror Surge, another one comes through, but Sound Barrier to match again. And here comes the Overclock. Lauren, perfect way to line people up. Everybody was scattering away from these Terror Surges. And Psycho lands a nice little pulse bomb. A couple of ultimates will end this fight. Oh, oh the, yeah, ain't no way that's happening. Surely they kill Gala, though. Psycho's alive. They don't even need to kill Gala. Like, if they can just reset the damage to be done at this point. Oh, like, I'll live. Oh, never mind. Gala's the one who wants blood. Oh, Psycho! Oh, straight to the right and not to the left to safety. Ends up falling. That's a, kind of a bad death, but you're Tracy. You're going to be out to get back to the fight soon, but they're rounded the second to last corner to second point. They have a rush here. I would expect them to sort of waterfall it over, off of these stairs. There it is. Oh, there the you go. Through the window. Ignore that one completely. Even just Suzu through it, hoping it would shatter it. Unfortunately, that's not how that interaction works. Fi just playing in the back line right there, knowing that maybe Peace and Love would overextend. And overextend they did through the window. And Fi had a, basically a firing range to shoot down. 30 seconds to go. Once again, Adaraxia playing near to OT as Peace and Love aren't going to be able to touch at this point. Oh, Lauren's in and Lauren is out. 0.15 meters to go. And they're determined to try and get a touch on this second point again. Just force OT looking for a miracle hold now, but it's looking rather unlikely, especially as Shax has basically got free reign. And there we go. Point two unlocked. Ataraxia, they are still in this. I don't like that recontest at the last second. I feel like you're giving away a lot of ultimates. You're giving up the first half of the third point. You guys have three minutes in the clock. There's no reason to feel like you're pressured or you're forced to recontest in these situations. You're better off taking the position because now they're going into this third point. They're at an ultimate disadvantage. All of a sudden, your team is all the way back, so you've lost that positioning. So it feels like, you know, peace and love, they're just so close to winning that it feels like they're sort of forcing things a little bit too much. No cancellation of the high dude. This is in trouble. Okay, a very uh, stark contrast to what we saw on uh, point A. 60 seconds to go now for Ataraxia. Very much in this, but the problem is now you can just kind of flood out the spawn with a lot of ultimates in your back pocket. Yeah, they, they should have the ultimates up. This will be a very even a balanced fight. It's going to come down to who uses the ultimates first. Gala drops the window early. Ice cannot take too much damage from this. Sound Barrier comes oh. out. They're going aggressive. There's Sound Barrier. Terror Surge hits a lot of people. That Pulse Bomb doing no damage at all on the fortifying Orissa. It's all the poop from people back here. What a poop! Takes out on Gala, or at least helps suit. That spear finishing him off. 30 seconds to go. 2.57 meters as well for Ataraxia to get that final checkpoint. And Peace and Love, they're trying to make a little bit more punishing for Ataraxia to run away. I don't think you're going to secure a kill. No, you are not. Okay, fan of Arscop. Trying to play aggressive. 10 seconds to go. 
Overclock here. Tracer dead already. There's no one to touch, surely. Winston, Lucio, Moira, Reaper. Everybody thrown in. But peace and love, they're going to shut the door on this series. A 3-2 victory in what was almost a shutout on Rialto. And peace and love, they refuse to go down. They refuse to get a... Uh, uh, revenged, I guess. Revenged? That's close enough to being a word. Is that a word? <laughs> I'm not sure. They refuse to go down to Ataraxia, who is just seeking that revenge. Man, peace and love turned it up to a sixth gear there, Sai. They really did. I, I'm thoroughly impressed how they continued to manage to really force Ataraxia to play their pace and their kind of game. They were in control of all the timings, all the engages. Oh, yeah. and they played it really, really smart, uh, smart. And even though Ataraxia ended up being back again on, uh, let's say, their comfort picks on what really worked for them, as you mentioned, on uh, Esperanza, I believe. They just couldn't make it work. Uh, really, really, really great rematch there. Let's uh, actually listen in to the winning comms and hear what they had to say. We, I can't yeah, play. Yeah, we, we can. can. Trust, trust, we can. Trust, yeah, we can. Trust, yeah. late. We can touch. We can also. Trust, we can. Trust, we can. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm a monkey. I'm a monkey. Lulu, Lulu. Trust, 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 Ripper, Ripper. Oh nice. Oh. Well fucking done. Oh. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well effing done well indeed. Done. <laughs> well done. Um one of them has a very gentle voice. I know. Oh, I, I she, thought the same thing. Very, that was very soothing. I know, right? I know, like that felt really nice to listen in. <laughs> like I wasn't stressed at all. Uh, but yeah, uh, interesting of course to see uh, or rather hear those uh, final comes. Uh, generally, I think this team really impressed at Araxia. I do believe that most people would have expected them to win, not just this match, but generally the group. They expect right. them to be the first one coming out of the group and heading into the main event. Alas, it shall not be. They are not done yet. They will get a ch second chance in an elimination match. But for now, we have to say congratulations, of course, uh, to uh, the uh, opposition. It's been awesome to see how closely matched these two teams are as well. You know, in Swiss, as I said, best of three, anything can happen. But these two teams, you can tell they have their own style of how they like to play the game. And the way they match up is very interesting. And you saw it evolve as the series went on. And, you know, you have to put a lot of respect onto Peace and Love. I think they did a great job. A lot of teams would have lost that Esperanza in such a convincing fashion and been like, well, we're in a lot of trouble for the rest of this series. So keeping that composure, bringing it back, you know, they deserve to be the number one seed in this group. Yeah, for Absolutely. sure. I think I think it's extra impressive considering that they're they're basically just a pickup team, right? Um, so it's not like they had that good old fashioned team cohesion. They've been playing with each other for a long while. While as on the other side, of course, with Ataraxia, like the majority, the core of that team have been playing together for for quite a bit. Uh, enough already, of course, uh, that the cohesion, that synergy should be there and they shouldn't be the ones to be forced into positions where they have to throw all their alts into a fight and hope that they somehow manage to snack a win. Yeah, N no scrims, fun mixed team. There you go. Yeah. That's the tagline. Hey, and they came fourth in Swiss <laughs> too, which is kind of nuts. Both these teams, uh, like we and Scott are mentioning at the top of the series, they lost to the best teams like they just they lost to like space station they lost to ends like they lost to the teams that people would expect them to lose to um so i think especially in the upper portions of uh or like i say the the mid portion of the brackets and especially going into the main event it's extremely competitive and i wouldn't be too surprised seeing ataraxia also go through in their group I want a salty run back in the round of eight <laughs> bracket. I oh, want yeah. to run back one more time. I want to see this so we can once and for all close this out because as I said, you know, you, you have to just say peace and love are the better team so far. They've, they've done it twice in a row. Yes, it's been close, but you know, when you have a guy like this cycle on the tracer, cycle on the echo as well on that Esperanza was also going nuclear. So absolutely deserved player of the match. 100%. And this is the most important factor of a lot of teams right now is the Tracer player. Like, the Tracer player needs to be, like, 
switched on 100% of the time. We saw Shax obviously get subbed out for Daned in this situation, um, but with uh, Psycho also being able to play the Echo and change up their style and change up for, depending on map type, not only do you have a, just a ridiculous tracer, the Echo looked great. The copies uh, specifically looked really good, just really forcing, like you can see it right here, just forcing the enemy backline just to, hey, you have to deal with me first before you get it through everybody else. And that's what the Echo really does is just buy time and just waste the time and supports and hopefully land a nice little double kill too right but uh, at the end of the day the traces they have to be top they have to be top tier and uh, i think psycho proved that today couldn't agree more let's actually dive into our post game interview because a is uh, standing by for a quick chat after getting that dub a beak thank you so much for joining us congrats on yet another victory mm -hmm. against one and the same another team one. let's let's talk about this yeah just another one in the back you know uh what gave you the upper hand once again why do you guys just seem to have their number well um we beat them in swiss with no scrims and then we started scrimming so it was pretty obvious we we're gonna win <laughs> we we gave them two maps for fun to be honest i think uh, that's very, that's very nice of you. Four like fun that. team giving uh, giving away four <laughs> fun maps. I really like it a big. <laughs> are you okay? Are you going to start screaming like SSG ends and stuff? Like what's going on? What's the plan moving on? Okay, I may have lied. We did maybe six hours of scrims, three blocks. Three okay. Blocks. <laughs> I mean, it's better than nothing. It doesn't count. They've been screaming for weeks. They've been screaming for weeks. Yeah, that's it. I, well, I actually have a question. Well, it, Esperanza, <laughs> that felt like a turning point, at least for Atraxia. You know, they seem to have your number the way they moved around that map. How did you guys sort of regroup after that map and win the next two? Um, after Esper, we just said we're playing like... Um, I guess, you can assume the word I'm going to say, but... And then we just... <laughs> we just Trash. Yeah. Yep. Up to yep. and we showed it on the second map. And then everyone started screaming, high, high energy comms, you know. We just shoot, shot them. It sounded very really. soothing. We we listened in a few times. It was actually very soothing. Like <laughs> some of you have very like gentle voices, which is <laughs> quite nice, honestly, to listen yeah. into. Uh, let's talk about your your team in general. Uh, it's to my understanding that you're the team leader, the captain, uh, but you're also kind of running all the things in the back end. Was it just a completely pickup team, like really just for fun? Um, well. Uh... Four of our team is have played together before. We're just a group of friends. They won contenders last year with Munich, if you guys remember, in the Jump Queen meta. So it's like those four plus me, Ice, and Loren. So it's like a it's like a core, but like we're just playing for fun. And we didn't expect to get so far. I like that. Now we're here. I mean, with the power of friendship, you got it done. Uh, now, of course, your eyes are set on a main event. Is there any team in there you're really itching to play? And if so, which one would that be and why? Um, probably EXO, because uh, we want to establish ourselves. We got top four in Swiss, but we want to properly establish ourselves in the in the uh, big four, you could say. <laughs> Legend. We love that. We love that. Well, we can't wait to see that happening or not. Either way, it's going to be a fun to watch you guys go at it again. Thank you so much for joining us and best of luck in the main event. Thank you. Here's a big. I love them. My, my new favorite Same. team. I, I'm yeah. peace and love uh, to the moon. <laughs> they have my songs. To the moon. And, <laughs> and further, I feel like after hearing him, he was the gentle voice in the comms, was he? You should have complimented Shoot. him. You should have said something. I didn't want to. I didn't want to make it weird, guys. <laughs> it would have been weird, and I would have made it weirder if you had said something. I already something, went, so. I kind of went into the direction. I'm already like, oh, you're making it weird, so just just shut up. Uh, you know. Uh, well, it sometimes it do be like that. Uh, either way. Nice. They advanced, rightfully so, uh, established their dominance over the opposition. Ataraxia, unfortunately, fell on their hands. Uh, they do get another chance uh, to uh, qualify, though, so this might not be the very end for them. They are now finding themselves, of course, uh, <laughs> in an elimination match. That's, that's right. That's okay. Words are hard indeed. Now, next up, our first elimination match of the group stage is actually happening. Schmungus going up against Super Shy, fighting for their lives. It's very dramatic. Uh, let's yeah. see who's coming out on top of that after this.
heroes. This is your game, your team, and now this is your league. This is your community's future, and this is your prize pool. Win your matches, battle for your progression. Go far, go further, even as far as the Esports World Cup. It is your time to shine. Build your team, register your team, go the distance with your team. Face it, Lee. Powered by you. Welcome back, one and all. Yeah, Face It League's sign up are open, are ready for oh, you. Yeah. Or you, Costa. Especially you, Costa, actually. Ah, uh, yeah, well, we're gonna be there. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna dominate the no Face It League. No matter what. And I'm gonna That's take right. all of that 170k and not give it to my teammates. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I, just, I, I like that you did the, the Cali boy there. <laughs> What's good? What's good? What's up, good? That was so good. Baby, you want to hear more about? Hey, you want a duo? We're gonna win face at league. <laughs> well, it's not happening. Probably not gonna happen for Costa, but oh, it could on. be happening for any other team out there. So I'm very excited to see he's gonna show up and show us what's good. Two teams who are definitely willing to do just that are our next two uh, contenders, Super Shy and Schmungus. They will be going uh, head to head in our first elimination match of the day, starting with Super Shy. I've not seen either team in stage one groups, so let's chat a little bit about the players here. Uh, starting, of course, with Super Shy. A few names here I definitely recognize. Uh, French player pack for example uh played for peps and flash ups uh who else uh, sobek of course been around the contender scene forever and ever with every team like munich esports shirko timeless you name it who else is standing out tell me all about reiner and co well okay first thing first because i watched this uh last time it's not Reiner, and I, we're probably gonna have to say that multiple times, but it's not the Overwatch oh. League Reiner. It is, uh, it is actually Hitori, uh, I believe. Um, they're just messing with us. Um, <laughs> so that, that's always that's fun nice. for us involved. But this is actually a really phenomenal team, as you can see from the highlights Thanks, here. Thanks, Hitori. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> and they're, actually, they're actually going toe-to-toe -to -toe with EXO. We had a map five banger. These guys are very close. Just a couple of team fights away from being able to close that out. So very strong team here for Super Shy and Schwungus, they're definitely gonna have uh, an uphill battle here if they're going to keep silly hey, maxing in the words they're, of ML7. They're doing it for the content. Uh, ah. Lots of familiar faces here. Quite, we have to be fair here though. If you're looking at the recent matches, like there are some members here like SK. They're showing those uh, those big names. Who's boss, SK uh, dominated Astro. Astro in the 1v1. Yep. No one that did forget happen. that. No one forget <laughs> that. That, well, that match was very fun. I, I, everybody was kind of having fun in the lobby. There were like some meme comps and sometimes they were like mirroring the Alari and stuff. Like, it, yeah, it was very, very fun. Um, but okay, Raxu was crazy. Uh, like. Their aim is ridiculous, and it was one of the main reasons why they were able to cap a lot of the time. Um, and also, this early hold was so <laughs> funny. Like, Space Station were like, huh, you're there? And then they just rolled over them. But um, it was a very fun match to watch. I would definitely recommend go watching it back. Um, it was a 3 over versus Space Station, but Space Station are kind of demolishing everybody right now. Why would you like, no that shame up? in losing. No yeah. shame in losing against them. Uh, no, exactly. Also, There's no shame in that. Someone please fact check. But Zergi is playing on a trackball instead of a mouse. No. Okay. So is that is Zergi still is, a thing, or yeah, yeah. Is that just was? So Zer No, no, no. He, he, Zerg plays in trackball. Like that, he's the trackball wizard uh, in EU, and uh, he used to actually play Doom. For yeah, I know. They, oh my God, oh my. The Doom. <laughs> why? Know, why? How would you do the it? The question I have is why. Because <laughs> it's. I don't know. Because I guess they grew up with it, uh, and they have no mouse space. I suppose I have no idea. But they used to play Doomfist a ton. It was like the trackball Doomfist player, and uh, and then they obviously play like a ton of other stuff. And watching his aim on like Soldier is so weird. If you POV it, like it looks freakish. And um, the buttons to the mouse are normally on the side of the trackball. People think they're cheating. Yeah, yeah. Like originally, people thought like <laughs> this guy's kind of cheating. Like he's super good, and he's yeah. like killing a ton of people. And like their aim is like all wonky. And then post a picture or post like a video of him using the trackball. It's like okay, that makes That's sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Why the aim is like all strange. Um, oh, look at the viewer prezzo. Fifty-four percent to forty-six. Okay. Well, how, how is Schmungus gonna lose this? Huh? <laughs> Yo, we got a stream team. Well, why are the stream teams not pumping these numbers? This should this should be ninety percent to Schmungus. I don't know. But I don't hey, know, maybe Shungus. everyone saw the super disappointing. Shy matchup. Yeah, maybe people are thinking with their heads and not their hearts, and they're thinking that you know maybe Super Shy had the edge. But honestly, like. We, we meme about it all the time. Schmungus have 
phenomenal players, right? Like they have a great team. They have a lot of um, phenomenal individual players. Maybe not the meta players that you would always expect time and time again. And I'm kind of curious to see what they come in with. Is Schmunga's going to play a more traditional style or are they actually going to continue to Silly Max and play Life Weaver? I feel like I know the answer to this already though. I think potentially Silly Max. I'm down for it, honestly. I'm down for the Silly. Busan's our first map. Can you play Life Weaver here? Alari, perhaps? Why doesn't my streamer play Arnett? What's up with that? <laughs> against uh, my against streamer, former London ML7 Spitfire. is best Anna in world. Why he not play Anna in official? That's that's so so weird. <laughs> Anna's not a uh, not crazy, but I mean, ML, yeah, I mean, you can't play a little bit Anna on Busa. Uh, no, you're just gonna get rolled over. <laughs> There's just no way. We see what they want to run with though. Looks like no silly maxing at least for the time being. Let's have a little schmungus listening. Let's see how they're prepping in spawn. I think it like. <laughs> A 12 inch or something. 612. Guys, I'm the main character. Look at me. 612. Oh my god. Oh, look at him. Oh, oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. Chill, chill, chill. Give me all the fucking resources. Give me your fucking number. Yeah, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You sound like the fried now. TP, TP, TP. Is this a good I take right side. I'm right side. I'm left side. Are we still on side? God, that is Overwatch League prepping right there. OWCS <laughs> highest level prep work. They're ready. Ragshi wants all of the support possible. Looks like Shmungus no silly maxing right now. Bogor on the Orisa. Very standard comp here. Running the map instead of the Kiri. Super Shy going to be a little bit faster in that regard. And SK, she ends up falling first to Sorrow. It's going to be a fairly fast push here, I would imagine, especially without the Lucio. Shmungus going to be in a little bit of trouble. Point unlocks. And Rakshu also ends up falling to Rhino. Yeah, this is a good, good pick on SK first. Gets the rail up. SK just getting a little out of sorts. And we're actually getting a very standard comp here from Shmunga. So, yeah, this could be a very competitive one. Not silly maxing as much, except for in the spawn room. So, excited to see how this one's going to go. This is a very difficult point to try and get out of this door because you're sort of running through the trick. You can see how much damage that disruptive shot is doing. Has to drop the window. But right oh, now, Rhino's right help. Use this Harris just to stay alive. And okay, Sorrow just clips too. All good. Rakshu tried to get a, a nice little flank angle there with the help of Boga, but that was a really nice play from Rhino. They, f they basically forced them into the back into the choke point, and there was like, you have to use window to get out. And then they used window, they disengaged, they terrorized, they used all their abilities to stay alive, and then it was just the Sorrow show. SK just going to pick someone up. Looks like MO7 switching over to the carry now after using that window. Yeah, maybe just thinking that the survivability of the Kiriko might help out a lot. They, they faking over to the left side, going back to the right. Ryan has seen it coming though. Just wait at the door. High noon out onto the high ground. Oh, nice nice little spear. Rakshu is uh, a little bit worse for wear. Oh, ML7 snipe. And this is uh, Super Shy rolling Shmungus back to the spawn. 60% in building now for Super Shy. Oh, good pick though by Rashu. Sobek going way too deep. That's Sound Barrier out of the picture right now for Super Shy. See if Shmungus can capitalize. Are going to punish her fast enough though? Zergi switch over to the May as well. They want to use the walls to start isolating targets a little better. They're going to be able to get out of the door. Pulse Bomb. Good Pulse. Be even better Suzu though by ML7. Saving the entirety of the team there. Boga using the Terror Search to try and stay alive. All the defensive cooldowns now from the Arisa have been used. Besko, she has got the Sound Barrier. Same with Sobek, who's made it back to the fight. Final fight coming up. Scott, 10% to go for Super Shy. And ml 7s getting up to this rush. They really want to get this one up so then they can run down you Super Shy. Super Shy's getting a... Sound Barrier super early there. Smungus is going to copy that one in tow. There's the rush from ml 7 Almost gets speared out of it, but it's pack. It's the first one to fall, but ml 7 going down to a kunai. The point is being flipped. SK is going to plant himself on the point, but can they actually follow this up with kills? Zoro has managed to take him down Zergi, and the point does flip, so Super Shy are going to win, at least not just yet. Yet. As Rakshu just backing off, they know they haven't got ML7. He's only just spawned. It's up to SK to heal the rest of the team now. Dueling off onto the side here. Beat Astro. Can they beat Sobek? Doesn't look like it. Sorrow is there to help out. So Super Shy are going to be able to regain control of that point. Rakshu trying for the streamer clip there. Not quite lucky enough. 100 to 14% on the first round. Just clarify that Lucio 1v1 doesn't count because Zoro. That's true. Zoro came in. So Invalidated, it's still 0-0, zero, zero. Just, just in case anyone's keeping the Lucio tracking uh, going. But as you True. said, Jaws, Super Shy definitely firmly in the lead. They feel very comfortable right now, and Zoro's just finding pick after pick. Doesn't feel like Shmungus have been able to 
effectively get into these fights and take an even footing. It's just, something's always going wrong. They're taking too much damage or they're getting picked early on. Okay. Schmungus, what you got for us, huh? Play SK, Life Weaver. Weaver. SK was uh, rank one, I believe, in the speed run Lucio, the hero mastery. Oh, she's insane at Lucio. If you, if you haven't seen that video, you should go check out that video from SK. She is actually insane at Lucio. And we're going to see something different. What do we got? We got Widowmaker, Alari, Kiriko. So they're going to play a lot more poke oriented in comp. They're just going to try and spread around and punish Super Shy. So Super Shy are going to need to be the ones who do something. They're going to need to get in their face. Otherwise, they're just going to take too much damage. We're actually super scared there. Missed the headshot. So I had to back off. Very quick wow. rotation. Oh, nice. What? Okay, nice kunai. So he also ends up going down. Schmuck is playing rather split, Scott, it seems. Well, they have to, right? If you're playing this, you want to have multiple angles with the Alari and the Widowmaker. But when you're playing this style, you really want to be maneuvering around as a group so that it doesn't feel like you're just getting run down. Um, oh, if, if you're able to not die from run down, oh, SK dies outside the spawn doors, then you're in a good spot. But we need to start seeing some people click some heads. Yeah, we need actually to go crazy here. Uh oh, well, there's Rhino already in. Defensive wall, Scott. And now we're not giving Rakshu any time to play the game by the looks of it. Good alive, defensive boy. countermeasure though by Schmungus. They keep Rakshu alive, but unfortunately Boga is the one to fall. The sacrificial lamb. They do trade one for one. Lucio dead for Super Shy. Angle regain control by SK on the side. As Reiner ends up falling to a headshot. There's the headshots we needed. But Super Shy still in control of the point as Boga is switched over to the Malga. Oh, but you know, sometimes you just gotta pull out the Malga. When things aren't working, you go Malga, win the game. Okay, Sovic, what is Sovic doing in the back line? He's just escorting Sora around. 50% and counting now for Super Shy. The Schmungus, they're close to capping this point out. Pack, first one to fall in this fight as the rush comes through nice. from Super Shy. Takuno does manage to uh, heal up the rest of his front line, and Sobek just isolating Rashu yet again. ML7 laying down the rush of their zone. Normally, the better ultimate, uh, the later ultimate ends up winning here. Is that uh, pretty much everything thrown in to try and kill the Orisa? But the Terror Surge was uh, lived long enough there to help the uh, Orisa stay alive through the blizzard. Reiner eventually falls. The Schmungus find the cap. 75% and counting. As this overclock might just be the nail in the coffin for Schmungus. As the point is flipped, only 10% gain from Schmungus there. As, uh, as, Zorro, as Zorro and Sobek are just playing uh, in like perma duo queue. Like, this is the only thing they're doing. Oh! Oh, wow. Okay, Sobek finally put to rest. They're getting lots of picks here as well. You know what, Jack? I'm gonna say it. I've seen enough. I need more silly maxing. When they silly max, they, they go to the moon. So I, I need, I need yeah. more silly heroes. I need a, a life weaver. I need all these kind of things as they're finally gonna get the flip over and get some percentage on the board. OT though for Super Shy. Well, I guess this is half silly max. I guess it's not that silly maxing. It's not that yeah. silly. That, it could get sillier is my point. Yeah. You know? Anything gets sillier. All right, Sobek. It's been Sobek and Sorrow this whole time, basically just hounding down Rakshi. I find it's so hard to play Widowmaker here. It's, there's just so many flanks, it's just so hard to this find. This angle Angles. is absurd. Nice yeah, okay. Hands. It looks like uh, Takuno did see the Widow. They know exactly where he is right now. And Soro still hits the peak. Okay, okay. And Bogus like, I'm coming to save you. I, uh, don't worry, I, I'm here to save you. I know Pack is like incoming with Sobek. Okay, a spawn camp. I mean, surely they know. Yes, they do. That was so close. Sound barrier used by Sobek there. As uh, Super Shy do end up making their way to point. So like booping SK up to the skies, but she manages to get out of the way of all of the damage incoming. Pack not quite so lucky though. Taking a lot of damage from uh, their own pulse bomb. Yeah, and now you, you, there's sort of there's a back and forth going going on the point. Percentage is still going up. Boga has the cage if he wants to drop it. He's gonna drop it on the point. I don't know who's in it. But losing ML7, they're just not gonna have the healing, and you can see them slowly bleeding out. Oh, no heals. ML7 just dying on the pillar there. Just so rough. I mean, Boga uh, dropped down the cage for a little bit more survivability, but uh, unfortunately, it is super shy. Uh, takes that round 2 and 0 oh on a map number one. Yeah, there's something cool about Super Shy being a team and then just having a pink Arissa dancing on the point, you know? Pretty, Honestly, it's it, awesome. feels, it feels right. 
feels right, exactly. They do need, we do need the super shot. We need, we need new jeans. New jeans clever. Ar Arissa is a bunny. I, 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 there I said, I'm almost certain Arissa is a bunny. Does she have a bunny skin? Feels like maybe she would. I don't know. You could do Arissa as the Easter Bunny. I'm just saying. That seems like a very easy slam dunk. No, that sounds horrifying, yeah. actually. Because, like, you what know, you it's mean? one of those things where the, the Easter Bunny would be so big because Arissa is so big that it's kind of, like, horrific. No? So you're saying the rubber ducky Arissa skin's scary? Yes. Bro, I, I was playing with someone recently, and that's a that's a cursed skin. Really? It's not that bad. It's, it's pretty, it's it's pretty cool bright skin. and colorful. Like, it's, it's not scary. It's, it's got, got a little bit of curse even. undertones. I, 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 so pull it up, production. I, I need to. I need <laughs> no, the, no, 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 We need to no, we, we no, uh, settle this once and for all, but no, 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 this is an elimination match as well, worth keeping in mind. So the loser here will end up getting knocked out of the group. We are going to Hollywood next. This is a, a map that Schmungus ended up taking the uh, SSG fairly far on, to be fair. It was a, a very fun game to watch, like I mentioned. Worth watching uh, the replays for that one. Uh, but Hollywood for Super Shy, what do you think? Is I say, what do you think? They're probably just going to run the Arista again, if I had to guess. And there's no roster changes either, no substitutions to be seen. So as we load on in, this was a Schmungus map pick too, so maybe... Filled with, filled with confidence after taking uh, Space Station Gaming a couple of the points away from them. This just reminds me of the Schmungus law that happened uh, when they made it through Swiss. Did you know that they thought they were knocked out in their final match? So they oh, really? just like hard trolled and hard memed in their final match. They're like, oh, we're already knocked out. We'll play for fun. So they memed the entire time. But then when they won, they realized that they could actually qualify. So they memed in their final match <laughs> no and then way. qualified anyway. Um, so, you know, maybe this is their home. This is their territory where they're going to feel, uh, feel at their best. And you can see it once again. That is, that is, that is, I mean, this is, this is exactly what they did against uh, Space Station Gaming. We'll have a quick listen in though. We'll see what the plans are this time around. Oh, like music. Oh, sorry. Um, Wait, hang, on um yeah. hang on. Let me just. Okay, guys, get ready, get ready. Okay, here we go. Two, one, shoot the right side. I hit the Winston. Oh, uh, there was Luckily, there. Winston. Unlucky, Winston. No. Widow, 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 I'll hold around Mega Pack. Okay. Okay. okay, I'm a, I'm a monkey booper. I'm a monkey booper. And we can just play behind point. They cannot die behind point. Oh, oh, right. Go guys, right. right. behind them. Top right behind them. Top right behind them. Top, 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 top. I'm behind them, behind them. I'm behind them. I'm, I'm walking, I'm walking. So it maybe. You can play like this. We're right, living, we're living. They might spawn here. Winston, Winston, Winston. We can't draw, by the way. We need to push out. This is my so Let's go. I'm seeing. Curious on me. I'm wearing the surge. Oh, Chris Lurie, Chris Lurie, Chris Lurie. I don't see not any help. Kirin, no, Kirin, no, TP. This is all. I'm dead. Who's alive? Who's alive? Winton. I'm dead. We were speaking about calm voices earlier. SK's got to be also one of the calmest human beings alive. Absolutely. If someone dies, they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> my favorite point apart was the, what is my purpose? And it's like, <laughs> I am monkey booper. Yeah, I booped my the purpose. monkey. I mean, yeah, sir. You gotta do it. You gotta stop uh, the monkey getting into the back lines. But unfortunately, not to be. Five minutes uh, on the clock for Super Shy as they take point A. And Zara's just been a menace so far in this series. Zara's just been hidden pick after pick. It feels like every time Schmungus are trying to do anything, they're getting poked at, they're prodded, and they're losing people. Like QRXU, they would just absolutely uh, rip their head off for just like the slightest peek at the beginning of that round. So now the cart's moving, and we're going to see a mirror Winston from Boga. Winston. Definitely one of his uh, better heroes, that is for sure. ML7 sticking on the Kiriko. Zergi looking like they want to try and contend with this uh, payload at the moment. Got to stop Pack from just getting free push here. Pack does have a pulse bomb. Zergi has theirs as well. There is the push. Boga taking down Sobek. That rush on the high ground. Yeah, really hard to deal with, actually. Uh, kind of across the bridge, kind of frustrating. Takuno also falling. Okay, good hold from Shmunga so far. Reiner is out of there. Pack not quite there just yet. Uh, finding people on the retreats and uh, slips past him. Oh, forces the Rhino Primal as well. Oh, that's a good trade. Focus, focus 1 HP too. 
Are they going to chase SK? SK is just getting booped around right now. Oh, the Suzu is nice. Keeping SK up. Can SK get away? One HP. Yes, there come the cards. Bogor as well healed up in the meantime. Reiner is super low, but they do have the high ground control. Four minutes to go as they're rounding this uh, second to last corner. Monkey One to second. Monkey okay, I, I'm watching. We can see they're trying to retake the high ground. Bogor has the primal rage, so they can play aggressive. Going to try and disengage from the overclock. Pulse bomb goes wide. There's the sound barrier. Oh, a very easy disengage, though. Speaking of monkey boops, there was one. Boga super low now, even though he's in that form. SK sniped out of the air by Zoro. Uh, Zoro. And Boga with no more health, no more leaps, and... Oh, 360 from Zoro. No, oh, almost. Almost. <laughs> And now it's Raxu's time to try and uh, do some damage with uh, that overclock, but they're just getting hounded. Three minutes to go now. This uh, oh. payload is slowly moving back, but it is in firm control of Super Shy. They even got the rush, but don't think Shmungus is going to be able to touch it. It's going to be a reset on third. Yeah, that was an expensive fight for Shmungus to lose as well. ML7 coming up to a rush of their own. They won the team fight last time with that one. You can see Raxu switch over to the Cassidy, Boga over to the Arisa. I like this switch, I think. There's not as many high grounds. You don't really need to play the Winston. This such a way. Oh, nice punish on the Sobek okay, as well. Zergi. Okay, track ball gone. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's so you, uh, let, let me see the track ball in action. Actually. That's what I'm saying. Like, watch some of it. Uh, watch some of his aim. It's it's very weird, especially like the tracking. It looks strange. Yeah. I gotta see a video of this, Zergi. I I need a video of this. He's got a million videos of it, bro. Oh really? He's oh, got yeah, a I, and I, he I plays with hand it. cam on stream. Oh, sorry. Yeah, his track is pretty nice. Gives him a lot more momentum. Both uh, both rushes put on the point, but both teams going to disengage. QRXU does get punished by Reiner, and now all of a sudden they can't get any more staggers. They need to be really careful about losing more and more people here. I know someone's in danger, bro. I don't think there's a Suzu to his name. No, there you go. Dropped on top of the bubble. SK, monkey boot successfully. But unfortunately, the Primal Rage, a little bit too strong. A hello and a goodbye from Reiner there. Three and a half minutes to go for Super Shy. And they've got pretty much three ultimates. That sound barrier in 20%. They got overclocked, they got pulse, they got the tools to finish. And ML7 over to the Baptiste as well. Zoro's being deadly so far on this Sojin. Shimongas have to find a way to mitigate this value from the overclock. Oh, good lamp though from ML7. Just saw that pulse one from finding any effectiveness, but now they have to deal with Zoro. Everybody's lining up for him almost. Does her body shot escape? Ryan just ended up falling down, so no, not a tank battle here, but Sorrow is pretty immortal now with that sound barrier. And that should just about do it. Track ball god down. Two minutes and 53 seconds for Super Shy as they cap that third point. Oh, yeah. Super Shy just putting on a clinic right now of, uh, you know, just textbook play. And we saw this for them uh, earlier uh, in this tournament when they went to map five with EXO. This is a very strong team. As much as they don't have as much name value as some of these other rosters uh, at the higher end of EMEA, they definitely are a strong team that you have to keep an eye on, right? I'm sure Super Shy feels exactly the same way about uh, that Abik feels, where it's like, we're trying to sort of put ourselves in the upper echelon of these teams in the NBA. You know, you don't want to be dropping maps early. And, you know, I don't see Super Shy trying to troll as much as we saw from SSG uh, in the last matchup with Shmungus. Yeah, I mean, I think SSG are in the realm of their own right now, to be fair. I think they're definitely the best team in the EU and I definitely want to prove it, right? I mean, Twisted Minds took uh, the main event uh, last stage. But Twisted Minds, uh, it feels like SSG have a chip on their shoulder about that because everybody rated them like rank one. <laughs> they were the best team, so... Yeah, it feels like uh, they could take it a little bit easier, but Super Shy wanting to prove exactly why they're in this uh, stage. They did qualify as ninth, Scott, just under Ex Oblivione, and uh, just ahead of a one man army. They're not bad. All right, Shmungus, what are we doing here? Oh, my streamer? My streamer, my honor player. My honor player? All right, what do we got? Okay, Boga, that's not my streamer. <laughs> that is not that's my streamer. Not my streamer. No, I think Bogo would rather play the hog than the Arisa. A, a hot take. Let's just go for the hook. Yeah, that was. Uh, no TP back? Oh, okay, Zergi. Okay, here we go. This one. Alright, we're going full silly. We're, okay. we're, we're, we've decided that it's, now is the time. Oh, this is silly. My streamer, no. Let's have a look at some uh, Shmungus comms. Does it work? I mean, I don't do any damage from here. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> So just one, so just one, so just oh, one. He's above, so he's above. Watch out, he's row, he's off. We see one, we see one in that corner. Lucky right side. Watch out. Winston, Winston, Winston. Get on point, boys. There's a curious so one. Low, so just low. First point, first point. 
Uh -huh. Oh, bye bye. I pulled you. I pulled you. You're good. That's a good pull. That's a good pull right there. Winston. 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 I do. I am healed. Feeling... Here's a pedal for safety. That's a good pedal. I like it. Yep. I'm yep. Hey guys, I'm actually. I'm Perfect pedal positioning. I like the I like the thought though. SK was like, well, we could pedal the cast over the high ground and this. Right, she was like, I do no damage. <laughs> I, I'm at range. I can't do anything. It's kind of, if you get an ash up there, maybe it goes crazy. I don't know, like Widow or something. But um, yeah, that's kind of sad that you're a little bit uh, out of range uh, for the cast to do damage. SK with okay. the tree though. She can just yeah, pop the tree, tree on the point. Movement coming. Uh, Boger is doing nothing as uh, unfortunately as the. Um, Malga. It's just so difficult to get in. You can see as soon as they walk in, they're just under so much pressure. It, oh, the pedal goes crazy. Oh, 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 oh. He, can all that he wanted to be. He wanted to be on the low ground. <laughs> on the ground using his charge. I don't know. Well, there's nice the pool. pool. Saving Boga's life. Tree up in the cafe. So it's going to stop a lot of that, uh, those sight lines, I suppose. Well, there's hey. The Alari ultimate too. It's a big one. Sonic's down. Same with Soro. Oh. ML7 just hiding oh. in security with a little pylon healing him up. There we go. Two minutes on the clock. Shmunga saving ultimates going into this next push. The Super Shy end up falling over. And Pack has decided this is when it gets really silly. Wait. Okay. Wait. Okay. If, Wait. If it... Wait. Oh, they okay. thought they could oh, touch. They can get on the touch. Oh, no. That's so sad. Ooh. One? Ooh, one H. Literally one HP. Nice. Uh, Little body shot there from ML7 just finishes off the Winston and <laughs> Pack was like, well, we're going to die here, so I'm going to die on point. Yeah, this is like, yeah, you can see Super Shrine kind of swapping heroes. They're like, what do I play versus this? You know, I have, uh, they, they have never practiced against the uh, the old Malgator, Cassidy, Lifeweaver, Alari composition. So you're kind of like throwing darts at a dartboard, hoping for the best. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think this is like new meta comp. Uh, I'll say it. You it's the new meta for the... Play this in your rank games? <laughs> yeah, yeah, play it against me, please. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> he just got flattened! Oh my Dude, word. Has Boger and Ezgay just been running around in custom games for the I, last I week? I think so, like, yeah. How do we get the angles? How do we get the angle? And then the thing is, you can pull Boger out of danger. Yeah. Ooh, what, oh my god, what a shot. That was seven didn't sound a chance there. Oh, good spear as well to Sergi. Yeah. They just need no a psycho round. throw. Unlucky. All good though. Still three minutes. Not a not a bad push on second, but with the high ground control, it's going to be pretty easy, I'd imagine, for Super Shy to hold, especially with the Hanzo. Drexu is in a bad spot. Uh, it's yep. going to be a stagger as well. Poker's got Cage. We've got a lot of ults. How about this? Thoughts on this? Cage tree. Cage tree. Yeah, that's it. That's you wouldn't they die. Leave, but... They also can't kill you. I like yeah. it. You're cooking. How do you get everyone into the cage tree without? <gasps> oh, okay. Oh my God. Zergi. Zergi's not even going to have an afterlife after this. I... Oh, that's. It looked cool though. Next time. I think cage tree will work next time. And they use four alts. So, uh, and uh, oh, ML7 used the um, Alario as well. A little rough, but they are going to change. It's the. It is Ooh, old. Not oh, damn. QRXU is just getting, getting speared all over the place. Yeah. Little rough. These spears have been pretty accurate from Reiner, I must say. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good at the Orisa. The Orisa character. Pretty epic. All right. Now we have we have the uh, Torbjorn ultimate. So the floor is lava. Is, is going to be in full effect. So that would have been a better combo. Hit me out. Cage oh, that's and then Cage core. floor is lava. Cage yeah. core. Beef core. What did you say? Cage core, molten core. Cage core. Okay, that makes yeah. At least beef core. core. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Beef core. <laughs> what? I guess Mag is beefy. Yeah, that's that's not where I think you were going, Bogey. You got this. If they don't realize, <laughs> Bogey took a double headshot. Oh shit, man! Yeah. Mo7 <laughs> took another headshot. <laughs> I don't think it's winnable. Well, there we go. That's the next push down. All right, one minute to go. Schmungus, what do you got for us? Okay, Zergi on the tracer now. So tracer widow. Pretty El Classico. Yeah, now, now, now it's an uphill battle, but if QRXU kills three, there's a chance. I think it's three headshots. 
on the Arisa. And Arisa doesn't right. die because she has one of Now someone's going to peek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we're watching, yeah. Oh, Zergi ends up going down, unfortunately, to uh, Sobek there. And Rakshu, uh, I mean, this is almost inevitable, I think. Oh, yes. Send in the tree. Oh, not quite. Yeah, the Terra Surge. Unfortunately, that tree was a little lackluster. And not SK's fault either. That was mainly just on the uh, spear spin there from Reiner. Yeah, how do you stop this Orisa from just running at you? Oh, oh, so making a little bit too cute with it. Nice dodge. All good though. Sorrow is now at spawn camping. Although the res comes in, she is huge. Wait a second. I heard you so excited about a res in my life. Wait a second. Yeah, because they're running a widow. That's why. <laughs> All right, Super Shy end up taking Hollywood. Shmungus, unfortunately, unable to get to two at that second point. But Super Shy on a match point now for themselves. So they're pretty good, I will say. Yeah, hand handling the, the silliness from Shmungus pretty well. Obviously, first point, you know, they did manage to cap it. You're going to get caught off guard every now and then. But honestly, you know, you start to see the weaknesses of some of these heroes and why they're not played in the Overwatch League. Uh, sorry, in the WCS as yeah. much. Uh, old habits die hard. Uh, but I, I, I like the idea. You know, you got the cage, you got the tree. We're starting to cook. We're experimenting, Jack. Did cage anything ball. else that you, you thought you could take away into your ranked games right now? Uh, that's uh, Esperanza's our next uh, map. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the idea of like cage crawl would be kind of sick. I'm just thinking about it now. It's not a combo that I thought about. I feel like that's another forbidden combo. You know, the first forbidden combo is the, the Flux Bastional. Forbidden yeah. combo number one. Forbidden combo number two is the Malga Cage Molten Core. I think yeah. that's the that's the second one. It, even better if the Torb is like on top, like on the high ground, and you like throw the Molten Core down. I think okay, that was. Okay, so let, let, let me get this right. So you need their entire team to be grouped up to get in the cage, and you need the Torb oh, you don't need to be all on the high them. ground above said five people in the cage. You don't need all of them. You can just get like a couple. But yeah, a I couple think of people in the cage. I think it'd be kind of okay. cool though. Uh, so I maybe mean, right here, you could use the you could use the cage, mm -hmm. uh, Torvald here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. You could, but I don't think that ever happened because those heroes together don't seem very good. Hey, a rush hero know. versus a hero that sits and shoots with turret. I don't think that's uh, that's that good. But here you go. Here's the highlights from Hollywood. Esperanza is our next map, Scott. Little push action. Did see a nice little Alari out there which, uh, from ML7, which is good, but yeah, unfortunately, ML7 a lot of the time was actually just getting picked off by Sorrow, who's been extremely good on the Sojourn uh, thus far. Yeah, 100%. He's, he's really been a problem for uh, Shmongus throughout this entire series. Like, just hitting shots time and time again. Doesn't matter how silly you get. If you're just getting one shot, it's just very difficult to deal with. So let's go over to Esperanza. Let's see what Shmongus can pull out. This is their final map of groups if they cannot win this one it will be their last uh their last match they will the be eliminated hurrah. so there's still a chance well uh, i was trying to think back to the chat predictions was it mostly super it was like 65 percent or something so you know a lot of uh, a lot of schmungus believers i believe it yeah about 60 percent so not too surprising there. This group, this group is extremely hard, regardless. I think as well, like X Oblivioni and Space Station Gaming, yeah. really tough games. As we roll out of the door, Boga is on the Rhine. No Lucio though. That looks respectable. Rindel. Yeah, that's honestly pretty, pretty sick. Without Lucio, Boga might struggle. But honestly, it doesn't matter if you don't have Lucio because you have the grab from yeah. Life Weaver, right? So you don't, right? That makes sense. You can pin more, right? Like you can oh, pin right. into Narnia more because you can just be pulled out of it at any time. So let's see how Boga's is going to use the pinning into Narnia strategy. He's cooking with this one. Oh, there's the pin. Oh, Boga oh, looks wow. one way and oh, Zoro was like, hello. <laughs> just fan the hammer into Boga's back there. Oh, nice pull. Oh, where are they going? Where the pet? Where is the pet? Where is SK right now? Yeah. <laughs> was, she, was she in the skybox? <laughs> like, the verse is like, grab me. And they get grabbed and they go the opposite direction to where they thought they were going to go. It's like, why would you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the first thing I thought when I saw the grab from Life Weaver when, when it first came out. I'm like, okay, this is going to be a troll. This is gonna People be a are troll, going yeah. to troll. Speaking of troll, um, not quite so troll. Boga trying to take Hygar. Decides against it though, is uh, Super Shy just stacked right now. Yeah, Super Shy just slowly holding this high ground now, knowing they don't really have to do anything. You can see, look at how slow Boga is. Never oh, he has Burke into verticality. Oh, oh, good. Back to the bot. Exactly where I wanted to be. TP onto the back line by the looks of it. 
or onto the opposite high ground. Schmungus have stolen the bot though, mind you. All right, all good. We TP straight back in, and it's actually packed the first of all. SK unfortunately caught out. Bogo with the pin. Also ends up going down to Sorrow. They're not taking any prisoners here. Uh, super shot. does fall. So there should be somewhat of a reset of this team fight. You're gonna see them sitting on the bot a little bit, but I don't see them going too aggressive here. So they can sh moving. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, ML7. Oh, Takuno. Little differential there in ML7, a little 1v1. There is a uh, dead eye available. And almost a tree. This checkpoint. It might just get taken for free. Okay, here it is. Oh, wait, is SK gonna SK's grab? Like on the paddle. Wait, SK's like, we're team? <laughs> team, we're team. I team. have safety oh. paddle over here. No, Bogus gonna high ground? Safety paddle. Okay, here we go. Well, hey. <laughs> oh, wait, okay, maybe not. High noon from the back line. Oh, Takuno nice. ends up going down. Good pulse bomb from Zergi. Takes care of the lamp before the pulse bomb ends up killing. So we're on to the high ground of his own, though, with the TP. That bot is being stolen away. Boga falling yet again. Sorry with a 1v1 against Rakshu. Oh, super shy with a, a rider even. Oh, my. Oh, you hate to see that one. It's the murder. Zergi turned into jam. Hello. That's just, that's just unnecessary. Much Mad respect for that one. <laughs> Mad <laughs> respect. to people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right, Windows coming up here. Bogue is going to get his own shot. Let's see if he can do something disrespectful as well. Window Fire Strike. Double Fire Strike. Here comes the Sand Barrier. They're going to go straight. Bogue with a... Not the best pin, but managed to get out of there. Here comes the wall. A Photon Barrier. And ML7 just caught off guard completely. By uh, Sorrow again. Really has been his arch nemesis this entire game, it feels like. Sorrow. Bogo. Oh, big slam. Here One HP. Here's the big slam. Oh, Rhino with the pin, though. Knew exactly how much HP he had remaining. Just pinning in Super Shy with 90 plus meters. Almost nearing 100. Oh, escape. Goodbye. Just a reset. Yeah, just reset. Resetting. Oh, just a reset. Oh, wait. Maybe they won't be wanting? I think maybe they won't. Lucio won't be wanting? They might have been. They just both ended up dying by accident. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Oh, there's the shadow from Boga. Oh, ends up getting taken out, though, by uh, Tekuno. They're going to be able to hold this uh, sidelines here. Looks like... Uh, Is SK, SK going to the battle? I think yeah, SK and Sobek are going for a 1v1. I, I'm, I'm not interested in the uh, in the, the team fight. Oh, maybe not. Okay, Wait, never mind. They're coming did back. Did someone back out? Sobek with a dishonorable back off. Okay, here we go. Respect it. Okay, Sobek, here we go. Here we go, here we go. 1v1. What are we on the close lines? SK landing some nice shots here. Sobe just booping them around though. Oh, SK, in trouble. can she get the donk on the head? Oh, they're up yeah, healing as well. Straight back to 250 HP. Decent shots from SK are landing. Okay, here we go, here we go. Go back around the yeah, corner again. Respectful, playing smart. The longest Lucio duel in history. Sobe, oh, boops SK down to the floor. She's below used. Sobe right now. And here comes the amp from SK as we switch over back to the hey, point. What is moving, just in case you wanted to know? <laughs> just in case. One of Lucio's will die anymore. eventually, we promise. Oh, good shots from Sobek. That's a quad headshot onto SK. Oh. One HP! Get SK's one. Sobek oh. gets moved off the map, though. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. It's all good. They're alive. They're alive. They'll switch okay. over. SK Maybe. with the chase, though. Hot on their tails. Does Sobek know? No, he doesn't. SK manages to recover. Okay, so close again. to getting to the environmental, and now we're back. Longest Lucio duel. Nice shots landing from SK. Could this be another 1v1-1? Big pin. Big pin. MO7's down again. Back to the Lucios that have beats. Oh, oh Sobek hits the beat. Respectful. Hey. Wait, 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 yes. wait, wait. You can beat against each other, but then SK beats the rest okay, of us. Okay. We'll start, we'll start. Okay, we're back to zero. Ground zero again. We're uh, or level zero, I should say. And uh, SK. Oh, he's, she's trying. Sobek going solo. No amp for SK either. Yeah, yeah, five seconds on the amp. 
Ball's moving. 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 Ball's
Add Chia another one to the list. There you go. <laughs> you can have a show. I mean, so I took Chio down in a Torb when we won. So That's so true. He ain't he ain't that good. He was terrified he, he of you that. that entire he time. Was, you could see I was it in inside his, eyes. his head. <laughs> That was insane one v one. If I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> Just randomly pooping on Chio here. He's catching strays. He's done absolutely nothing to deserve this. Uh, either way, let's talk about this match. Obviously, a bit difficult to like get a good read here on uh, Shy because Super Shy yeah. because. It's not like they were truly tested against Schmungus. Um, I give them kudos, though, for not, you know, buying into the shenanigans. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's I mean, so easy to a little bit match right with the, out. with the rhyme. But yeah, I mean, a lot of these times they were just playing the Arisa, playing kind of what they were good at. And uh, and then it was like a little bit of silliness. I think we had the correct level of like, you know, proper play, like serious. We're going to go uh, hard mode here and then we're going to also, you know, uh, go to the Rhine, play a little fun stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you're up 2-0, then you're like, okay. Okay, we play. We yeah, can toss okay, a map okay, if we, we need to. <laughs> we <laughs> can toss a map. Yeah, so One true. is possible for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it, it, it was cool to be able to see Schwungus, you know, you saw on the first and a little bit in the second map. They're like, let's try and play somewhat of a normal comp and then, like, see how we do. And then when they realize, they were like, you know what? Maybe our best bet is to get a little silly. <laughs> and, you know, you saw that on Hollywood. They had some value. This this Reinhardt duel could have gone either way. Fun. You know, just a couple of team fights. So, and, you know, there was some disrespectful shatters. Here's the moment of truth, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. Lucio's um, gun is just so wonky. Like, it's the hardest gun to use in the game. It, it, props to any Lucio player that has mastered that weapon, because my word, is it difficult. Yeah, no, 100%. It's, it's one of those things as well, but you because you pair that with them, like, staying in the air, you know, making sure that, like, they're, they're not falling, staying, dodging, shooting, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Lucio cool. duels are no joke, and you know, it's cool to be able to see these players go toe-to-toe -to -toe in an official match, I guess, uh, on the Lucio. There you go. There's some <laughs> stats, too. All stats are pretend. There you go. But yeah, three zero uh, overall for Super Shy. I mean, I'm looking forward to see them go up against uh, EXO again because they had a three zero. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, sorry, a three two. Three sorry, two. went to uh, yeah. yeah map number five uh, the other day. So that rematch is going to be pretty damn sick. EXO, they only just managed to beat them in terms of a ranking coming into uh, the the group stage. So that should be a fun one to watch. And uh, well, there you go. Sorrow is up. Player of the match as well here. Yeah, Zara was sick. This he entire was series. Just really so many picks Soj. time and time again on the Sojin and the Cassidy. Yeah. Super good. Yeah, they made, they made Shmungus struggle for sure since Shmungus has never really found their footing in those first two maps. They, they just... They would either get picked off or just, you know, took too much damage and a lot of that was thanks to Zara. Yeah, I mean, some of these picks... Oh, that was that was a sick yeah. shot. Like SK was just descending there from the high ground. He just like hits the head. It's uh, <laughs> super sick. Uh, it's really cool seeing Sojin. I'm so, I'm glad Sojin is in the meta and Casty too. It's just very satisfying watching Casty hit the headshots. Just the boom, boom, boom. It, it's it's really awesome. And I think with um with this kind of uh, Sojin performance, like yeah, you just carry this on the Exa uh, Exa Oblivionia game. Yeah, they they might have uh, might have something to be scared of. It's going to be a good match for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, the first time around, it was a very, very close series. Could have gone either way. So I'm interested yeah. to hear it from them uh, themselves as well. Uh, just maybe some thoughts on what went wrong in that first match and how they can turn it around in the second one. Now we're currently waiting for the interview to be set up and then we hopefully get to chat with them. And if not, we're just going to do a loser interview. Because why not? <laughs> yeah, where's I'll SK? Just, I, Get her on I'll the just, line. I just request that. Alas, we will be in fact talking to the winner. Sorrow is uh, joining us here for a quick word. Sorrow, congratulations on the dub. I dare say it was an expected one. However, did you guys have any like protocols or rules into place uh, to not get dragged into all the clownery that people expected Schmungus to pull out of that? I mean, we always basically use as a rule to respect our enemies. So we don't really care who we're against. We always play to respect them. And so we don't like underestimate them and things get snowballed and then. That's smart. Yeah, That's very sense. smart. <laughs> How are you feeling against uh, about your matchup against Ex Oblivione again? Obviously it was a, a map five, but like, how do you feel? What went wrong in the first game? Is there anything you can kind of improve on? Well, I think, 
I mean, now we know how they play against. But since, since we've never like scrimmed in or anything, um, we're like kind of a new team, right? Like uh, no one's ever heard of us before. So uh, we're like kind of getting into the pro scene. Uh, so now we, how we know, like when we know how they play and stuff, I think it can be much easier to uh, play against them. Like now we can actually have a game plan. So I, I have a question because we actually just talked to a Beak who said something similar of like, is EXO a really good target for you guys as a team? As you said, you're a new up and coming team to sort of prove yourself of like, hey, we're up and coming in the EMEA. Is this an important match for you guys to prove that, hey, we're better than this team? I think the EXO match will be really important for us. Uh, it's like, I mean, they're, they're a really good team. Um, like they have really good players, like people who've been Overwatch League and everything. So if we manage to get the win against them, it'll like actually get our name out there as well. Uh, and prove that we are better than people think we are. I, I have a follow-up question as well that has nothing to do with your answer just there. How did you feel <laughs> when Sobek lost the Lucio 1v1 to SK? You know, are you looking for new Lucios? Are you looking to recruit <laughs> SK? How's that going? Um, I mean, it was disappointing. I, I really believed him. You know, I, I typed some inspirational messages in Shatter and everything, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. Like, uh, I, uh, I get out. Hope he works on the mechanics, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe the entire team should get together and tape review the one we won and just yeah. get some insights yeah. so Sobek can, Probably you know, probably. maybe not do that <laughs> next time around. Uh, well, we're going to see you and the squad going at it again in just a week's time against Exoblovioni. We're all very excited for that match, for that rematch, rather. So uh, thank you once more for joining us and best of luck in that game. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was Zoro. Awesome. I am also, I'm, I'm honestly very excited to see that rematch. And I do yeah. love that Ex Oblivion just turns out to be like the, the measurement. It's like the banana for scale of the <laughs> MEA. I, I really like that. That is such a good reference. <laughs> it works really well because does, like EXO yeah. is like a very solid team in EMEA. Obviously their roster feels like it did take a hit just recently, but like they're a very established organization that plays within the EMEA region for a long time. And a lot of players, not only to, you know, sort of make their team feel better, it's like a, it's like a pecking order kind of thing. Like SSG. Yeah realistically is unattainable for a lot of those teams right now so it's like where can we start it and then build from there yeah exactly like exo they're not a team to be scoffed at but not, and i was like uh what they were saying uh zero was saying about their team it's like we're kind of new to this pro scene and we're kind of new and we're trying to build our names up as individual players and as a team as well so like yeah i'm excited to see where they go from here you know, maybe not taking down space station but like hey exo verone is next on the sheet just got a bit one step at a time like boom 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 just keep knocking them out like death note you know we uh we do want to rub it in again though i know they won and we shouldn't hack on about it but i do want to rewatch that one we won lucio um because it now it's it's not just ex oblivioni you have to measure up against it's also sk's lucio and if you get to take down sk's lucio then you definitely deserve to be in this competition i'm making up <laughs> rules as we go but let's let's actually have a listen in even i beat you guys Huge. I'm still one. Bro, he's not one. one. He's not one, brother. Yeah, he's no longer one. I'm going mega. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hang on a second. Let's get cooking though. Don't help me. Don't help me. No, 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 no. no. Wait, hang on. Oh no, actually, they're breaking. They're breaking it. Can I help now? I got this guy. Someone point. You got this? Oh! Yeah. Diff. We win this. Ooh, diff. They did we not get wild now. enough. Yeah, yeah they did not get the wild. People gassing us. This game was we like popping off over goal. here. Yeah. What? I'm Come not on. even sure the team was aware of what is happening. Yeah. <laughs> they were really, really quiet. The Lucius just went off doing their own thing. I don't like, think we have SK good. actually on voice with us. SK, are you with us? Uh, Can you hear? Hello? It's like the start of a séance. Yes, <laughs> SK has joined us from the other world. SK, you are officially uh, the Lucio to beat. You're, you got the target on your back now. You're the Lucio everyone has to measure up against. Is that a lot of pressure? I, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. I, I even beat Funny Astro on the one we won, so like, we're up there. I know. We're up there right now. Two for two. Yeah. All right, SK, 
my goat, uh, I have a question for you real quick. So obviously you've yeah. taken down yeah. two, of, two of the best EU has to offer. If you were to take another name, <laughs> you want to put another notch on your belt, who do you want to oh, put on the oh. one against? Custer. I have. Oh, no. Okay, oh, yeah. okay, okay. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> it's not going to be close. You know, I'm going to fall over. I'm going to fall off the wall and fall to my death. <laughs> <laughs> we were suggesting Chiyo if you're interested. Yeah, how do you feel we, about Chiyo? Oh my god, I'm down. Chiyo, I'm down. I'm down. I'm so <laughs> down. That's so cool. Lock it in. Lock it in. We'll call, we'll call Chiyo after the broadcast, don't worry. <laughs> we're, like, but, but, yeah, 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 exactly. Even though we're in the connection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, SK, I know you guys are eliminated, but how how was the tournament for you? How was the group stage? Did you guys enjoy it? It looked like you were having fun with it. I had a blast. You know, there was not many expectations for Team Schmungus, but I believe that we exceeded them all. And we had fun during it. I got to play with my friends. Um, I'm happy. I couldn't be happier. Oh yeah, that's what it's all about, just having fun. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you made it to the group stage, which is kind of crazy against all, the, obviously, the teams in the Swiss stage. Pretty sick stuff. Yeah, hopefully we see you again in the next group stage. Fingers crossed. Yes, yes, hopefully we can have a very good Butchels next some stage as well. Our Butchels was amazing this stage, so that's why we got in, and I'm grateful. Well, yeah. So are we, because we got treated to some <laughs> top-notch clownery. SK, thank you so much for joining us, and best of luck in whatever is to come next for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Good luck awesome. to SK and Team Schmungus, um, the winners of the hearts, for sure. I got my producer in my ear being like, we're going to make you play, uh, yeah. SK. Yeah, you are I'm playing. Gonna loo okay, no, that's it. I'm, I'm practicing. Jaws, you need to learn Lucio because I need a practice partner on the Lucio duels. Maybe we can 2v1 Lucio her? <laughs> yeah, can I, yeah, can I phone two, a friend? Oh my god, okay, that is insane. Okay. SK oh, versus me Lucio and Jaws. Versus SK. <laughs> I, I, my Lucio is horrible. It's my <laughs> worst so support is by mine. far. And Custa, I mean, oh, he's rather he's on, he's on the washed side of yeah. the spectrum. So okay. maybe if we're all ganging up together, we made one mediocre a Lucio. 3v1. <laughs> SK, and then um, lose the SK. Yeah. <laughs> but ooh, content, it's all about the content. Uh, speaking of content, we of course have more of that coming up with match number three, which will be fought out between, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, Woman Army and Sheer Cold. There, I got there. <laughs> they will be going at it next in yet another elimination match of the EMEA, EMEA side of things. All of that happening after the break, so don't go anywhere.
Heroes, this is your game, your team, and now this is your league. This is your community's future, and this is your prize pool. Win your matches, battle for your progression. Go far, go further, even as far as the Esports World Cup. It is your time to shine. Build your team, register your team, go the distance with your team. Face it, Lee. Powered by you. Welcome back everyone, Zoe here joined by Joss and Costa and we are getting ready for our next elimination match of Group B at the end of which we will have to say goodbye to either Sheer Cold or a one-man army. Oh, yeah. You looked shocked, Jack. Mm, like, I'm extremely shocked. Shook me no way. Like, Sheer Cold! <laughs> oh, it's so cold in here, no, one-man army. I'm just getting flashbacks from one-man army noob 2 back in Modern Warfare 2, that's what it is. That's oh. I'm shocked. <laughs> I think they're different things, Jaws. I don't I think, think it's so the same too. people. <laughs> the generations are definitely not the same either. My word, I can't imagine. There's probably people out there like, Modern Warfare 2, you mean the new one? <laughs> yeah, sure. You mean the new one? That makes me feel old, Jack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we are on the older side. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. That we're wise. We are wise, she said, yeah. as she's heading towards her 40s. Either way, a one-man army. Uh, both the teams actually made some changes from stage one to two. So let's quickly go over them. Uh, one-man army said goodbye to one of their support players, I believe, and they added Wex and support player Strebor, the later going up against his former team, Sheer Cold. Yeah, I, I think at, at this sort of uh, level, you know, these teams are obviously and players are all really strong, but you're going to see a lot of mixing and matching from stage to stage, you know, people just trying to play with friends. So we uh, look over here at Sheer Cold. I think this is a team that we've, we've seen a little bit more of. These play, na uh, names ring a bell. Romani, I, I know him primarily as the Roadhog one trick that, uh, well, used to be a one trick a lot more uh, in my ranked games, but phenomenal tank player in this team. You know, it, it's, it's been a good one, even though they just barely scraped out of the Swiss stage. I mean, this is. Have those guys played with each other before? Because that I'm not sure of. I just know that they yeeted their entire eight man roster and brought in these players. <laughs> I, I think I think this roster. I don't pro quote me on this uh, because I, I, I think the, I, I think this roster um, has played together, but I don't think under the sheer cold banner. I think the sheer cold team changed, but I think different players. I could be wrong about this. I don't know. Yeah, as I said, like these these players, I know of them, but the teams mix and match so much that it's very difficult to uh, keep track of all these things. But one thing that is worth noting about these two teams is they actually played in the Swiss stage and Aoma. Uh, a one-man army actually beat Sheer Cold. Uh, 2-0, there was a somewhat competitive, uh, but it was a 2-0 win, so Sheer Cold trying to come back for a grudge match to keep their uh, stage two dreams alive. Yeah, Sheer Cold, like Sony was saying too, had a pretty tough matchup in the Swiss. Like, they lost every matchup against a top 16 team. So they're really looking to kind of cement themselves here, but this could be quite a, a tough upper tilt battle against one man army like especially after going off of a 2-0 over sheer cold we'll have to wait and see like i said before there's a lot of revenge matches over the last couple of days and something that you picked up on actually scott was the fact that um as the seeding going from stage one to stage two is kind of more solidified with different teams um <laughs> it's not like also a pure gold team versus like space station gaming like a lot of the top tier teams are facing off against each other fairly like earlier on in the swiss stages so you know sheer cold and one man army there's a lot to kind of prove for both of them. They want to like get in the upper epsilons, but Sheikhold need to get through one man army first. We'll have to wait and see how it rolls out though. As uh, Romani, JQ is the pick. Uh, now that's JQ, I, pretty good for Romani, I will say. One of his better heroes. Bro. Yeah, this is definitely just a comfort pick more than anything else. Romani sure. you know, is known for, you know, being a very good Junker Queen player. Um, just sort of like, that's what they want to play around. So. Seeing something different here, it's going to be on Ollie as the Baptiste to stay alive. Because Sheer Cold, they're going to wait for an opening and they're going to speed in as a whole group, especially because they're playing the Genji. They need to be fast tempo to be able to punish the, the survivability of one-man army. Oh, points unlocked, Romani. Put himself on it, but the problem is the JQ just takes so much damage. Yeah. The Arisa does everything the JQ does, it feels like, but just better and you just survive forever. Um, and the problem is, you saw Romani have to use the shout defensively. You really want to use that aggressively so you can get into the fights. 1v1 duel here. Oh, does manage to get away, killer. But first cap, it seems to be going back and forth. Romani is still low. Avag is taken down by killer on the re-peak. 
And that should be Sheer Cold taking this team fight, but Romani's getting exceptionally low. Exceptionally low. Diamatic finishes him off. Caps not come through just yet, but the staying power of the Arisa is going to be in full effect. Uh, full effect. Soaks also in at fours. Only with a nice couple of uh, kills at the very end there. But Romani, you can see how much damage and like how much like survivability Romani has and like how much uh, he's able to interact with the rest of the fight in just in the ult charge. 40% which feels just like passive ult charge at this point to uh, Theomatic's ult. Yeah, and that's just, you know, Junker Queen's difficult. And if they are going to play the Queen, they need to play faster. Like, they just have to. Otherwise, they, the same thing's going to happen where they're just taking too much damage. They're never going to get in. Killer's 1 HP. And Romani's dead to nade. It's a reset. Reset angle, I think. Me thinks a reset angle. There we go. Yeah, that didn't even cost them an ultimate. Maybe a pulse bomb by the wayside, but... For the most part, it's still just like poking and prodding at Romani once again struggling to get in. All right. Myas, the Genji for Sheer Cold is 70% uh, towards that blade. Like you said, comfort picks for sure. Want to go fast, but Romani, man. Romani steps up, spin. Romani steps up, spin, spin. Romani steps up, Arisa is fortified. <laughs> what do you do, Logan? What do you do? He's going to be so sad when he gets Terra Surge here. Oh, it's going to be big, actually. Ooh. Oh, it is. I was just surprised they didn't pull that. Glocks down, killer. There's the, uh, there's the sand bear on the high ground. Nat locks, not receiving the beat in time. As Avio does take him down, and, uh, well, killer. He's got something to say about this window. Just ignores it completely. There's the overclock. There's the damage we wanted to see from Sheer Cold. Not as big as we thought. That Terra Surge not getting all too much. But I really like the wall. Like, that was much better, as you saw, right? Like, they, they just pull the trigger. They go in with the rush, they, uh, with the shout. They go in with the speed. They drop the bait, and they just run over their opponents. They need to keep doing that. I want to see them hold close. Maybe enable Muse to use this blade. Because there's no sound barrier on the other side for a one-man army. Yeah, landing the uh, ultimate here could be quite tough for Romani, although everybody's going to be grouped up in the choke point. He's thanking for the map, the map in that regard, the geometry. There's the blade, slashing at the high noon. A lot of deflect damage. Avio does end up actually going down. Really good lamp there, but uh, not enough to actually save Avio even in the high noon. Really good, just uh, this is what we want to see, right? The tempo game just up to a new level, sheer cold. Instead, 40 plus percent still with the uh, Rampage in their back pocket. Yeah, and that, that's the big thing there. Now they're getting into the old cycling as well. If Romani can hit a really good uh, Annihilation here, sorry, um, Rampage here, then all of a sudden Natlux will, uh, Natlux will get up to the uh, the Kitsune Rush. So then all of a sudden everything starts, you know, funneling into each other. And that's how you have to play this composition. You can see them baiting in a one-man army, wanting them to step forward so they can get a better Rampage. Romani's already low, struggling to get kept alive. Oh, nice little boob. Oh, Ooh. I mean, yeah. Maybe it also ends up going down. That's two for one there in favor of a uh, one man arm, in favor of Sheer Cold. Even. They haven't got their tank, but I mean, without uh, the Lucio and especially their Cassidy, it's going to be hard for one man army to get in there. And they have a rush here as well for Sheer Cold. So they're in, they're in a very good position. Killer coming up to the uh, the overclock as well. The window should go up. If I were if I was Sheer Cold, I'd be willing to give this up if the window goes down too early. Yeah, there's the window. Are they going to give it up? No, Rampage for Romani. Oh, good knife. Amazing knife, but even better spear coming through from Theomatic. Cancelling the Rampage. That's the first Rampage of the round, mind you. Point is at 99% for Sheer Cold now. Killer trying to get his name on the scoreboard once again. Oli just duking him out on the map. Killer can get any shots down, but it doesn't matter. Sky to Sir is going to be able to kill on the Tracer. This is it. One man army. Just denying so much of that pressure from that overclock and denying the rampage as well. The two big tools that Sheer Cold had to swing this in their favor and take the round. Yeah, and then just that, that javelin just absolutely did everything, right? If Romani was able to get that anti heal, it just would have turned the tempo of the fight in such a big way. So now they're the ones having to rush towards the point. You can see Sheer Cold holding close, trying to make it as difficult as possible for, uh, yeah, Sheer Cold trying to get to the point. One minute, just making it as difficult as possible for them to get Sound there. Sam Barrier. Very early. early. Very early. They've got to get in the back line. Sam Barrier comes out for one-man army, and now they can just push on to the point. Romani already super low, though. Both beats have been used. Here comes the lamp. Going to make sure one-man army, the rest of the gang, are staying alive. Myers is just capping the point ever so slowly, but now comes the window. And now you've got to be fearful if you're sheer cold. So much damage, and there you go. Reflection. A reflection kill. 
from AVO reflecting a magnade to Natlocks. Yeah, blame Does that, for that go one. the full distance again? If you deflect a magnade, does it go like to Nani? I think it does. Surely, right? Yeah, Probably. That's funny. That's really silly, but it was. Use, use it against the Cassidy, and then the Cassidy can't roll. Take yeah. that. <laughs> Take that, Cass. Nice <laughs> round from one man army. Yeah, you, you saw Sheer Cold really starting to find their footing and it felt like they were getting into the groove later in that round, but Wonder Man Army was just able to hold on. The staying power of the Baptiste, like you can see, every time they're putting up the window, Romani just can't do anything. Like, as soon as Romani peeks his head around, he's taking too much damage. So if Romani can mitigate the damage a little bit and they can almost go for more flanks and routing around to catch people off on Wonder Man Army, I think that should work better for them. TPs, same stuff for Sheer Cold, little comfort. Skitzer doesn't have a trace, an enemy tracer to deal with on one man army. Myas on the Genji or Killer on the Sojourn is going to have to be the one to duel out with the tracer. You can't let Skitzer get free poke damage. We've seen what that can do before. But I mean, dude, the Junker Queen here, I guess, is better because it's not as open, right? But still, you're just going to get rolled from every angle possible. And Skitzer comes up with a kill onto Killer. Yeah, Skits is just shooting and poking down Romani, and because they don't have a tracer of their own as well, Skits is just completely free. That's two for Skitsa right now. They're putting damage on a Romani. Like, this is, Skitsa tracer is going to be a problem. So almost four kills in the fight there. Three, uh, sorry, for Skitsa. One thing I was just thinking about, too, with the JQ, JQ definitely got worse with the DPS passive. Like, yes. no armor. You require so much healing. You have a shell, which is only over health. Like, the J and the JQ, a lot of uh, sustainability comes from the passive healing, which gets reduced because of the DPS passive. Like, it's real rough for JQs right now. JQ mains, uh, looking pretty sad. Check especially, on your local JQ main. Yeah, especially for uh, a meta where Riss is still very tanky. So it's just like, the reason people just don't play Dunk Queen because Riss is just better. And like, we're going to see another pick come out here for a one-man army taking down Killer this time. And they're just hounding them, corralling them into a corner that doesn't feel like they're ever able to sustain through. Oh, it's big or reflected there. That would have been quite, uh, pretty cool if you got a kill off of that, but not to be. Go for the cars. Yeah, do not get booped into the cars, please. Okay, ultimate's coming up. Now Lux has the rush. We saw them find value with this last time, yeah. This allows them to just play incredibly fast. But they can just... But Romani's not there with them. Infinite rotate. Nice bit of deflection damage there. No, uh, no beats uh, just yet for one man army. They're all good. They just kind of back off. That's a lot of headshots. There's a lot of skulls in his periphery. AVO with that high noon. Yeah, okay, don't throw the nade back into that one. I mean, one-man army. This is just a stomp right now. Sheer cold. Got nothing to say in these fights, especially using the sound barrier there. You're hoping you could sound barrier, go through the window and just run them over, but just unable to do so because the dead eye just zoned them all. I also think there was a miscommunication there. Something happened where Romani wasn't with them with that initial rush into the opposition team, and that right. just meant that they didn't have enough damage to take anyone out. So now one-man army can just use the sound barrier of their own, either against the blade or the uh, rampage that's going to come eventually, but Romani's still only 80%. All right, here's the blade. Got to see summon. Oh, so Soaks is already dead. The lamp's good, and there's the sound barrier. Oh, up in the skies. Wow, Myers was so high up in the sky there. My God. All right, oh, Killer. Come up clutch. Killer needs some damage. He needs some kills, but shut down completely. That anti coming through for the rampage. It's good for two for Romani. Three, in fact. Okay, the rampage finding insane value. Still pretty low. And there's the pause. Damn it. Okay. Unlucky. Unlucky. Unlucky pause. All right. Well, now we now we wait things out. Romani does get the kill on to, to Ollie, so it should feel like this should be a sheer cold uh, team fight win. We saw what they did last time, right? They got to 99, and then they, they slowly started to, you know, get percentage up. So anything is possible if they start cycling their ultimates. But as I said, I like the idea of sheer cold playing your own strengths. It just doesn't feel like they're playing proactively enough for my liking. Yeah, the proactiveness, and you, like you said before, like the small miscom of Romani being in main when they're trying to take the flank on the right-hand side with the rush, like that was a little bit rough. Um, they didn't end up winning that fight, of course. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, Romani just got a 3K with the Rampage, but you're still at 99% on control, like, you know, fraudulent game mode or not, like that's a rough comeback. Like, what are you going against control? 
Nothing. Let's move on. I, I, okay, are you ever going to argue with me again on broadcast? I feel like okay. every time I ask... Yes, I question. will. Okay, yes, I will, actually, Scott. We're in hybrid is a good game mode. Okay. I, I saw you somewhere say hybrid was not the best game mode in the game. Like hybrid is a terrible game mode, because you can draw it. I hate game modes that you can draw. It, 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 getting stuck and drawing oh, is like the worst the worst feeling ever and i also think first point chokes maybe it's just two cp ptsd that seems to get me going because i think every time i have to capture an individual point like that just ptsd alarm bells just start going off i can't believe you don't think hybrid's the best game mode because it is it's literally just a mixture of two different game modes so the variety is is there like you say escort you didn't you say escort was the best game mode uh, yeah, I, well, I really like Escort. I, okay. I, I, I like Escort. Escort is second for sure, but Hybrid is easily the best. Okay, Not so only does it have the best maps, right? It also is a variety. You're, it's a variety go. It's, it's like a party pack game mode. Oh, we're playing. Oh, we're playing a little bit. Of capture the point here, and then we push the payload. But you said variety. What are the two things that you're combining? You're combining Escort and. Control, because you control the point. No, not control, because we're not starting on either side. What mode? What other mode are you are you merging with Escort? 2CP assault. Yes, exactly. You're using half of 2CP. Yeah, see? You suck. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> this sucks. Uh, please roll the trailer. Please roll the trailer. We need, me and Scott need to have some heated, uh, heated words off stream. We're going to punch that. this out. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> Let's make history. This has got my name written all over it. Tectonic Shock is ready to rock! Taking names from strata to stratosphere. Welcome back. <laughs> Dude, this guy sucks. Thank God he's only I'm not letting you tend us to a break and then just accept that we're moving on. <laughs> I, 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 want, I want it in 4K. Hybrid's good. Chat can decide. Also, by the way, just to keep you updated on what's going on, apologies for the for the brief delay here, but it's an auto-pause thing, so when a player does DC, it auto-pause, it's like, boom, making sure nothing goes crazy and making sure someone's not having to hold the, the control to, like, pause key, you know? So, yeah, we are just waiting for the player to reconnect. It's just their internet was having a couple of issues, so we're just making sure everything's fair. We're not having a anybody play a 4v5. Let's uh, bring Zoe in though. Zoe can finally settle the debate. What is the game mode? What is the best game mode, Zoe? What is the best game oh, mode? Why, and why is it hybrid? Oh, well, I thought I'm just being brought in to tell you that you're wrong, Jack. Yes. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, if you sorry. say control, I'm gonna 
flip this desk and you won't. I see I really do like control. Like I really like control as well. Control, control is, is definitely up there. Yeah. It is. It is my favorite because it, it's a downright brawl. Yeah. I like a good brawl. I like to just click heads or, in my case, miss all the shots and let someone else do the, you know. But... Hit them in the body sometimes and yeah, then hopefully they like, die. Hit the general <laughs> target. That is correct. I don't know. I, I, control is just the most hype, and I feel yeah. like you get the most surprises. I think that's why I like the mode, especially in in competition yeah. and competitive settings, because even the underdog, uh, underdog can like can scrap one out and control. Yeah. That's why also if if the uh, if one team wins and it's the team I'm not cheering for and it was on control then it literally doesn't matter. Yeah, or just control. Doesn't matter. Exactly. It's just control. Exactly. Doesn't it's just control. Like th that, that's <laughs> been a, a historical thing though to be fair. Like a lot of underdog teams will win or like the team that's going to lose the series is it will win control and then the other team will just win the next 3 games. Like yeah. that's just, yeah. that's Historically, that has just been the case, and that's why it's and that is why it's fraudulent. Book closed. We're no, it's a, no book closed. <laughs> I think Jaws likes hybrid the most because that's where Torbjorn is the most effective. I feel like Torbjorn yeah, is the best on hybrid maps. You're. I don't even know what the word for it is, but you 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 seem like very excited whenever Torp enthusiast. The scene. Okay, enthusiastic for sure. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. I also like seeing Alari. Alari Has it ever sucks. worked out it's in fun. recent history, though? Pelican on M80 the other day. They did yeah, go to Pelican a map number five. Play play they did go to a map number five, but Pelly did. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it was Torb that turned the tide for them, Dude. though. I generally do not think so. However, if you have strong opinions about the best mode ever and why it's not whatever Jack says, uh, feel free <laughs> to tweet them at That's us. Crazy. Or write them in the Instagram comments, I guess. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> that's where all the that? discussions happening is in this. <laughs> yeah, right? that's so where they're gonna go there. The five head discussions really take place. <laughs> the Instagram comments. Because you don't have the character limits. Like you can, so you exactly. can really go off on Wait, the Insta. There's no character limits on an Instagram comment. I, I have never that. written an Instagram comment. I have no idea. I don't think so. I'm gonna start putting my essays on Instagram. In my yeah, I mean. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna figure that out for you. I'll do the research. I'm gonna throw in a Laura Ipsum on some random person's Instagram post and, and see how far I can. She's just gonna start copy pasting trash talk in your on your post, Scott. That's what she's. That's, that's well, jokes what's on you. Now. I don't use Instagram. Yeah, okay, some of your old posts, digging up your old posts, bro. And here I was going out of my way to tag you on Instagram. <laughs> Well, today I learned. No, but uh, seriously, of course, like get involved in the conversation. There is tons of uh, great conversations happening all over social media, and we love uh, you to be part of that. And if you'd rather chat in person, you can also meet us on LAN in Dallas. That's right. Tickets are on sale be right there. now as well, so make sure we're going to be there no matter what, because we get paid for it. You will not get paid for it. In fact, you have to pay to get there. <laughs> But we so would That's love crazy. to see you at that event. I'm really good at selling out, <laughs> as you can tell. Uh, now, here's the link. Get your tickets. Uh, we're going to head into a very quick break, and then afterwards, we hope to be back with this series as we're still waiting for the issues to be resolved.
Hello, hello, welcome back. We're about to jump into the game again. Sorry about the small delay there, of course. Internet issues cannot be always solved. Someday, you know, it's like sometimes you do see and sometimes the internet provider says, no, not today, sir. Just not fix today. the internet, Jaws. Just fix, just fix it. It. <laughs> it. It isn't that difficult, yeah. So I think we're hoping to get the player in uh, into the game. Uh, I believe they haven't been able to get back in the game and due to yeah. just the way that the rules work, they've been given there a lot of time, so they will have to play 45. Wait. Unless uh, they're in, they're alive. Oh okay. my, the Problem split. Solved. Crisis avoided, averted. Okay. Unless, uh, unless they're just, I don't know. Anyway, we're playing. It is 99 to 13% sheer cold in control. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how this goes. That was a lot of ultimates by sheer cold to get back into this fight and start winning this one. So only with the window can potentially do big things. Oh, nice my. shots by Abo. Triple hit there, on to Natlocks. Oh, oh, oh. Yo, okay, okay. Well, that's round. And that's map, I think, Scott. Damn, that was anticlimactic. Sorry about that, guys, but the pause. <laughs> but there you go. There's the round. There's the map. One man army up 1 0 in this series. Avo We're looking up to the team name, One Man Army. Just literally walked yeah, in, clicked a couple of heads, moves on, wins the round. Dude was like, let me. Oh, he's... <laughs> They're playing on a phone hotspot. I'm just getting word in. They're playing on a phone hotspot. Legendary stuff. If, I've been getting it wrong this whole time. If AVO can hit shots like that without an Ethernet cable, then what's your excuse, huh? What's your excuse? Yeah, that's true. That's true. You could be just like Abba. Yeah, no, honestly, absolutely popping off. And I think overall, you know, a one-man army just have shown that they're playing very well, playing around the wrist comp, a much more traditional style. Oh, shit, cold. They're coming in, trying to play this Junker Queen, trying to rush in. They win a fight here and there with lots of ultimates, but it feels like in the neutral, they're just losing over time, just taking too much damage. Yeah, just uh, way too much. I mean, Romani is just kind of bleeding out on the front lines like 99% of the time on the Queen. Maybe it's a little bit better on Midtown, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if Romani wants to change things up a little bit um, as we go on to this next one. It was picked by Sheer Cold after all, so you know, you're expecting at least a little something something there. Let's jump into some highlights before we get into the next game or the next map, sorry. Yeah, I'm interested to see what's going to happen uh, upcoming on this Midtown because it feels like if that's a map that they've chose, they have to either have confident in their Junker Queen strategy or something different because I think what they're doing right now isn't working. And honestly, a lot of that goes on to, you know, just like how free Skitza has been on this Tracer. Like Skitza's just running rings around the opposite of Sheer Cold because, oh, nice jab one. Gets me every time. Uh, but Skitza's just like completely free because they're playing against the Genji. Just feels like Skitza's able to run around, just throw pulse bombs as much as they want, charge. And they're also just putting endless damage onto Romani as well. Yeah, and that's the, that's the real problem. Your healing resources are pretty strained to begin with, but even more so. I mean, if they were going far, there was a couple of good, uh, like, push. That was a really good boop. Yeah, well, really good boop. Um, helping out the casting. Yeah, if you're able to just play quick, and I think especially on non-control maps, because you're, you are against the clock, but even more so on control, because they're just kind of slowly winning. Like on Midtown, you can actually have like full reset pushes. So we'll see if Sheer Cole can kind of uh, use that to their advantage with the Queen comp. Just looking at the numbers, that'll, that'll do it. Just the, the huge K kill, differ uh, kill death differential. Yeah. Just all the way in AMAs. Uh, no rough, corner. but uh, let's jump into some uh, one-man army comps at the very end of that game. Left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going with the take left. Take one left. Take left. Lucia, come. Lucia, come. Lucia, come. Lucia, come. Lucia, come. I'm running at this guy. I'm running at this guy. Wait, don't jump. Rush them. Rush them. Rush them. Wait, wait, wait. Queen is on. 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 Stack me, Abo. Stack me, Abo. There's Lucia. I mean, no. So funny. Funniest round on the planet. Nah. She just. Funniest, funniest round, round on the planet. planet. <laughs> like, what? Oh my god, I love it. I love it. Hey, I, honestly, it, it can be difficult to come in after a long pause and just sort of like come in and just play it, especially if you're playing on hotspots. So massive props yeah. to them for being able to come back and sort of stabilize that round. I mean, a lot of the time too, it's not only kind of a... Um, it's kind of, a, you know, it slows down the broadcast a little bit and it's like sucks to have tech issues and stuff. But also like for the players, it kind of affects you like quite considerably. If you're feeling in the zone, like tempo's super high, like, yeah, you want to be just go, 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 you know? But if there's a pause and there's a, a small lull in the action, it can be a bit like, ah, okay, you lost your mojo. But feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good going into the next map now. Midtown. 
see the pigeons just uh, having a well, the pigeons little do it. vibe. I'm well, just uh, probably just eating. <laughs> the pigeons just eat like 90% of their lives. Yeah, so Avo still chilling on the hotspot. So the internet's pulling completely dead. So I, I'm curious to see how that's going to go I mean, in Double like the long hotspot, term. Actually, oh my, the strongest, <laughs> the strongest hotspot of all time, just holding in there. You're going like, to wrap be tin foil around packets. the antenna. Yeah, right? surely, like, yeah. Surely. I mean, God's strongest hotspot is all I'm saying, bro. <laughs> like, geez. Strongest hotspot in the planet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Run off 6G. Interestingly enough, Sheercold is going to play the exact same composition here on the Midtown defense. So they must have some idea of strategy. What I've seen a lot of people do here on the defense is if you're playing like a faster comp, you essentially chase them. Eh? As soon as a one-man army tries to go in any direction, they're just going to run them down with the Junker Queen. Because just like we talked about on uh, Oasis, you cannot be spending too much time just like poking and prodding as the Junker Queen team because you're never going to out-sustain the Orisa. See how they want to make their rotation. Use already very low. Nice knife. Forces the lamp. Oh, that railgun. Nice dash follow up, too. Didn't end up landing a dash. It was actually Romani. Just with the left click, taking down the bat. That's what you need to do as well, right? Yeah, lovely. You need to be hitting these knives and you need to be hitting the back line. They do end up trading, though. Natlox and Killer are dead. We see how quickly uh, one man army can regroup and how long they kind of stay where they are. Look at, obviously, Skids' positioning got forced a little bit there, sadly. But this could be a quick regroup here for one man army. Damn, they weren't able to punish either of the stragglers. Strebro and Skits are able to stay alive, and now they're coming in. There's a lot less pressure on them. They should be able to take more space without all that threats of the rail and the knife like happened last time. Skits is putting some point pressure on. Oh my, Soax needs to be very careful. Skits doing so much work on the back. All the pocket. Just forcing so much, uh, so many cooldowns. Snowball does end up falling first to Myas after all. Yeah, poking and prodding. You can see the issue, right? They're, they're doing a great job this time of like Muse is punishing. They're going in, they're playing for their own damage. Also, just a lot more knives landing for Omani is really opening things up. It's a minute and a half off the clock here for Sheer Cold. They got ultimates coming up across the board. It's looking a lot better for them. Understanding now why they picked mid down. Okay. This makes a lot of sense. They're d definitely playing at like a different tempo. And also, it feels like one-man army. They want a death ball to uh, to the mega health pack room, it feels like, but they're just really unable to do so. Just getting yeah. caught out, like you said, by Romani's knives. Well, they see Gracie fly past the Lucio, so now is their time to strike. There's no blade for the side of Sheer Cold, but the Rampage is going to land. A lot of cues. There's no sound barrier. This is a lot of cues. Sheer Cold throwing in three ultimates to win that fight. The Rampage, that sound barrier, and... Uh, the rush. Gonna get, get a team kill, but now they might be in a little bit of tr uh, in a little bit of trouble. Scott, sound barrier available from one man army. Plus, they can kite with this uh, high noon. Yeah, the the good thing for sheer cold is that the the high noon isn't that effective of an ultimate, right? It's not really going to win you team fights for the most part. What? Okay, what? Right, he's dead. Never mind. Huh? Okay, they, okay, so if they get a solid disengage here, that's really smart. So they potentially get another fight. Well, well, how much time we got? Is there a moment to be able to get back? Two ticks done. No, they're that's backing up. They're better. backing up. Yeah. Yeah. Just taking an eye guard. They know their comp as well. They won't be good on like a staggered fight. They're not going to be able to really get away. So it makes a lot of sense them just backing up. They forfeited a tick earlier on, and I can't. Uh, kind of came back to bite them. Sadly. Oh, nice headshot. Oh, that Genji's actually kind of. Okay. All good, Suzu. The headshot on the engagement there for Myers kind of put a thorn in his side, and he couldn't actually just go in super deep. And when Nalox going down to yeah, sheer cold, can't even try for this hold, this close hold. That's a really bad fight as well, because at least if you lost the fight with the blade, you would hope that they'd use the sound barrier. But Streber, hands of steel, holds on to that sound barrier, recognizing that the Genji was just too low to be able to commit to it and do any damage. So now they have the high ground, they still have the sound barrier, they have another window. All the ultimates for a one-man army is going to be difficult for Sheergold to deal with. Killer with the overclock is going to have to be the hero. Killer. Oh, no, the Lucio. Sturble. I think got hit okay. by the knife, got pulled into the Junker Queen. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's like a really weird position to like wall ride. All right, a lot of cues though available for one man army. The high ground is just really the uh, point where Sheer Cold want to oh. bunker down. Okay. 
killer. Okay, got Suzu. They really want to bunker down up here because if they forego this high ground to one man army, uh, there's no way they survive on this low ground. There's just yeah. absolutely no way. And one man army know it. They're, they're pushing the high ground right now. Good knife again. Skitzer is still pushing the payload though. Yeah, they have to send Myers to try and uh, check the tracer. Yeah, and look how many resources they have to give towards Muse to just help they keep them in the fight. The, the worst thing for a one-man army is that the, the ultimate advantage that they have is being pre essentially lost. They're going to go in with the rush against the high noon. No They're going to fight Avo. They got Avo. There's the rampage, though. Does hit three, but the sound barrier comes out just in time for one-man army. Theomatic and Swivel are fine as Romani is having to rejoin the rest of his team on that payload, because you are right, Scott. Slowly but surely moving. Pulse Bomb hits the payload. Killer dodges out the way. It's still got the slide and the overclock. One-man army appear from the sewers and gets sent straight back. Killer with a, a fantastic shot there on the Lucio as he just whips around 180s, scores it, takes down Ollie with a minute and 30 seconds to go, Scott. Oh my army looking very worse for wear. Yeah, they used everything and the kitchen sink in that fight. Weren't able to win it. I, I like the idea that they were playing into the high ground, but after Avo died in that sound, uh, the, in the uh, high noon, it just feels like they didn't have the punching power. Even though they did have pressure on the point, Chia Cole just fall back and then slowly clean everyone up one by one. So with one minute remaining, it's unlikely that one man army is going to get another ult cycle. See if they're just going to play it slow, try and find some picks, but this could be difficult. Could be really tough, yeah. All right, pushing up high ground. Third oh, time's a charm. Romani, super low. Shout already used. Suzu already used. They have to get off height now. And this is exactly where One Man Army wanted to be. Their initial plan coming to fruition. Although Romani's got something to say about it. He's trying to go to high ground. Oh, he's dead. All right, 30 seconds to go. One Man Army pushing in. And uh, Sheer Calder trying to make this one hurt as the Genji just dashes through. Avio's oh. 1 HP. Might as well be one. That was one Shuriken would have done it, but he can't quite secure the kill. Natlock Suzu's himself as he gets to the point. Even Swift steps away. And now the third touch comes in. Blade pulled. But it's too little, too late. Sheer Cold lose a second point. One man army refill their time bank. One minute and 40 seconds now for third. I respect the attempt there from Muse to pull that blade. There's a world where if you get a couple of resets, you can start cleaning everything up and you can win that fight. They were doing a great job of juggling the point, but just too much damage. Avo hitting too many shots. And now that's going to be an ultimate they wish they had back because now a one man army, they're moving. And this. These are much more longer corridors. You can't get as many effective, like, rushes situations. So this might be a hard point for Sheik Hold to play this Junker Queen. Yeah, I mean, but this is straight away. You can, uh, you can just eat the Rampage. Just eat the Rampage? But then they're going to have a Sound Barrier for you as well. So it's not... No, like I don't think they've got Sound Barrier just yet. There's the, uh, there's the Rampage. Not the Rampage, sorry. There's the Rush, even. Rampage oh, available, that knife up. going super wide, but he's in this rush, so that shout's going to be up in just a moment. There's the Rampage. Oh, mm. my word. Sound Barrier comes in just in time for Sturbo to save the team, and now Ra Ra Romani is in no man's land. However, Skitter bails him out, at least finds one... Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not good. One-man army. Uh, yeah, they're just going to clean up. Skitter, they got one kill on the Lucio. Like, maybe that's a W, but no, sheer cold. They end up just falling over. Sound Barrier is still in the hands of Sheer Cold. Same with that Overclock. They've got answers for this window. But yeah, but they just need to be careful because if they try and take this fight with how far back a one-man army is playing, they, they might have to use the Sound Barrier way earlier than they want to, especially with the window. The damage is going to come out. Like, you just drop it in this situation. Oh, I mean, the window, the high noon. It might be good for some kills. Avio needs to find something because Ollie's already dead. Nothing. Everybody was hiding. Everybody was uh, just escorted themselves behind some cover before well, they just took him out. That was a, a very aggressive window in high noon there, but the sound barrier just helped Sheer Cold stay alive and not get insta-deleted. Two points and then some. Two points and 88 meters for one man army. A little bit of a struggle there uh, throughout all of those points. Sheer Cold's comp really paying off for them. You can see why they chose this map. Yeah, and I, I really liked Sheik Hold's play in that final fight, right? Like, they, they recognize, hey, we can just use the sound barrier to help us close the distance on a one-man army. And once they get on top of them, you can see Avo's, like, just can't find a target to even shoot at with a high noon window directly in their face. So Sheik Hold playing the composition a lot more to its win conditions. So now the question becomes, though, it's really difficult to play these Arisa, uh, sorry, these uh, Junker Queen, Lucio, Kiriko compositions on attack. Because how do you close the distance? How do you get through these uh, through these chokes? That's this is going to be the uphill battle in this map for the composition that Sheer Cold likes to play. Yeah.
being able to defend, being able to like hold in this big archway too. It's so, so rough. You have to play as just a death ball. Do you take the mega health pack room? Because that seems like a death sentence. It feels like you just want to int onto the back line over and over again. Because you're just getting a spammed out if you go to mega. Yeah, I think it's going to be about getting Muse in position and then... I think if they try and go like too many like flank routes, you're just gonna once again take too much damage. So I think just whatever the shortest distance to be able to get on top of Ollie or Abo is going to be the key. Uh, the key. Oh, we vibing. Yo, let's go. Nice, I like that. Yeah, my girl is. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, play that one. Yo, someone put it on. We can play that still, right? I don't think we can, but I can sing it for you if, if that would help. DMCA is <laughs> sending a hitman to your location. <laughs> Well, they're using right. actually not DMCA, that's the law, but... All right, here we go. Here's the rotation. Oh, well, oh, at least in the last what? round. Yeah, I was going to say, wait. <laughs> wait, that's not weird at all. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It's the uh, same combos from last round. Okay, kill it. Okay, someone has to... So please, someone look at the tracer. Okay, Ollie's dead. Nice little knife pull again from Ramani. It's been their bread and butter, honestly. Spreading it with that yeah. knife, too. Warman Army losing their Batiste is pretty rough, but... Shikon aren't taking these positions quickly. Okay, they've let Oli come back, and Oli's on the Kiriko now, so there's going to be a re-engage. Yeah, they're going to get another opportunity to fight. One tick up, but yeah, as you, Skitsa is just running around for free in this back line, and they're just mitigating the damage, but eventually he's going to fly and pick just like that one. Two ticks. Literally no one. He's the Invisible Man. He might just be the Invisible Man. We found him. <laughs> Post bomb locked out. Ends up missing, but still he's done a lot of damage, to be fair. I mean, Soaks is definitely going to go down. Remind him, it's the back swing. There we go. Two ticks, though, uh, for Sheer Cold. They just need another one of those picks. They just need to kill Ollie again. But Ollie switches to the Kiriko. If that knife lands, like, you, you're good. Yeah, and, and it's also the Suzu versus the Rampage that'll eventually come out. Being able to, yeah, being able to cleanse the ultimate from Romani. I, I just think it's such a big issue that Muse has to play aggressive, right? Has to go for the back line, but that's just leaving Skits are so free to just be able to dance around the back line and put out so much pressure. They're going aggressive oh, with the sound barrier. Super aggro beat. Looking to take AVO out of the game. There's the Terra Surge. Suzu's good. Stops that slow effect for a brief moment, so they're able to get out of there. There's the two rushes Dutches. onto the point now. They're going to need to touch 92% and building. Romani with the Rampage. Does hit two, but here comes the beats. The Blade removes might be good for a couple here. Waiting for that overhealth to fade away, but it doesn't like it. Skitter once again, filling the kill feed with red. A sheer cold unable to get that 33%. What a bloodbath on that part of that last fight. Almost every ult pulled. Yeah, I like the aggressive play with the sound barrier. I think it might have been just like maybe a little bit too aggressive. Like they weren't even, uh, the rest of the team didn't feel like they were in position. But now this is the opening, right? This is the window. You have the blade, you have the overclock. If you just pull both of these at the same time, a one-man army will not have the resource to be able to deal with it. Maybe they recognize this forcing it early. Maybe is playing super far up. Killer can't quite get an angle either. Avio is already down. Nice headshot as the Amatic just walks into the railgun. There we go. That's what you want to see. And like you said, Scott, you just pull both DPS ults. Like, that's it, really. No resources. And one man army did recognize that. Tried to just int in onto the back line. Couldn't find the success. Yeah, inting in this seems a little weird in that situation because they have the overclock and blade. You're like, what? there's no way you're going to win if they pull both those ultimates. But sort of the. The play is built to catch the opposition off guard. If they had run in, Theomatic hits a huge javelin, kills the Sojin off the bat, all of a sudden that fight can flip in a way that you would never expect it to. So sometimes doing something unexpected and unprecedented can sometimes catch oppositions off guard when you have that ultimate disadvantage. So it didn't work out this time, but a, a good play by a one-man army and gets both of those D DPS ultimates out. Sound barrier and that rush available. For sheer cold, about 10%. Slowly but surely, Romani is getting healed up. My word. That's all nade down. Just soaks. All good, though. Just uh, ends up back. Oh! Oh, kill it down. Jesus. Okay. I didn't know you knew him like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. just going to force a reset for the, for the sheer cold. Try not to use any ultimates. Try not to stagger anyone else. Looks like they will get out. They got to know uh, the sheer cold of a rush here, playing that far up. Yeah, they end up backing up a little bit here. They want to ideally force the rush early, so they got enough space to actually disengage from the ultimate as well. But it doesn't like uh, sheer cold are going to give it to him. There's a sound barrier. AVO, whoop, flying Cassidy. Can't find any heads, though. Those skulls not quite lit up just yet. Both sound barriers used. 
Same with that pulse bomb and the high noon. Ooh. Oh, Thematic super low. Still has the terror surge if he wants to use it. Being kept alive, but not for long. And DPS oh, passive really kicking into effect there as Shikol just bundle on top of it. Barani overextending as a stir ball takes two for the team. Oh. And then this is going to be really big for the one-man army because they're still in a good position to be able to punish this. Now Lux has to use the Suzu, so that's probably going to force a disengage here. They get a little bit of car progress, but they're not going to retain high, uh, control of the high ground. Oh, that was lucky. Ooh, that oh, was not quite so lucky. Teleport to the high ground, not to the person behind it. Easy kill for Thematic. One minute and 30 seconds to end, Scott. We are swiftly running out of time. And you're seeing the issue that I talked about coming into this offensive round. It's really hard for Sheer Cold to be able to just close the distance without taking so much damage. That's why it feels like they have to use the sound barrier to just engage into team fights because otherwise Romani's just going to fall over. Now, once again, relying here on the overclock and the blade, we're going to see a pull. Oh, man. That was so close. The Amalek almost goes down to a railgun there. Hits the fortified to stay alive. Oh, hello, Skitzer. Get a super low. Has to end up backing off. Has to reposition down to the slow ground. He's got the overclock and the high ground angle if he wants to use it, but there's the pulse bomb. Ends up dodging out of the way, but already Soaks is dead. It's a 4v5. Where does Shikol go from here? Can see all the health bars in the top left. They are just whittling away slowly but surely. One man army are pulling them apart. 45 seconds, one more fight, and Romani, he ended up using that rampage there, Scott. I didn't see it. I didn't even see where that went. Uh, Romani maybe getting cancelled out of it, maybe using it uh, in the back line because we were just keeping an eye on Killen. Just so much pressure as the Sojin. Never really getting an opportunity to just poke and prod and shoot. And that's why they're, they're very rarely finding picks. And now, Sheer Cold having to walk into a Kitsune, uh, uh, Kitsune rush. They got Strebo with a sound barrier. This is going to be a difficult fight. You can see them trying to route around to the right side to take control of the high ground. Oh, uh, maybe death ball it. That's for sure. Oh, yes, Skitzer. Skitzer. Nice. That's a good pick. All right, Sheer Cold. What do you got for us? Three ults in the bank, almost four with that rush in 10. Although Killer ends up going down. No overclock available. I take it back. Now only two ultimates up. And with OT fastly approaching, one man army. They've managed to flip the map at the moment. So they're not in the worst spot. Still controlling the high ground. Someone does need to touch eventually. But they're not really pressured too touch either, Scott. They can wait until they get to that second point. Oh, nice. Okay, don't know how heavy you've got, the, or got over there oh, so quickly. The There's the sound barrier. Muse ends up falling over, and Killer is back in action without overclock. But AVO's going to match him on the high ground. Oh, he's trying to get him. Nice little double shot. But where's the extra kills? Ooh. Skitzer hitting the recall, narrowly avoiding that headshot coming through from the overclock. But Skitzer just wraps around, finishes off the Sojourn. The Amatic is 1 HP, and Romani manages to take him oh. down. Pulse Swamp over the top, saved from the Pulse Swamp. It's Romani taking names and numbers, but this one-man army, their spawn positions are so close. Three meters to go. There's the shout. A lot of healthy members from Sheer Cold as they finally make it work. Oh my, that was by the skin of their teeth. They're able to hold on to that one. Just slowly whittling away the one-man army. You can see Romani, if the fight breaks down, the Junker Queen is incredibly strong. Can self-heal, doing a lot of damage. Found multiple picks within that, uh, within that fight sequence, but... I think it all goes back to uh, Killer being able to get that kill into Avo. Avo trying to challenge the overclock, a little misguided, so it ends up costing them, but only a minute remaining now for Sheer Gold to try and finish out the map. It's only 88 meters, but the Golden Box of Victory is pretty close to the end. The Amatic looked like he wanted to go up on the high ground there using the lift, but they took it without way. <laughs> so it's actually... I'm staying down here anyway, guys. It's actually, I'm down here now. Oh, dear. There's one at low health, Arissa. There's the Rampage, no sound barrier, there's only a lamp to try and save them. They swapped off for Kiriko, of course, to go to the bat. Terror Surge comes in. Oh, still manages to catch somebody. Now looks ended up falling victim to that ultimate. And with 30 seconds to go, sheer cold, they're going to have to reset. That looked good, that looked uh, a phenomenal, honestly, Rampage. Forcing out the lamp and sending over the super low, but Theomatic staying in that fight and claiming one. It all goes back to Ollie's lamp. Perfectly timed, kept everyone alive. Yes, they, Ollie ends up falling, but it kept everyone alive just long enough. Kept Thematic alive just long enough to get away with that Terror Surge. So now all of a sudden, 10 seconds remaining, sheer cold. Not many ultimates to their name. Same for one-man army, though. Pulse bombs available from Skitzer. Ooh. And a couple of percent. Oh, that was close. OT now ticking down. Shout forward for Romani. Skits is still trying to find What's a target for this pulse bomb. 
Very close to the rush goal. There you go. He's actually just got it now. Two support ultimates for Shit Cole. But there's the pulse. Killer down again. They're going to have to go in. They're going to have to go now. So 4v4 as Killer and AVO do end up trading as Muse just uh, with a little 1v1 against Ollie. Easy said than done normally against the Batiste. But with the rush, it's just so easy. A sound barrier comes in. Hits three. One man army spawn positions are so close. But so is Shit Cole to taking this map. One man armies. The focus is Romani. And Romani ends up falling down. But still, Muse is keeping the middle. This, but oh, they can't touches. get to the points. No touches and one man army now secure the map oh. and match points. That was so close. If they managed to hold on to that point, Muse just got the blade. There's a chance. It's still slim, but there was a chance there. Some would call that a C9. Yeah, I th I th that's pretty. That's as close as you can get to a C9, I think there, Scott. Esperanza up next. One man army. Succumbing, I little uh, think there to Romani's Junker Queen looks way better on this map than it did control. Let's have a look at the winning comms though. I see nine at the end. I'm sure they'll be screaming it. Hang on. On me, look left, look left, look left. Q1, 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 Q1. Yeah, that's like nice. Second here. Yeah, go for support, go for support. Yeah, good, good, good. Support, support. Q1, 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 Q1. I'm here. Kiri, Kiri, Kiri. Okay, get you, get you, get you, get you, get you behind. C9. C9. Officially C9. Officially a C9. It kind of was, yeah. I mean, both the Tracer and Genji were alive right there. So, yeah, I'd kind of C9 for sure. But Romani at the very end, that was kind of the focus of the Orissa. And then just like, they weren't even just calling one person. It felt like that because it was like, Romani, you like, gotta kill the uh, gotta kill the uh, Queen. Because, like you said, as the fight just end up breaking down, the Queen just gets so much more value. If you can get a lot of those shouts out and just a lot of hits with the Jagged Blade, the, the Carnage, or whatever, the Axe. Um, you'd sustain a whole bunch. But it is One Man Army taking that map. We go to Esperanza next. Final map in the series, potentially, if One Man Army can close this out in the same fashion they did against uh, against this team, against Sheer Cold in the Swiss stage. This could be history repeating itself. And that's one of the difficulties of playing the Junker Queen is that you're kind of beholden to hitting Jagged Blades because Jagged Blades are really your engagement tool of like how you isolate targets and Jagger Blades don't work against the Rissa, so it's, that's kind of why a lot of people have moved away from playing the Junker Queen. But you can see, like, if you're if you're hitting them and you're getting the right ones at the right times, and you can force a scrappy fight, the Junker Queen can be very strong. Like, Sheer Cold were inches away from being able to close out that map, but it's definitely an uphill battle, especially with Muse being on this Genji. It just feels like they're, they're so dependent on their ultimates to be able to win fights. How does Esperanza already fare for this comp, then? I think it can work, right? Like I think if you're if you're playing very quickly and fluidly, it can be it can be sh solid. But I think the issue they're going to have to deal with how do you get Avo off of these high grounds? We've seen teams time and time again play the the Baptiste and the the Cassidy, the Cassatiste, the the Bapity, uh, as I called it earlier. Like if you can get them set up and anchored on the high ground, how does the Junker Queen get to a situation where they can deal with that high ground issue? Right? Yes. The Jagged Blades, fingers crossed, hopefully they'll hit. But if you don't hit those, it's just, it's so difficult. See the damage numbers? We had two rounds. That wasn't like three or four rounds. That was two rounds. 70k damage and like 61k or whatever it was. That was uh, that's an absurd damage uh, stat. Like, how how is it so high? Like, I guess you're shooting at the Queen permanently. You're shooting at the Arisa permanently. But damn, that seems like a lot for one map. Esperanza, we load in. We go, we go. I, I don't expect either compositions to change right now. It feels like they're both going to die on this hill for their compositions and the one-man army will, like, succeed. Obviously, uh, we these two teams uh, played earlier in the Swiss stage, a one-man army. Very similar in the Swiss stage. They went 2-0. Close matches uh, and close maps, but overall, it feels like a one-man army just has that edge over sheer cold. And I honestly don't even think this could be a skill discrepancy. I think it might just be comfort and the fact that a one-man army is playing a lot more comfortable composition in this meta. I have to wait and see if this is going to be the final map. One man army and sheer cold in an elimination game in Group B here in OWCS Stage Two. Wow. Let's rock and roll out the gate. Yep, sheer cold running with the same thing. One man army actually making an adjustment. Avo on the Sojourn, oh, yeah. maybe thinking against this dive setup because Avo was getting punished for, uh, from time to time playing the Cassie because he is an isolatable target. So maybe if he plays Sojourn, if he gets daggered, he can slide, or if he gets dove, he can slide. So maybe just a little bit more versatile than you'd see from the Cassie, even if the damage numbers are a little bit lower. Does Avo have high sense? 
looks like a high sense player. Oh, that's because he's playing off of his phone. That's true. That's true. He's playing on mobile. He's, he's, he's playing he's on mobile, you know. He's yeah. remoted into his PC on his phone and he's playing on the go. He's actually on the <laughs> bus right now. He's going into a Starbucks and he's just playing on the phone <laughs> on the Starbucks Wi Fi. <laughs> that would be crazy. Can everybody keep it down? I'm a man. Yeah. Please. He's just screaming. Shut up. Monkey, monkey, monkey. monkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Risa, yeah. Risa, Risa. All right, Romani with a good first Stop kill. On the skin, so make that two. The thematic. It's way it's, uh, Especially this first fight. It's so good for the JQ. There's so much you can kind of hide around as well. Just wait for the Orisa to uh, burn all the CDs. Maybe it's the skin swap as well. Go to the Mythic one. That's helping him out. Yeah, that's true. M Mythic uh, skins do 10% more damage, I'm pretty sure, than uh, regular skins. That's facts. Put that on uh, Reddit. <laughs> I made that Reddit. But Custer bit. said. <laughs> yeah, right. Custer, bro, live on broadcast. He would never lie to me. Yeah, so true. All right, so X coming up to a very quick sound barrier. I wonder if Shia Cole's going to use this aggressively. Maybe try and catch uh, one man army off guard, or maybe they'll just wait for the Kitsune rush. But you can see they're getting Avo into this right side window, not trying to stack up against this uh, this Jungle Queen rush. I was just thinking, he's casting the game, so he's basically developing the game, right? Surely. Yeah. Clueless. Guys, can you, <laughs> broadcast, can you please nerf this hero? God, the amount of times we get that is uh, no joke. No joke. <laughs> two support more ultimates. More often than you would think. <laughs> more often than you would think, yeah. Two, two support ultimates available for Sheer Cold. Side ground control as well, especially with the Kiri. It's going to be hard for one man to kind of a sail here. Avo ends up going down. Rush on the point. And this is uh, one of the people that you needed to take care of for your Sheer Cold. They do so quite easily. Uh, but Romani falling. It's not a good sign for Sheer Cold. Very good first pick, but I need to follow it up. I'm surprised we didn't see Natlocks use their rush. When I heard the rush, I assumed it was Natlocks, but it was actually just Romani running in dry with the with the shout and just pulls over when Oli pops that uh, Kitsune rush. So maybe trying to bait some more ultimates about a one-man army, maybe a miscommunication, but Sheer Cold will have five ultimates coming back in, in this fight. Yeah, Sheer Cold with four, uh, five, one-man army with four. See, this is like this is Junker Queen cinematic right here with the Junker Queen on the high ground using the rampage. But uh, apart from everybody has to leave because they know exactly what's going to happen. Carnage Swing does end up uh, going a little wide there. Rampage in the corner hits nobody. Nobody, unless that was in Susuzu'd. Not sure, but there's no anti people on my screen right now. But Theomatic is the one that is going to fall in that small corridor. Nice. Oh, have we go take him to the sky? He missed, but it's all good. The trace is there to back him up. A blade pulled as well by Mice. Sheer Cold still scrapping this one out. But I mean, the Genji versus this, it's not going to work out too well. But thankfully, Romani's there for backup. Sheer Cold, uh, Sheer Cold controlling the bot again. Yeah, so they, they are going to end up closing out that fight. It felt like Avo was about to get a bunch of different picks, but wasn't able to find all of them. So now Natlock's still holding on to the Shitsune rush, and that's a great late pick on the Skitzer. All right, they are going to be able to... Oh, uh, it okay. back. Sometimes you just get hit with a kunai in the face, and you just die. That was one of those times. This There's rush the rush finally deadly. coming out. I really like this rush. You get the lead here. Plus, you're going to pressure this checkpoint too. Oh, but Romani just going way too deep. Okay, they do end up securing the lead there, but they get basically nothing off of that um, in terms of meters. There was no, like, checkpoint press pressure there at all. Wow, Romani overstepping. Yeah, that's just a big overstep by Romani. I think uh, with the rush down, Romani's like, oh, I want to get some value out of this ultimate. Just turns the corner and just wasn't expecting the, sh the amount of damage that a one-man army was going to do. And now Oli has the rush. It's going to be a really difficult fight for Romani to get into because as soon as he steps up, he's going to be walking into the rush. So it's going to have to be killed with the overclock to open this one up. Pulse Bomb does a lot of damage, but no picks. Oh, good spear onto Killer. Stop him getting from the perfect angle with his overclock. No one's in his sights right now until he hits that slide. That was so close to just annihilating the tracer. Checkpoint. No value. And the A couple of meters. They get it. They just get checkpoint like that. They just be like that. Okay. Sheer Cold, just no presence on the point there. They just let that one go away for free, Scott. Yeah, and well, not even free. It cost them minus one ultimate. It cost them the overclock. Oh, right, well. yeah. So it's even more disadvantageous than you'd think. So it's Sheer Cold are going to be like, well, we need to get the high flip. ground. But a one-man army recognizes it splits up. Oh, wow. wow. Even more aggressive. Good damage. They're going to try and salvage this one, though, with a rush. But yeah, only in this small room. Not exactly where you want to be against the JQ comp. But still, checkpoint. You are taking those to the bank. Sheer Cold not using a... Two An picks. ultimate in this fight, is at least. There's a couple of picks, yeah, but Romani's still up. No shot, they lose this one. 
Yeah, it looks like Skitsek is probably going to die. Skits is, I think, probably just trying to waste as much time as they can. If they are able to live through this as well, it's it problematic decision. for Sheer Cold. They're not even going to really get much map control at all. A lot of my enemy is going to get onto the high ground before them. Ronnie has to be careful about getting isolated here. Yeah. He's got smarts. He's backing off. Don't worry. I, I want to speak to that last fight as well. It was really good play by Sheer Cold. They just like, it felt like they just got out rotated, but then they just kept going. And a one-man army just was not ready for that level of aggression. Keep your foot on the gas like that. Keep up the tempo. Right, Romani has got this rampage. Pulse one from Skitzer. Oh, nice. what a stick. Oh, almost slid into his team there as well. That would have been rather embarrassing if that landed. Oh, there's Lucio. There's no chance, surely. So does receive it. That shout for a brief moment, but still super low. Skits is still trying to find out that pressure. Romani. Oh, Romani just takes so much damage. Look at that. Oh, okay. A little reversal. Skitzer goes down to Gracie. The, uh, I think they, they didn't want to go into those stairs, but Skitzer wanted to just give it a peek a -roo, loses his head for it. Now the rush comes in over the point. I think if you're one-man army, you just let you this just one go. You lose this one, yeah. Yeah, you just get out of there. It's exactly what they did. Unfortunately, the Arisa couldn't gallop away quick enough. Yeah, so that, that doesn't cost you much. You know, obviously you lose the fight, but that's a rush off the other side. And it, it, this feels like one of those situations where a one-man army is just more than content to lose the fight. You know, obviously at a huge advantage, Sheer Cold aren't getting any meterage off of any of these team fight wins. So if you can just keep bouncing it back and forth, you're likely to win at the very end. But now it's Sheer Cold, the team with the, the high ground. But that high ground, their comp doesn't really do that well on the high ground, though, to be fair, exactly. right? Like, Romani doesn't do anything. Like, the Arisa can shoot down and still do a fair amount of damage, lob spears, etc. But Romani needs to be put like boots on the ground. Speaking of which, there you go, another kill on Abo. Yeah, he ended up in that window somehow. Theomatic, now in a little bit of trouble. Gracie did land. Look at the amount of healing game pumped into Romani right now. I wouldn't be too surprised, Scott, just a, a smaller side here. And that looks his damage to be quite low uh, on the Kiriko. Yeah, just having to heal Romani almost constantly. As soon as he takes his eyes off Romani, it feels like he dies. Checkpoint. Just keeping an eye on him for the Suzus as well. That will be checkpoint here for Sheer Cold. So they're one team fight away from being able to take the lead. All of a sudden, one man army with that one pick on Avo is in a bad spot. All right, Romani setting up for success here with this rampage. Gotta be careful though. Here comes the blade. Oh, blade against this rush. Sure, why not? Oh, my muse. Taking down two. Okie dokie. Sheer Cold. That's a blade that I didn't think I'd see in this series, to be honest with you. Very, very hard to get value with it normally, but they're making it work and they take the lead. 69 meters and then some. Oh, Manami not looking so nice now, losing that one. Yeah, Strebel just wasn't able to get the sound barrier down before he fell over. So great target acquisition by Muse. And Sheer Cold, they have the rush as well. This is a hard fight for one man army to fight into. So now they're just going to be poking and prodding, but every second that they wait, they're losing meterage. Oh, that was close to an AJ. One body shot, but luckily just dashed into cover. Using that speed up of that sound barrier well, movement. He didn't hit anything, maybe Suzu. Oh, Killer takes Avo again. Avo is just not having a good time right now against this Queen Cop. And Romani just piling on the pressure. There is her in the small room. There's the Terror Surge. Treble does end up going down to Romani, but a kill onto Killer. He's going to leave Theomatic alone and isolated on an island. Sheer Cold running away with this one in the final few moments. 50 seconds to go. One man army needs to see a change up here. Needs to see a turnaround. Yeah, and it feels like this is going to be a late death of Skitzer. So that means that's even more time off of the clock. A one man army is not going to be able to take too much position. Sheer Cold is respecting the damage and respecting the ammo. Oh, oh, what a got. knife again. Romani just landing knife after knife. 110 meters and counting. OT approaching. One man army just losing control of this game completely. The question here is uh, Is Sheer Cold just going to disengage now that they don't have Muse? If Romani falls, this could be a pretty poor stagger, but Romani's going to make it out. So now they can take the fight on their own terms with the Kitsune Rush into Kitsune Rush. But look, they're happy to play on the high ground. Yeah, you want to keep pushing the bot, you're going to have to walk into a bad spot to do it. Right, still taking infinite damage. There's a spear, there's a Suzu to save. Okay, they use Rush, fine by us, we back off. Yeah, and that's it. Now they can just come back with their own Rush. They have a sound barrier as well. Muse getting close to another beat. This is very difficult for one-man army. 
keeping the ball contested. Now the knife. Skitzer can't really interject in this fight at all. Scots. There's the knife. There's the rampage. Hits two. Avo in trouble yet again. Public enemy number one is Avo, and there's no touch either. I mean, that fight was looking only one way, and that was sheer cold. They're keeping themselves in the series, Scott. Reverse sweep starts now as one man army go down. Yeah, it really feels like you saw things click a little bit there for Sheer Cold and the way that they were tempoing things and just playing much more aggressive. And on top of that, Romani starting to hit those Jagged Blades. You see how many times did Abo, you talked about Abo getting punished. A lot of that is just off of great Jagged Blades. Abo getting a little overzealous with his peaks or with his swings. He gets hit by that knife. There is nothing that the rest of his team can do to help him. So we have a match on our hands. Sheer Cold, now we move over to Surabasa. Anything's possible. This can be a very strong Junker Queen map. It can be, yeah, and it's a strong Junk Queen game type as well. Let's have a little listen in to Romani and the gang there at the very end of that map. Soldier one, soldier one, axing! This thing point, this thing point. Soldier carry one! Or slow! Nice! Nice! Esta bien! Huge! I love Huge. that. Huge! <laughs> Good stuff. Shit cold, they're still in it. Reverse sweep starts now, Scott. I mean, your Soros is definitely where you can uh, play the JQ comp, but I like that they're sticking to their own uh, individualistic styles. It's, it's really cool to see. I, we haven't seen Junk Queen in a little while. I still get flashbacks of the JQ meta last year. Oh my word. Good old Jotes. Yeah, yeah, you don't miss Jotes? Yeah. What was that in 2022? That was in 2023. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's all a blur at this point. Yeah, it is, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't really miss Jotes at all, but seeing it like this, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Romani, yeah, doing Romani things, playing the JQ to an extremely high level. Oh, that was a nice, nice dash there, just on the very edge. Perfect Genji play. Um, it, from it's one of those things, you know, it's like you so you heard Romani talk about it at the end there, like huge. It's like, Joker Queen Queen ults are very difficult to land in this setup. Yeah. There's a lot of targets that you can't really hit. There's sound barriers, there's Suzu's. People can cleanse it all themselves a little bit as well, you know, with recalls and everything else. So it can be very difficult to find the value from the ultimates. If anything, if you can just force out ultimates with the Junk Queen ult, that's, that's almost a win at this point. But you can see just, as I said, when the fights break down, that's when Junk Queen's at her best. Yeah, for sure. And like you spoke about how the healing and everything else is uh, super good for the JQ, but as the fight breaks down and they're running out of resources, the Rampage is almost a guaranteed team wipe. If you start off the fight with a Rampage, they can Suzu, they can beat, they can respond to it. But because Romani ended up using it fairly late into that fight, like they haven't got anything. Like he got the Kiri and the Kiri didn't Suzu because they already used the Suzu and it's just the easiest setup in history, right? And uh, that's where Sheik Holder at their best and where Romani's at his best as well. I think the thing that you can take away from this stat screen is look at the low healing from um, a one-man army. And that the is, high healing from sheer cold. <laughs> that's it. Well, it, it's one of those things where a one-man army, the reason they're dying is not just because of the damage that sheer cold's pulling out. It's just picks, right? Sheer cold is dependent on pick rather than just the overwhelming amount of damage. So if you're a one-man army, the one thing you need to take away from that map is we need to play safe. We need to play together. If they want to beat us, they have to beat us by playing better in terms of team fighting and working together using their ultimates. If we just let them pick us off one by one, that's what they want. We'll see if they can make it happen here in Surabasa. Was the pick of uh, Sheikold as well. And Shibali Monastery will round out the series if we Intro. get there. That was, uh, definitely a w that's definitely a one-man army pick. I don't think Shibali Monastery is good for Queen. Really, yeah, rough no, on the, really rough on the Queen. Lost I wonder if ways. you'd almost see Ramatra at that point. I feel like Queen just, it was, with how many chokes there are, I think it'd be hard to play Queen. But hey, where there's a will, there's a way. Romani will find a way. Uh, but first, they have to get through Suravasa. And I think this is a map that could go either way. As I said, it really comes down to how, the, how it feels like the tempo is shifting for the, in terms of like confidence in their compositions. Will we see any adjustments for a one-man army? Or are we going to just see the same thing time and time again, just playing better? Let's have a look. No substitutions either, as we load in to Suravasa in just a moment. Yeah, more Orissa, I would uh, imagine. And we saw a little bit of the BAP, but especially on this map, I'm thinking Kiri. Plus you have two things to deal with. Like, Suzu's just way better at dealing with the Rampage than the, the Lamp is, so. Yeah. Expect one man army to run that. And probably no other changes. Ah, there, 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 there he is. There's your boy. 
Legend. Give us one. Give Both us a boys. yawn. Yeah. Oh. Hell yeah. W. And, and my job here is done. <laughs> yeah. Perfect stuff. All right, well, man, Army, what you got for us? We know what shit called to run in. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah. I like, um, I do like how we, uh, I, it reminds me of, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah in, in some ways, right? With yeah. Chasm on the ball. And, like, there's always these teams that have these really strange, like, tank picks or, like, support picks, DPS picks, one tricks, or, like, their mains kind of deal. It's good to see. It's good to see Shirko doing well. And they roll out of the gate. just in. Hot off the press. Abu is finally not playing out of a Starbucks on his phone. Abu is actually Let's back go. on the PC. They're not playing off of the phone, so hopefully that should at least help if that was becoming an issue. Now you can blame... Now you can't blame it on the, uh, the signal. The uh, 5G. All good. So we're going to see a one-man army go down this right side. They want to play the long sidelines, knowing they're sheer cold. They're the ones who want to try and close this distance. Just like Romani, if he steps onto this point to just apply pressure, he's just going to take so much damage. He's already at one health. Yeesh. It's all right. I'm back in it, boys. Get on that point. I'm shooting the Orisa. To be fair, the shotgun does a lot of damage against the Orisa. The big health ahead here, box, yeah. is, a, is a bit of a problem against the JQ. They do end up capping the point as well, so they can just exit willy-nilly. Something worth noting here as well, Skits is actually on the Genji, decided to match Muse on it. We've seen a lot of teams do this instead of the Tracer on Suravasa. I'm just going to fall to Natlox though, and that might just be a team fight lost here for a one-man army. And the fact that they've lost the point here as well, the longer this fight drags out, the worse it is for them. Oh, no deflects. Oh, killer backing up his DPS player. There we go, yeah, a quick reset. What's very good, uh, this comp is also very good at doing stuff like this as well. Chasing people down, you land a Gracie, that's almost a guaranteed pick, so just wasting even more time. Yeah, that's what 60% and counting, probably one more fight here for one-man army, but because that fight didn't go well for them either, they're going to be behind in the ultimate, so they're going to just walk in. If Sheer Cold decide to use this rush aggressively, get in the face of a one-man army, they might be able to catch them off guard before they can even get to the point. Let's have a look, a little look at how they want to challenge this one. They're coming for that crown. That JQ needs to go down first. And can we pressure it out with that rush, like you were saying? Pretty easy point to rush off. Same with Natlock, oh, so to no. be fair. Here come the ultimates for the tanks too. Oh, that was close. That's it, part on the pressure. I think Use that rush. This point. Yeah, absolutely. As soon as your tank goes low there, all they did, all Shikol did was just hit the rush and then it's like, you're split, you, oh, you pulled the blade too? Okay. I don't hate the blade, it, it's, it was probably unnecessary, but it's one of those things that like, if you can pop a blade to just 100% guarantee that, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it almost certainly wasn't necessary. All right, next point. Where are we going? Just waiting for these uh, crosses. If you can catch someone on the cross here, this is just like an awkward spot as well for this point to be in. Yeah. You have it's, to like, it's like when you're like chasing the, the enemies after that point, you're like, yeah, you better run away. And then you realize the spawn door is like right there. And you're like, oh God, run away. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> they can shoot us with impunity. We're good. All right, rush available. They got the rush advantage. As now looks used it to close out the fight last time around. It's the point unlocks. Here comes this overclock onto the high, oh, from the high ground from Killer. Sliding down to low, spots to Lucio. Takes a heady, but now is their time to pounce. Yeah, kill it. So they spot the slide, and they instantly descend on his position. One man army cap. I think that might have been a mistake by Killer. I think Killer wanted to jump at the end of that and get onto the high ground and be a lot more protected, but I don't think he hit the timing on the jump, so therefore he just ended up on the low ground and just gets beamed down by Theomatic. So maybe a little bit of a mistake. Now Avo is the one ripping it. Well, they don't end yet. They don't end up speeding into the back line or anything. They play that a little bit more passively, expecting the sound barrier to come out from Soaks, and it's exactly what happened. Ooh, Ooh what a snipe. God. We had a good little angle for that one as well. The Amali does end up going down. In fact, this fight's not over just yet. The brawl on the point right now. 3v3, Rush comes out from that locks for sheer cold. They can just play around this one. Should lead to the flip. I think if you're one-man army, you just accept that this fight is over. Yeah, come back in with your own ultimates too. later. You got ults, you're in a position to win this uh, win this point. And there's no support ults available for Sheer Cold. Flip's coming through already. Jeez, that quick. Pulse mob, see ya. Genji just flies to the skies. 
Oh, there's an ultimate, and there's the Rampage! Oh, instant Samurai. Strebel heard the Rampage voice line hit you. <laughs> like, Always. They didn't even uh, didn't even wait for the uh, anti heal to come through. If you know where the Queen's going, sometimes you're just better off ripping it, because people can die so quickly with that ultimate. So I really, I like the idea by Strebel, but that almost goes back to Muse not having the blade, right, From it, and why they lost that round, because if Muse had that blade, things could have turned around. So just the, the cascading effect of using an ultimate potentially mistimed can have a, a long-term effect. But that was a lot of ultimates for a one-man army. What? Dip. What happened there? Was that just I don't know. chase? I don't know. Maybe just caught off guard, maybe not expecting uh, a one-man army to be there with uh, the rest of their team, but maybe. only with the rush, and they're actually going to look for a few more before they go to the point. They're in a decent spot. They've got this, like, upper mid control right now. So they could look for something here if they really want to, but it looks like they're going to play a little bit more safe. The Gracie, that uh, jagged blade landing in Theomatic. Twice his skits are just waiting below the Sojourn for them to drop. Yeah. Like, any any moment now, they're going to Any drop. moment. <laughs> Oh, there's the, the rush point. on the point. This is going to be a little rough for Sheikol to attack into. They got the blade. They almost have the overclock, but they don't have the bodies to do so. That's just oh, one more pick. Just one more over. pick. There you go. All right, Skitsa does fall, but... Oh, blade is dead. They're still going to pull the blade. Okay, Muse just descends to the, uh, ascends to the skies. Takes down one. Serbor falls. Can he get another? Oh, perfect deflection to turns 180s onto Avo. Muse with three kills as a re entry into that fight. It's looking way better for them. One man army thought they had them on the ropes. Yeah, Muse recognizing, hey, they're a little split up. They've used a lot of their cooldowns. He kind of beefed it a little bit at the very beginning, losing control of Avo, but it did a good job of restabilizing and taking down three eventually. And just huge turn. Uh, with that Genji Blade. Now Sheikol coming up to a lot of their other ultimates and they're in prime position to cap this third point. Oh, he's down. Okay, Ollie with some revenge. Two soldiers look at each other. It's Killer that gets the kill in the end. Still pressure on the point there, one man army. Oh, Soaks is down to a pulse bomb too. Killer's gonna slide on in, but no, slide on into his death. Skitza was stood behind Theomatic, I believe. As Theomatic just held the spear spin and no one could like get onto the point. Yeah, and they used the rush there, thinking that they were in prime position, just dropped the rush and then instantly lost a couple of members. So they're not going to have that one getting back into this fight. Fortunately, Soax does still have the sound barrier, and it's Romani. Romani with this Rampage is going to be important, but Muse is down. What? Dude, Skitz is finding so many early picks on the Tracer. So now the question becomes, do you fight this if you're sheer cold? Do you force this fight into a disadvantageous situation where you're going to have to force a point, or do you just accept and go into the next round with your ults? Looks like they're going to try and force a forward. Are they? It looks very indecisive to me, Scott. That B comes out. The Rampage did end up landing. They got a later B. Can they get the touch? Yes, they got They triggered OT. And here come the kills for Sheer Cold. Just icing them out right now as the one-man army do end up falling. There will be another uh, attempt to touch here too. So only 60% for Sheer Cold. And they burnt a lot to try and get this flip. Yeah, Strebo drops the sound barrier earlier to deal with the Rampage and then Soax is a later beat, just giving them way too much HP and sustaining power on the point. But as you said, Jack, they're definitely getting another opportunity to attack, and that's confirmed by Theomatic moving over to the Doomfist. Oh, I, didn't, I mean, the Doomfist against the Queen? That's a rough matchup. Back line, force in the back. Yeah, they're going to garner some space. And that rush on the point, too. Perfectly lining up so it lands on the point so the rest of the team can use it. Oh, taking a lot of damage to this Doomfist. This the, uh, this the Amatic, but Romani just gets isolated, isolated, punched into the wall. The Amatic, okay, he's trying to find people. There's the punch. Punches them off and gets the flip. One-man army and Sheer Cold at 99 to 99. But where is Sheer Cold's touch? They end up using that rush on the point to try and sustain through it. A couple of Kunai's thrown in the way of Skitzer there as they end up finding a recap here. Wow, this is double off the point. Incredibly backwards and forwards, but with Oli going down, this might just be one-man army losing this one after all of this attempts, all of the ultimates kind of throw in to try and make this work it is sheer cold that end up with the cap sheer cold just feel very clutch right now it feels like time and time again when in fights that you feel like they're going to be at a disadvantage just finding a way to win them now we have both players on the doom fist are we just going to have a respectable doom fist off after all of this i think with theomatic getting close to the uh meteor strike i don't think it's a terrible decision but sheer cold are going to have the point first yeah, they're going to take a priority position. Flashpoint unlocks in 10 seconds. I mean, they do have... Oh, Sheikon also have this sound barrier coming up super soon, so... 
And you know what save I mean maybe you're saving it for the um, overclock. But that's really about yeah. it. Overclock comes out from Sheer Cold Kills looking for a target. Can't get Strebber. Can't get anyone. Can't get a tracer either. There's a soundbag. Oh, post bomb at your feet. Got Suzu. Still hit the slide away. Wow, Abuse is being really annoying right now. Favo to kind of deal with. He's just hiding in that small room. He's waiting for his, him to peek his head so we can just laser it off. Bro, this is chaos right now. Everyone's all over the place. A bunch of 1v1s happening. Cooldown's going left and right. Ultimate's going. Most importantly, Sheer Cold have the point. God, that is... Um, what is that? A little cage match, pretty much, with the uh, two traces there. They both end up going down to each other, or, uh, sorry, Theomatic taking down Muse. Jesus, this is chaos. There's the Meteor Strike. Trying to find a target, trying to force out a cooldown from somebody. Ends up splitting the back line from the front line. Oh, killer. Ends up getting punched into the wall. Strayball finishes him off. But still, I mean, Sheikhold holding on to this point. Both Dooms just hitting each other there. Oh, oh, no way. Okay. I thought maybe he gets uh, dunked in the drink there, but Theomatic just air strafing to safety. Sheikhold, they're on the verge of winning this one. It's got 80% on the point. I mean, one-man army getting picks, but they are not capping the point. Yeah, dead. I think Sheikhold getting a little overzealous there at the very end. I think it was Soax got Abo down to one health, but Abo hits the clutch rail at the last second. So they will turn around. Otherwise, they could have just lost the map there with that long extended fight. So now it's on a one-man army. They have they have a long road ahead of them to win this map. They cannot lose a single fight here, but there's so many ultimates coming in from Sheikhold. Double support. Oh, oh that's, that's a, a good pick. start. Now, do they decide to take this again, or do they decide to fight? That is the question. I mean, Muse doesn't have their recall either, so yeah, they're going to back off. One more fight, they know this is the only one they need to win this map. These staggers could be large. That pulse bomb hits the floor. Almost takes out Lucio. Oh, well, back to I swear. That's a really bad death late because that's once again going to mean that sheer cold are going to have to take a last second fight here they do have the ultimates for it interestingly enough romani actually switches off to the doomfist with the meteor strike just recognizing hey against the original i'm not playing doomfist that's that's not a matchup i want to take so now last fight on this fourth point lots of ultimates for both sides this overclock could be the difference maker from both sojourns this is to keep one man army in this map keep them competitive here comes the rush, both of them used on the point. There's the sound barrier too, late to beat from Sturball. Doesn't hear Ollie. Killer taken to the skies, taking that high ground. He's gonna get booped off. He's actually just gonna get matched. So, Killer just kind of entered into the back line, tried to go for the hero play. And Avo just cool, calm and collected in the back, just helping his supports take him down. One man army are gonna wipe sheer cold. And that will be the second point for them. We're on a map point now, as we go on to the final checkpoint. Ooh. Killer with some hero plays. That did not work out. Just a hero's downfall at the hands of the supports from One Man Army. It almost felt like he heard the call that the Kiriko did not get the sound barrier and decided to all in trying to get that pick, but just got punished for a great play by a One Man Army, recognizing that overextension. And most difficult for Sheer Cold is they use everything to try and hold that. Muse back goes back over to the Genji. Romani finding Schizer is an interesting pick. And if you're a one-man army, I think you might just disengage from this one. Oh, there's no disengaging from that. Oh, Romani is so low. My word, that's a... There's something to be said about being able to play with the limited heals, especially when you're a queen. Well, there's the Terror Surge. Hey, Avo goes down. Okay. I mean, Schizer's back. He got one pick, and that was it. This is, uh, this is Sheikhov's point. And they threw the boss bomb into this as well. One man army, I, I almost disagree with the way they played that. I think I would prefer to see them play a little bit more defensive with that one player down. Instead, they use two ultimates, not the most impactful ultimates, but they do matter. Now, all of a sudden, what tools do they have to get back into this fight? And they're going up against a Romani Rampage. Yeah, they've got the rush soon. I mean, you're hoping... Here's the Rampage, we get a big Suzu off, and then we can win, but that Suzu sometimes very hard to land on multiple people. Ooh. Good knife again. They're going to go in on this. The Suzu down as well. That's an... Oh! Oh! oh. Beefed it. Yeah, don't need Suzu anymore. Good Gracie, though, again. Picks up a deflection kill that does Muse. Are they going to resell? I think they are. Yeah, they're going to try to, but no. Sheik Horde are going to punish every single person. I don't know if they do, Scott. Skitzer's going to be the person in the back line running around, but do they know where Skitzer is? They're getting slightly aggressive to try and punish anyone who's sort of bleeding forward a little bit. Skitzer gets oh, so axed. What? How is this happening? How are these picks happening? Okay, Skitzer gets such hit. 
Yeah, 100%. Oh, he gets a stick too! Don't worry, Suzu moment. 99% to zero. As the Amatic's already down, switch to the Doomfist, trying to get back in time, and Sound Barrier comes through as well for One Man Army. Oh, Skitzer, the savior of One Man Army right now. Forcing cooldowns, getting kills, that's all that they need. Skitzer dodging out of the blade too. Oh, he can't land the, he can't land the slashes. Oh my word, Skitzer with the whole army on his back, managed to clutch out that point. They're still in one fight territory. They were sheer caller at 99%. But Sheer Cold went into all their bags of tricks. They used every single ultimate to try and turn that fight around. So now all of a sudden they have nothing in the back. They're walking into an overclock from Abo. We've seen this in the past and the thing that's opened it up is Romani hitting a Gracie on Abo. Abo can't get hit by that and get punished before he gets value from the overclock. He's got to land a knife. That's all he's got to do. I just saw one swing past Abo there. And Skitza. God, he's such a no mess. Oh, no Suzu, but no health left for Skitza. He's down. Carry dead. This ends now. Killer ends up falling oh, over. Right. But another knife. Landing it to Abo. But he somehow slips away. A noose falls. Final fight for one man army now. And they are three people up. Romani in a whole heap of hurt. One man army with Skitza clutching this one out. And who touches? I don't think anybody does. This is going to lock this one out. Maybe Muse gets there, but the boop, the recall. They got oh, nothing man. left. One man army clutch out Suravasa and end the series. That was on a nice edge. So many different ways. A one man army, the credit needs to go to the back line there. Saving Avo's life. He got hit by the knife multiple times, got brought back. They came back and brought it back from the brink of defeat from Skitzer getting picked and somehow found a way. Yeah, that was that was actually nuts. I mean, generally, I feel like this entire map was just kind of bonkers because Sheer Cold just kept on winning fights, which yeah. they already lost technically, and they somehow, some way, find their way back into it. I was convinced this is going to a map number five. This oh, looked yeah. uh, unlosable. Alas, Skitza taking off the back line, and then they just edge it out. Uh, incredible stuff there. Incredible stuff from both teams, really. Let's uh, dive back into some highlights and uh, talk about who really stood out because a lot of players, I think, put on a really, really good show in this one. For me, I think Muse really stepped up on Suravasa at the end there. Like, I think the Genji, I was starting to question whether or not the Genji was going to be a great pick because, you know, it, it's difficult when you don't have a tracer of your own and that's why Skitza was going kind of crazy. But... Muse kind of redeems himself on that Suravasa. A couple of big blades, a couple of ones that I question, but a couple of big blades winning fights that, as you said, Zoe, they had no right winning. There wasn't really a... Uh, I feel like defining moments, especially on uh, on control, like Romani didn't really have many like, oh, I'm hitting a blade, I'm getting kills. Rampage is like, we're, we're winning these fights. But as the series like went on, Romani really clutched up. And that's what was the difference maker for me, at least for sheer cold. But then it was like the adaptations from um, from One Man Army. And then Skits are obviously just going absolutely nuclear on the Tracer. Just a lot of these initial picks that Romani was finding, Skitza was just kind of like, okay, we'll just even it up. It's not a problem. And then you've blown so many cooldowns to keep Romani alive, and it's just the slow attrition. Well, it's not really that slow, but the attrition game uh, in the end of it all. <laughs> yeah. I, I do... Go ahead. No, no, you go. Okay, I'll go. No, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing that I thought was really interesting on that Suravasa is it went so back and forth time and time again with the with the Doom Fist uh, because. It's one of those picks of like Doofus is so good for moving around the map and can be shoehorned into this composition. But you can see neither of them really wanted to stay on that ultimate. And I think for the second and third and fourth round, I think we saw Theomatic and Romani switch off of Doofus and onto Doofus like three times each, right? Because like <laughs> that's how close every single fight was. That little edge of getting there that few seconds faster was making the difference in some of these maps. I do love that we saw some different looks here. I feel like yesterday it was just mostly Orisa. Of course, a few maps uh, here and there. Some other stuff was being... Uh, and then there's Hadi, you know, just doing Hadi yeah. things. So we don't <laughs> even like to mention that. But uh, I like I, I like the look with the queen, honestly. I, I'm a little sad that we don't see more of a... 
even if Definitely. it might not be the most optimal comp, but still. Yeah, it definitely has its fun. merits. <laughs> and it is fun, yeah. It is cool to watch, especially when Queen's not, like, perma-picked. I think that's what makes uh, Queen fun. And Overwatch fun as well as a whole, right? Um, but the problem with the Queen is Romani was just taking so much damage. And a lot of the yeah. time, too, Skitter was just looking at Romani, and it's just like... With the DPS passive, you can just get so much damage in. Like, you're not yeah. shooting an Orisa who has the Fortify and the armor, etc. I mean, Skitter is just doing so much work. You can see, obviously, the stats there on your screen. Getting getting the player of the match here, too. Pop that pulse was, was very, very nice. Yeah, and it, it's just... I think Skitter was all over Sheer Cold this entire map. Yeah, we talked about how it's like, hey, he's going to go unchecked because that's the way Sheer Cold is playing. But even then, that can be really difficult. And you can see how much pressure was going on to Skitter at certain times, you know. I think Sheer Cold made adaptations as the series went on to be like, hey, we as the Lucio and the Genji, you guys need to check the Tracer just a little bit more. And Skitzer did adjust pretty well there on Suravastra and came up with some big individual plays. Yeah, I mean, him picking up uh, Soax there at the very end to like get them the points, that yeah. was so crucial. That was so big. And if I were that Lucio player, Skitzer would be on my yeah. list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I would be a little, little bad. Um, yeah, no, great play. So, uh, of course, this was an elimination match. Uh, so that means that, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to Sheer Cold once again. Maybe you'll see them again in a new rendition <laughs> in stage oh, yeah. three. Different or perhaps they're going to stick together. Generally, uh, Scott, actually, uh, and, and Jack as well. I'm wondering... Would you be more the type of people who are like, now nah, we're gonna stick it out as a team, just work on the cohesion, or are you, uh, let's throw it all uh, outside the window and yeah. start a new? Where, where are we at here? Um, exactly obviously, I feel like I teams have, have been benefiting from cohesion and synergy and from working it out. I think especially this early on, uh, especially in the OWCS life cycle, like you just want to stick it out with the team, especially if you're making it repeatedly to this stage, like making it out of Swiss. You just want to get better and better and better as a squad. So I'd probably say just stick it out. Like there's going to be a lot of choppers and cha chop chops and changes as we go from different stages, like stage to stage. But in an ideal world, maybe you make one sub, maybe you make two at max. But like, yeah, I would say sticking as a team would be uh, yeah, I mean, that's what we've beneficial. seen from a one-man army, right? They uh, made very small right. changes heading into stage two. And, and now they're still in it to win it. Let's hear the winning moments of a one-man army against Sheer Cold. Carry half, carry half, left side. Genji, 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 Oh, Genji, 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 Queen, 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 Queen. Up and up and up. Queen, Queen, Queen. Queen, 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 and those were the winning moments. Theomatic is now joining us for a quick chat. First of all, of course, congratulations. You are still in the competition and are looking for your way to the main event. Let's talk about how you got it done, especially on that last map, because Suravasa was as close as it gets. You went down 0 to 99 on that very last point. What were the comms like? What did you guys try to focus on? What was going on? At that point, it was just target focus, you know, it always gets so, so, so simple at that point. But uh, it actually started to fall into place, you know, I think we had a really good setup. That, that's the, that's what we had, you know, we had a good setup for that fight. Uh, we managed to dodge the initial engage, and then we were just chilling and focus firing. And spinning in that queen was the, the final nail in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you. Oh man, I mean, Skitzer had a hell of a performance as well on that tracer. Like, you reckon you guys could stand up to the very best in the region? Like, there's some scary competitions up at the very top. Like, how do you how do you rate your chances? I think it's pretty tough. I think we've had a lot of uh, a lot of hurdles to to get across. You know, in terms of our, our permanent roster, we've had a, a core uh, of four players for a while, but we switched our main support around a lot. So it's been hard to have like consistent old track and old planning. Um, but I think uh, when on a really good day, obviously, when we don't make mistakes, yeah, we can we can do really well. I have a question about the composition that we saw Shia Cole play a lot of. They're playing the queen, they're kind of running at you. Obviously, it felt like you guys had a pretty good grasp at dealing with it on the first two maps, but then it felt like something changed on Esperanza and it started slipping away from you guys. How did you guys deal with that and refocus to sort of play your own game? 
it was it was pretty tough, but we kind of knew it's we, as we were going to the match, we're like, it's push, you know, something like this might happen, you know, we were already ready for it. Um, we obviously would rather play Winston on that map, but we know Romani loves Queen, so that's kind of the situation. <laughs> uh, so we actually don't have too much practice playing Arista Comps on that map, but I mean, we, we did pretty well, we did make some mistakes in some ult fights. Um, but yeah, uh, after that was done, we were sort of like, all right, next map. That's it. Lock in. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah. We would love to see that. And uh, we get to see you and the squad going at it again in just a week's time from now. Enjoy some rest and uh, celebrate the victory. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Thank you. Perfect. The Umatic joining us for a quick chat there as uh, they keep themselves alive. Sheercold is out of the competition and one their army will move on to another decider match which will take place next week. But that also means that we are now done with the EMEA portion of things. Let's bring up the bracket to see where we are currently at. Group B was what we just saw the, not the conclusion of, but uh, we're... <laughs> Closer to Almost there, closer to the conclusion. That's right. The penultimate army. match, would you say? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> you know. Okay, okay. okay. I knew that was coming back to find me. Yeah. Yeah. I want to use the big words in case yeah, Jack try. doesn't understand. <laughs> okay, thanks, Zoe. Yeah, there'll be one more match. Uh, there's one more decider left. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Peps versus One Man Army. That match is going to be pretty damn close, I think, uh, considering how One Man Army played today. Peps also an incredible performance versus Ents, going five maps. That I didn't expect. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how One Man Army regroups because obviously losing 3-0 to Team Peps, it, it wasn't super close either. So you have another week to scrims. That's the nice thing about... Exactly. Okay, Kat. Uh, that's the nice thing uh, about uh, like having that winning this match is you get to go to next week. You get to look at Team Peps' matchups. You get to understand how you guys want to scrim and practice. And at that point, anything can happen. That's right. Well, some of the plays we got to see today were so good that they looked like a Emiracle. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like that. Uh, I'm, I'm out here. I'm trying Custer. If you have any that's better thing, uh, any any better ideas, then have at it. But <laughs> you know, that was good. I don't know why you guys are space. What? <laughs> you guys are crazy. Don't encourage your jewels. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, man. Yeah, there were so many uh, sick plays today. This is obviously going to be one of the big highlights. The one v one Lucio, SK. She's two zero. That's all you need to know from today. Yeah, that's true. I'm next. She's about to go 3-0. Yeah, it's, like, it's, like, <laughs> it's like when you put them up against someone someone who's a noob to sort of get their confidence up. That's going to be me. I'm going to, SK is going to dominate me and SK is going to feel confident going up against Chio in the future. Exactly, yeah. Chio Chong. She's she's about to get out, go up against the very best. That'd be a fun little, little show match, actually. That'd be yeah, kind of cool. And then AVO playing on, playing on mobile. <laughs> yep, that, was, that was really impressive. Mobile gaming and Overwatch. That uh, That is really disappointing. That's uh, not disappointing. That's really uh, frustrating as well for the team, right? Like disconnect, like disconnects happen. Like the internet, it, sometimes it just disconnects randomly, and there's nothing you can really do. But you know, coming back like this and just keeping your head in the game could be uh, pretty tough as well. So yeah, no mad, mad props to Avio to uh, Avo to actually regain composure also, and hit some sick shots. Mad props to the internet provider, <laughs> whoever. <laughs> Why are we I thanking I ISPs? Think, I am confused. I, no, 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 no. I, I mean the one, the one of the mobile phone. Oh, oh yes. sure, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah like the one stable of them connection failed him, the other one enabled, and, and <laughs> I'm, I'm focusing on the positives here. Like I don't know if my phone would be able to hang. You know? I definitely would. Yeah. I didn't even know if my phone could connect to my PC if I tried to do that. I honestly so. don't even know how to make that magic happen. So there's, I barely managed to turn it on at the start of the day. Uh, either way, um, let's take a look at the standings overall in the EMEA region. Group stages are not done yet, uh, but uh, we are slimming it down. Oh yeah. Any surprises for you? Anything you just can't believe happened? Um, I can't believe Schmuggers lost, honestly. Yeah. They, they, they might have lost, but <laughs> they won our hearts. Them. But I, I expected the Queen to go far. Uh, sorry, not the Queen, the uh, the Life Weaver Malga to do some magic, but it didn't, unfortunately. It was about to go crazy. I don't think there's any too... There's not too many surprises right here. I mean, the close series that we just had, maybe? One, uh, one Man Army versus Sheer Cold. That was extremely close, considering their previous uh, bout in the Swiss. Group D is going to be the interesting one to watch out yeah, for. Yeah, 100%. For sure. That, uh, that group is pretty scary if you're in it. Although, not if you're peace and love, because uh, they've already made it 2-0. <laughs> but Ataraxia, their spot might be in jeopardy. We'll have to wait and see. That's yeah. right. However, 
EMEA is done for the week. We will be back with more action next week when we decide which teams we will be sending home and which teams will be moving on to the main event. But that also means that I have the sad task of saying goodbye to Scott and Jack. Bye. Goodbye. 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 It sucks. Uh, we'll it's lovely. We'll Don't see you next week. I, I'll, I'll, I always try to forget you, but it never works. So. Uh, okay, that's messed up. Okay, that's <laughs> messed up. What? I love yeah, that. Scott's you gone. See you guys head. next week. <laughs> when you're trying for a compliment, but you're actually throwing out an insult, it happens to me all the time. For now, we're taking a quick break. Let Costa recover, and when we're back, we're covering NA. <laughs>
Good. Good to go. Anytime. Camera roll. Hey everyone, I'm Gavin Winter, Senior Systems Designer on the Overwatch team. We're back with another developer update to talk to you a little bit about some of the upcoming competitive changes. My teammate, Senior Research Scientist Natasha Miller, will tell us about updates to Defense Matrix a little later. A few weeks ago, we heard from Aaron that heroes are coming out of the Battle Pass and they'll be available for free the day they launch. He also talked about the new Mythic Shop as well as the upcoming Clash playtest. He closed with a little sneak peek at what we're covering in this developer update. Season 10 is just around the corner and we're excited to share these changes with you, starting with how we're updating the way you can play with friends this season. So let's talk about exactly how that'll work. We think Overwatch is at its best when you're playing with friends. So our new system in Season 10 lets any rank group with any other rank. That means, for example, if you're Plat and you've never been able to group with your friend in Bronze, you will be able to do that now. We'd refer to your group as a wide group because you and your friend are pretty far apart. There are some trade-offs for wide groups though. They only play against other wide groups, the queue times could be longer, and the matches will be sillier. We'll still use our role delta tech to try to match you against similarly shaped groups. So if you're a plat tank and your friend is a bronze support, we'll try to find another plat tank and bronze support to match you two against. At the end of a wide match, you'll see a new modifier just for the system. Avoiding boosting is really important to us. So the wider your group is, the less your rank will change after any match. If you're bronze and you're grouped with a champion player, you can expect almost no change to your rank, regardless of the outcome. We expect all this to be a huge match quality win for our solo players, because they'll never play against wide groups. We think of groups that are close in rank as narrow. So narrow matches will only be solos and narrow groups. All this means that you'll be able to choose whether you wanna prioritize the highest match quality or playing with friends. We're also expecting to see fewer smurfs after these changes too, since we know some players were only creating alt accounts to play competitive with their friends. We've heard your request for more void slots, but having more than three in our current system breaks matchmaking for high skill players. We realize that basing our void count on that restriction hamstrings the system for 99% of players though. So to add all the new features we're about to discuss, we had to rethink what it means to avoid players from the ground up. First off, we're increasing the number of avoid slots to 10. We're also going to let you pin some avoided players so that they never fall off your list. The trade-off we make to get these features is related to our next new feature. You'll now be able to prioritize your avoid list where players at the top are most likely to be avoided. For players below Grandmaster, that's most of us, you can expect all 10 avoid slots to be reliable, but we still wanna give you the tools to organize your list by how much you dislike the players on it. For our highest skill players, this feature is particularly important because if we can't find a balanced match, we'll start ignoring players at the bottom of the list in order as queue time increases. Another area we're addressing will bring changes to our lever penalties for unranked and competitive play. Right now on the unranked side, our penalties kick in when you leave four out of your last 20 games and get worse when you leave six out of 20. We aren't changing those, but we are adding a more lenient five minute penalty if you've left two out of 20 and a much more harsh 48 hour penalty if you've left 10 out of your last 20 games. Now, there aren't a lot of players leaving more than 50% of their matches, but they do exist, and we think the game would be better without them most of the time. On the competitive side, we're closing another edge case by suspending any players that leave more than 10 matches a season. We're also gonna start counting matches completed in competitive toward the 20 game window for unranked. Finally, I wanna talk to you about our improved anonymity features. We already had a streamer mode, but we're making this feature more useful to all players, not just streamers. Right now, this feature is client side only, which means it only changes how players' names appear on your screen. The big change we're making is adding server-side functionality, which means we'll change how your name appears on everyone's screens in your match. We think this is great for players who may experience harassment because of their battle tag and just wanna queue up without any chance of that happening. Don't forget to report players that harass you or anyone else though. And speaking of reporting, don't worry, players in streamer mode being disruptive in text chat or voice can still be reported, avoided, and blocked, and penalties will still apply to them in exactly the same way as normal, because we still know their name behind the scenes. Next, Natasha will talk to you about our main initiatives to combat disruptive behavior. Thank you, Gavin. Hiya, I'm Natasha Miller, a senior research scientist at Blizzard working on Defense Matrix for Overwatch. While we are always working in many areas of combating disruptive behavior, today I wanna talk about disruptive chat. I'll also touch on some of the tools that we're improving to help keep the community safe. Disruptive chat can really negatively affect someone's experience in game. 
In our focus to curb this disruptive behavior, we are taking a multi-prong approach that will roll out over several seasons. Today, I'll discuss the first two coming out in the next few seasons. In our first approach, we will prevent players at endorsement level zero from using text or voice chat. To be clear, the only way to get to endorsement level zero is by having your account action for an in-game infraction. Even brand new players start at endorsement level one. So these are players that have proven themselves to be bad actors, so much so in the past that they received a penalty. This feature would allow those players to take a forced break in team and match channels until they work their way back up to endorsement level one. And from there in all higher levels, chat would work as it did before. Remember, the best way to work your way back up to endorsement level one is to demonstrate good teamwork by trying your best, helping your team, and using the in-game ping system. In our second approach, we will remove chat functionality for spectators. Spectators don't have an in-game need to use the chat channel. And by removing their ability to chat, we remove a channel that is increasingly being used by bad actors. Along with these improvements, we are looking at making it easier and faster to report any reportable offense bin match. At the moment, our numbers indicate that most reporting is done towards the end or post match. And one reason for this is that it's not quick to report min match. However, this could put pressure on players to remember that they need to report, who to report, and what to report them for, all after the match. And at that point, they are likely more interested in just starting the next match. So we are hoping that by making it faster to report min-match, more players will use the reporting system. This is very important because we rely on players to help us know what is happening in matches so that our mitigation systems can be more effective and reliable, overall making Overwatch a safer community for everyone. Player feedback is a vital part of improving and optimizing these types of features. So we want to create even more avenues for you to share your thoughts with us. In Season 11, we're introducing the first iteration of player surveys into Overwatch 2. This won't happen after every game because survey participants will be chosen at random among the player base. The survey will be prompted after the progression screen at the end of match flow. This means that you'll be able to watch the play of the game, give endorsements, and review progression without getting interrupted. Once the progression screen is closed, the survey will prompt the player for their feedback. Both console and PC players will get the option to give us feedback via a QR code. PC players may also choose to open the link in a separate browser. Surveys will ask questions about the game, including new modes, events, features, and how you feel about the way we're mitigating disruptive play. We're excited for this feature, and we look forward to continuing to improve the game as we gather your feedback. These are just a few of the things we have been working on in this space. We will continue to bring you updates on our progress mitigating disruptive behavior via the Defense Matrix blogs, which will get a refresh in the coming seasons to include even more on the impact this work is having in the community through transparency metrics. Defense Matrix and Competitive will always be core to Overwatch and will continue iterating, improving, and of course, listening closely to your feedback on these systems. So please keep sharing your thoughts with us and we can't wait to show you what we've been working on in season 10 and beyond. See you soon. Natasha said you will not be getting an outtake out of me today. <laughs> well, so that clip just came off. Any reportable infant in... And they get, get... And they get worse. Every... <laughs> and reliable. You got so close to the end. All right, he's coming back for another pass. <laughs> Circling. Overwatch champion series. I love the sound of that. And EXO against the wall, and Team Peps will full cap. <laughs> Where did Panic come from? Straight on top of their heads. Quartz won't let them stand much longer, kneecapping three in that fight. The new kings of EU have been crowned. Toronto defiant in an absolute shutout. Some kings were born to rule. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching the OWCS Stage 2 Groups, and we have just finished up the EMEA matches of the day, which means it's now time to shift gears and dive into the NA side of things. And joining us is the most unfortunate cast arc we've ever had, Akra Nekber. 
<laughs> it's just not working, guys. Like, you I know, I would. Guys cut neck burn. I would suggest that maybe we don't have to smash two names together to you know, to, to, to encapsulate way. the essence it's, of a cast. This way. This way sucks. Let's find another. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should be doing that. Yeah. We can also just move on. Let's take a look at the graphic. How about that? All Pricing. Right. Can't believe I get paid to talk sometimes. I do believe <laughs> that those players in OWCS get paid to get the bag, though. And the bag has been getting a little bigger. B bigger. Bigger as far as the points are concerned and that's really what a lot of those players uh, have their eyes set on circuit points very important very nice well you know what they say about texas everything is bigger so i think it makes sense given that we're heading up to dreamhack dallas that's, that's it right. i mean that bad that bad do be getting heavy i mean now i think everybody has their own reason to start to drill down uh and focus up now uh the stakes are higher right especially if you're a team that didn't like collect up that many circuit points last time around in stage one so here's where the rubber has to hit the road officially that's right and uh everyone watching of course uh, you too can join us in uh, dallas texas uh you have to put in a lot less work than our players do because you can just buy a ticket how about that here's the tickets available to uh, you of course and you can also just enjoy dreamhack as a whole which uh, is a great time honestly if you've ever been in a land party of this size it's uh it's something it is it's, it is intense it is i mean the atmosphere is like kind of wild and there's obviously like so many parts of the dream hack that you can sort of go around to it feels like their own little biomes right their own little sort of ecosystems <laughs> the land hole is like you know a bit of a safari i won't lie but there's also like you know, great exhibitions and stages set up there so i'm super hyped you just give me some land overwatch for the love of god land overwatch please <laughs> It will be happening, but first we have to uh, figure out who is going to move on and out of the groups here. Looking at our NA Stage 2 group standings as they currently stand. We're currently in Day 3, of course, uh, of matches. Um, who, do you, who do you see not on the top who should be in the top, in your opinion? Or is everything exactly as the script predicts? I actually uh, think if Citrus Nation were in Group B they might be fighting to sort of get out like that's a quite a quality team i think and i think they even managed to beat uh as, as students of the game through swiss if i'm not mistaken yeah they beat them 2-1 so again that, that's like a pretty darn solid team they just fall into a group that features luminosity and timeless so uh, you have to take your licks unluckers mm. yeah that's that's pretty brutal i think looking across the board at all of these groups group b is by far the biggest group of death i mean even taking a look at daybreak this is another team that ended up going so close to that main event in stage one but sadly not able to make it and so i think that that would be maybe the two teams in that group that just don't really feel like they're being given a fair shot to get out of the main event sometimes it do be like that however there's more stages to come so even if they go out and now well in daybreak's case that has already happened uh they uh, they'll have another shot wait did it actually already happen i'm not sure don't quote me on this let's talk about the teams we get to see in our first match here because we're going to kick things off with the uh winners match in group d and this one will feature the students of the game in fmcl uh let's talk about those two teams and those two rosters uh, i like the fmcl roster because it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We have Seeker and Zeru from LFO, uh, W Maimon and Ariel from Left Right at Night from the EMEA region in Stage 1. And of course, we have M80's backline, Renko and Lep. So, looking good. I like what I'm seeing. Oh, I, this is also a team, by the way, that have a few circuit points just, you know, amongst their players coming together. So yep. they set themselves up in a position where they can still vie for a spot in Dallas if they have a good showing here. Whereas SOG, like, honestly pretty stacked lineup pretty pretty crazy like mirror now obviously coming and joining it but i don't know like I, they've not really found the results they're looking for their swiss was also a little bit rocky they did have to play some top teams but again they you know drop the game to citrus nation which is kind of one you want to be winning if you know you want to sort of give the impression that you're in good stead heading into the main event if you're going to get there yeah, I think this was a roster that everybody had easily in their like top eight when you look at which teams made it through to the main event in stage one. And you look at the roster now and you're like, OK, yeah, with Mira coming in, even just to be a substitute for now, you feel like you've got an even more stacked roster. But there are some allegations I think this team has to beat, which is, are they a little washed up? That's something that a lot of the power rankers have started to ask the question of is, can students of the game actually hang 
playing with the bigger dogs in this group, and they've really got to prove that here, starting with this match. And something that we mentioned a lot, of course, yesterday already, especially you, Necra, you just kept on stressing the importance of winning that winner's match because that sets you in the prime position of moving into the main event and that means you're dodging next week's elimination match which will be played on a new patch so you got to lean back and just enjoy the show and see everyone else scramble and figure it out and you can just take your time with it copy other people's homework that is a huge advantage it really is. I don't think any team is super jazzed about having to adjust to a new patch in the very middle of the group stages, but that is something that a lot of teams are going to have to figure out uh, because uh, only so many teams are going to avoid it. And it, It's not know. even that, right? Because obviously, like, your placement in the main event, we just looked at the, the how the circuit points and, and sort of prize breakdown is. Like, you want a favorable seating going into the start of that main event because winning that first round gives you a, a huge number of extra circuit points for your team and that's obviously something that could be the difference between you making down or, or or not and, and even just setting yourself up for sort of later on in the year so that is something that both these teams are going to have in the front of their mind i'm sure the coaching staff would love to at least be able to observe the rest of the teams flounder around on a new patch while formulating their particular plan you saw the votes at home rose it's a pretty closely predicted match here fmcl is a less known quantity but we saw just how nasty seeker was right on that lfo team seeker you know, there was a point, I think, where Zika was, you know, going to be a part of their matey roster, and then that didn't happen, and then they formed another team, and then they split up. So FMC are hoping that this is the, the solution now, as they picked up a few players that have come off some of those top teams. So having Renko and Lep here is going to make you feel pretty good, but they're going up against fellow Overwatch League veterans yeah. in Cal and Rack Attack here, so it's by no means a walkover. No, I think you hit something really important though, is that this open ecosystem, it's quite nice that with the chaos that can ensue with roster mania as we have all come to know and love from the Overwatch League, in between in the contender scene, I feel like it gets even crazier. Uh, so we're going to see a little bit more of that, see what FMCL can really make of being able to pick up those pieces. As these gates open, we can see Ariel really relying on this Ramatra pick that was so influential in their stage one. But how is that going to actually fare up against the Sigma composition coming up from Infected? Sigma being one of Infected's best heroes. Right now, I'm in a plenty of trading, right? Just poking down. Seeker can charge off of that Sigma shield and hopefully send a railgun in another direction to put pressure on a player for Zero to follow up on that damage. And yeah, Ariel really just playing these corners as much as they possibly can. That shield gives them some room to move up. And Nemesis form is definitely threatening to Sigma if he can close the gap taking a look at these railgun charges because it could just take a stray shot that's going to open this up for any team. FMCL may have been able to force the SOG team to go try to move to the point, but they're getting pushed back now as FMCL is walking on them. Yeah, I love the shield they're thrown out by Ariel. It actually blocks the accretion that Infected is using to try and slow the advance of the Ramatra. But all that pressure, all that push, and FMCL couldn't convert that into a point flip whatsoever. Now they get forced back, and in the longer fight, they're going to lose out to the poke cop. PG is able to find Seeker. That is a massive boon for your team. And now Scissors realizes they have an opportunity to pressure down the main tank. Ariel feeling it a little bit now, but they've already built an ant matrix here. SOG in a position to keep that pressure going. Sigma is just so good when you're running this poke style of comp because of that movable shield. Look at how many angles that Infected's able to lock down with that shield, whether it's going to be on this high platform or even just being able to provide a bit more coverage there for PGE closer towards the back. FMCL's very split, though. These students of the game anticipating a Kitsune Rush, which is definitely coming through soon. Nice Annihilation, though. That's going to be a problem. Here's the Sound Barrier and Kitsune Rush all deployed. Everything almost from FMCL drawn out in that last fight. Three massive ultimates that on their own could win fights. They really dig deep to flip this point back. Now that it's re they've wrestled back control, though, that was so expensive. So you're really looking at Seeker being able to get a pop-off with this overclock, or Sierra even being able to try to find a kill with that pulse bomb, just to hold on to the point. On the flip side of things, SOG, that was pretty economical, no? Amplification Matrix for three more ultimates on FMCL's side. So SOG are definitely coming back into this with the ultimate advantage. FMCL are actually allowed to, or rather allow SOG to walk back in and get some space, and PGE's been able to convert that you know, kill again on Seeker. Dominating in the Sojourn Mirror so far, 
So soon to the game can reflip this point very, very quickly. And now it's going to be a problem. Ariel has no room, and look how far away the rest of their team are. Suzu, I saw that. That was well placed. Cal having to use the immortality field to stop the pulse bomb in by Zera. Overclock potential here for Seeker, but Zera's going to work right now. Is soon to the game with a poke comp. They put themselves in brawl range against this FMCL setup. But now students of the game, having lost the point, go for the sound barrier and turn it into not a whole lot. They have to switch off his poke now as they're getting space denied from them. It's always going to be a bit of a back and forth here until we see Seeker start to open things up. But PGE is going to be the one that hits the overclock to see if it can be enough to turn this around for students of the game. I mean, it looks like it. At the moment, Ariel can't really get over towards the point at all, and Infected is very hard to shift. Renko taken down by a wayward javelin. It's a massive advantage here for students of the game, and so far, PGE completely unbothered by everybody, throwing themselves at the sojourn. Try and force him off the point. Eventually, he concedes, but that's only so Infected can step up and create that space once more. The Ramatra is felled again. The students of the game have got to be feeling good now. A long fight that gets them back in control. And they also get to play with these angles too, so Cal can play really far back, farm up this amplification matrix, and PGE is there to be able to take advantage of that as well. FMCR are going to have to walk into this, and they don't have that sound barrier yet to help give them that extra sustain to deal with this window. Zero needs to touch. They do. Overtime now secured. Sis is dropping to the low level, and all of FMCL grouping up. They know the Tracer is here. Sis is... Might be able to recall to the high ground. No, they actually had just dropped down, but that's another huge headshot from PGE to find a tracer, no less. Infected knows there's some action happening on the point, but they were trying to deal with left at the time. Now they'll make their way over. They can afford to let the point flip here. As it'll be over once they're in control and they disengage away from that Katsune rush. Waiting for that Terra Surge to come online as Infected now has that. You can go in with a Fortify and just try to hit some of these squishies in the back line of FMCL. They're going to make a play at some point here, though. Ariel's taking space and has the Annihilation available. All of SOG try and fold away from this, but it's only so far you can run from there. Oh, my goodness, Rack Attack. That is perfect. The ulti Ramatra knocked off the map. SOG still need to take the point here, but FMCL being tankless now means they can barely do anything about it. Seeker's trying to force Infected back, trying to take shots at Cal from behind the Orisa. Does take Infected low. Now the contest is underway, though. You see PGE? With that overclock of their own, great pulse ball and aerial in power, but they still take a ton of damage. Once again, they are tankless. Now it's up to left to try and stall things out. They get booped upward there by Rack Attack and a sound barrier after the fact here for students of the game should seal the deal. A competitive back and forth round, but after the Sigma switch to Orisa, in fact, it looked much more comfortable. That was a really, really back and forth round. I'm excited if this is going to be a bit of a predeterminer for what's ahead of us in this series. As students of the game, FMCL, I think both of these teams are easily considered some of the top eight in North America, but it's really now about just trying to prove themselves on this bigger stage to get into that main event for stage two. I wonder, though, if Ariel's going to have to switch off of this Ramatra. I, I think it worked out when you were expecting to see the Sigma on the other side if you're able to walk in front of that shield. But when it comes down to the little micro differences in between the way that those two compositions play, I, I thought that SOG just had a big upper hand when having that Sigma shield available versus having to play around those pillars. I'm surprised that FMCL didn't try harder to take the space away from the... the Sigma set up like after they won a fight they didn't push up and uh, sort of deny entry to the Sigma mm -hmm. eventually though I think it was just a bit hard for Infected to get away with the Ramatra there and sort of switch off to an even better brawl option Scissors there at the top of your screen already make their way into the back line they've got to respect Seeker though who's a ridiculous hit scan in their own right but PGE has outshone him for the entirety of this map so far Ooh, well Ariel's getting bullied now, falls back by the, just a sheer weight of cooldowns there by the looks of things as Infected just unloads. PGE has a good little vantage point here, but now being accosted by left. We need to respect this, or at least give some line of sight to his supports, and they do. Infected falling, though, over on the point there is PGE spends so much time trying to swat at left. They can't really get involved in the damage trades that are happening on the point. That's a really big missed opportunity here for students of the game, and FMCL can set up. 
FMT is set off, and uh, this Arissa is already looking a bit better from Ariel. Has to play around those disruptor shots. As we saw at the very beginning of this stage, PGE did pop one of those down, and it forced Ariel to have to back away to make sure it wasn't going to be taking too much damage. But now that they actually have control of this point, FMCL can get a nice setup here. Zara has already done enough damage to get this pulse bomb online, and, you know, high noon, baby, we get a chance to see something come of that. But I'm really looking at this Kasune rush from Renko on FMCL. MCL to start opening up this fight. Zero harassing right now. Calvo not inclined to use that swift step at this time. That's beautiful. Nice little one clip there by Scissors. Assisting, of course, in the takedown on the Cassidy. Seeker having the space taken away from him there does not benefit the gunslinger. Went by the sound barrier here. No reason to make use of that now as students of the game get the point back. But crucially, late as though it is, they don't have to spend ultimates to get it. Just good coordination. Yeah, they don't have to use anything, and I don't think that FMCL are too unhappy with having to expend the Pulse Bomb there to no avail either. Uh, it's going to be a pretty explosive fight heading into this next one. It's Look at the layered Kitsune rushes, look at the overclock from PGE. I think there's a bit more firepower in SOG's tank, but FMCL have options to try to get around that. Most notably, See? Lep's sound barrier. I think he had to drop to the low ground here to try and get a flanking angle, but he walked straight into the Arisa. I'm gonna roll away here. Dead Eye. Oh goodness! <laughs> See you later. Dead Eye interrupted, infected, sent him over the edge. Still, no room for this Cassidy to find value. Ariel now pushing up onto the point of rack attack, has nowhere to go. Beautiful connection there with that javelin. A PGE also will be slammed up against the wall. Now we have an awkward situation for students of the game. They get schooled in that fight as FMCL happy to trade ultimates to get back in control now. Something about playing towards the edge of the map that has always been on a bad look for FMCL. Uh, uh, just be careful of rack attack, I guess is all I can say. So much displacement. That time it was infected as well. Like they have two it was everything. Uh, virtual boops, right? Uh, he had like no sidelines on the high ground because they were denied from him by the entirety of students of the game. They just weren't playing uh, into that game plan. So being forced to like drop and then flank and then get spotted out instantly and speed, speed boosted onto. And that's not ideal. There's PG it again. A little bit of a gap forming, I'm not gonna lie. Seeker brought down by a headshot there. Zero hoping to equalize by maybe focusing the Cassidy down and that is a beautiful pulse bomb. Now or even. Pressure here being applied to Cal. Zero though have to recall. It's taking too much incidental damage now. You see Seeker trundling back towards the fight. But it's gonna be too late to intervene in this engagement. It's too late, but I, th I think at FFMZL, they're walking away with 98% of this point, and all they need to do is build up to a Kitsune rush here, or even just imagine if they have this sound barrier before Rack Attack does, then they've got the barrier advantage, they have more sustain, Ariel's going to have this Terror Surge coming online as well. Uh, so realistically, maybe looking at last fight between these two teams, but FMCL are packing quite a bit of punch. Ariel just takes the mag grenade for the rest of the team. Nothing more than a very mild poke is what that amounts to at that point. Terra Surge up here for both Arisas. This is about to get a little bit hectic. Here comes Katsuna Rush, immediately going to be an Ant Matrix deployed by Cal. All the students of the game play from behind it. They still maintain point control. Eventually, they'll have to stall it. And it's going to be Infected's job to step up here. Ariel, though, out of line of sight of most of this damage is able just to shrug it off. Terra Surge comes out. It's just as well racket the sound barrier. Eventually, Infected is going to pop that. And under that immortality field, going to be able to stay alive to push on to the point once more. Javelin Spin buys the space. Can you get the frag, though? Looks like Seek was able to avoid the Cresting Spears of the Arisa for the time being. Nice stick, though. PGE going to have to set up for a trade there against Zera. And we are now seeing students of the game sat here on the point. Rack attack desperately trying to tend to infect its wounds, but that Arisa is very, very low. Another boop here, though, would make it pretty hard for Ariel to close. Seismic Slam. And we see Infected get out for now. So it's given point control over to students of the game, and that's a beautiful pulse. Another great trace of play of many in this round. The Doom out of the picture, that's huge. It's a really big deal because now you don't have the same type of combinations you would have had with the Doomfist. And can't go in to get the movement either, uh, and the Solver is going to be a huge problem. PGE. Okay, plenty of damage there in Zera's direction. PGE credited with the killing blow, but that was a team effort for sure. Virus there deployed on Ariel. Ticking down as they've had their abilities locked out. The Sombra switch, a touch of genius. Giving students of the game the map win.
That was a really nice switch to see there. I think just in the heat of the moment, it can be a little bit difficult to pinpoint exactly maybe that rapid switch you might want to make in order to ensure the victory. But that Sombra was so nice. Not only did that Doomfist get completely shut down, but there still a lot of damage output for a Sombra. And even though she did get a bit reworked and maybe she did get a little bit downtuned, uh, she's still hitting really hard. Yeah, I mean, if you hit the skill shot, that sort of damage over time really, you know, can add to the rest of your kit. But the hack on a Doomfist is, is one of the most devastating things to experience. Also, like a Pulse Bomb, right? If you can hit Doomfist with, like, you know, single instances of burst damage, it's really hard for him to hang around in those fights. I was really impressed from both Zero and Scissors. We saw, you know, great Tracer moments here. We're going to be blessed with some of the highlights right now. Seeker struggling actually to keep up with PGE over the course of the map. And I think that, you know, like that first round gave us some interesting sort of tank dichotomy. Eventually infected, making that switch and it pays off. Erisa was so nice, and once we saw Ariel also switch over to the Erisa, I think that's where we also got a chance to see a little bit more into the future of what the rest of the series is going to provide. Both Ariel and Infected have a pretty good tank pool. I think Infected a bit more Arisa leaning than some of the other players in this region, but Ariel still, I think, has the opportunity to try to do a bit more response when it comes down to what Infected is going to be playing. Um, but it seems to be mostly Arisa and an A. I don't expect us to see too much more than this. So many of these moments, right? A rack attack with that massive, massive boop uh, on the Ramatra there, and Infected, of course, getting rid of Seeker. But look at what, I mean, PG is hitting all of those skill shots there, but Coming out with like a bunch of random kills, this one here. <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> fair enough. Just take credit for that one. I'm fine with it. And yet, despite how back and forth so much of the gameplay was here, students of the game with a with a very big lead, especially in terms of that, that sort of KD. For a lot of fights that went fairly close and went fairly back and forth, one thing that we observed, I think, was just Seeker struggling to find good angles. Like that one fight where he drops off the right side high ground, rolls away, and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. Risa, he's just, you know, being accosted by uh, this equine assailant and gets caught immediately by that javelin spin. That, that definitely speaks to the struggles of when you do have, you know, enemy tanks or just teams that are really good at denying you good sight lines and not giving you room to land those consecutive shots. I think what that KD also speaks to is just how much space we were seeing these teams being willing to give up. Uh, you're not necessarily backing away because you fully lost the team fight. Maybe you've lost one or two members, and so the team just goes, I'm going to back away. I'm not going to let you get any more ultimate charge out of this engagement. But we are going to see a sub, and FMCL is known to do this. Uh, they do have a very deep DPS pool and very talented DPS when it comes to this lineup. So Maimon is going to be stepping into the roster in favor of Seeker. And so I kind of wonder if we get a chance to maybe see some Echo in this next map. Yeah, that's like a classic pick for my mind. Always seen the Genji uh, Tracer at times, obviously representing Great Britain uh, in the World Cup. See our DPS player from Wales. You know, I'm seeing something in for Seeker. It definitely means that FMC are looking to maybe trend away from just you know relying maybe on that hit scan, that sojourn to a too great a degree. Seeker has shown us some of the most disgusting individual performances I think of any player, uh, you know, during the Overwatch League last year. This match though, so far, he's not been able to shine. He's not been able to express that skill to the same degree. So he'll have a chance maybe to ruminate on that from the bench. And we set our sights forward towards Pada Izo. Ooh, so I definitely could see us getting some echo here. And that makes me so excited because Maimon really did have so many pop-up performances on that hero, whether it was in the World Cup or even just the time that I've been able to see them play in the NA contender scene. And echo right now is so interesting because we've seen in the past stage, there's this kind of unique dynamic of what is it that you're actually going to duplicate with an ultimate like that? Are you going to duplicate a tank? Before it was kind of like, well, now there's three Mauga on the field and what are you going to do about it? But are you going to duplicate a support? Because we've also seen that for immediate utility for something like a Sleep Dart and an Ana or a Suzu from a Kiriko. Yeah, I mean, it was a time where like just bio grenade was so powerful because of how healing oriented the, the meta was that you would see like the echo copy the armor and obviously you copy that hero right where you were when you pop that. So you maintain maximum altitude and you have like a really nice 
his angle to throw a bionade in there and basically hit multiple ple people even over shields that's less valuable now obviously that short of sheer weight of healing especially because of the way that you know, the dps passive has sort of made it a little bit harder just to overload your team with heals and and keep them basically untouchable so i like the idea rose of you know getting a duplicate tank especially if it's a powerful space tanking tank like a, obviously an extra orisa with that whole set of cooldowns can be very powerful winston as well given that you're you know building up a primal rage at a you know a much faster rate that might actually be something we see a little bit more here but again, that the Ana, the Ana pick, the Ana duplicate, still on the table. I would, I would say that my own has less support here. Like in the past, we've seen the Mercy really pair up with, uh, with the Echo. Now you've got to be a little bit more self-sufficient, and you also got to make sure that you maintain that line of sight to your Kiriko. Yeah, the Kiriko is going to be the biggest source of healing here for the Echo in that composition. And FMCL are, in fact, going to run the Echo alongside a Winston from Ariel. So, you know, while we might have seen a lot of Arissa being played, something that I don't think that we've gotten a chance to see enough of is going to be this Winston dive variant from a lot of our teams. Uh, maybe the Diva, if we're looking at somebody like Hawk being able to play that dive. But at the end of the day, these Winston dive comps are still one of the most high skill ceiling and also just kind of team gap creating comps that we can actually see in OWCS. Yeah, it's very like exposing for better or for worse, I think, because defending with this Winston requires you to take some risks and actually play out of those safe positions. And you've got to make really informed decisions about where you engage. My own could use a mercy right now. Instead, he'll just make sure he basks in the glow of a Susu as he's thrown at the ground. This is picked off already here, so that burst damage now off the table for students of the game and the focusing beam will be enough to sever cow from the rest of existence oh okay my man Jeez. all right not coming into this match cold at all i see it uh, feels really good to see my back on this hero and, and if you got a chance to catch any of the co-streams uh we did get a chance to see my play the echo versus their match versus timeless nightmare on day one of groups uh, it was just so explosive uh, something that's my really excels at with this hero is being able to combo the sticky bombs onto really mobile targets maybe it's the tracer of all things that you're going to be able to land that on also tiny hitbox by the way uh, but also being able to just delete these tanks with that focusing beam the combos are so good from my mom Cal having to really just slam healing in here that dps passive is hitting a little different cal eventually brought down by the pulse bomb and it probably feels pretty tough bros uh, to be piloting this brig against the team that that has that echo you just can't interact with her most of the time yeah, you can space out that Winston a little bit more, right? You can, you know, throw a whip shot in and make it harder for them to engage, but they're not going to full engage on you anyway. Even Ana, uh, they're going to play from inside the bubble uh, most of the time anyway. So we, I definitely want to see, like, how Racket sort of def derives value from this pick. I agree with you. I think one of the things that the Brig can provide in this composition is just a little bit extra help to something like the Tracer versus Tracer matchup. And so you'd hope that Scissors would be able to win those 1v1s. Beautiful time from Cal Abbott to dispense that nano boost and PGE makes it impossible to miss the shot by filling his screen with an organ of Zera. Yeah, I don't think you want to be primaling into this Cassidy anymore. PGE switching off the Echo in favor of the Gunslinger here to try and win that battle. It looks like it's paid off. Eventually they'll fall. Lep's able to deal with the Cassidy. Ariel here. Just trying to buy a little bit more time now as Scissor steps up and is forced to recall. They are close to a pulse bomb though. But opportunities to make use of that seem to be lacking right now. At the very least, FMCL able to force the attackers back here. The students of the game. I know Slack as they wait very little time and getting back into the fray. And it's going to be a tracer duplicate here. But then I Max Shield. Gives my own pause for thought. Don't want to be on the receiving end of a stun if they can help it. And Ariel had their rear end hanging out at the back of that bubble and that was enough for infected and co to find the extra damage my at least gets those cooldown downs refreshed as they come out of duplicate no great target to employ them on students of the game they've got that car moving it was a little slow to start, but as soon as the game, they played that so smart, recognizing that they could use a couple of their resources to at the very least be able to push FMCL back away from that closer choke point and then go in with the rally. So we were asking, where can Rack Attack actually find value from the Brigitte? And not only was it in the Tracer versus Tracer, but the rally to actually have point presence or increase point presence on that first point. Super nice. Rack Attack now, though, is going to go over to the Lucio. And so I think the mobility is uh, even better to have here on the streets phase. Oh, this feels a lot better. Absolutely. 
Again, you can't really access those high ground positions, and you're going to need to uh, at some point here. Nice pulse on Infected. Another good connection from Zera. And then, in fact, and Zero says, you know what? I I'm done. It's like scoring a touchdown and running out of the stadium. Peace. I'm leaving the server. <laughs> Figure it out yourselves now, nerds. Okay, hopefully it's not another play from phone hotspot situation. That's actually uh, wild, by the way. I mean, yeah, is it even that bad? I mean, I I it depends. Are you tethering your phone or are you <laughs> literally using the wireless hotspot? Because that's a whole other story. That's like... That's rough. I think like an AP would be like bouncing to like one. Really? Ooh, yeah, that's that's tough. That's tough. Hey, at least it's a wireless card though. You know what I mean? True. It's a wireless card. True. Because most people hardwire their PCs don't even think about that anymore. This guy, thinking ahead. Love to see that. But Zero obviously taking a break. Sometimes, you know, you just blow your cooldowns and, uh, and again, start to feel yourself feeling a bit faint. So we'll get them back in in just a moment. But there's a lot to catch up on here because we see like both teams with a Winston composition and the Winston dive comp is probably not you know, going to last forever on defense unless there's like a chasmous gap between the teams in skill level. But I feel like FMCL do pretty well to shave as much time off the clock as they do. And we have a Cassidy switch uh, with that Brig of Rack Attack. So they're trying to play more defensively, Rose, but um, yeah, finally they're able to sort of bring this Echo Comp down uh, and get onto the point and then switch off to Lucio. Yeah, I still think that the Echo is going to be something my Moan can rely upon at the very least in the Streets phase. It does remain to be seen whether or not he's going to feel comfortable enough with that pick when the third point gets a little bit more enclosed. Uh, but I've, we've seen it before from my Moan. He's not afraid to play with some of those more vertical limitations, if you will. I mean, everybody in FMCL, save the Tracer, I guess, can play from the top of these buildings and then just transition between high and low kind of comfortably. That gives them a lot of flexibility. And that ability to come from some unexpected angles here, whereas P PGE just has to kind of hope that they show themselves to the Cassidy and make it an easy knockout. Shields, my own worst enemy. They go very, very low here as the Primal Rage comes in from Ariel. They definitely need to create a little bit more spacing here, but right now they're just holding the corner, and that gives space to PGE now. He gets on top of that building. Nice little man grenade was actually enough to get the finish on Renko. And Scissors didn't have to do too much there. Just watch everything unfold. Now students of the game have this high ground. They're pushing FMCL back into their spawn. All right, well, that's going to be a bunch of space created here for uh, FMCL. Uh, they got to come back into this one at some point, but I think when you see Infected try to go up to the spawn doors with that Primal Rage ready, it's going to be a little tough. PG now, defensive dead eye being thrown out. Oh, okay. Ariel just exposes himself to that skull for a second too long. Soundberry now comes out for FMCL, but it's not quick enough to save Ariel's life. Still, PGE is going to be traded out. A duplicate of the Tracer now, my moan. Going to be pretty hard to pin down on the car for the time being, and they've actually been able to build a pulse. Really hard to find a connection here. So many nimble targets to choose from. Eventually, that one goes by the wayside. My moan does see a very low health. Kiriko tries to go to work with a focusing beam, but left is quicker. And the boop gets the elimination. Right in the nick of time, FMCL set themselves up for so much success. They had to go back into that one with several ultimates, but the fact that they were able to stop the cart where it is now means that students of the game have to go through so much open territory to finally get back there to push that cart over the line. And they're running out of time. 30 seconds left is not a whole lot to work with, but the one thing that students of the game does have is the sound barrier, which can be hugely influential in this final moment to get that cart over. Is there either has to strike before that comes down or wait it out to get a real big elimination with his pulse bomb? Okay, they realize they can't go upstairs anymore. They're going to be calling desperately for Healy right now, and finally it comes. My moment here playing out of line of sight of PGE, who really rules the roost from that little overpass. In fact, it comes up. So does the cart. This is very, very low now as the Katina Rush gets thrown down there. Healed up, of course, by their recall. Now they're going to get the job done. Don't even need the pulse bomb to finish off Ariel here. And SOG find a burst of lethality just when it's most needed. They're able to get that second checkpoint and a 90 second extension. It's still a lot of time to work with. Uh, the fact that they only need the Kitsune Rush is very well and they could hold on to this sound barrier means that they have bought themselves even more time throughout this third point. On the flip side of things, we do see that FMCL, they are going to have basically a full slate of ultimates for this next fight. And they don't want to have this prolonged too much. So as soon as the game, they got to get these picks fast and swiftly. PGE going to be a big part of that. I get a lot of consistent damage being dealt by the Cassidy from that position, but it's a little exposed, and that's exactly where the defenders choose to dive. Here's the Primal. Ariel's already forced them back towards their spawn. Now he wants to send them to the grave. Good pressure on Cal, and Lep is there again. Lep's follow-ups have been immaculate. 
Scissors picked off there by a right click, and Ariel says, I've done my job here. Go back to get the defense. Play a little bit around this high ground. And if you're on this bridge, you can pretty comfortably contest this cart. But here's where we get into the last fight for this round. Soon this game, they've got four ultimates up against FMCL's four. But here's the duplicate first. No beat for Caesars. They might have been in a recall animation at the time. Sarah, a little bit preemptive with the pulse bomb. Can't find the elimination, even though the stick was good. Scissors, though, does him one better. Ariel's gonna fall. PG now opts to drop to the low ground. There's a duplicate of Winston primarily in his face, but eventually the facade drops to reveal a very fragile looking echo out there in the open. Now PG to the front lines. Scissors already paving the way for the rest of students of the game. 90 seconds they came into this stage with and are looking very, very good to finish the map now. Ariel suffering, has to try and find a way to get in, opts to throw a bubble midway through and sit on the car, but PG is there with the damage, and three other players from Students of the Game are involved. Mad Grenade holds Infected at bay, but not nearly enough to keep that primal rage tampered. And it will be Students of the Game getting the map done. No time to spare, but considering how dicey was looking there at second, they'll be pleased enough. It's good enough too, because that's still a win condition on the board. If they can just hold FMCL back, or even, well, yeah, you know, either you tie or you go into more rounds or you just win it out, right? I think students of the game are feeling pretty good about that one. I like the uh, the brig potentially here on defense. Obviously, really hard to assail the high ground. I think it's better. And you mentioned yeah. that, like, the repair packs just being handed out to one of your flankers means that they can really spend much more time out in the open or wrapping around and being quite aggressive. So we like it from Rack Attack. We know it's a, a pick we've seen from him on multiple times cal they are nasty on the armor so i'm happy to see this dark rack really <laughs> I, I listen i yeah, would have i'm pretty sure he it. has played that in now I, I, I believe there was he a has certain played day. life weaver yeah i don't know if that was a good day or a fun day or a bad day but it, I mean, there it, was that, a life weaver that's going to depend who you are on who you ask i think <laughs> but uh, yeah, look, obviously we know Life Weaver has some great output, really good numbers. The utility also is potentially conditionally good, but that lack of mobility uh, is often a problem. Baptiste, you know, can get exploited, and he has much better vertical mobility than the, than the Life Weaver, and even he struggles sometimes under that kind of pressure, so let's not mess around. Let's listen into FMCL now as they try and match this full map completion from students of the game. Uh, give me time. I can try, I can try, I can try. Finish your chest, I'm going to chase your right side, 3, 2, 1. Without giving, but not Echo, by the way. Stop it. Echo low. Okay, Maki's on corner point, I'm just going to shoot him. Shoot him, Maki, shoot him, Maki. Yeah, I'm not taking damage. I'll not bomb right. Can you give me time? I can go back line soon. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. You guys ready? Yeah, ready, ready, ready. 3, 2, 1, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Shoot him, Maki, shoot him, Maki. Echo can die, Echo can die, Echo can die. Echo on, 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 you can see how hard it is to coordinate these dives, especially against a highly mobile defensive setup. I think that was Lep there, pretty frustrated about randomly getting picked up by Infected. It was really tough there too because at, after you lose that Lucio, it's going to be way harder to actually match that same type of mobility. Uh, so yeah, you got to back up and try again, but it's time to try to take this Echo out. It's awkward. I think for Cal to get on sideline on PGE, they're playing from inside this cafe, whereas the Echo is outside that point up in the air. Desperately, Cal's trying to find the angle. Eventually, PGE has to go and find a health pack of their own, and they get jumped on by Mamoud and Zera. FMCL really trying to exploit here. Echo's uh, difficulties with getting support at times like that. The Cal's gone down. Nice little dive here from Ariel, but it's going to be traded out. It's Mamoud this time to fall. Infected is low, very low. They are able to complete the kill, though, with the help of Scissors. With no Kiriko here, it looks a little dicey for FMCL. They get themselves a tick, and now they're going to go with the Primal Rage now. Ariel really needs to space this out so that there can be a point cap behind them but no one's actually on the point here and ariel gives up all that health for not much capture progress whatsoever that's still a lot of space and time for the rest of the reinforcements of fmcl to come back and you also Ooh. the tracer use a ton of huge skills that's big from my own just a straight up spam of those cooldowns to bring pge to heal my own completely ignoring the stun here because they know they have a second life should they require it there's the sticky bombs in the back away from my own 
And no one's walking into this. Not on their best day. They're going to try and challenge the amount of spam coming through that choke. Cal Low, another sticky bomb deployment now. Brings Rack Attack within inches of losing his life. And that's the point capped midway through the fighting. <laughs> well, that card's already going to go ahead and, and get the ball rolling. But FMCL, they're going to feel nicely about just being able to do that with very few ultimates. You already have the sound barrier as well, which is a huge advantage to have versus the students of the game composition because they're running on a brig. They're also running a very exploitable backline. Because you don't have the Lucio, it's much more difficult for this on and the brig to get away from where they would like to be set up. You know, the flip side of that is that the brig shield is really nice to be able to not only shield Cal, but also PGE switching over to the Cassidy. Oh. But that was a straight ooh. solo kill from Scissors. They were the only one flanking there. And my mode gets just absolutely ruined. That takes so much pressure off the defenders here, students of the game, who basically just sit the Cassidy, Arnor, and Brig all together. So that's a pretty scary prospect to try and dive. And you can see FMCL taking their time. But that time, that window, is what Scissors sort of exploited to take the Echo out of the fight. Yeah, so also the armor packs. Thank you, Brig. Pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> Bubble here, that's a problem for PGE. Fam the hammer here, force Ariel back, but now they come back in with a primal rage, and there is a classic Cal sleep. Ariel here has a brief take with a Sandman, and that looked like a whip shot that keeps them off that high ground. Even in primal, Ariel is struggling to stick to a target. In fact, it's very, very healthy here. The attackers are expending some big resources, but they haven't gone for the big ults right now. They're still holding onto them. They're gonna have to as Renko is forced into a savings plan on that Katsune rush. Oh, that was a super nice sleep dart there from Cal2. Actually forces the Tracer to use the recall. So now oh, it's so, so vulnerable. So good. You could not get away from that Bionade and the infected cleave combo. So it was super, super well done. And this is, a, you know, the kind of the re-emergence of that issue of yes, this this back line of Cal Rack Attack on the Ana and Brig is very mobile, but how do you actually jump them. I don't know. But now I, I I really don't know. Because you have that rally up. Look at this. Rack attack. Okay, Nanabu's over to PGE. Okay. That's quite the gambit. Dead eye here that's gonna charge up quicker. PGE had an easy kill on my moan there, but ignores that skull in favor of trying to get more damage on Ariel. Cal eventually falls that back line finally showed to have its flaws. But the crackback is far more impressive from students of the game. They had to spend both support ults to do so, but hey, so do FMCL. Those are really expensive ultimates to have, too. I think when you look at pound for pound, what both of these comps are providing, uh, you're like, okay, well, the Rally is a super great defensive ultimate, uh, but, like, the Sound Bear is so flexible in that nature. Now that's off the board, you aren't really going to be able to use it for this next engagement, and when the card is stopped where it is, you would love to just have that extra bit of sustain and firepower in order to push this cart forward. So now you're relying on this duplicate from Mimon to really open things up. And so I guess that's where you're happy that students of the game don't have a sound barrier. Oh, nice shot there. Not bad at all from Mimon. Gonna be knocked out of there, dude, pretty darn quickly here. And ops for the Ana, right? That sort of aerial bionape. Everyone on students of the game was split up there. I think Mimon was hoping to hit that backline trio of the two supports in Cassidy, but that wasn't to be. Good bubble there from Infected. Buys enough space here for PGE to get rid of Ariel. The counter tank play, the counter dive play from students of the game has been above reproach so far. My own falling once more. PGE, it's been great over both maps. Honestly, gapping Seeker, uh, you know, on Nepal. Uh, and here looking absolutely fabulous when it comes to dealing with that aerial threat of my own, who's been quiet on the second phase. And Rose, there's only 10 seconds left. Someone's gonna have to come in and touch. You really hope that it would be Ariel being able to have that primal rage, but it's gonna be an uphill battle for FMCL to climb. Ariel with primal at the very least. Cal clutching onto that sleep dart now. As it is the silver bullet when dealing with the angry primate. They do take note, of course, of the Winston going off to the left-hand side, and here's the primal. Nanobu's gonna be given over to PGE once more. This Cassidy is looking electric. Decent amount of damage, but the sound barrier is going to be there. No, dead eye. My own can't get away. He doesn't have the mobility. He already used his flight cooldown to get into the fight. Okay, a posthumous mag grenade there thrown in the direction of left, but no one's there to follow up on that immobility of the Lucio. 
That's the stun used up by Rack Attack. Simply thrown at Renko after the Kitsune Rush came down. But it's all about the healing emanating from the Brig. As Rack Attack leads the charge here, the defenders try and reestablish themselves once more. Infected as Primal, that is big, and it could be the difference maker indeed. Here it comes. Ariel already fallen, so there's a huge tank disparity, and Infected is making it look even worse. Students of the game, they are a cut above here on Paraiso. This is why Rack Attack has always had the plot armor. Whenever he was playing in the Overwatch League, no matter how the scoreline was going, everybody just wanted to see Rack Attack get yeah. that win. Because Rack Attack is such an impressive Brig. Honestly, doesn't don't think it really matters what he's playing, but the Brig just looks so standout, and you, you gotta protect your Brig your Brigida. You know, it's funny, because we have this, this tension on both sides. On one hand, you have Rack Attack, who you always want to win. On the other side, you have Renko, who you always want to see smile. Yeah. <laughs> who do you go for? Like, we are locked in a state it's of quantum so hard. indecision here. It's absolutely brutal. But while we figure that out, while we decide which way we're leaning, let's listen in. Students of the game finding their second consecutive map win. Let's get some comms. Three and one. I'm one and one. Fuck me, fuck me. I'm on top of the ball. I'll look at Bash. Two, one. Bashing monkey. Monkey, 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 a huge step forward in like communication in the Overwatch world. I think this should be studied, honestly. The amount of yeah, I efficiency. Think that was a Nobel Prize. Uh, honestly, like the amount of efficiency the students of the game have now achieved, the amount of the amount of extra loose they can fit in, it's it's a factor of three. That is taking big strides forward and is furthering esports in Overwatch for everybody. Again, I mean, we saw the Echo Mirror come out to start with here. PG struggled there at times, makes a switch over to Cassidy and eventually off the brig comes Rack Attack into the second phase of the map. This, I mean, PG is a nasty hit scan player. They have been really having an outsized impact, I feel like, on, on every other fight. So much so that, like, it's the, the nano is just being given to them without question. Unilaterally, Cal is just sending that over to the Cassidy because they trust that PG will get the job done, and they have. It's been fantastic showing. Yeah, who cares about the high noon? What really matters is that consistent damage output that this Cassidy has been providing. Not only has it just been like either great body shots onto a big hitbox like the Winston, or you're taking out these tiny little targets like Sarah's Tracer. I think it feels really nice to, to know that you can mark down some of those more slippery units. And yeah, it's full trust. And that's what you expect and want to have out of a team that's going to be running a dive centric comp or, or the Orisa that we've seen. And everybody's been saying needs very high levels of coordination. Yes, absolutely. And we've seen teams that like have a slightly weaker Orisa set up. I'm looking at you guys, M80, and how that can sort of manifest, right? So I'm going to say infected, nasty. They are super nasty. This is what like that grind down in tier two gets you. Obviously, uh, it was a huge factor on that trick room roster that even made it into the pro ams and uh, shocked, uh, you know, an Overwatch League team. Or it's too much more, but uh, yeah, they <laughs> had a great showing. And I mean, Mira, your boy Mira, sat on the bench, just sat on the bench because Infected here is really commanding a lot of attention, a lot of respect, and students of the game well deserved here to go up two to zero in the series. And the healing dart is pretty huge. I do think that. Having Anana uh, and Brick sort of over the Kiriko Lucio means that in those longer fights, you will you know, ex you'll sort of exceed overall healing output, especially because Lucio's healing spikes are, are really tied to the, you know, the turn it up, which is, again, often used to get a faster speed boost. But, I mean, mm -hmm. the Brick Ana set up really, really good against the dive, and I, I just don't think we saw FMCL adapt that well. How you run into the shield bash, the whip shot, a sleep, a mag grenade as the winston you're just having an awful time yeah. and even still as the Hydrogen echo the tree, there's just throw that out the <laughs> yeah something like that and then maybe a drummer boy in there uh actually that could be lucio technically um but you know uh it's not seeker seeker is going to be coming into the roster now to take my moon spot and this speaks to me that we will not see any more echo on Coliseo, but we do require that hit scan to be able to have those long-range sight lines. Yeah, we're headed back to Sojourn City here for Seeker. 
And there's like an argument to be made for Cassidy, but the neutral part of this map, the sightline is really too long, unless you're expecting to get dove and you're trying to maybe counter that, which has been a composition that SOG have made look really good on maps where you, you are going to get dove. But here, you expect more of the brawl or even sort of poke-centric setups here. It's not uncommon to even see the Sigma brawl onto this map. I feel like tank players get to express a little bit more of their preference here. But both teams want to go for that Orisa setup, so we're going to be pretty closely scrutinizing the coordination of those comps because if we're in a mirror there's little things the one percent is going to make a huge difference well when we saw this matchup before on nepal it was students of the game that were able to get the upper hand over the arisa comp from fmcl so i would half expect that pge in this roster is warm showed us some great looks on the cassidy is able to provide that same type of consistent damage on the sojourn and just really play around the team I would give this upper hand to the students of the game right off the bat. All right, Sika, reminding everybody why he was considered by many teams. Never mind. Yeah, uh, one of the best hit scans <laughs> in North America, if not the best. There's a title to defend, even if it's hypothetical. A great opener here, and that gives FMCL a pretty decent lead to start the game with. There's always the question of how effectively they can assail that high ground, and some of that will come down to Zera. But for now, you're off to a good start. This is what you need to see, especially when you're trailing rows in this series the students of the game can play around this corner which is a bit more defensively favored than what student fmcl are going to have to deal with they can play around this barrier though which uh, gives them a lot of cover same with the corridors around here but we're sort of back to square one in the fighting over this midpoint looking to see who can actually get the first big opening pick that the team capitalize on yeah and then the traces probably just trade damage like you won't see a full commit there unless there's like a random like maybe like a kiriko headshot or something similar Zero back in a way here, a little bit lower. Remember, the healing doesn't come instantaneously from the Lucio, so Scissors wins that out for now. And now, like we saw in that first fight, much is predicated on these rail guns coming across. Otherwise, FMCL don't have any incentive to get over aggressive because they have lead already. The onus, even though it's such a small difference in score, the onus falls on SOG to make a play. It does. PGE is so low, that's going to be the go signal. That was big. And that was a javelin, I think, that hit PGE. So that really, it wasn't even Seeker having to go nuts there. The rest of the team, the follow-up was good for the Kunai, but Seeker maybe overextends a little bit here. FMCL have invaded into a close quarters engagement against students of the game. It's back and forth stuff, though. Pulse bomb thrown. Rack attack able to avoid it, but Ariel forces him away with the javelin spin. And FMCL get to reassert themselves after finding that key first pick. Right, Rakitek's able to get away as well. And also with a sound barrier at that. So all throughout that action, building that up alongside basically a full slate of ultimates here for students of the game. But expect these Kitsune Rush to both go down. That's Maybe a nice now. Now. I don't know how, I mean, Zero, how does Zero force her? That's pretty wild because PGE was half HP to a disruptor shot from Seeker, who just got hit by a Javelin. They are able to recover though. And this is students of the game being able to make up some of that initial 20 meters that they had ceded to their opponents. Seeker here looking for a way to discharge this rail. Obviously, that overclock is in play, but it's not a target-rich environment at all. That expires now. PGE, though, finds himself in a pretty overextended position, so great sound barrier from Rack to try and protect them. Scissors, though, falls instead. PGE at least has a rail going to rely on here, but the sidelines are a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit close quarters inside that side room. So students of the game take a sidebar here. They actually got the lead off that push. So they're happy enough to give it up. Seeker, though, without ultimate, finds a massive headshot. They might lose it straight away. This is going to be an even bigger fight to win as well, just because of how much jockeying over this midpoint these two teams have done. So with that clean sweep, FMCL is going to finally get some meaningful progress down onto this push bot. And that's going to feel so good. FMCL did have to use a sound barrier there. Uh, and so, you know, they still have a lot to work with. But I'm really looking at students of the game just now having to play on the back foot while FMCL are going to be making a bit more progress. These Seeker Rails have been big. Very impactful on this map. Kind of making us forget how dominant PG has been thus far. Good stick. It's going to be a Susan that comes out straight away. Of course, dutiful as ever. Cal keeps the sojourn in the game. And now everyone's forced to rush in, or rather FMCL opt to do that. But the Kitsune rushes are matched, and no one's watching PG on an off angle who hits an insta rail. Wow, amazing. It's been so back and forth. I mean, Mitch, we're only four minutes into this map, and we've barely gone a 30 meters on either side. Yeah, this tour, this is not much of a tour at all. <laughs> I, I am not doing any sightseeing. I want my money back. 
Well, at least the Coliseum is pretty big. Uh, just yep, not I've been looking at it. See. I've been looking at it for like 10 minutes. Oh, okay, okay. Interesting. Ariel pops out pretty early. And Infected holds their Terra Surge a little bit longer. Renko doesn't have the mobility to get out of it. They might have piled in, in fact, with a swift step to try and help Ariel out. This has gone horribly wrong here for FMCL. After they tried to start the fight, Ariel cancels that Terra Surge so early. Not sure why, maybe realizing that they weren't on the foot that they thought they were. So students of the game can continue to extend this lead. And that checkpoint... It'll be hard for Cal to find here. I think they'll be happy enough just getting the bot to the precipice of it. Ooh. See ya. Yeah. Oh, that was super nice. But they get still get to play on this defensive position under the point. Now grouped up in the choke, but Scissors is able to make their way through already. They're playing around the bot. Cal has the Suzu themselves there. The secret with the overclock, again, doesn't have the best targets lined up, and the sound barriers get used by both FMCL with a later one, and that might give Seeker the window to get rid of Infected. Now we have an Orisa diff as Aerial is the only one standing. Zero with a pulse, though, might not need to deal, deal with PG. Ian Seeker again gets there. This time, no flashy hit scan aim, just a slap to the back of the head to put FMCL back in the driver's seat for now. They go back to this midpoint, but by the time that they're able to actually bring another fight. It seems the game are going to have that Kitsune rush. Renko as well, so we get expected these rushes layered on top of each other. Uh, but I'm really looking here at Zara being able to make a big difference with this Pulse Bomb, or even a Seeker just straight up having a Sojourn diff moment and getting a big opening pick with a Railgun charge. Yeah, it's funny how uh, so much of this map really does boil down to that at times. But even a good Javelin hit that like holds someone immobile long enough for a Rail or a Kunai to hit them is been pretty important in a couple of fights as well. Oh, good switch step up to the high ground. PGE was really feeling the pressure there and good Suzu timing. I think Scissors thought they had a kill there. But Renko just throws the flower down and gets that invulnerability window. Here it is again. FMCL now might have a chance at a checkpoint of their own. Soon to the game, remember, they didn't quite get there themselves. They just pulled back as they left Cal, I think, shepherding the bot forward and then lost the next fight. And this is going to be another close one. This is very, very close. And I think that students of the game would be able to get back before this checkpoint gets activated. Uh, but it's going to be off the back of a big amp it up here from Rack Attack to speed them toward the point. Okay, straight away Infected starts to fight off Terra Surge. This is awkward. Who's going to break first? Infected backs up and the Sound Barrier comes out to cover up the damage that was done from the Orisa Ultimates. Ooh, here it is. PGE once more. Finds left. Picks them off after they got rid of Cal. Renko's low. And yep, that doesn't even need to be a fully charged rail to secure the kill. But they weren't looking at Zera, who was nipping at their heels the entire time. Infected's in trouble. They have the Fortify, though. That's enough to give them enough lifespan to run down Ariel. Soon to the game, just managed to get back in control, and they still have that slim lead. They still have the slim lead, and at this point, too, one more team fight will actually get them the checkpoint. But at this point, too, like two and a half minutes left, I, I take the lead, even if it is just a couple of meters. They don't have a whole lot to work with, though, so keeping it's going to be a little bit tough, but the best thing that they can do right now is just play for a position where they're not going to give Seeker too much territory with this overclock because they will be have tracking ultimates. They know that this overclock is ready to go. PGE is a javelin there. Dangerous, always dangerous. There's a window, of course, to just to blow up the player hit by that. Infected throws one in, probably just more for poke than anything else right now. And FMCL for now seems satisfied with getting back to the neutral zone of the map. Again, PGE cops a hit. You can see that blue glow indicates the rail is charged. That's when you need to respect the sojourn. Zeke so is still holding on this because he knows that SOG could just disengage here into the side room, but that might set things up for Ariel to push into the gear and give FMCL the chance to take like a brawl-based fight. Yeah, he's continuing to rush now. Both Javelin spins come out. Okay, immediately, Scissors beeline towards Seeker. He's able to slide back away from the Pulse Bomb. No one now is going to be caught inside the Terra Surge without a slide available. Scissors finds two. Infected again with a massive Orisa ultimate. And Seeker's got no choice but to try and make the play, get into the back line. But he was tracked the entire way. Students of the game now getting close to a minute left in the round. They're poised to extend that lead into this checkpoint. That fight took a minute and a half. And that was so much time that FMCL would have loved to have in order to make a comeback. But this bot is going to reach this checkpoint if they're not careful. Zara's able to get there in the nick of time. Yeah, nicely done. FMCL just keep a player on the bot. They take a lot of damage to do this, though. Have a look at these health bars. Ariel about to lose that armor and take far more damage than otherwise would. 
I like the sneak of the bottom way here. This is going to force SOG to drop to the low ground, which might be what FMC all want. But Ariel's still under pressure. Great sound barrier from Rack Attack. They realize that Infected was floundering there. PG has space to work this, and Ariel goes for a Terra Surge that doesn't get anything. It's another great pulse, though. Zera cleans up PG this time, and there's no Sojourns left on the field. SOG lost Cal early, and they didn't have the healing to keep the rest of this roster up. It was Rack Attack to fall next. And FMCL have one last chance. They don't have to go too much further here to even or get into the lead. But this fight has to go off without any hitches. At least they have the Katsune Rush. Renko can lay that down as soon as students of the game pop their heads out. Cassidy. That's going to be tough uh, to be able to deal with. But yes, it's going to be the Cassidy change here for PGE. Maybe that Magnetic Grenade can be enough to hinder somebody and make them a bit more vulnerable for Scissors to land this Pulse Bomb. Oh my goodness, they did see scissors, but they opt to stay their hand for now. Some discipline to hold on to the pulse, but they need to be alive to make use of it later. The Cassidy switch here as PGE knows that neither team can afford to play at long range anymore. Terra Surge blocked up. I think Left's actually able to get on the other side of the bot to break line of sight and avoid any damage. In fact, it needs to hang around here. Renko's a good start for the defenders, but Ariel comes in hot and PGE is down. The Cassidy had to get too close to the sun, apparently. Scissors absolutely popping off here. This tracer play has been something else from both sides, but in the end, SOG are able to prevail. To think at the start of this series that it will be a straight 3-0. Students of the game taking zero prisoners here on their way out of this group. That map was a little bit closer than I think maybe some people would have expected. But hey, students of the game, I think they're beating the allegations here, Mitch. I think this is a team that people can still depend on to be at the top of the NA leaderboards. They have earned their ticket into the second stage main event, and they get a chance to prove themselves again. And they look great right now. And I think especially if they're able to move into a meta that they get to explore even more of the options that are on their team, they're going to be really set up for success. Indeed, and uh, definitely not washed. So that has been answered. <laughs> yeah, we beat those allegations. That's yeah, true. The, oh, those yeah. allegations do be gone. I, I was honestly very, very impressed. Uh, I mean, for, for players like PG, just take it to Seeker and Co. In the way he did, he played lights out. I was I was very impressed with PG, especially uh, Caesar as well. I think just the entire team really, really showed up. So for looking at more highlights from uh, the match we just got to witness, I'm sure both of them will be popping off. And they really threw FMCL off of their game there. Like, I think being able to lean on having a, a stronger Orisa comp ostensibly is pretty huge, right? When all else fails, you can revert to that and take the mirror and be confident that you can win it out. This first map was a, just a masterclass in denying Cassidy's sightlines from him. And then like the switch to Sombra at the end, knowing there'd be a Doomfist in play from PGE was really heads up. Uh, and it didn't only shut the Doom down, it kind of ran wild itself. And then on Paraiso, I feel like the, the Ana Brig combo against the dive was a huge difference maker. It really was. I mean, we talked about the setup that you can have as a defensive composition. Cal, Rack Attack, and PGE all sat stacked on top of each other so that there was very little room for this dive to get access to that backline. And if you're not able to actually trade backline for backline with these dive cobs, then your dive just isn't going to be winning those fights nine times out of ten. You love to be able to see that level of coordination from this team showing up not only on the Orisa but the Winston, but then again going back to the Orisa for this map of Coliseo. Uh, I feel like just being able to be a DPS that can go toe to toe with Seeker is incredibly impressive. Yeah, it's nice to be reminded that this so sort of the the North American hit scan talent pool is still has some depth to it, right? I think that you know in the past they've been overshadowed by sort of foreign players and also you know like South Korean players competing in North America. Seeker was someone who stood at the top of the pack, but PGE with a very well deserved player of the match here has also staked their claim to that title. Really strong showing. I think in general, like, the Arisa comp for students of the game is very, very tight. They've managed to look, make that look very good here. But so much on Colosseo, Zoe, is about can the Sojourn, like, hit a rail? Or can you follow up on a Javelin? You have, like, a very, very, very small window of immobility that, uh, you know, that target of the Javelin gets hit by. So you've got to be quick and you've got to be sharp. And they certainly were just that. Also, they really came in with a proper game plan through every single map they played. Like, they never seemed to lose their stride there. So, did their homework. I don't feel like they've truly been tested here. Um, so, I'm very interested to see how it's going to look like for them in the main event. Because, quite frankly, they just 3 0 everything in their group. Arguably, you could say that Group D was not the hardest group to be in. 
I'm just gonna make that no. statement. I, no, I, th I, I should, think you're uh, right. I'm gonna say it's, I'm gonna say with confidence. It's not the hard. I, it wasn't the hardest group. It's like a little transitive to, to say this, but you know, FMCL did sort of kind of flatten Citrus Nation on the way through Swiss, whereas students of the game lost that game. Uh, you know, so coming into this, I you know, using that and just a couple of other metrics to sort of gauge their success, like how I was feeling on that certain day, for example, that's something I lean on. Uh, you know, I did not expect it to be kind of as, as wide open as it ended up being. And there were some competitive moments, competitive rounds, maybe even competitive maps. But overall, like students of the game were way more switched on today. They looked a lot hungrier. And I mean, it comes out in a 3-0. So you really can't, you know, take anything away from this team. They look ready to do better than just getting a one map off timeless in the lower bracket of the main event this time around. Let's actually listen into the winning moments of students of the game here at the very end of the last match. I can look for all big, all big, all big. Lucia, Lucia, Lucia. Five point, five point, five point, five point. Lucia, 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 was that a ya or a yeehaw there at the end? I'm not sure. I don't know. comes. In fact, it's joining us now for an interview. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for casting and just hosting. This has been an awesome tournament to play in. Oh, Ben, I mean, plays like what we just got to see from you and your team, they make it so very enjoyable for us. So we love our job, thanks to you. Uh, let's walk us through the game here a little bit. I mean, you looked locked in. You seem to have a very clear idea of how to approach each and every single map. How much time did you guys actually spend prepping for the group stages and for the teams in your group, particularly? Um, I would say we had this like whole week or just like all the time after Swiss just to prep. And to be honest, like in our practice, it didn't really feel great like playing as a team. We definitely had some like downsides, but like this win definitely gave me and I'm pretty sure our whole team a lot of confidence going forward. You're obviously, uh, you know, you've got a lot of experience in that tank role and, you know, we, we saw you obviously multiple times even on like the biggest of stages last year with, with Trick Room. But you're on a team obviously that has had a veteran like Mira sort of join in like did, yeah, and obviously now as a sort of secondary tank player is another option there. Do you sort of, sort of feel pressure from that? Do you feel like you're able to sort of, you know, like kind of access Mira's brain and sort of talk a little bit about the game? Is there any uh, sort of, you know, cross-pollination going on there? Do you feel pressure to sort of you maintain your role obviously with you know a real veteran player sort of in this roster as well i mean i wouldn't say i feel pressured i just feel like more um i don't know i'm just happy he's on the team because i'm just able to talk to him because he is a really smart and great yeah. player it's always nice to have just like you know like somebody who understands your role is also really smart but i'm i always feel confident playing yeah you look at for sure especially as a risk mirror is very very clean man i see done yeah, yeah thank you. You looked so good this stage. I'm wondering if you could give us a bit of insight from yourself of where do you feel like students of the game really fall into the power of the North America region? Would you guys rate yourself top four, top eight? Your thoughts? Um, I still think we could definitely make top three, maybe even top two for sure, if we just keep playing how we normally play. I think a lot of teams like Timeless and like Luminosity are also really good, but they definitely have some weaknesses and are very beatable. So you can see you can see students of the game getting up there if we keep playing good. We're excited and hope to see that, of course. And now one last question before we let you go. Uh, the Orisa comp, as we just said already, like that looked really, really clean. Now heading into the main event, which you guys just qualified uh, for, you get to sit back a little bit, watch everyone else figure out the new patch. Word on the street is that we might see some ball play and whatnot. Are you worried, excited? How are we feeling about the upcoming patch? I'm very excited because I think my ball is my like, at There's least like player. my top two. Yeah, this is my top two of my heroes. And like, there's not a lot of players that are good at ball. So if it is ball meta, like students of the game will do good. That's right. That's a promise. I take it as such. Thank you so oh, much yeah. Infected, for joining us. We can't wait to see you guys in the main event. Thank you. Wrecking it's like ball. from students of the game. I'm honestly, I'm hyped to see ball. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a ball fan unless Avril is playing it. Oh my God. That talent <laughs> takedown was... 
I, that was you so guys worse. were so bad. Yeah, like I, so I bad. actually, I like I had lost every town takedown up until that point, and I still felt bad handing you guys the fattest L. I just like I, just watching Kevin, just watching Kevin just one. roll out. Yeah, that was the first that one was... I lost, and the pain will never go away. Don't know what I, to say I think that, that one will stick with me forever. Absolutely. And I blame everyone but myself for it. No, yeah, I mean the that problem, the half way. the problem was that Kevin and Jack are at each other the whole time. You know what I mean? Like they just couldn't get on the same page. It was like watching two, two, like the left brain and the right brain just like struggling <laughs> to, to come together there. Well, the so left brain like cell, a, the right brain cell, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. think we were even the same organ at that point. Like, there was, <laughs> there was like some, some liver and a kidney finding it out. Like, there was no <laughs> brains. Uh, either way, I know that the teams we have coming up, uh, they got the synergy down. Uh, they will not be looking like we did in that no, the game. So thank God. very excited. And they have to play their hearts out because the next one up is an elimination game. Visor going up against who's Goldfish. All of that after this.
Heroes. This is your game, your team, and now this is your league. This is your community's future, and this is your prize pool. Win your matches, battle for your progression. Go far, go further, even as far as the Esports World Cup. It is your time to shine. Build your team, register your team, go the distance with your team. Face it, Lee. Powered by you. Welcome back, one and all. We're getting ready for the second match here in the NA region. Joining me for that is Mitch and Rosemary. And you, dear people watching, can join us in the Face It League. If you happen to play competitively or semi-competitively or maybe just for fun. Uh, turns out we actually have some teams in the OWCS um, group stages who are also just here for the lulz and they somehow made it into the group stage. So everything is possible in the world of Overwatch. Actually, the two teams we have coming up, I personally don't know that much about. There is a few players I may have seen in collegiate, etc. But overall, lots of enigmas. Let's take a look at our next two contenders. We are finding ourselves in an elimination match between visor and who is goldfish and quite frankly the only player here i'm familiar with is lava from uh their time with um oh, ohio see. state university yeah that that's it everyone else i'm just like don't know let's see so obviously this team has the unenviable sort of circumstances of, of getting 3 by bill ducks but it was pretty close. Uh, uh, pretty back and forth kind of game, so wouldn't sort of read too much into that. They still have a chance to stay alive here. Who is Goldfish? That is the perennial question. This is a team that, I think what they played, Toronto. Uh, so yep. there's zero to, to really take away from that game. Uh, yeah. I don't know if there's much opportunity to really show what you've got against a team that can be so oppressive, but both these rosters have an opportunity to put all that out there now for their survival and potential advancement out of this group. But Necro actually dug really deep uh, to give us some biz lore here. <laughs> biz lore? Hit us oh, all <laughs> biz lord from the world. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the World Wide Web. Uh, so if I'm not mistaken, Biz is Byzantine, who also played on the Good Boy roster, which is now known as Visored. Uh, so there may be, be a little bit of, of like inter-team beef. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure. I, you know what? I, Never let the truth get in the way of a good story is what I say. <laughs> yeah, okay. So yeah, Biz, Biz is trying to grudge against their old That's team. It. No, they're actually beefing. Like we're talking folding chair level beef. <laughs> Let's see a play out here on Oasis. Kick these off pretty darn quickly here. As he was going for shorty, lay their claim to the high ground. Notice the two fish is low, so you've got to be a little bit careful with that Kiriko being exposed, and my goodness, it doesn't matter if they were low or not, that rail headshot's going to take you out of the game one way or another. And that's going to be a really opening big pick here for who is Goldfish, uh, so maybe we will finally get a chance to have an answer to that question, uh, because you're right, Mitch, like the fact that they lost 3-0 to Toronto Defiant when Toronto Defiant played off rolls into them really doesn't tell us yeah. very much about them as a team. And so this is our first good look, I think, into what this team can provide, and I'm looking at Azurf right now as a big Sojourn player. Yeah, great opener. Uh, you know, huge shot there to, to crack things right open. This, who's Goldfish team, by the way, following their group chat like an hour before, like, they had to sign up. So they really just, like, came together at very late notice here and made it all the way to the top 16. That's huge, but can they go further? Goldfish, beautiful kunai, that's pretty sweet, but who's Goldfish losing their second player in this fight? Virtual hoping to try and scratch the paint here off of this sojourn. Azeroth under a lot of pressure. Great response by Dust, though, the peel, or rather Lavu. Getting involved. Sticks growth though. This tracer play, pretty darn clean. Virtue gets rid of the Winston now and buys it. Collapse into who is Goldfish. Oh, even stole the health pack away. Does not get out with his life though. So while Virtue was trying to chase down that kill, it's going to be to no avail. That's actually going to buy some time here for who is Goldfish to come back into this one with ultimates. Uh, the first up on the docket, it feels like this rush. Zulana trying to pressure Dust down, but they are healthy and have primal. Decent time for a beat, I'd say. Everyone on Vice took a ton of poke damage at the start of that fight, but who is Goldfish have stacked all their ultimates and are letting both support ones go. Virtue down to another headshot from the Sojourn. Love the predicted pulse bomb placement there, but Zoolander is still able to avoid it. It doesn't matter, Vice in full scale retreat. <laughs> Full scale retreat, but they did get out four ultimates from who is Goldfish. Now it's going to be down to Dust's Primal Rage to see if that might be enough to sort of batter away the rest of the Visored onslaught. 
There's a bit of a wraparound there, as you can see. Visor trying to take maybe a bit of this, like, under room, maybe try to go through main. Uh, but the dive is initiated now as Lava jumps up to the high ground. Yeah, a little spiced out from the Sojourn here, so it just kind of goes for the Primal, I think, to have some more lethality. But, I mean, Azeroth is being attended to constantly by Goldfish, so there's no kill potential there for Lava at all. They're forced to disengage. That Primal goes for nothing. Nothing! Nothing? Nada? Zilch! Zero. Back to Dusty spot over you. Yeah, I'm gonna push up a little bit more. Yeah, Visor definitely being sent express back to the proverbial Lumbridge. Well, 86% comes up here for who is Goldfish and Dust can play. Oh, okay, now maybe they were hoping a Primal there. I don't think they were ready for a Kunai and shot, but you've got to respect the burst damage. Kiriko can dish at that close range. So that's an opening here for Visor. They'll have an uncontested point flip. Oh, well, not before Biz is able to take out Virtue, so... What is happening time with Virtue? Dust is coming back in. Uh, I don't know, maybe you get a little too big for the britches. Well, yeah, just a couple of overextensions, right, after winning fights. That fortunately won't be compounded too much as Amadian has actually uh, managed to smooth things out somewhat. That primal that Dust was hoping to use earlier now comes out. Now, I want to find two fish with it. Force the slide out of the Sojourn. Virtue here is on the hunt, chasing down the Lucio. Reverse eventually gets brought down. So Visor get to keep the point for now. That's a really big pick too. I think that maybe while it looked a little goofy that Virtue got taken out so early, uh, they come back in time to steal the health pack away, and now they also have the pulse bomb to boot. Uh, so uh, oh, U.S. Goldfish still have the ultimate advantage. Uh, they have the Katsune Rush, which Two Fish does not. Um, also with the sound barriers, who can beat later should win. As a not the most amazing angle here, but got a free shot forcing an instant recall out of Virtue. Here's that barrier. Lava went very, very low, and uh, the later beat, like you mentioned, pretty big here for reverse. Zoolander under a lot of pressure right now, struggling to stay in the fight, and Lava's really got nowhere to go. They ignore the wisdom for the time being is Amadi, and is definitely the higher priority target. And now that a soldier and Visor have very little kill potential of their own, Virtue dies back in again, very aggressive all throughout this map so far, but they have to pull out instantly. They're trading uh, stall time by the looks of things now as Lava finds a primal. Ooh, okay. Slide from the Azeroth Sojourn there, keeping them with the in-range of Lava, so they're able to juggle them up against the corner of the map here. Eventually brought down by Virtue. Stick is fine. Lava a little bit low now, but where's the rest of the damage here? From this squad, who is Goldfish putting it together in the last couple of moments here, at least taking that Winston down? The Virtue's still up. They're still alive and kicking. Dust has a primal range now, but where does it go? Into the back corner. They've done a great job of spotting the Kiriko. Another juggle kill. Dust claims the lion's share of the healing from Visit. Dust is going to be able to walk away with murder here, too. The Sombra's back just in the nick of time to get a bit more damage down, but uh, it should be just a matter of seconds before the rest of Visor crumble. Yeah, Biz, Biz did a great job, I think, chasing Amani and down. They knew where the translocator was going to be, so the Sombra had no chance to get health, let alone get back into the fight. Beautiful flip around by who is Goldfish. They started the round really well, and they eventually come out with a dub. This is going to be a competitive one. I could feel it. You feel it too. That was super close, 99 to 100. I feel like every time we see that, we're in for a, a really good time. Uh, and it was hard. It was so hard to tell where these teams stacked up against each other based on their previous results. Even uh, just in their Swiss rounds, let alone what happened in the groups. I'm super excited to see if we can start to see some new, fresh faces enter into the true heights of competitive overwatch and i'm looking right now at just what kind of uh, extra bit of damage these dps can provide here because they've been such big difference makers on a lot of these teams well i'd say yeah with the winston mirror we saw a lot of like space for individual skill to be manifested there for, especially from the dps on both sides i thought the winston play was pretty tight in general as well virtue here in the last map overextending a little bit after one fight it's kind of giving up their life unexpectedly and Giving Visor a chance, or rather, who's Goldfish a chance to get back into those rounds. That extra couple of percent could have made a huge difference in the end. So they'll look to tighten things up now if they can. Dust under a lot of pressure. Difficult matchup for the Winston to play into here as Visor want to get an advantage in the tank roll. Oh yeah, you can't drop the Orisa, but you could go after somebody like Amadian on this Cassidy. Virtue again picked off at the start of the fight. As opposed to the end, I suppose. That's a difference. Lava body block there. Great job by Dust. Using their bulk to make it so the Orisa could not get back to a safe zone. This dive is so nice. A very aggressive team, and they're showing great coordination for one that forms so close to the start of uh, the roster lock. 
Yeah, I, you just have to pay attention to one individual shot caller, and as long as the rest of the pieces fall into place there, it's pretty easy to take out your opposition like dominoes. But as visors start to move back in, they're really hoping that Twofish is going to get this Kitsune rush online to help open up this fight. Otherwise, who is Goldfish is going to go after that backline again? And oh, Hershey was maybe recall. first on the menu. Yeah, they were very low. I did like a ton of poke in that side room. Very heads that bubble earlier there from Dust as Azraf went very low. Wayward pulse bomb there from Biz and uh, insult to injury added as Virtue is able to follow up on the kill. Opening the fight positively this time around. And that Katsune Rush you mentioned is up on both sides, Rose. Oh, well, they gotta back away for a little bit because the dust is too low. Oh. But what is this? What? I'm That's not so sure about this one. And Virtue gets punished again. Oh dear. Now. They're so aggressive, but it's getting used to exploit them at this stage. Now, who's Goldfish say, right, well, we're not going to spend a support ultimate yet. We're just going to run back to point now with this overclock. Too much damage for Lava to deal with. And no visor damage to add to the stack. That is brutal with Virtue out of the fight. They really just have to back up. Uh, what a wasted Kitsune rush as well. Uh, I felt like so unnecessary in that moment, even if you wanted to be able to push them back. And what made it worse is that punish of that overextension. So Visor lose control of the point. Who is Goldfish get like 30%? Yeah, and now they're gonna get rushed. Dead Eye here. Sound Mary comes out just to inoculate who is Goldfish from the Dead Eye, but still dust out to be picked off. So Vice now start on the front foot once more. They gotta land the plane though. Heading over to the point that managed to corral all of who is Goldfish into that side room. And it's Carnage. Though she gets rid of the team's namesake. And there is no way for Azrof to go. Well, now Visor is able to get that flip back, and it was a nice coordination there of the Deadeye on that off flank there from Amadian, and then you also just had a greatly timed sound barrier from Zoolander. Uh, just enough to be able to pincer in who is Goldfish and bully them off of that point. But still so back and forth, and we're back in this position where either team could take this. The, the ultimate economy is fairly even across the board, so what could this Primal Rage do to disrupt so that Azeroth can get a big shot? Dust there. Okay, basically ignoring that terror surge who no one seemed to be caught in. A goldfish gets brought down by Lava. The follow-up here from Vice has been very, very good. This is a second consecutive big fight win for the team in red. Dust's Primal does nothing more but give them the space to run away. They flatten the Marty in at least on the retreat. But turning that to an advantage seems impossible from here. He got at least of the Kitsune rush, uh, so maybe Visor is able to even up the mar the score on this map so far. Uh, but I'm kind of looking at like the Cassidy still needing to find a big pop-off moment and hopefully Virtue does not overextend in his fight. Virtue's been able to find good first kills in the last couple. Mm -hmm. That has not been a coincidence in terms of how it turns into fight wins. As for awkward, Angle's not great. Fortify use instantly on Lava as they forge their way out into the open. Kitsune Rush means there's going to be more than enough healing here for Viacid to stand proudly on the point and Biz is given the hot foot. Forced to try and stay away as Virtue opted for a Tracer duel briefly. But Amadian, there's no pressure on them right now. Well, as I say that, here comes Biz. Forced to recall. Oh my goodness, that's clean. Amadian with a two shot there on reverse and now following it up with the dead eye. Bubble protecting dust for a time and Goldfish using the Katsune Rush to desperately heal the tank up. But it's not enough. This doesn't happen quick enough either. Fires it here as the smoke clears. They will stand proud. And they've been able to get this one back over who is Goldfish. Okay, we'll go to an assigner then. I'm happy with it. I think that a lot of maybe the first picks you were seeing onto Virtue are sort of the the aftermath of it being such a risky play style. Whether it's going to be a first pick, sometimes you do have to play a little bit more without fear in order to actually find those opening picks for your team. And so, hey, it's working out in this case. Maybe a little bit more scrappy when we head over to a map like City Center, but if we can keep, see Virtue keep that up, then Visor's going to be in a big driver's seat in this next round. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. I think the Arisa comp is just a little more powerful. It suits who is Goldfish, though, that City Center really doesn't benefit the Orisa. True. I mean, not so much against the Winston, who could really exploit that map advantage with his verticality. The Bison seem happy enough to sort of play in two modes here. They just seemed a little weaker at the dive comp when we saw it on that first round. But let's see if they can rewrite that script for us. Straight to the top of the pagola goes Dust to set up here. The Winstons will give each other a tickle. 
high ground over to who is Goldfish. Visor going to play on the street side and playing around this uh, central point means that you are looking for that one chance to strike onto that back line. So Dust is going to be hunting for one of those targets. What? I love there. it. Well, I mean, they disintegrated, but I think Biz got like, like a couple of full clips into Lava without any reprisal whatsoever from the rest of Visor. I think there's this like Vizard... healing. Yeah, they're playing in this room, right? So there's not even a sideline for damage back against the Tracer, who they literally can't see if they're playing in that funnel. Not a great choice of station ground, I think, for Vizard, but they do pretty well off the back foot. I'm not going to lie. Amadi has kept topped up, and he rewards that favor with a big kill on the reverse. Nicely done. Who is Goldfish? Overdive there and get punished. There you go. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it is about that overextension. And it's, this is not a team that's going to let that go unpunished either. So now Visor able to take back control of this point as they continue to push who is Goldfish back. Uh, Biz, though, for all of their troubles, does have a pulse bomb online, but Virtue is still working up to one as well. As we wait for the call to see which player Visor is going to try to dive, likely targets will oh, be... They don't well. need to. That was a Just right click from Lava. Sure. Good poke damage here. Marty and again, you, you really are favored, I think, playing in this choke as Visit. Got way better sidelines here. And it can really punish those individuals they caught out in the open. There's only the Winston Bubble to protect you against this stuff, and that's not static. That does not remain. He's able to find a big pulse bomb though, and the biggest threat that Visit have been boasting in this round so far, but Virtue immediately trades it back. Dust is down. There's no tip of the spear to dive with here, but a beautiful counter headshot from Azra takes Virtue down, and that wasn't even their fault. They weren't even overextended necessarily. That was just beautiful stuff from the soldier. That was just a really good skill shot. But now that we have seen who's Goldfish step back onto the point, uh, Visor get a chance to keep this in their pocket with this primal rage here from Lava. As we're waiting on the cooldown of the slide, it goes back to their team. And they're going to be safe in the end, is Lava. Ooh, not so much. Beautiful shot there from Asriff, like clay pigeons, is Lava. Floats lifelessly down to the ground. Dust here playing safely around the pergola, gets the healing when they need it, and is able to dive forward. Still need to try and flip this point back, though, as Vice had made 81%, and Amadian is still a menace here, even in losing fights. Finally, big picks. If you're Visor, you're really okay with that, though. Having to use the Sound Bear and the Primal Rage, those are going to be the two ultimates to sustain your life on the point. But now you get a chance to put the Onus back into Virtue and Amadian's hands. Their ultimates are going to be online heading into the next one. Uh, so let's see the DPS duel. Who's going to be the better Tracer? Who's going to get the better Overclock? Virtue pressure heavily. Has to recall on that situation, and Lava's left exposed to another big pulse bomb stick by Biz. I'm telling you, the individual skill here off the DPS and tanks, especially as far as we can see, kind of crazy in this game. It's chaotic, yes, but you can see just how much your Sojourns and Tracers can do under those less refined conditions. Uh, each of their impacts have been so palpable. Uh, whether it's been an opening pick from a soldier and even the pulse bomb kills that we've seen from Biz and Virtue, I think have all been uh, so back and forth. That's why these rounds have been so close, but it's Amadian's time to shine here with the overclock. All right. So decent targets to work with here. Dust gets a Susu there. Maybe just for the invulnerability briefly as they're worried about what Amadian could do with this overclock. Lava a little bit low, there's a pulse bomb available here for Virtue. They deliver it, it doesn't stick. But Amadian had already found Goldfish there with the left click, no less. Now their player advantage vices. Well, they convert on it, but they need to keep Lava in this fight. It is imperative. Dust is close to a primal rage. You'll start to see that Winston go a bit more aggressive. Goldfish here on the respawn. Still coming back to the fight, but Asrup deals with their opposite number. Here's that primal. Some serious displacement now, as there's not much that Zoolander can do to help their team. They need to be able to build the sound barrier 3% away, but under extreme duress here. And Dust has the extra jump cooldown. Straight down the gurgler goes Zoolander, and so do Visor's chances of winning the map. Oh my gosh. I've never seen so much commitment to keep a Lucio off of a point. <laughs> I mean, if they all track the beat, that is a very heads up play. Yeah. Uh, either way, I think it might be more simply explained as, oh, I need to kill the player in front of me as quickly as possible. Uh, and sometimes that is what these fights boil down to. Really chaotic. Sojourn obviously creates a game state where like so much hinges on whether or not you hit a headshot. That's what hits scan are to Overwatch. But the Pulse Bomb Sticks, especially on the Winstons, have been really good. We do get to see uh, who is Goldfish play there more comfortable, I think. Winston dive set up in the mirror. It's another very competitive uh, round. 
but it is, of course, a Who is Goldfish map win. This series, though, I feel like there's plenty of back and forth to be had here, Rose, if that map is anything to go by. Well, especially when we think about the map pick bands that we have for WCS now, that is something that they can think about if they're thinking, okay, well, who is Goldfish have a great dive comp? Is there any way that we can alleviate that for ourselves by picking a more Arisa favored map? Uh, so there's definitely a lot of back and forth when it comes to that, on top of the fact that these two teams do feel very evenly skilled. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, like, I didn't mind a little bit of this sombre play briefly, but <laughs> you'll notice that Biz, Biz like tracks here, Amadi, in so, uh, so sort of funny. recall position there. A lot of this is happening, right? I think Virtue, yeah, over chasing a little bit here. These teams are really feel like they thrive off momentum built from, you know, winning fights previously. But like I said, that individual level here, especially from our DPS winner, is the most obvious uh, when it's put on display. Uh, was there in spades from both these teams. And you can kind of see why they're able to make this top 16, despite, honestly, this competition being really competitive. And it's like, what, 11 rounds of Swiss? That's a huge amount of play. And remember, you're getting paired up against teams with like a similar record to you uh, as you advance. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with what we've seen so far from these teams. And it's like we said, okay, you play the Toronto Defiant, you probably don't get to show any of this. Right? You, no. you probably are just, you know, beaten on a very fundamental level. But here, these teams get to throw haymakers and I am here for it. <laughs> I'm super here for it as well. I mean, even across the board, these stats continue to tell that same picture of just how close these two teams are in terms of their skill level. So I'd love to see where we're going next in this series and maybe even what's in store for us after that, because I could totally see this going to a map five if it's going to continue to be this back and forth. I would say, I think an extra, considering these teams have mirrored each other for most of the games, students of the game having an extra 5k uh, damage mitigated, that is like another 25% on top, means that like they're able to get a lot of value out of Orisa's defensive cooldowns there. It's a, it's yeah. a small stat and you know obviously stats in Overwatch usually need a lot of context and sort of behind them to expand upon them. But because we have mirror compositions for, for most of the map and you know, uh, and who is Goldfish preferring actually play more Winston even against the Orisa, I think that's quite a telling number. They look very, very good. But now we move away from that more sort of deathmatchy style of gameplay of control to uh, some of our other maps where you definitely do need to have a strong sense of coordination and be able to modulate your game style based on which part of the map you're playing from. It's also so much more forgiving because you don't always have to constantly think about this control point that is ticking up in percentage when you're up against such a tight clock. You can just say, okay, well, oops, we lost somebody. Let's take a step back for a second, wait for them to respawn. And now that's only 10 seconds. We still maybe get like six or seven more attempts to be able to make this attack push if they go fast enough. And, and that is sometimes the breath of fresh air that these teams need in order to make sure that they can execute those game plans with confidence. Yeah, I mean, you touched on something kind of important is that uh, now, as we get to these other game modes, sometimes like old economy can be even more important, but you can actually disengage uh, like a yeah. lot of these like hybrid escort uh, style maps or even the push ones. So that's like another whole skill set that, that teams have to develop. It's one thing to know when to, to pile in and, and start a fight and have good target calling, but also to recognize when you're wasting time and feeding alt charge over your opponents by sort of remaining in the fight. And I think that like a lot of teams, they develop their macro, their micro shot calling probably first, uh, and then the macro tends to come a little bit later and obviously is heavily assisted by having coaching staff and you know people to sort of have more of a 10,000 foot view of the situation. So uh, that's another part of the, you know, the pro game is Overwatch player skill set that's going to be you know put on display here a little bit more. But mechanically, I don't think we have any qualms about either of these teams. They are very, very sharp. Nope, they look really good. I think when you look at just the shot calling on both teams as well from where those Winstons were diving or even just throwing all of that out the window and you're like, you know what? Sojourn, go kill. Tracer, yep. go kill. Like, sometimes, it's coming together. <laughs> sometimes it is that easy. It is that simple. We're going to go to a break, folks, and when we return, we're going to see more from this match that already has ticket our fancy quite somewhat. Of course, it's an elimination match here between Visit and who is Goldfish, so don't go too far. This is, of course, your OWCS group stage for Stage 2.
to make history. No way. Ha. This season's got my name written all over it. Tectonic Shock is ready to rock. Taking names from strata to stratosphere. Receives my aid. Good always has the last word. Mace to the face. Evil can't hide from my sight. I can be nice. Hard work is rewarded. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out in the break. We are back not too far away from our second match in our second series of North American play. The OWCS group stage for stage two, and we are in an elimination match. And who is Goldfish and Visor? I'm pulling it all out there because their survival, frankly, hinges on it. Heading over to Eichenwalde here. Who is Goldfish taking a hotly contested first map with a heck of a lot of wins to play, Rose? But we got to see some brilliance from both sides, especially in those DPS positions. We really did, but if we're going to talk about Winston play, what better map to show that again than Eichenwald? Uh, uh, I... No? Okay. I was like, I don't think so. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I honestly... I wanted it. I wasn't sure. You know, they're still doing this to us after seven years. I, I it is It is just the <laughs> casters... It's our lot in life to get un, like unreasonably excited about random picks that people take in spawn. And people like Raktag, they maliciously abuse that. They know exactly what they're doing when they're locked up. <laughs> and, we are, and we are doomed to fall for it every single time. Every you know, because, single you gotta time. because we believe in magic. That's why we do this, right? I like yeah. the Junker Queen comp, though. This is going to oh, really be a scary prospect for Lava. Oh, I'm so excited if this is actually what they come out of spawn with. Because we did... No! No, they'd be slow walking! Okay. And are you switching? Cool. Very cool. You know what? I'm here for it. Are you? Yeah, that was kind of that was kind of epic. You know what I mean? Just gonna be explosions snake. behind them that they wouldn't turn around to look at. <laughs> that was cinematic. <laughs> this one for the high highlight reel, that's for sure. But who's goldfish are gonna come back out of spawn here with the dive? So let's hear their planning. Monkey, 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 one, monkey. monkey. One. Yo, 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 new, new, new bubble on three, new bubble on three. They have yeah, shot. Those, those two Can we swing? Fucking hazard. Three, yeah. two, one. Swing on the back line, swing on the back line. All oh, eat, all eat. Oh, oh, oh. Dead. We're spawning. Oh, Give him up. Give him up. Kirino TP, Kirino TP, Kirino TP. I'm on, I'm on. Sliding into you. Sliding into you. Social the back line. Social the back line. What's the way? What's the way? I'm just using it. Only monkey, only monkey. That was the worst fight for me in a long time. It was the walkout. Spinning. It was the walkout. Simple ape. Boom. What up, baby? Boom. Oh my god, they see nine. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, they're gonna hold close again. How about that? That is very clean. And you know, they uphold tradition by calling that a C9 from the defending team. So, I mean, who is Goldfish? They're ticking all the boxes for me right now. That was a very well-coordinated dive. 
It was it was the walkout. It was the C9 callout. The spin this on the is, payload. It's, it's how you tilt your opponent out of the that is, what way That is that biz moves, baby. <laughs> All right, Virtue gonna be choosing uh, their opportunity to peek out of the castle here wisely. Is it's been a target on their back for the entire series so far? We know. Oh, yep. Yeah, that one. That one that uh, the soldier just shot at. That target. Well, we get topped up here on that high ground, but really, the defenders haven't had a chance to sally forth from the castle whatsoever, and now the dive is upon them. Who is Goldfish? Really making sure none of the defenders have any space to work with. We're going to continue rush here off the edge. Sending Lava in. Two fish able to play within the bounds of that ultimate to give extra healing to the low ground, but Fires had taken a ton of damage. The target focus from him is Goldfish, though, a little wayward. Could have turned that into multiple kills, but no one's healing these people, and two fish would be the one called up to do that. They get picked off first. One fish, two fish. Who is goldfish? Mm-hmm. Who are they really, though? They are, they, they are an enigma. I don't so far, know. though. I'm going to have to find out. Yeah, this, this team that has formed around them, though, very much locked in. You heard those comps. They are... No, I'm just having fun with it, but again, the, the target calling is good. That last fight, though, when you see a lot of low health health bars, or like no one getting picked off, you're like, okay, are you just like all winning 1v1s, or, or what's going on? But they did convert into a fight win. Reverse gets lost there. They do have a continue rush to play the bridge with those, so there's still a lot of burst damage available. Nasrof takes the fight inside the bubble. He said, that's fine, I'll set up in your terrarium. I do have the alpha to deliver. Virtue dodging out of the way of that rail gun here as Rufia backs up as they're susceptible to getting booped off the castle. They actually preempt that the blink there from Virtue. They're able to avoid getting they melee the to death. Yep, they got the point. Got that the is. Point. Yep, That's a C9. they got it. What do you think about that, Rose? No, actually That's a C9. Yep. That is an actual C9. That is verified. Grade A. Free range. Okay. USDA Organic. approves. C9. Okay, well, um. Uh, now, who is Goldfish should have like all of the momentum in the world after they have truly tilted their opponents out of the server. Um. <laughs> okay, well, that's what we actually saw in Colosseum in the last series, like the javelin giving you a window to find a pick. True. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, watching a sojourn go careening off in the distance is always satisfying, and for the defenders, it's a, it's a huge relief. Because they were so definitely bad. struggling under the momentum of who is Goldfish. <sighs> Nice kill. Yeah, that's, clean. that's clean. Yeah, very clean. Okay, so four minutes still left on the clock here for who is Goldfish to move only so many more meters to the end of the road. Uh, they, they're going to have the rush, like the, the, the overclock, the everything under the sun outside of the sound barrier. So the yeah, they do have the, the, the haunts to, uh, to contend with. Obviously, the Oris is switching to lava. Haunts. Uh, that's true. But the Ponce is still there, though. They say that, you know, Doom comes on four legs. Lava able to push back in here, and a later Kitsune Rush means a vice at half the edge. And definitely also Virtue gets a big pulse bomb stick on Kiriko, which is never guaranteed. And Dust takes a face full of damage. It is dangerous. Fullest Winston to dive into Vizard's setup now, especially within these closer quarters. Well, they tried it once. Now they have the opportunity to switch if they want to because they used all of the ultimates under the sun. So, here you go. A uh, new pasture is ahead of you with the Sigma, the Bap, and the Cassidy. Okay. Well, you know what? Who likes pastures? Cows. And the Divine Bovine of Lava shoves straight up the bridge there. And we'll force who is Goldfish back for a time at least. Terra Surge available, should there be an engagement, which you don't expect, of course, from a poke composition like this, but Bison need to create those themselves, and that's what's happening right now. Into a Terra Surge immediately. Dust trying to skip away. Big damage on Goldfish, so all they can do is pop themselves up in the air and serve themselves up as a tasty morsel. Amadi more than happy to oblige. And here's Vizard, happy to take a brawl. Well, this isn't working. No, I mean... It's fine, but if the defending team realizes that they can just rush into you, with a speed boost, then you are gonna struggle. Yeah, I like the switch off here. Just take the Orisa. It's looked fine for his goldfish. They've managed the mirror relatively well. The Sigma's just yeah. too slow. So the Orisa allows you to get into the action a little bit faster. So you still have a bunch of attempts here. He needs time as well. Because so much of his damage is just like attritious. Whoa, okay. Oh. Beautiful. Virtue able to take Asriff down, who wasn't under that immortality field. Wouldn't have helped him much anyway. Well, actually, it would have. Would have kept him alive, but hey. It's fine detail. Uh, remember, facts and a good story. Don't worry about them. 
Reverse with a sound barrier here as the Zoolander. Who is Goldfish? Not finding any more success though. With this Orisa switch. There's an opening here, but they are going to be dealing with a Kitsune rush. And of course, Zoolander has been. Beat and then the Kitsune rush on top of that too. So Visor really should be able to get the win here outside of a stray pick from Azra for Biz. Ooh, okay. Well, there's that's, one. That's a fantastic opener from Azra. Beautiful. That didn't even need the Ant Matrix to find that elimination. Double hit scan here with the brawl set up. It's a little unconventional, but it's worked out a treat. We'll see Bianca have that Cassidy against the Tracer pressure. Still a poke composition behind the Orisa though. Now to find some success. Now that Disruptor Shock gets extra annoying. The Dead Eye is extra threatening. This card is extra close. Playing from the Chandelier. This is an architect throwback if I've ever seen one. As we're sending these shots in one by one, but the sound barrier makes this a tough nut to crack for the attackers. Dust is able to play from behind the pillar here, a little bit low. This Dead Eye will force everybody to head for the hills. Nice little peek to bait it out there from who is Goldfish. And here's a Terra Surge in the Blender. Go Vizid. Amani and Zuland are both brought to their knees. And there's nowhere to go for Lava. Great timing from Dust on that ultimate. And a well-deserved round map completion here for who's Goldfish. Took them a little bit. It was like three and a half minutes, but you are happy to get the full completion, even with a little bit of time to spare. Uh, it took them a bit to figure out, though, to go to the Orisa composition. I think it was a good effort to try to make the Winston work, because at the amount of time that they had with the ultimates that they had, if they were able to throw everything in the kitchen sink at that fight and it worked out, then great. They have like over three minutes in the time bank. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, they, they got it. But do they keep it for this defense or do they want to try to rely on a defensive dive as we've seen a couple of our other teams in an A go for on maps like this? Well, why does there you go. That in the wash, but okay, Winston. Oh, yeah, so it is the defensive Eureka. dive. Yeah, I think it's a little hard to make this work. And the defenders don't have like a great natural high ground outside of the hunting lodge, which often playing from there gives too much space sometimes. We've also seen like teams, it was like last year, I think I want to say it was the Gladiators used like a defensive Doomfist dive uh, on this first point. You've got to be really good to make it work and all the same risks of playing like a, a, a defensive dive exist here with Winston, albeit amplified because yeah. he doesn't really have the ability to cycle his cooldowns as efficiently. So once you dive, it is a few seconds before you can get involved in the fight again. That being said, I think that who is Goldfish have had the better Winston Cop here. They've looked a little bit better in the dive mirror, so let's see how it plays out now as they defend. You still have the opportunity as the Winston to cut off the healing as well once you see Lava dive in on the other side. And so that's something that you are always paying attention to as a defensive dive comp is when does the Winston use their skills versus your own. Okay, bridge being contested here. I like this. So the defender's really setting the line of scrimmage quite far forward and giving themselves some actual high ground to play from, at least in, you know, in small moments. Azra though, oh, he was looking at the Winston thinking that Lava was going to die, but Virtu was able to get there and follow up on the railgun that Amadian hit. Uh, okay, Goldfish, hello. Now we see what the team's named after. The beautiful kunai work here. Swift step away, but into the line of sight of two fish who will find a kunai kill of their own. It doesn't matter though, because what Goldfish did was more than enough to stop Visor in their tracks. Where's Biz going? Oh, Swift Step. Oh, so yeah, it's smart. A, yeah, it's oh, like it's like it's your like Mercy, the right? Lucio Taxi, but like it's yeah. the budget Lucio Taxi. Yeah, you go for your Mercy as well, right? Guardian Angel yeah. too quickly. Lava got back pretty quickly. A good DPS player. That's right, we'll get those. Player. That's it. I mean, it's, it's, you don't always think about it, right? But she needs to be able to GA to you to uh, get back into the fray. But maybe if you've you know, got a Mercy on your team in this current meta, maybe you don't want to help them. That's, that's a personal decision. I'm not going to judge you for that. <laughs> or maybe your maybe your mercy is Matt Morello, and it doesn't matter if they're in the fight or not. That's also <laughs> a factor. Oh, they just get all I speed. know. That's great. That's fine. <laughs> I'm good with that. So we'll never come back good. anyway. It'll be as good as silence. Two fish needs a health pack. Goldfish here leaning in, really leaning in. Pulse stuck to the inside of the bubble forces Lava to jump out of what otherwise would have been a safe zone for them. But two fish punishes dust. For the overextension. A little bit uncharacteristic here for who is Goldfish. They've been pretty tied up until this point, Rose. That might cost them. Yeah, like where was the primal rage? 
I felt like it, it came out and then it was deleted, but everybody on Visor is so low. Dust is actually switch over to the Doofus to see if he can get back in time. It's close. Okay, we have a touch here from Biss, and Azeroth now is going to go for the overclock, but the sound barrier means it's going to be awful hard to see these kill opportunities amidst all this overhealth. Lava low into Primal straight away. Nice pulse there. Dropped by the feet of Azeroth, and he collects it up. Huge though. I mean, this Doofus recontest here by Dust. And Biz is finding a quick double. Both traces here kind of popping off. This is big. And then the stagger kill on the enemy, Winston. Oh my goodness, who is Goldfish? <laughs> they are a cut above here. I mean, 1.4% left for Visor to have captured. And with all of that time off of, out of the bank, with all of those ultimates expended, Visor don't really have a choice here except to try to switch over to something that's been so trusty for them. And that's Lava going over to the Orisa to see if brute force is going to be enough to go through this defense. He's going to be pleased about that. Force the recall of Virtue, so they have to play more passively for the next eight or so seconds. Amadim will step up in the stead of the Tracer to try and make an aggressive opening happen. They do. They create one between the ears of Reverse, apparently, but that Pulse is good. The Suzu, though, a little bit better. Well covered over there by Two Fish now and Dust in the power block. He's still taking almost too much damage. They're able to stay alive for long enough to get some disruption down and open it up for Azrof. But Amadim is done playing nice. They're done being subtle about it. They're not going to send a written invitation to send him back to spawn. It is going to be plenty now to get this payload unlocked, but uh, you get to go back to spawn and switch back over to the Winston. And so panic pick no longer there, and you can set up on this high ground still, uh, which is something that Lava's not going to have access to. On this Orisa, you if you want to get up there, you have no choice but to walk, uh, which does not feel like the easiest mode of transportation. But Iman is going to help out a little bit here with this poke comp with the Cassidy... Um, well, the Beast is back. Yeah. My is and then they can, play this, they can play this choke, right? Obviously, this is a really annoying position that Winston gets to set up in defensively. The Arista switch also means that Dust won't take a one-to-one -one in the front line. But it's kind of hard for the Arista to do much about the Winston if he takes a fight far enough away. Who can test for now? Has the jump cooldown, of course. That's what high ground gives you, the ability to just to jump straight out. But Dust is definitely concerned about the rush coming in, and with Katsune Rush being applied here, it's warranted. A self Susu though, had to be used by Two Fish, and they still end up falling to the overclock damage. So many resources drawn out of Visor already. Don't bother about a sound barrier. Zoolander doesn't have the option to make use of it anyway. Another big fight win for who is Goldfish, and they are solidifying, galvanizing the control of this high ground. Oh, Nervous is going to get staggered too. Oh dear. Yeah. That's, that's about a four good. to five second stagger. Uh, it's a plenty oh, no, no. of time, though, that... It, okay, hopefully nobody else is going to die here, but the stagger was plenty enough time that if Visor still are slow on the income, it's going to be final fight. Look, this is already 15 extra seconds off the clock. It's huge. They have to get a setup here for the Terra Surge, but who's Goldfish is not letting off the gas? Pulse bomb thrown down there by Biz. No connection now. Gonna use a Katsuna Rush inside the castle. There's the Suzu. They've drawn that cooldown out. Now pressure heads towards the back line as Dust will scatter the attackers from the top of this bridge. This is so hard to coordinate under these conditions, and Lava's the one that gets picked off first. It's a diabolical turn of events here for Vizid. And they'll have another fight, sure, but whoosh. They wanted much to bring into it. A dead eye that will struggle to find value from the low ground. Yeah, there's no good angle for you to take with that dead eye, and even still, you're trying to look at a way to be able to use this Kitsune Rush, and every single character on his goldfish is too mobile for that. So you can lay it over the point, but once it can jump away, and looking for an opportunity to even just jump that back line. Yeah, you've had to use the bubble to allow your Cassidy to even cross in the first place, and the damage is too much. Lava now realizes they made a big, big mistake. They sound the Mega at very least, but there goes the Cassidy. Press Q to respawn, as per usual. Virtue at least has some involvement here. A pulse on Azrif and single-handedly they take down both DPS players. Rapidly, Reverse is trying to return to the fight. Keep Dust nice and healthy. They jump away, leaving both their supports to fend for themselves for a time. And that's an opening that Virtue can look to exploit. Katsune Rush here in desperation, but Lava's returned to the fight. There are numbers here for Vizet now returning, and Dust has to jump out yet again. They're low, so low upon their high ground, and Goldfish has had to chase them with a shit swift step to keep them in it. Dust, if they get a primal though, it could be devastating for Vizet. They have it. They're going to hit. Q surely. Here they come. Continue to rush now for the attackers and Dust is healthy enough to go for it. They hold off on ulting for long enough to find two fish. And this is over. Visit here. Fall at this second hurdle as who is Goldfish? Trade aggression so effectively 
with this defensive diet. They are incredibly clean. It's been looking really good. And dive is one of those compositions that we always say takes a high amount of team coordination as well as just clear communication in general from the team to execute. And so we're seeing that not only on the dive, which has looked so clinical, just rotating through cooldowns and picks, but on the defense too, knowing when they're just like, we're not going to give you time to set up. And I think Sorry. what's huge for, for who is goldfish is that they don't allow the card to progress into a part of the map where the Winston gets demonstrably weaker in that last phase. They, in fact, get to play from, like, stronger positions for the entire map. You know, on defense, they'll move up and take that first bridge. And then as they for are forced back to the second phase, they get to exploit this immobile Arisa comp that has to do the same thing over and over again, walk up into the castle. So the Winston gets to drop down behind them, harass their back line, jump back up, deal with the Arisa pushing in, maybe create some space there. It very, like... On a, like a fundamentally, like really sound play from, from who is Goldfish. And I said the other you know, last map, oh, well, as we move on to these hybrid escort maps, maybe the more macro uh, elements of the game become more relevant here. Um, I would say that they didn't on Eichenwald. Uh, we didn't see enough of the map here because the defensive dive, the protocols and coordination of who is Goldfish is too clean. It was really sick. And again, great individual play for both sides on the DPS side, especially. Like Amadi looked very, very good there, yeah. but... It's not enough. Like, they just aren't able to get enough done. And that's going to start to get frustrating as we head to what might be our last map in this series. Absolutely. I think what's uh, so interesting is to just see how Visor is going to adapt to this. I think you called out something really important about going into that third point is really where we would have started to see the Winston struggle. And so who is Goldfish recognizing we really can't let that happen and making sure that they shut off all access to their team playing from that high ground because who else is going to go up there? It's certainly not going to be the Orisa unless she grows wings and we see Pegasus now flying around the map. Um, but hey. It's... That's a mirror watch. That's coming. Don't worry. That's yeah. <laughs> you, you blinked it, you blinked it. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm going to get fired. Um, but no, it's a, it's really great to see the team also just having fun. And so I'd love to yeah. go back to listen to the beginning comms that we got from that map. Yeah, ready? Three, two, one. Everybody emo. Oh, oh, that's cold. <laughs> what up, baby? Oh. Cold, up, cold as hell. Cold as hell. Nice. Okay, like, honestly, that was kind of cold. Magic. That was a little icy with it. You know what I mean? I was kind of feeling that. That had a really. That felt like the start of every fight in JoJo. Honestly, <laughs> like a slow walk. Like, nani? It was great. I wanna, was I it was really that. good. I, I did feel like I was watching an anime, and then yeah. all of a sudden it turned into a circus. Uh, so that that felt good. Uh <laughs> There's got to be a good circus anime out there somewhere. There's a great ballroom anime. I don't know if you've seen Ballroom in York. I have I not. That one. Oh, okay, dude. You've got to wait. It's actually so good. I, I yeah, okay. It's really really good. Anyway, moving right the heck along before we fall down a, <laughs> another different rabbit I hole. I could go down anime. that rabbit hole for a very long time. Yeah. That is, I mean, that, that anime is actually goated. Uh, very, very worth checking out here. In fact, right. all anime about like kind of obscure things or like sports animes all tend to be like really good. Ice right? skating anime. So Yeah, good. okay. Seen that one. That was actually, yes. yeah. God, why are these Super so good. good? Yeah, Food Wars. <laughs> oh, Food Wars is great. I'm, I'm reminded of that by watching started. The Lobster. Oh, there's never, there's no better anime character than Dojimagin. He is unbelievable. <laughs> oh, well, maybe the guy, maybe the guy from um, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen that reminds me of him. He's like that, uh, Toto Aoi. He's like very similar, but I know, I love that trope. Anyway, we are here to witness map three. As who is Goldfish look to keep themselves alive in this group and kind of impress all of the judges while we're on the topic of Food Wars. It's going to be Arisa versus Winston here. We've seen this played out before. We saw this played out in an Overwatch League Grand Final just quietly. And Winston does have play into this Arisa setup. And who is Goldfish looks so good on this comp. It does have play here, and we're really going to just see the lack of mobility options from Visor if this Winston can continue to shut down one of these DPS or one of these supports. All right. Dust has to be careful. You see that jump away. There will be a lot of disengagements and those windows, Rose, Oop. they do leave like open pockets, right? Where you can jump in and punish a player. If you're if the enemy Winston's behind their back line, that can be pretty dangerous. Dust has to be very careful with how they disengage. 
It's not only that, but I think what the Arisa composition is going to have to weave in is those spears. Like, you noticed, uh, poor Reverse got pinned up against a wall. Uh, you also had Asruf that got caught out of position. And so, while we see the Winston being able to have some staying power in these types of matchups, it takes a little bit longer to set up than the Arisa that's just going to walk towards somebody else on your own team. So, you cannot leave your backline vulnerable. Timing is paramount for how Who is Goldfish activates these dives. Bridge control here for the Arisa comp. It's another tough problem for the Winston to unravel. Julana wants to try and knock Dust off here. Biz takes a big smack. So far though, Dust has been able to stay away from the pointier edges of the Visor comp. Nothing pointy about a pulse bomb, but still Dust wants to stay scarce of that one. And Lava gets hit by one on the other side of the map. Once more, Biz derives an advantage of the one to one, but they fall, get caught out by Zoolander. Look how low Dust is. Yeah, they can't keep him up. They're gonna continue to rush. Defensively, you need the haste, I think, on this, this healing because with the Lucio, you just don't have the burst healing to keep the Winston fighting. Still, they're able to avoid a lot of that damage. And Amani and Fell there, Zulani going down means who is Goldfish? They're good to go. Oh, look at that, too. I mean, it's just clean up time right now for the rest of the Winston in the cleave. And they get a chance to take back control of this cart. Uh, so at this point, you want a one more team fight win, and then you're able to unlock that checkpoint for yourself. But who is Goldfish have a lot to be able to do that with? I'm looking at Primal Rage being a great disruption tool here, especially paired with the Overclock. You might just be able to set up a skeet shot for this soldier. Ooh, okay, there it is. I mean, that clay pitcher was on the ground. I don't know if that gives you more points or less. I'm going to say probably the latter. But Azra doesn't care. It's a player advantage. That's all they're looking for here. All of Visor are yeah, playing from that choke here. This will allow who is Goldfish to start to threaten Visor's me to its total. If they can't take the lead back, uh, Visor are waiting for Amani to get back into this fight. And then, lead engage. Yeah. They do a beat, but disrupt it, I think, with the primal. I like this a lot. Yeah, the Winston bubble there is really scary, and Lava took a face full of damage there. Also, Two Fish somehow is barely clinging to life. The pressure on the Orisa is immense, and Reverse, I mean, rather, they have to go for the sound barrier. Zoolander, excuse me, had that force out of them, seeing how low their tank was. Reverse had one of their own, though. Lava, with the Terra Surge, doesn't do too much, but allow for the disengagement, but oh my, Biz, right under their noses, sneaks the bot to the checkpoint. Visit are really. Still charging up. Huh. I don't know if I should call that a C9. Well, remember, I mean, you are the Grand Arbiter in all things C9, so you are, you have this great power and responsibility to to confer that title. Man, I'm just going to call that a back cap. All right, cool. I think it just has to be a back cap. Like, uh, how were... Visors were so aware of what was in front of them that they just didn't have a... They didn't see it. They couldn't fight. I mean, they, they're always oh. stuck on the stairwell. Yeah, I mean... You can't get there. You are too pressured. Two fish now. Throwing some shapes. Shurikens to follow them. Behind the Katsuna rush here. Visor able to get back into the game here. But it's still a decent little lead gained by Goldfish now. Plus that checkpoint. So they'll, they'll, we'll be able to come back here and assail this. Albeit from a weaker position. Like having to come from here as defenders or the team that doesn't have bot control can be difficult. Especially with the Cassidy ensconced on that high ground. But they have They're going to go for it anyway. Okay, so they're going to send Winston up on the high ground. They are going to be looking straight at the Orisa, though. Look at this damage. Look at those health bars dwindle away. Beautiful fan. The hammer there from Mamadian. That's a phrase I never thought I'd utter, but it's enough to get the kill on the Lucio. And everybody, though, is lined up for Azeroth. And it looks less like a corridor, more like the Large Hadron Collider. Or a particle cannon. That's yep. <laughs> something. Basically what it is, I suppose. I, I yeah, think. you know... Shout out, sir. particle cannon. For the, you got the good word. to see you. Smashing okay. particles together, find the Higgs boson. I love it. Science. Pretty rad. Yeah. Is that recall? Very early from Virtue. This here up to move the, the, the battle line up, excuse me, a little bit closer. And now just around the corner, you'll see Lava play until we have a speed boost, a chance to go in. Train a little bit. Dust now. That's uncomfortable. Hit by the Javelin. Huge damage. The Goldfish will take some time to fix. They have to back up because they don't want to get overexposed to Virtue in the front line, especially knowing that they have the Pulse Bomb. But this just didn't have recall. Yeah, I couldn't get away from that. Again, a lot of that good poke damage, but somehow, who's Goldfish dropped Dust down on the low ground behind the action that we were watching? And they've just cracked heads together inside that close-quartered space. Oh, man, that is... I mean, if 
if there's anything that's more of an indictment of how they're struggling against this Winston comp, it's that. Like, I don't know how you sort of end up losing that fight, but who is Goldfish? Start their own engagement on Bison's backline, just as we're watching Virtue dominate. Well, the Winston bubble is there to isolate the backline, and once you pop that bubble down, then Lava can't get any healing. So then that Arisa is isolated, the rest is history, and who is Goldfish are already uh, on an angle. Yeah, uh, Jack has a name for this kind of angle. It's very specific. I'll let him tell you what it is, but it was good. Azraf finding probably the perfect target there, silencing the Cassidy at the start of the fight. And Lava's just trying to get away with some bravado and a twirl of the javelin, though. It's not enough to give them the spacing they need. And this is starting to get a little out of hand now. Off the back of that big pick, with Amadian out of the fight early, Azraf is generating some huge opportunities with his railguns. Not only that, but having the overclock here for this nice giant straightaway, I, I think it's a soldier and you're feeling so nice about that. Virtue is sneaking into the background though, but while that's, while that's happening, the fight's in the front. Okay, Azrael got hindered there, so they couldn't even slide away. Nice use of the mag grenade, but they were already well and truly caught inside that terror surge. But if you're here as Goldfish, I would have expected you to let Pfizer just blow these ultimates. Instead, they invest defensively the sound barrier as well as Azrael, of course, wanting to make use of that overclock there. So maybe a little bit of composure lost there for who is Goldfish, as they're on the precipice of a full cap, but now they're going to have to wind back the clock a little bit. I don't know if you need the full cap, though. Like, you already have such an like a sur insurmountable meterage lead. It's over double what Pfizer has been able to accumulate already. Yeah, but it's great banter, though, isn't it? Yeah. Is that, it, getting a full cap, it's great banter. You're like, okay, <laughs> true, you know, true. Add, to the, add to the list of accolades, you know, uh, you, coming you together an hour beforehand. Yeah, you, got to the C9. To, yeah, to give us the yeah. full cap. You lost to a team called Who Is Goldfish. Yeah, yeah, the Bizriz. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> overclocked in this particular game. Ooh, that's nice from Virtue. Fortunately, though, it was going to be Suzu to wave. Kiriko moment, to quote Mr. Wright. And now the chase is on. Virtue's force right on back here as Biz gets in their face. There's now a pulse bomb available for Who Is Goldfish. Constant damage. Why is it taking a beating on every front? These health bars are constantly sitting below 60%. And it's a lot of pressure for two fish to try and get them back into the fight. There's that stick we've been waiting for. It's good pressure on lava, but no kill. Amadian takes dust out of the fight. But two fish clearly not as good as goldfish. And it will be another push up for the latter. The entirety of who is goldfish now starting to stagger this fight out. But at least get the bot back in territory where they're stronger. Either that high ground or close to the straightaway. With a minute, just over a minute left of the round, Rose, they've got to be feeling comfortable. They should be feeling comfortable. They have ultimate advantage. Amadian's going to finally go over to the soldier and have a bit more of presence when it comes down to that DPS duel between themselves and Azraf. But uh, uh, alt economy is in who is Goldfish's hands or fishbowl or whatever. Uh, it's going to be an uphill battle here for Visor to have to climb. Zoolander able to deny this flanking angle for now. But Biz is pretty insistent. They're going to be drawing Virtue over there to try and stop them. Dust jumps to the high ground. And you're kind of right. I think who is Goldfish agree with you. They'd much rather use his perch, abuse it rather, than push for a full cap. Slidey for Azeroth gets them out of dodge. Maybe the masonry blocks some of that line of sight there. It's hard to say because the sound barrier negated any of the damage coming from Lava's ultimate anyway. So the Aris is dead. That's not great. Record scratch. You're probably wondering how I got here. Who was Goldfish now? Start to get the thumb screws a little tighter. At this point, too, they don't even have to push the bot. They just have to wait, basically, for the rest of the team to come to them because it's overtime. Now, Visor have no choice but to stick to this bot like glue, or they will just simply go home. So Lava going into the Winston here. Needing that extra mobility. Getting sick of being jumped over every time great landing there three players on who's goldfish get caught with it but lava yeah that was a pulse bomb i think from biz and then they disrupt the shot to finish off the kill Biz hunting for their next target now virtual vice you pick it won't matter now as vice are about to be eliminated from stage two of our overwatch champions series who is goldfish get themselves a win in this group a so we really got a chance to see what who is goldfish is made of Four to run to the fight loss uh, never feels good, but they did get a chance to show us that maybe who is Goldfish is them. I'm, I'm liking this team a lot. I really, like, I, 
I'm glad to see them play a lot of this Winston comp. They're also, I think they've tried to play a fair bit of Sigma as well. Uh, so Winston and Sigma definitely seem to be their go-to here, but when they had to play the Orisa Mirror, it was very reasonable. It definitely wasn't their best look, but I'm still constantly shocked about how this team has come together under such a short amount of time, Zoe. They were very clean. These executions looked good. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Necro said it during the cast too. Dive is the composition where that one requires coordination, great comms, and a really deep understanding of just the fundamentals of who has to do what. And they seem to have just that. They looked really, really good in their match. Although I do have to say, I did love that uh, the first map was on the competitive side. Like it felt like, okay, so now we see... Yeah the the real uh teams are right there since they unfortunately both got 3-0'd in their opening matches of the group stages now of course who is goldfish are keeping themselves alive let's once more revisit some of the highlights and uh, talk about who stood out to us well i mean straight away we saw both traces i think really make a pretty big impact we went to the second round obviously like in university and obviously this is maybe not where winston shines as much so this is where uh, you know, we got to see Visor bring out their Aristocop, which looked really solid. Uh, Dust is playing at a disadvantage into this. Like, it's a difficult situation for the Winston to find success. But then we went to City Center. Lava had to play the Winston too. You just can't be left behind as the Arisa. Uh, and again, the Sojourn play, the Trace play was really good. I think Goldfish had a couple points across this series. has been very solid. The Suzy's were on point. Also, both teams' sound barrier timing was indistinguishable from some of our top teams in these groups. Like, generally, there weren't any missed opportunities there. Time and time again, Reverse and Zoolander doing more than just a serviceable job here. Now, uh, Eichenwald was definitely, uh, you know, Dust's playground, I think. This Winston play from the high ground was very hard to deal with. It was I mean, it's one of those maps, right? Like, you don't you don't really want to play Orisa into a situation like that. If no. the high ground on that second point is just, yeah. <laughs> Oppressive. Yeah, and I think it was really clear, though, that Dust had great map awareness on both Eichenwald as well as Esperanza. I think you could tell that he's practiced on this map. He understands where the best places are going to be to actually take a dive fight, especially versus an Orisa composition, which is one of NA's favorites right now. I mean, Indeed. It, and again, like we've we've seen like at the top level, like the Winston versus Arisa comps. I'm pretty sure like Houston, Florida played that in the grand final. Like they they played like you know that kind of matchup, and it's it's really interesting because both teams had to play vastly differently. But I'm about this. The Winston play was chef's kiss. Again, you look a lot better when you know your Sojourn or Tracer just like blows up an enemy key target at the start of a fight. But even like the, the primals were good. There was some serious struggling, especially I think on that first round of Oasis. But in general, like dust spacing, the positioning, which is super important uh, as, a, as a tank, especially in a Winston comp, uh, was absolutely on point. And it can be scary sometimes to dive into an Orisa comp. You have to drag them apart piece by piece. You cannot engage in the same way that they're looking to. But Dust understood this very well and used all of the, you know, the really ratty, powerful Winston perches over these maps to make sure that he had a good engagement, uh, engagement like 95% of the time. It was solid Winston play, a really, really great backline, and then, of course, the DPS duo who really made their impact felt all series long. And we have uh, the winning comms actually ready for you, so let's listen in. Okay, I can shoot, I can shoot. Okay, 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 3-1, no TP. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. That's okay, okay, okay. They can't touch. There you hear it. Those were the winning moments. And we now have uh, Asraf joining us for a quick chat. Okay, first things first. We've been told that you want to keep the identity of Goldfish a secret. Is it someone we know now? I feel like we're playing trivia. Are they in the room with us right now? Are they in the room with us? No, they're not, no. Goldfish is a secret, man. I can't, I, can't, I don't even know who that guy is myself. Wow, that's oh. intense. The plot thickens. Uh, I love that. We love a good storylines. We're, we're uh, trying to figure out some storylines because a lot of uh, the players from your team and of course the opposition here as well weren't as known to us. Can you tell us a little bit about your team and how you guys got together? Yeah, so um, we got together 20 minutes before roster lock. 
Uh, that. Nebit, our manager, <laughs> who's uh, the manager of Timeless and a bunch of other teams in the scene, he's pretty prominent. Uh, he helped us get us all together, and from then we just kind of played Swiss and took it map by map. I mean, where do you start first when you are coming together as a team like that? Because I think what impressed us most of all is that normally, like the Winston dive comps, especially on defense, like some of those maps, are really hard to pull off. Like you need coordination. You have to be on the same page. So how have you gone from literally not knowing who each other are, in some cases that's still the case for you guys, which is fine, to having like quite a great level of coordination here that allows a lot of your individuals to shine, especially on like the Icon Vault map was very clean. Yeah, I mean, we've all played like Winston comps and the way that Overwatch 2 is set up right now, we have um, a lot of comps that are constantly in and out of rotations that we're forced to play. So I think everybody kind of knows their role already, which really helps when you're surrounded by good players. And it's just a matter of meshing our personalities and like figuring out our comps and stuff. Because, yeah. Oh my god, that that walkout you guys did was so fun. <laughs> uh, can you like talk yeah. us through how it feels to not only play these competitive matches, but just play as a team of friends now? I mean, the vibes are always pretty good. Um, there's there's times where we'll we'll be kind of upset with our mistakes, and obviously that's fine. It's a heated match, you know. We're always like we're always looking to be the best versions of ourselves that we can be. So. I understand like that's how it is but of course you know it's a game we're gonna have fun with it and that's that's just the way we are and it translates onto the server and onto what we're seeing if we can tell that the you know the players are having fun with it and now you are still on the brink of elimination your upcoming match will be against the uh, dill dogs d hill dogs the dogs whatever um what do you know about that team how do you think you're matching up against them yeah, I mean, I know Razor recently swapped to Flex TPS, so he's been playing Flex support for a while, but he was contenders back in the day for Flex TPS, so it'll definitely be kind of hard. But I mean, I think I think if you guys think it's an upset, we're ready to pull it off. Well, I'm, I'm not so sure. It I'm is. excited. I don't, I don't, I don't think it actually is. Like based on what we've seen from you guys today, I hope for a very close match. However, yeah. it has to wait, uh, wait a week. So for now, we're going to let you go once again. Congrats on the dub. We can't wait to see more of you in the squad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. You just saw the bracket as well. Uh, it's going to be ducks versus fish. An aquatic battle. An aquatic <laughs> I love it. battle. I'm aquatic, looking forward to it. Aquatic <laughs> battle. I, Perfect. You know, so yeah, <laughs> it's know. funny because... Usually when you're a new team, you get to like soak, especially if you're doing well, you get to soak up like the underdog status, like the low expectations. I have bad news for this team. They have taken expectations and raised them actually relatively high immediately. So they do not get to bask in underdog status for very long, uh, I think. That was probably one of the best displays of a team that sort of come together at the last minute that I've ever seen. So uh, I, I honestly, I, I see what we saw from Dill Ducks, like I feel pretty good about who is goldfish and their chances of advancing here. I can't even say it, but these guys are cracked. Yeah, I mean, this was definitely a really great matchup for them uh, going up uh, against uh, the squad from Visor. I nearly forgot the team name, so I had to look it up. Good job, me. I'm a professional. Yeah, you could have said uh, nothing, yeah. and we would have not. We would have not. I, know, I mean, but I might have. my glance down was so obvious. Rose would so never, though. She would never. She would never. never. She yeah. would never. You could just say your child was, tr you know, Eating something that's like child. You, you have so much good deniability. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I personally use my children as an excuse for all of my shortcomings maliciously, and they'll never know about it. It's fine. Or just say Nori. Yeah. Or your on cat. your lap. That's right. Yeah, I think I'd rather blame my cats than my children. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> oh, they will never know. You know what I mean? That's right. I'll, I'll, I'll make it up I to them. I'll send them tell. on a school trip. Yeah. I, I mean. Yeah, I don't know how to transition out of this one, but I do know that we have one more match coming up. There we go, transition complete. Sure, uh, yeah, it's gonna be that's a It worked well enough, okay? It's serviceable, and I will roll with it. Daybreak will go up against Citrus Nation in our last elimination match of the day. You don't want to miss it.
heroes. This is your game, your team, and now this is your league. This is your community's future, and this is your prize pool. Win your matches, battle for your progression. Go far, go further, even as far as the Esports World Cup. It is your time to shine. Build your team, register your team, go the distance with your team. Face it, Lee. Powered by you. What's up, everyone? Zoe here, joined by Necra and Uber. And as you just saw, the signups are open for the Face It Leagues. We just saw two teams clashing with a lot of players we weren't familiar with. And OWCS, just like Face It League, is a great opportunity, a great platform for those players to get their name out there. So even you, Costa, if you're watching, you could be part of the Face It Leagues and maybe you even I mean, make it to an actual tournament. They're in. They're already in. I mean, these guys are so renowned that face it tweeted that they had signed up it's like a, a veritable red I carpet that. i love that that's <laughs> that's right you know what i love about uh the face it league though is that um it's, it's broken up into skill tiers right and i actually had a good, big chat with like the guys putting it together and it's quite sophisticated the way that they you know try and sort of hack you in like a fairly balanced league and obviously the swiss format means that you're playing against teams with the same record as you and as time goes on as the system sort of learns where you sort of land it it creates those more competitive matches quite regularly so it's incredible experience you don't have very many of these like non-games at all the system is generally designed to uh you know prevent these wide teams or you know like wide experiences i suppose uh between rosters so really recommend it even if you're just got if like bronze silver gold doesn't matter you can you can jump in and still find games that uh you know set towards your level and, and have a great time it is sick because it's plugged into the game like lobbies are done for you like it's all kind of click and go so we've been asking for this for a long time i remember like the first couple of years True. of overwatch being out we were like get us in the api let's get like a face it esque system or it's finally here and they're here for the long term so check it out get involved i think it's well worth the time yeah, I'm super excited to see those games being covered in the not-so-distant future. For now, however, <coughs> we're shifting our focus again onto our last match of the day, Citrus Nation and Daybreak, uh, both sporting rosters with well-known faces coming from collegiate contenders, calling all heroes, uh, you name it. Now, of course, looking at Citrus Nation, there is a bunch of uh, names which obviously should ring a bell. Lethal, uh, played with the London Spitfire. We know Tap as well, part of the uh, Uprising Academy. Um, they've played in many more teams. So yeah. there, there's some there's some, some some good name value we have on Citrus Nation. I remember like Tap on the, st on the Storm, the Harrisburg collegiate team, I think at one point. Uh, that team obviously had a really close game against Luminosity. Uh, let's talk about Daybreak here because uh, obviously this is a team with some exciting prospects. They obviously didn't make it into the main event uh, in stage one but uh, they've had great showings in calling all heroes for example uh, and they're fighting for their chance now to to make that main event uh, some slight changes to this roster and they obviously had the unenviable job of going up against timeless uh, in their first group match and obviously that was tough for them here but I think there's a lot of opportunities they have though Rose I think you probably agree found themselves in the group of death yeah in, uh, st in state. Uh, it's pretty bad i mean you say an unenviable position of going up against timeless and i raise you yet another unenviable position of going up against luminosity and uh sadly <laughs> the winner of this match yes they get a chance to keep their tournament run alive to make it into the main event but they're going up against timeless which <laughs> that, uh... also just doesn't feel good so yeah i'd say this is a group of death it's yeah. It's a rough group to come out on top, so uh, for them to make it look competitive uh, against a Timeless, that's already a good start. Now, for now, however, they have to go up against each other, and I see our viewers, they're, they're split quite evenly that's in their predictions. I, I think that's very interesting. Uh, look, we are talking about Citrus Nation who, uh, you know, got a map off Luminosity uh, in, a, in a pretty close game, and in general, have always been a fixture, and have always been a team that's had a decent shot at advancing to the main event they missed out on the main event last time but they also i believe had a really difficult group this to me the citrus nation roster are absolutely knocking on the door of that top four uh, they they really just need to be able to sort of put it together a little bit more they've got a ton of experience and obviously you remember lethal from yeah like the spitfire i think it was so uh pretty storied individuals uh, at least sort of uh in perspective i think against the rest of the field daybreak a lot to prove but they've shown what they're capable of in this and other composition competitions in the past rose they really have and i think that both of these teams this is really a story of kind of coming to age 
I guess, because both Daybreak and Citrus Nation fall under that same category of getting so close to making it into that main event, yet just one step away from being able to do that. So another shot of redemption here for both of them to be able to try to make that main event. But I think it's just, it's so tough when you take a look at the opposition that's ahead of them. But focusing on the task at hand, I think both of these teams are also so evenly matched. It could really go either way. Yeah, generally, I think then that's what people at home are kind of feeling. Both these teams find themselves having to really go above and beyond to get out of this group in the first place. So the Luminosity or Timeless or Bar would have to fall at their hand. That is a big job. First and foremost, though, it's about staying alive in this Group B. And here we go, Strange and Nepal Shrine. Will be the Arista composition here for Citrus Nation Lethal on the Sojourn. HK is going to be on the Echo. I'm so excited about this because in stage one, HK's Echo was a really big standout on this team. We didn't get a chance to see it too often, but knowing how much Echo these teams have liked to play in this current stage, I'm so excited to see if HK's Echo can make a div difference here in this matchup. Break line aside as much as you can from that Sojourn position, and then you're off to the races. Already HK goes in, dispenses some of those cooldowns. That's a very scary prospect here for Astro to deal with, because even with the, with the armor, the Echo can be a problem. Lethal, though, will clip her wings. HK down. Lethal now getting a bit of attention from Faded, having that slide to get away, and very quickly, Kinky Ladder comes to the rescue. Love that. <laughs> Love that. That is just... Mm. Love that. Thank you. I believe that is neutral, for those wondering. <laughs> um, how many names have we had now? Uh, like a Sexy Man, 69, yep. Kinky Ladder, yep. 4, 4, specifically number 4. Well, still, that was a great swift step from them to keep Lethal in the game. <laughs> after Lethal had been able to drive HK out of the fight. She is still, though, persistent. Try shots heading in towards the point. Javelin dodge. That poke damage, though, without constant attention maintained, she's going to have a tough time staying in the fray for any extended period. Sticky bombs there, kind of sprayed across. No one target for them to catch on to, and... Oh, she needs healing. Thunder goes down. Amadou is able to find a pulse bomb available now. The recall comes out, and Faded could be a decent target, but Daybreak are already in a bit of trouble here. Ooh, Arisa, though. Maybe a bit more staying power in this fight. Blah, 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 blah. Fortify has to be used there. Great Suzu timing. Actually stops the Javelin from taking effect. HT is going to get knocked out of Duplicate. Just not going to find any advantage for Daybreak in that window. Well, Daybreak now uh, also, yeah, having already taken control over the point. They just want to try to keep advantage of it for as long as they can. And this is pretty even footing here, Mitch. Yeah, Daybreak had to expend a couple of ultimates here, but the percentages was quite frankly even. Citrus Nation, though, having the upper hand when it comes down to this ultimate economy, they get the pick of their poison of what they want to throw at this next fight. You can already see Lethal getting set up on an off angle to try to get this overclock. Daybreak had to spend a lot in that last fight. But here they go to once more. Heisky looking again for an insta burst. She's not able to find it. Ball of Steve sitting back a little bit now. As you can see, the Echo getting lower and lower. Astro finding some easy damage there. But there is nowhere for Thunder to go. She got skewered. And the follow-up damage from Astro was there. Both support ultimates used by Citrus Nation, but they set themselves up in a pretty commanding spot. We'll even have an overclock to take into the next. Yeah, not having to use that there or the Terra Surge either means that Citrus Nation still have those tools to work with. And they're in last fight territory here. Uh, with Daybreak Thunder, she does have this sound barrier, which will be a really nice way to get back into this fight. But this is this just could be it here when they come in for the next one. Yeah, they might need more. That's the problem. Lethal wants the preempted engagement here. It gives Citrus Nation a couple more extra percentage. It does force a disengage, but oh, that's not good at all. Malophobia caught by the rail. They were standing stock still and everything. Lethal, smiling from ear to ear after a bit of a freebie comes over. And now sound barrier only for three players and Daybreak can't even touch that. It's heartbreaking. 
Oh, it's so rough because I think that the Echo, while it looks so good into a composition like this with the Orisa, because, uh, you know, if you're able to fly past the Fortify, then you're able to beam down a target. I think you still run into the issue where you've got Lethal playing a hit scan DPS. And Lethal's one of those players that I feel like you should never give those keys to. Um, because I think you always will be on the receiving end of a railgun shot or like just a headshot from an Ash. I feel like Lethal always showed up in a big way when we were able to see those hit scans from him. Oh, it was an excellent round uh, from the Sojourn. I mean, that, ooh, that headshot towards the end though, that's devastating. Okay, so we have a Genji from HK. Okay, in okay. a Hiroko composition, so she will have to be a little careful against some of this poke. You see the trace, like the constant tracer pressure. Obviously, lethal's gonna be a problem. Trying to aim Elophobia, though. They lock onto a target, and HK gets in there. Great, Genji looks lethal already. Plucked out of the mix. But Daybreak lose their Lucio. They want to try and trade up and get one of their own, but Jacob stays scarce of any of that damage. And I think Daybreak will settle for a point cap as it gets flipped, but Astro will look to challenge this. Astro's going to make it to that point first because it's all about trying to win the war, not just the battle at hand. But Astro's hoping to find Melophobia. HK in trouble. Big trouble! I think that would, I think HK was hoping to commit there onto the Lucio at some point, but couldn't quite find the damage on Jacob and didn't have a Swift Strike available. Either way, Citrus Nation now. Start with control of the point. Uh, it just felt so messy because it did look disjunct. Like, what do you want to go after? Which target? Um, what a mag grenade. Did you see that eat into the Lucio? Oh my yes, god. Yes, it, it does have some target seeking capability. Yeah, but. Still, good, good window there from Lethal to. Can you get that stuck? Dunder That's just says, good. okay, I'm gonna just walk backwards now and let this expire. Faded and Cage look how low they are, my goodness! Faded. Big stick from Amadou, faded down. His tracer unmarked right now. It's so difficult to keep that in oh. mind too when... Oh. Yeah, it's lethal. Yeah, you're, you're dead here. Oh, okay, wait a minute, we're not supposed to win though, it's lethal! My goodness, I think there was a Suzu involved there, a little bit of shenanigans, but either way. <laughs> that is audacious. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, no, stop. Do They're already dead. Man. Malphobia will switch to the Widow. We'll find neutral. Okay. Back to the Tracer we go. Oh, man. I mean, that was enough of a stagger, though, that this is, again, last fight here for Citrus Nation. Daybreak has yet to have a say in this fight. Um, they don't really have a whole lot to speak on, either, when it comes to these alts. There's no good reason to give up the point if you're Citrus Nation. It doesn't matter if you're ahead. You just almost took Fader down instantly. The amount of damage here is, frankly, filthy. Terra Surge there, most of Daybreak dispersed away from that. But Fader eventually drops. It is so hard for Daybreak to keep their wins still alive. Now, HK probably has to look for a Hail Mary blade. Here it comes, and there it goes. Uh, it's uh, how are you gonna able to get anything done there without something maybe like the Ana to help bolster that up? It's always gonna be a naked blade. It's gonna be a Winston to come back into touch with the Primal, but it's just a matter of moments. What a clean round, Mitch. Very clean. Very, very clean. Citrus Nation, obviously, like, they, they issue the challenge to Daybreak. Daybreak has to figure out how to play into this Orisa comp with the Winston, which, like we saw in the previous game, isn't easy. Like, you really have to be switched on, and you need to be setting your DPS players up for success. Like, HK, she switches over to the Genji for that particular round. But even in situations where, you know, she gets Jacob down to, like, 40 health or something, she's not able to follow up, she's not able to chase the Lucio. Very, very difficult round there for Daybreak to, to get the potential out of their, their heroes, uh, at least out of their team composition. And, yeah, trying to play Winston into that Orisa comp is not easy. You are, like, 40, 60, I think, a lot of the time. Unless you can really outskill and have, like, very ironclad uh, sort of cohesion, it's an uphill battle. I mean, who is Goldfish? That team made it look easy to be able to do something like that. And I think every time we ended up seeing a dive in from Daybreak, Faded was just no public enemy number one. And so Winston jumps in, Winston gets deleted, and by the time you don't have that tank anymore, everybody else on the team is so easy to pick off. And it's not to say that Faded is doing anything wrong. I just think that it's all coming up right here for Citrus Nation, knowing who they need to actually target focus. You see how they even pincered Faded there? That's a great example of just how heads up Citrus Nation are playing against that dive. There's a moment there from Lethal, backed up on a Suzu, of course. That's uh, a bit of audacity here. I think it's, you know, Citrus Nation feel like they can push a little bit harder and, and maybe try and 
you know, turn these into blowouts at times. And it's going to be up to Daybreak here to, to shore up a lot of their fundamentals to actually earn that respect. I think that's probably priority number one for them heading into the next map. Again, very deathmatchy, very puggy games here we saw on Nepal. But at some point, like the individuals, like Lethal, for example. Cool. Is that, is that... That's right. Okay. That's not broken. That's... Not broken. Well, look, I mean... I got nothing, really. Uh, Daybreak, again, it speaks for they, they are not able... Here's the thing, like, they may be finding kills here and there, but they're definitely not winning any fights outright. They're finding some some reasonable engagements. I think there's, like, one point, like, Melophobia switches to a Widowmaker in spawn, finds a kill. They still can't really convert on that because they just had, uh, you know, HK picked off by Lethal. So, you know, even when they are finding kills, they're not in context that they can actually snowball them into a player advantage and then into a point capture. So they are happening. Um, the data is not very granular. Uh, it's very much like a, like a, a pulled straight from the API, KD. And not exactly the look you want, but you can't be thinking about that too much as Daybreak here. You want to move on to the next round here. And I hope to come up with a strategy that's just like very broadly effective here. And maybe one that gives you a sense of comfort as well. Control is also less forgiving when it comes down to how much time you actually have. Like the stats look so different, I think, if it's one-sided on something like a hybrid or a control or not control. We just played that. Um, you know, a, a hybrid escort, or a push. Perhaps, yeah. yeah, or an escort. Exactly. Things that have those delineated attack and defensive sides. Um, and I think that when we finally get a chance to actually move towards that, we will see that. Well, I think that gap's going to close quite a bit in those stats. Um, but also we get to see a little bit more about how Daybreak actually wants to set up for some of these executions. And Paliso so, is one of those maps I think you could try to do the dive again. I'll be blunt. Like, there are obviously you know, plenty of things that Daybreak can do here, but this is looking like a pretty severe mismatch. If you think back over the Shrine round and the Village round, uh, it wasn't very close. It was yeah. a little bit of clowning going on. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously picking a good comp is, you know, the first step here for Daybreak. But making that work against a team like Citrus Nation that aren't going to respect you and that are maybe going to overreach at times to try and find these advantages, you need to be able to punish that. And if you can't punish that, you're going to get thrashed. You're going to get thrashed like you did in that first map. I, I'm glad to see the, the sort of Arna Brick composition. I think that's going to suit a team, especially defensively here, but also can really help protect your backline. You know, I think like... The HQ on the defensive echo here is fine. We've seen teams start with this, then switch off to something like the Cassidy, for example. It's a little bit more defensive. HQ at times will be relied on to go in solo and create these solo kill opportunities. She's got a mechanical skill, it's clear to see. She's going to have to execute here on, on that burst combo and get player advantages set up for Daybreak. But it doesn't just fall on her, right? It, like, this is still where we have to see a lot of this coordination that is required of this Winston composition to actually come to fruition. Like, yes, HK can get the execute, but you also have to have the jump in from the Winston, maybe even a shield, maybe an armor pack coming in from Thunder to really help make sure that that Echo feels emboldened to go after these more aggressive picks. So far, Citrus Nation take the bridge already, so daybreak. Wanting to give up that part of the map, which can be a little bit scary against an attacking Winston composition. Now you have to play from either this ledge here or the low ground. It can be a bit awkward, but Daybreak look to renew their claim to this part of the map. Lethal's are hunting though. Let's have a listen to Citrus Nation now. Comfortable first map, let's see how they put it together on attack. I got look, I look, I look. No, 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 no
That'll expire and then she'll be left exposed while sleeping. And it's very comfortable here for Lethal to drop to the low ground and give an extra nano over to Jacob, who will use it to belt Melophobia's brains in. Well, that's one way to do that. That, that sure is uh, one way to handle things. I feel like I blink. Three and... still. Oh. Nice uh, kill. Sticky bomb play. I mean. That is I, good. You know, I mean, the nastiest kill I saw was on that first point where I think Lethal got mid-air stickies on HK and, and was able to finish her nah, off. So. It, it's just yeah. nasty. Uh, at this point, like, yeah, okay, the, the pick on the Tracer is actually quite nice because it's going to give Daybreak a bit of breathing room here. They can start to think about how they actually want to utilize some of these ultimates. Ooh, big anti. There's a primal here. HK with the dupe off the Ana. Nicely done. Fade a big primal. Lethal just whizzing overhead as HK now looks for a target to damage. Nice fight win here for the defenders. They can set up behind this. Citrus Nation spend a fair bit as well. We'll have to recoup. Uh, so that's where like the, the big stray pick onto the tracer like really has paid off. Not only do you finally get a chance to use some of these ults you've held onto, but like here's the setup that Daybreak was wanted on the streets phase. Go on these buildings. Oh, oh, it's just... <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just whip shot Astro to next Tuesday. <laughs> that is sick. I love that. <laughs> oh my god, that was such a good pick. The whip shot. Now, now they all have to think. I think twice. Like maybe Citrus Nation just uh, got a little too comfortable. Honestly, like Daybreaker's still playing hard. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> you better jump out. Yeah, there's not much you can do there. Perfect target as well. Neutral brought down by the pulse bomb. <laughs> Now, though, Daybreak have to get back to safety. And yeah, the, the, the focusing beam there from Lethal didn't take too much to bring HQ down. She was very low from just incidental poke damage, which is hard to do with a Tracer Echo composition. I think there was some right clicks for oh, from there. Good can sleep. you follow up on that sleep? I don't, I don't know think if you so. care about that, though. I think it's like just stem the bleeding a little bit, buy some time, and here's the full 5v5. Lethal droops and Ana. I think Sleep Dark got thrown out there. Not sure if there was a connect rally from Thunder. But Astro is able to break through that shield pretty easily. Faded has to jump on out. Melophobia is still harrying the attackers around the cart. And we see Lethal's time in dupe form is over. Ball of Steve though getting brought down. This dive by Astro has decimated Daybreak's backline. And now really it's about walking it in. Okay, second point captured now. Citrus Nation still have over three minutes to get through this third phase. And usually this is where the going starts to get really tough for the attacking team, just because of, again, typical spawns are very close, but Astro's creating so much space. Does he get a chance again. to use the Primal, though? Yeah, that burst damage from Echo can be really hard to preempt, so maybe there's a wall where Astro wants to Primal there. I'd be a little surprised, given how far back the rest of the team is. Uh, you don't have a chance to respond to that anyway because of the multiplicative damage that comes in from focusing me when you're low, and the burst from the bombs. Speaking of which, Ball Steve suffering that exact same issue. Focusing Beam claims the Ana now. Faded is much less support. HQ opts to dupe the Winston, so an extra tank in play and Lethal gets zapped out of the sky. We're seeing just the power of the Winston against this Brigitte too. Actually forcing out the rally. Wow. This might work though. I think Lethal can get back to the fight soon enough and how close the spawn is. Astro has to primal here, but this is a better spot to use it than in that previous fight. Looking for Ball of Steve, and the sleep is good. Astro will be left to stew for a time on that high ground. But the cart's still moving up. We do have Neutral coming back in with a Nano Boost as well. Well, would have been nice if Astro was alive. And now back to the spawn room. Back to the drawing board. Uh, back, to, you know, back to Dynasis with you. <laughs> okay, well, Lethal has the duplicate now, so could go for the Winston. Uh, it could also be just an Ana dupe, as we've seen most of the time when Ana's on the... Menu, uh, just a good first sleep or even just an ante, but uh, okay. Uh, it's looking much better here. So this is like a forced duplicate from Lethal. They're gonna get eliminated I instantly. That. Yeah, Melophobia has been causing a lot of problems on the high ground by flanking, and HQ has also been thrusting, uh, you know, in as Echo with those cooldowns every now and then. So Citrus Nation are fighting on two fronts pretty constantly. The tracer flank pressure has been excellent. It has been, and and it did force Lethal into this awkward position of like using the duplicate and then not getting any value immediately going back to spawn. And Daybreak has wasted so much time off of this clock now. Only a minute left here for Citrus Nation. 
So Astra gets that nano finally, but Lethal's already gone down. Melophobia with the first kill in a fight yet again, and they've found Jacob with the pulse as well. This is beautiful. Not only are you finding these eliminations, but you're doing it after Citrus Nation, investing ultimates and trying to have like a five-player strategy play out. This has got a lot cleaner over the last couple of minutes, and Citrus Nation are struggling. They are floundering. I would almost want to see if maybe Asher would be willing to go over to something like the Orisa, because that's where Daybreak did struggle to make that dive work, is when they had to go up against a more coordinated ball of characters. Uh, but it's just going to be the Winston so close to that Primal Rage for a final fight. You can also play Cassidy here if you're lethal. That might be one option. There's the duplicate from HK. It's over. Lethal able to end that. Jacob here handing up those heal packs. Astra needs to juke this sleep dart. Ball sleeve. A ah, lovely shield dead. That's what we're looking for. Astro with Primal though, so they'll be able to pick themselves back up with a vengeance. Ten seconds left in the round on HK's dead, so there's no burst damage. Faded sleeping in Primal right now. So neutral is also able to find a key sleep on the Winston. Melophobia in trouble. I'm gonna be able to win that battle out pretty handily. Now HK doesn't have a lot of space to move. That's being taken from them even as we speak. Here's the Primal. Dangerous here for Ball and Steve. They are very low. Can they dispense that nano quickly? They can. They send it over to Faded, who instantly pays it back with interest with a kill on a Jacob. Again, Melophobia returns to the fray. Neutral, a little bit frightened here, and the pulse is good. A big bit of damage carried over onto Astro here. So Daybreak is going to complete what looks like a hold here, unless Amadou can do something pretty spectacular. Melophobia dancing. Amadou staying safe. And that will be that. Daybreak hold off Citrus Nation right at the end of the map. It's so close to the end of the road, though. Uh, and now it's after Citrus Nation had a lightning fast pace to make it to basically the end of that second point. Uh, but Daybreak, they really did get their act together, not only to have that great hold at the end of second, but also to have this hold now. Uh, and it gives themselves a win condition to get themselves on the board in this series. Uh, the dive looked good. I, I think especially when they were able to really focus up and take advantage of maybe the lack of coordination that Citrus Nation was having, that's really where they started to shine. Yeah, Lethal was very punishing at the start of this map. That echo play was very clean. But later, it really became about Melophobia and, you know, how they combine with a lot of these, you know, aggressive upfront defensive dives by Daybreak. They were always flanking. They were always good for at least one. And very rarely were they getting traded. They'd be able to recall the safety and they'd be able to carry on the fight a little bit later. A couple of key moments there as well. Thunder, she hits a nice whip shot on Astro, basically just ending the Winston instantly. Those things really matter. They really add up. Yeah, over like a long round. That was like Max Rain's whip shot, I think. And obviously, yeah. we already used the jump to get up there. So it's his most vulnerable window. <laughs> they break have paved the way here for themselves to win this map. But it's attack and it needs to have, it needs to have claws. It has to have good coordination and it has to happen quickly. Uh, and the only way you're really going to do that is making sure that you continue to call those targets. And even better, maybe somebody on Sister Station just overextends and you're able to punish that. That was so close. Yeah, I guess the question is like, have, have Daybreak earned the respect of Citrus Nation after that defensive round? I want to suggest probably. We'll see now what they can do. They have to be the ones that can coordinate these dives. And so far you see Citrus Nation much less interested in giving up that high ground bridge for free. I mean, Lethal is just the focus at the moment. Already got so low, I'm gonna do as well as it under a ton of fire. And if you're able to remove one of those DPS from the board, that's critical. Yeah, by brute force, Daybreak have taken the bridge now. Malifobia just making sure that no one attempts to renew their positioning like Astro is here. So they'll be warded off very quickly. A little dangerous here for Lethal. About to be pressured down by Melophobia, who is fairly low and nice by an eight there from neutral. The follow-up damage was good, but it was an easy kill for Astro to find after that. Mm, a little bit that's, of a stagger onto the Winston. Yeah, Fade got caught there. I guess they couldn't jump out either way. Solid hold so far, and another stagger kill here could be big. Nice job. HK's able to get in there and find Lethal. Now Astro feeling much less comfortable playing from this spot. And Amadou can't get away. A big overextension. You called it, Rose, from Citrus Nation. I think they just said they're getting too confident or comfortable, and that's providing these tiny little openings that Daybreak is absolutely going to take advantage of. So that's going to be this first tick easily. There should be a recontest coming in here from Citrus Nation when they have ultimates to expend, especially this Nano. Here we go. Nano straight away from Astro. The sleep is a little bit too late from Ball of Steam. Again, HQ finds an important echo elimination. Melophobia at 40 HP, but no one's looking at them right now. Until Jacob whips around and cleans it up with a mace. 
They break down and just two players and faded sleepy on the job here. So this will be an interrupted cap as HK comes out of dupe. And quickly heads back to sport. But there is still one opening, and Daybreak can still find those. Like, the, there's still two minutes left on the clock. They have ultimates to spare now. Uh, and they pretty, like, neatly got out the Nano as well as that Pulse Bomb from Citrus Nation. So maybe come in here, deal with the duplicate from Lethal right away. That can be very telegraphed at times with how aggressive Lethal is played. Dangerous. Lethal goes in, doesn't have a flight cooldown now though, so lack of mobility has to do for safety. This will at least give enough time for that flight cooldown to come online again. But the primal was good, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there was a Bionate involvement there. This time it's Melophobia to find a pick. It's the Ana going down, and with Amadou out of the picture here, Astro has to be careful. Mmm, asleep. Again, a second too late, but Astro is out of the fight for now. That means that Jacob's very exposed here. Primal from Fader is just going to brute force the issue. Astro can't do too much about it. Is there going to be a chase on this Echo? Oh, I like the idea, Faded. Can't quite get the job done, but Citrus Nation have to regroup. They have to. Uh, they have to give up another tick first, though, before they do that, and that's going to buy time for Ooh, the Oh, HQ. HQ's able to get away. Just barely gets out of that fight. They're only helping in a big way, but Thunder doesn't quite have the mobility. Not spry enough here to avoid the damage of Astro. Pulse from here for Amadou. Still taking right clicks across the map from Faded, but again, Citrus Nation are able to set up here. Oh dear, I think that was an assisted uh, environmental kill just quietly, but Melophobia off the map. Oh, and that's uh, Pulse of, the, Pulse of the Pulse Bomb though too, as Amadou's able to find Baller Steve. Uh, but this is it, Mitch. 30 seconds left. That's all the Daybreak have to try to get this final third of the pie, and they have nothing in the tank right now in terms of ultimates. Good for them. The Citrus Nation kind of doesn't either, but this Nano from Kinky Ladder could be just the nail in the coffin. Yeah, if Astro it means more staying power, can be a bit more aggressive, which is something the Citrus Nation have trended towards anyway. Some pressure on the high ground here. Ball Steve extremely low though, and there it is. Here he comes, and then I know when Ball Steve was, I mean, a hair's breadth from being eliminated as it was. HK, well timed duplicate, it would have been the end of him otherwise. Good sleep to follow up on Astro here. Now has to group up with Melophobia, good pulse. Happy with that, but Astro, Healthy enough to be healed straight back up and get into the fight here. Citrus Nation with a chokehold on this defense. At the end of the day, nothing that Daybreak can do. Amadou to clean up the round. And that'll be that. It's a 2-0 thus far. It's a 2-0, and Mitch, it's starting to look like it's not a very close 2-0. After what we ended up seeing for the first round, I was like, okay, maybe we've got some hope here. And, and the chat as well predicted to be such an even split between who they thought would be able to take this match. But Citrus Nation is coming up on top on every single one of these team fights. I don't know how much the KD really changed either well, if we look at the stats after this map. It probably got a bit better, but I would say that this hasn't turned into the thrashing that I sort of... Uh, you know, portrayed it as after the first map. Definitely more competitive here uh, from Daybreak. Like, in general, like, I was quite happy to see that sort of play on the defensive side. They really started to, to come together on that defense towards the end of the map, albeit a very hard part of the map for attackers to play into in general, especially when they are still trying to force that echo composition, still trying to play that Winston. Uh, uh, when it came to their attacking side, there were a couple picks here and there, but not nearly frequent enough. And, yeah, we asked the question, like, okay, they defend well. Can they put together a coordinated dive when they fundamentally have like a positional disadvantage based on how the attack and defense dichotomy works? The answer is no. Uh, which is a shame, right? Because I think that they were provided a couple of openings that like any good team is going to capitalize on. And they're here for a reason. But I, I think that when it just comes to this matchup, I the dive has looked more coordinated out of Citrus Nation, and even if it's not going to be the dive versus dive, I I wonder whether if there's going to be enough flexibility from Daybreak as a team to be able to try something different. Hmm. We actually saw, obviously, we saw a fair few different picks, uh, you know, on Nepal. But you know, maps like this, you can't really play the more static compositions. I I don't even really like that the Sigma look here. I feel like you are very much priced into, at least until the end of the map, I think you can switch to the Arisa base comp towards the end of the map, right? Right. But that tests your coordination in a different way. And if your opponents are playing a dive setup, yeah, you're stronger in like a brawl, but you're never going to get that. Like, you know, the but I'm thinking ahead to like the, the next couple of maps you're going to have in a series, because you might not be able to play the dive on every map uh, up to, you know, that we might have. Yeah. Uh, and so that's where I'm like, okay, but where is that flexibility kind of come in? Is it does that exist uh, to give Daybreak a true shot at 
give, giving themselves some map in the series. I suspect that the next map probably will suit. Uh, it would be Esper I think it'd be Esperanza. So you can definitely play the Winston comp there. Uh, can, is it yeah. strictly better than the Arisa? No, but if you have like a coordination advantage, that's a different story. See here, like the, the, the KD, obviously, a very different story being told. Like generally, and I think a lot of this, you know, gets generated in the last part of the defensive half from Daybreak, but they, they looked like, they ostensibly looked good there. Um, definitely that, that sort of chasm that we saw in map one is, is sort of shrunken considerably. But this is a Citrus Nation selection. Esperanza coming up. And I'm hearing we have some substitutions for a daybreak. Ooh, Putter. Okay, so H key uh, gonna be taking the bench, and Putter will be uh, taking her place. Uh, so maybe, maybe not gonna go for the via the Echo or the Genji. And like, I didn't necessarily hate any of those picks, but I think that maybe you might not be wanting to go for a Winston in that case. Or if you are running the Winston, maybe you're just looking for a different opportunity to run. Maybe like a Tracer and a Sojourn, or a Tracer and a Cassidy, something else that Putter might be able to provide. So in Europe, we saw the Junker Queen comp played. Uh, I think True. it was against the, was it the Winston setup? I mean, the, the Arisa. So that is an option. I really do think it's more of a specialist's angle to take. Like if you have, you know, really been out of shore up that comp and develop, develop it pretty extensively, then you can find success with that. I think we actually saw that winning out. But in, you know, in general, it can be hard to play it against the Winston. The Winston wants to avoid the Junker Queen at all costs, of course. Um, but can use that, you know, high ground to their advantage to, yeah, in order to evade the pressure that the Queen can bring. We might see hit scan here for, for Putter. So that's obviously something that Daybreak didn't really try for. Uh, obviously, it was more like the Tracer Echo comp, and that was what Melophobia and HQ, they were right. sort of on that plan. So it's good to see that there is a Sojourn option for Daybreak. Lethal and Armory, though, still want to play Echo Tracer here. With the wide open expanses, I'm a little surprised to see it, but you can play around this central building like you would on Eichenvola defense, I suppose. And we've seen some Echo just take to the ground to have the same type of impact, using mostly the flying capabilities as a mobility tool to just uh, take a different angle. Uh, so yeah, I, I think it, it could still work here, and it gives you the opportunity to have that escape mechanism too against the opposing Winston. Yeah, on face, Daybreak might have a stronger composition here. Uh, Citrus Nation, obviously, they, they do have the Kiriko set up. They don't have, like, a, an Ana uh, Breek look this time around. So they can't deal with the dive nearly as effectively, but Melophobia falls to a Winston, which is always a bit of an odd one to see as the first kill come up. Big pressure on the Ana now. That was a sleep dive thrown out to no avail. But Thunder is at least able to deal with Jacob, who piled in there with Faded. Yeah, that has to be traded out at the very least for Citrus Nation. They're able to get that done. Astro a little bit low, but you're fully committed here if you're Citrus Nation. There is no turning back at this point in the fight. And Amadou can't chase Baller Steve down. Melophobia, great job of relieving the pressure of, on the Ana. That was great. And Kinky Glider does not have a good target to Swift Step to, except finally maybe a, a bit of a reprieve there. That was so risky, though, because uh, I think if the Lucio gets caught out there too, then this is even more progress that Daybreak gets to make. But already off to a good start. And with a couple of ultimates coming online, they could also keep this lead. Like that nano, that rally, they're up fast. Yep. Now they're gonna have them in just a moment here. Melophobia, great pressure. Swift step forced out of neutral at the start of the fight. Always oh, a good sign. Sticker bombs though almost take their toll, and Melophobia has nowhere to go after the fact that Pata nails one into Amadou. Do you see neutral finding the one? Aggressive trades back and forth, but. We have a Brig and a Lucio for each team respectively in play right now. The rally could go a long way for Thunder, but Putter gets lasered down. There's no time for that rally healing to actually take hold. And I don't think Melophobia has really much to do here anymore. Sorry, wait, how did that happen? I, I think Fade have just ignored Jacob and right-clicked Lethal. That's huge. This was so scrappy. Both of these teams have not really had a good setup opportunity to execute a cohesive game plan. It's kind of been, okay, well, here's Nano, see what you can get done with it, and now let's go in. I've got Kitsune Rush, and then I have a sound barrier. Uh, Citrus Nation kept a lot to be able to throw at this fight. No joy from the pulse here for Amadou. Faded dives in very low. About to be a lot lower. The focusing beam gets in there. Faded's able to get away. Great healing, I think, from Baller Steve there. Either way, Faded able to stand tall for now. Here's the pulse of Melophobia, it's good. Citrus Nation down the Winston. Ana Dupe 
Bionade thrown in. The follow-up, though, it's more speculative at best. Ball Steve, though, is picked up because there are Kunai shots from an off angle. That's another one for neutral. They are heating up. And Citrus Nation can keep going, even though they lost Astro at the start of the fight. Eventually, though, maybe an overextension from Kiki Ladder. It's hard to say from here. Melophobia will make sure that no one's pushing this bot for now. Well, they were. They're looking for the Tracer duel. Looking for the Tracer duel. Uh, Daybreak did sneak away just a little bit of extra progress. So we're back to a neutral fight, though. There hasn't really been much meterage across the board for either of these teams. But Putter could be a big difference. Go for the overclock, get up, set up on the angle. Consider still hasn't been used, though, so that might make things a little bit difficult for the targets. Vader gets dropped there. Amadou just able to go to work with the pulse pistols. Nice overclock. Putter getting a lot of damage here in Astro. All of a sudden, he's going to turn around and get out of there. But in the meantime, you lost your honor. They took the so even if Fader was in play, they would not be long for this world. Citrus Nation, though, only just getting the bot back now and only just getting in the lead. So Daybreak have the Nano coming back up. They can use Fader as a blunt object to again find that player advantage. Oh, as long as they don't lose anybody here either, then Daybreak can come back in to contest before this bot reaches that first checkpoint. It's getting... A little out of hand now, though. The dive upstairs from Astro just to make sure Daybreak wouldn't flood out of the window. They're going to wrap to the right-hand side instead. They Checkpoint game! That hurts! And might have had something to do with Melophobia being so low and not being able to contest as the Tracer. That's devastating. Uh, yeah, that's so rough to see. Great sleep. We like to see those. Astro is... Okay, Primal. I was about to say it. Never get ahead of yourself. Gets out, but again, a beautiful rally. Again, I, I do think... Rose, that Citrus Nation are playing a weaker comp. This comp is probably a little bit weaker outside of like the access to Kitsune Rush. It's a tough job for Lethal here up against Pata, who is hitting all of these shots. My good, there's another. Yeah, it is tough. I, I think that Lethal is in a bit of a tricky situation. Has the chance to use his duplicate, but, but look at how quickly they're forced to recall kind of like. Oh. <laughs> Maybe that's the secret, is just get the duplicate online and then become something else? I mean, <laughs> Lethal's yeah. playing the same way. He's playing the same way. <laughs> just boots on the ground this time around. Yeah. Get that pulse there against Thunder. Uh, if I was here, I'd be absolutely fuming. That was Lethal, obviously, like, with like free life, essentially. Playing as a veritable six player. And getting Ooh. a free kill virtually on the brink. Baller Steve is going to switch over to the Kiriko. So a bit more utility and just extra healing coming up from Daybreak. Okay, you can also deny these pulse bombs, which we just saw are a problem. Especially if we're going to see more of those tracer dupes. Amadou has one coming up right about now. Maybe looking for Baller Steve to expend that Suzu early and exploit that. Like, come on, it is so hard to play against a Soju who is, is locked in like this. Oh, Pata! Absolutely beautiful. Well below par in a good way. A birdie or an eagle, maybe somebody... That's right. Someone, ...people might say. Does someone say um, below par is, like, a bad thing? But actually, like, you want to be below... It's a good thing. Right. Yeah, you so want to have as few par... points as possible. So why is that even used in that way? Uh, below par is a, a one you, what you want to avoid. I guess so, huh? Because mm. you know the phrasing would be subpar. Yeah. But that's good still, right? You want to be below par? good. Whatever, man. Whatever. I'm not a golfer. I don't have that kind of money. I work in esports. Kind of picked off here. Thunder with the rally in play. She though not able to stand for much longer either. It's just great focus fire going on here for Citrus Nation. And, and that lead is kind of blown out, right? It was very close for the first couple of minutes. And all of a sudden, we're looking at a 65 meter issue. I think it's hard, even though Putter has been able to hit all of his shots, you still need to have follow-up from the rest of the team. And I think Citrus Nation are playing just so quickly that it's hard to actually find your footing and dig your heels into the sand if you are Daybreak. Uh, so Citrus Nation, they've got this uh, bot again, kind of past this corner, but this is a corner they love to play from. Fighter again just has to contest. Doesn't really want to let the bot push through here for free. Melphobia caught in the open for a time. Okay, here's Katsune Rush. They're going for it now. Chaotic as heck. Suzu deployed. Lethal, though. Duplicating a Winston, getting a primal. Oh, my goodness! Hey, I'm seeing double. It's monkey magic now for Citrus Nation. And boy, howdy, do they get their hands dirty. Faded contesting right now with primal, so it's probably not going to be a long-lived experience. They won't use that ultimate here. And so that lead extends for Citrus Nation. 
If they use the ultimate there, they just feed over yeah, so much more ult charge, and then your team is stuck without the tank. Well, this bot routes the corner, so you may as well just have it now. But we're so close to the finish line. There's still two minutes left, and Citrus Nation are starting to just make a mountain out of a molehill climb for the Daybreak team. Mana here, just having a space with that disruptor shot. Using it defensively. Faded with the primal. Mastro's doing the same. And it's real cat amongst the pigeons kind of stuff here as that whole backline is getting dispersed. Another nice rail from Putter. Putter. But Astro's still able to get in there. And again, now we're stuck in spawn as daybreak. Citrus Nation only lacking the tracer for the time being. Another Widow Switch from Elephobia that worked out on Nepal. This time, though, a dearth of targets. Everyone hiding behind that bot, giving him a free Motohito while they get ready to push to the end of the map. It's Lethal's focusing beam that deals with Thunder here, and it's desperation for Daybreak. They are throwing everything down, but Citrus Nation looking to bring that Endless Knight. At least Fade is going to be seeing that right now. Pulse Bomb for Amadou was good. We've got a duplicated Lucio. Yes, you heard that right. Kimmy running spawn. Beat here for Thunder. Out she comes. Still a few players benefiting from that sound barrier for now, but the focusing beam ignores it, basically. As Thunder is out of the picture. Now we have the Kachini Rush. It seems like Citrus Nation have decided that that's probably enough for them here. Jacob wins out that duel, though. That's pretty huge. At least Putter's able to trade. Well, now they get to come back into this one, too, because uh, the Winston's also going to come in for the pincer. So the job's not done yet. Citrus Nation still have some fight. Oh, lethal. Oh, dear. Okay. Astro definitely stole that. There was nothing friendly about that KS. Regardless, though, Lethal dropped down on Putter. I think they were just not aware. The Echo was hovering above them at the time. There's too much going on here. Faded, wanted to soar, but couldn't get out alive. Primal Rage again. Looking to dash the hopes of Daybreak is any chance of a comeback on this map has been taken away from them. This stagger chase kill on the Thunder. Ball of Steve trying to stall things out. And in the end, it's looking to be a full complete as we run out of time now. Either way, it will be Daybreak in overtime for the entirety of the rest of the map where they're able to salvage things here. Looks like they've been able to do so, but for how long? Yeah, they have to stick to this bot like glue. At least every single one of these picks that they get is going to be a bit more of a stagger. Thunder's going to come back out on the Moira to be able to get back to the team fast enough. But there's this wraparound from Lethal that could be devastating. Lethal doesn't have the sticky bombs now, and he's being chased. Bit of an opening here left by Citrus Nation. Faded has to stay on the bot. Now you can only replay with four players. The Citrus Nation are likely mostly going to take fights away from TS1. Okay, we duped a Moira. Lethal living his best life now. That bot is starting to get away from things, but in its wake, Daybreak are being left in absolute shambles. Just faded on the bot right now. They've got Primal. They're going to go for it. They'll try and stretch it out a little bit more. Kitsune Rush deployed here by Neutral. This is going to make sure they can get the job done quite a extended climax to this game that was probably decided about four minutes ago but the result is the same it's citrus nation with a clean 3-0 it was a, such a valiant effort though there by daybreak chat had a basically 50 50 split on who they thought was going to win this one by citrus nation uh i think showing everybody that like th this is why this is the team that we saw be so close to get into that main event last season and chat loves daybreak though sure. That's probably yeah, well, why the voting was that close. They are a very likable team. But you know what yeah. I like even more than Daybreak? I like the team that wins. I like the team that stays alive in the group. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, I'm sure Citrus Nation is right there with you. No, but honestly, though, I after Nepal, it was a little tough to watch, all right? The stats, especially at the very end, were a little... Ugh. Uh, it looked like yep. such a blowout. But as the series went on, I think Daybreak started to make it look more competitive. I think uh, Daybreak's defense on Pariso, you touched on that match during the cast. That wasn't looking half bad. They couldn't string it together on the attack side of things. But still, it wasn't bad. And now also, of course, here on our last map that we got to, saw, uh, got to see, Daybreak started to turn it up. They started to find a stride. They, uh, they had the right comp. They just unfortunately couldn't finish it out. Yeah, big, very quickly, big shout out to Kinky Ladder, who's not neutral at all. It's actually Daddy, uh, who we sort of didn't have <laughs> that alternate alias for. So I feel bad, a little, and then also not bad, because that name is <laughs> egregious. And so, you know, I'm going to name you something else to make my life easier. But look, I think um, 
Like, I like the defense here from Daybreak, right, Rose? I think that was a standout moment for us, you know, for a team that yeah. really struggled to leave much of a mark on this series numerically. They look very good here in this last phase of the map. They did, and they were just continuing to capitalize after these picks, after picks, the over-aggression sometimes out of Citrus Nation. But it takes a good, strong team to identify those moments and capitalize on them. So it's, uh, you know, it did look one-sided in the actual match overall, but I think Daybreak had these wonderful moments. And even more so when you have to bring in, like, a cold player like Putter, who's popping off with these overclocks and these charged railgun shots on the Sojourn. Yeah, it was really clean. Uh, and again, yeah, it's the, the, the sad part is, I guess, if the Daybreak aren't able to convert those uh, elsewhere because it comes as a trade, which is fine, sort of keeps you into the fight. But a, there was constant pressure from this, like, Winston dive comp. Lethal obviously opting not to play the Sojourn here, which I'm sure is sort of very capable of doing, and we, we know that. It's something we, were look, we saw a lot at the start of this series. Kind of meant that, you know, you're a little weak to the Sojourn. You can just get picked off sometimes, and it maybe puts you in a bit of a deficit here, but elsewhere uh you know in the map and throughout the game citrus nation able to, to make up for that disadvantage for sure for sure i think like when you look at lethal's impact on the match uh, like not only was it really nice to see the soldier in there on the pall but i think the echo like d despite all odds right <laughs> you're playing into a sojourn you're playing into like just all the cc and you're still making the echo work uh it was really it was really awesome to to kind of watch lethal have those moments as we have kind of come to expect from a player like this yeah this is you know kind of what you expect there's a lot of experience i mean and look, it's important to point out that even before like lethal got onto that sort of london team they were like a staple a absolute staple in tier two going back like four years uh yeah. you know we're talking like you know exoblivioni that redbirds team you know before you went over towards london spitfire even like Here's a, here's a throwback. Shoes Money Crew. You know, remember Shoes Money Crew? You know, like, so... <laughs> I remember I, Shoes I, Money Crew. Yeah, it's not even that long ago now. I think it's only a couple of years, but... Uh, so, like, look, really, really established player. And in a matchup like that, you don't even have to play the optimal pick here, and you can still express your ability uh, and see it really make a mark on the match. I mean, that's always the thing, right? When we get to chat with them and we're like, oh, you didn't play the optimal comp, and they're coming out with a... But we did, though, because they, they just see the game so different than whatever yeah. else we're seeing as a spectator. Uh, let's quickly take a look at our brackets to see where we're standing. Yet yeah, that was the last match of the day, and it, it gave Citrus Nation another opportunity to stay alive and potentially advance to the main event. For that to happen, though, they do have to take down Timeless. Timeless and Luminosity Gaming, of course, are two big giants uh, in this Group B, so it's not going to be an easy feat for them. However, Citrus Nation did manage to make Luminosity Gaming sweat a little bit. They took a map off of them. Um, I think if there's one other team in this particular group who can get it done, it will be them. However, I do feel like they should be considered the underdog heading into that match. Yeah, I think like I was I agree. definitely feeling like Citrus Nation had some real play in that matchup. Just the New Jack City map was ended up being yeah, a little bit lopsided for them. But like across the course of that series, like they won Eichenwald. So like they had a, that Winston comp, like their Winston comp defense was was, was very was very good, or at least they're able to show that, uh, you know, on those kind of maps. So, you know, they're in good stead. I, I think there might be a question of, okay, what if we have a map where you have to play Risa uh, or like the Ramatra setup? Can you, can you have that same level of impact? We didn't see like the full depth, I think, of what Lethal can offer on Sojourn, for example. Uh, maybe there's a Cassidy comp that they haven't had a chance to show off, at least on the main broadcast yet. So they've got options. We've also seen the timers can definitely bleed amongst this group, uh, but they're going to be absolutely bloody ropeable after that loss to Luminosity. And I don't think they'll be looking to make any mistakes in that last game. It was a close match, though. That was uh, that was a, a five-map banger, was it? Am I right? Yeah, but the, pro the problem five -map banger. Do, the problem with losing to Hunter is that you lose, and then you get L-danced on, like... It's proverbially in the in the post interview. Yeah, but he like starts it, to dance before the game even happens. Yes. So it's like he, that's why we let know. him. That's why we let him do it. That's fine. But but you know what I mean? Like you know you know it's gonna happen. So it's like insult to injury. And I think if you're the coach of Timeless, you you're spitting fire after the game. You've been very very annoyed because Ant has been barbing him already. 
which I mean that's good for us good content lots of lols uh, and it might just spur on the opposition you know I would take that as motivation to do better well let's see what they can get done uh, next week for now though we're gonna take a very short trip back memory lane and looking at some an amazing place didn't work in that sentence but I still read it and uh, amazing which happened today and amazing it only works if it's a singular it doesn't work as a plural that's why I'm against this, producer yes. Ben. Yes, I, I, I think I'm fine with that. I'm doing it for you. So, Lethal, obviously, like, it, under normal circumstances, you shouldn't be taking that fight against the Genji, but they had the backup of the Suzu, and then they, they get a Deadeye that sort of... I don't know, I mean, this is the kind of map where they were already, you know, pretty significantly ahead. Lethal flexing a little bit there, which is you know, great psychological warfare. The Deadeye in front of Spawn, though, is just... I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I think, like, just making a statement, mm. you know, yeah, I'm was, back. That was a statement piece for Feel sure. Me. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, again, <laughs> like, I here I am, like, making fun of people that sort of say, oh, why well, you should be playing optimally at all times. Obviously, that's, like, not optimal in a nutshell, <laughs> but it looks good. I like that. You know, I always feel like we're more the WWE than the sports center, you know, in esports anyway. <laughs> I don't need to be taking it. Look at what I wear, for Christ's sake. I don't take myself too seriously. So nice to see, uh, you know, a little bit of relaxing there from Citrus Nation while they feel like they had an edge, but uh, they won't be feeling like that in their next match. Let me tell you that for free. Nope. Nah, it's going to be a really good match, I think. And especially because maybe it is a little bit more even than people think it is. Like, uh, everybody looked at Timeless as the second best team in North America outside of Toronto Defiant, which, uh, which I don't know which team is going to be able to dethrone them right now. But hopefully this next week will show us that. But I'm so excited to see the rest of the outcomes of these matches because we still have a couple more spots to fill for that main event. That's true. We also have to say goodbye to a couple more teams, but all of that is going to happen next week. Saturday, the 20th. Mark your calendars right now. We're going to start bright and early with the EMEA region, then diving into DNA portion of things a little later. Any particular matches uh, that you are very much excited to see? Uh, Dildaks versus Who is Goldfish? I'm kind of excited about. Also, I think Shikigami yeah. Kari versus Onkink should be uh, an interesting decider. Obviously, I'm more NA-focused here. So that's kind of what our purview has been so far. Also, that Group A decider in EMEA should be uh, decent. Uh, I'm excited oh. for Ex Oblivioni and uh, Super Shy. Yeah. What about Aya, oh, yeah, though? And honestly, they have not impressed me thus far in the Swiss and groups. I mean, yeah, look, they're, like in, the team. Look, they're in an elimination Question match, mark. so like, I get it. Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, they are, again, sort of very much fighting for your life. But, you know, this roster, like, obviously, they're fun to watch because they, they have the, the jump crowd one trick and they you know, they have a lot of charm. Exactly. Uh, I think about them, they so. do have that. Uh, the Necros as well, like, great player to watch. Necros so, like, just wants chaos. <laughs> yeah, so I would like to see them advance, but they're, I mean, that, 5K retired? That team is good. Like, obviously, like, Peace and Love have, like, I think, impressed us a lot to, uh, to get into that position uh, in that sort of, in that group D, so... I don't know. Yeah, oh yeah, they're going to have to show us something special. I think a lot of the teams which are currently fighting for their lives uh, have made quite an impression on all of us watching. Some we were more familiar with than others, but they all came to play. They're going to duke it out again in just a week from now. However, for now, we are going to say goodbye, but there is more Overwatch on the... It's not even a horizon, it's like in front of your door, it's like right there. All, all, we all are these going gigantic to... lats. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because we will be raiding the man himself. A leg day. The machine. Uh, say hi. The machine. The legend. Our beloved. Uh, so make sure to say hi, join us in the raid, and have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. though it's kind of split fairly awkwardly you can see them all like grouped up in this corner dan it didn't stand a chance i saw high noon but a uh, little bit of a bit of a spear there from psycho the duplication on the orissa once again peace and love very easy uh, first fight they're trying to make it a little bit more punishing for ataraxia to run away i don't think you're gonna secure a kill no you are not okay fan of us Cobb. trying to play aggressive 10 seconds to go Overclock here, Tracer dead already. There's no one to touch, surely. Winston, Lucio, Moira, Reaper, everybody thrown in. But peace and love, they're going to shut the door on this series. Did I help? I got this guy, someone's playing. You got this? Oh! Yeah.
Yeah. Biff. We win this. Ooh, biff. SK, you are officially uh, the loser to beat. You're, you got the target on your back now. You're the loser everyone has to mess you up against. <laughs> it's done a lot of pressure. I, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. I, I even beat Funny Astro on the 1v1, so like, we're up there. I know. We're up there right now. Ah, there, 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 there is. There's your boy. Legend. Give us one. Give us a boys. yawn. Oh. Hell yeah. Quick, 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 quick. Nice. 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 Then I interrupted, infected, sent him over the edge. Renko's a good start for the defenders, but Ariel comes in hot and PG is down. The Cassidy had to get too close to the sun, apparently. Scissors absolutely popping off here. This tracer play has been something else from both sides, but in the end, SOG are able to prevail. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> what up, baby? Oh. Oh, oh, this is hell. Hell. It's hell. Oh, it's hell. Nice. Difficult to keep that oh. in two when. Oh. It's lethal. Yeah, you get out here. Okay, wait a minute. You're not supposed to win though. It's lethal. My goodness. I think it was a Susan were involved. There were shenanigans, but either way. <laughs> that is audacious. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, stop. They're already dead. Goodbye. Uh, we'll Lovely. Sorry. We'll see you. Uh, I'll miss you. I, I, I always try to forget you, but it never works, so... Uh... Okay, that's messed up. Okay, that's messed up. What? Yeah, it's God's God. See you guys next week. <laughs>